Let's get straight into it. This is going to be a quick one today, so I don't have time to, to fart about. We've got to get straight into it. Straight, straight, right straight into it. Straight or gay into it. Because some people are gay. Did you know? Some people. Me. I get, well, I'm not that gay. Oh, uh, well. <laughs> so, I mean, you know. Oh, it's, it's difficult, isn't it? I don't know. I don't know what I am. I know I'm human and I'm mad about that daily. Uh, I resent how fucking stupidly human I am on a regular basis. There we go, we got the, the the shapes just about worked out. Shoulder and a thing and a thing and a thing. Can you see what that's a thumb? That's a hand. It's an arm. Bunch of shit head. Bunch of shit. <laughs> it should be more like that. Yeah. Ooh, bloody yeah. Um, I might need to do a little bit of, of quick um, colour research, yeah. And you can join me on this colour research journey and shit. Um... Let's let's get a little pens. Let's because they're all each of them, not all of them, but they're a lot of them are like different pinks, isn't it? So I want to try to gauge gauge. <laughs> all right, Ewan, with the the gay. You'd think I'm obsessed, wouldn't you? Um. And then this one, I'll just put this one up here. Okay, so that's quite a pale one, that's quite a dark one. But that's even more pale one, is it? I think that'll work. These two, only contrasting pinks, because we're doing it pink. Doing it, doing it in the pink. Oh, one in the, one in the pink. And then two in the, uh, respectfully, wherever else the other person wants them with consent because that's a friendly way to do it you got to be friendly when you're sticking your fingers in people's holes probably it's probably best isn't it to be friendly when you're doing it you don't want to be a you don't want to be a cunt when you're fuck oh i don't know how many minutes in we are you already got a cunt out i'm not calling myself a cunt though this time not this time not like i normally do Cunt than I am. <laughs> um, Jesus Christ! There's there. <laughs> they are currently <laughs> erecting <laughs> scaffolding right by my home. Like literally, not literally, right outside my window, but may as well be right outside my fucking window, right next door. They're putting up scaffolding. It's nice and loud. So. I keep hearing it, and I don't know if, if it's going to be audible. I was going to say uh, sound visible to you, which I guess is audible. Um, sponsored by Audible. This is an episode sponsored by cunts. We still we still hate sponsorships, by the way. The amount of times people read their sponsorships, they read them going... I, and this is the, the copy that they have that they're reading in the palm of my hand. I use this product ev every day and it's something that's really close to my heart. And uh, I, I, I don't know how what my life would be without it. Oh, cool. Brilliant. It's good that you put such heart and soul into this fucking lie that you're telling you sons of bitches so i keep hearing this gunk 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 sounds like a robot giving head <coughs> choking on a robot cock this pen's run out what am i to do 
I have a stash of other pens, but I don't know where they are currently. No, that's not them. Oh, fuck. Oh, piss. Piss and shit. All over my tits. Oh, no. Is that the same? I think the same here, I think. Yeah, we go. There's always another one in there. Um. Oh, God, I just heard it again. Which is them, like, I guess, using whatever tool it is that, like, tightens the knobs on the whatever on the scaffolding to put it all together. Um, and and it, 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 it sort of grinds the back of my neck, kind of. Well, I did not literally, obviously, but it, it does feel like it's kind of like going on the back of my neck every time I hear it. And all I was going to say was, I apologise if you can hear it at all through the mic. I shouldn't imagine the microphone I have is, is that fucking powerful that it picks that up. But um, if you do keep hearing a little, like, gunk, gunk, then all I can do is apologise. All I can do is say, I'm sorry, but, you know, tough sh shiite. Um, do we have any this bag of markers that Big Z got me? Are there any pens I could use for like cool outline kind of pens? Fine and chisel. Uh, what the fuck is this? Oh, this is the exciting part of using like these sorts of pens. Holy shit, is that like fucking... What the fuck is that? Ah, is it disappearing in? Because it... it's not chalk, it's like... Does it bleed through? No. What the hell kind of pen is that? Some kind of fucking magical... Well, it doesn't take too well to other inks, does it? It looks cool, but... I don't know how uh, how practical it is, how, how, how good it's actually going to be, how good it's going to look. Fuck it, I'll use it anyway. I don't care. I'm beyond giving a shit at this point. No, I'm not. I care. I do care. I care about you. I care about my art. And that's about it. I don't care about much. <laughs> Give me that thumbs up, you son of a bitch. That'll do for now. Rubabdubabu. <laughs> it says death fist, clearly, obviously. Uh, you're giving a old thumbs up. Um, I thought it'd be funny to put that in the comic. Like, just after he punches the guy um, back down into hell. He like turns to the the camera and goes, ha ha! Gives a big thumbs up. One of those like almost fourth wall breaking kind of moments. Not quite, but kind of a little bit. Heading towards that sort of area. I guess it is kind of fourth wall breaking, especially if he's doing it like towards the reader. He's going, yeah, we did it. We got the guy. Now he's in hell, suffering for all eternity. Time in memoriam. Suffering in hell, where he belongs. Fuck that guy. Bad up dude. And fuck you too. What is this marker? I don't even... Like, it's not branded. It's completely fucking blank. I don't know where, the, where it came from. Don't know where it'll go. Don't know where it came from. You thought I was going to sing the song. Didn't you? you thought I was going to. Son of a bitch. I'm not that obvious. Well, sometimes I am. But in this case, I'm not. Do, do, do. Do 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 do. Yeah, 
Scratic do. I don't want to rush things, but you know. I am trying to get through some shit. That's all we're doing in life, isn't it? Just trying to get through shit. <laughs> Just trying to, you know. Hey. Look at his chin, size of his chin. I like it. I've not drawn his chin that big before, but I, yeah, I don't, I don't dislike it. I think it's kind of, kind of neat in a way. Um, is it would a would a purple posca? Is that like much? Do yeah, nice. I want just like a little extra bit of like darkness on it. Just that extra little bit of contrast. It's all about layers, isn't it? Layers and uh, it's just shit. It's purple and pink and shit. You know, you get it. It's all in it. Oh, look at the fucking art. Do 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 Right, so it's clear what we're doing, isn't it? It's it, you, not just this, the the death fist, um, but the, this. You can see where it's going. Yeah, I mean, I would have put in the 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 thumbnail or the title or whatever. Like, let's do a whole sketchbook. That would be a good idea. What could go wrong? Besides, you know. Fucking everything. New sketchbook. Uh, it, it, I did that thing again where I take two two like thinner sketchbooks and then stick them together. I actually, I did. Um, I see. I put a bit of paper here. You can see the ridges here and here in the middle. I didn't have any paper the full size, like A3 paper. So I just where they stick together. So it's got like it, it instead of it being because the ones I used to do, I'd stick these two bits of paper together, but then you lose two pages because they're stuck together, and this middle page is really thick. Um, so I sort of kind of in a roundabout way, kind of sort of fixed that kind of sort of what I do. Let's. Fucking go! Well, that's gonna affect things. Isn't it? Ah, do you know what? Fuck it. That's the way the penis crumbles. What's next? What the fuck is next? Do you know what I thought would be fun to do? I had this idea for a little while. Um. Uh, um, uh, uh, um how. How would this work? I have no idea in my head for how this might go. Um, this guy here. And then this guy here. Uh, like this, and then like that. Yeah! Tell me you can't see where this is going. Tell me you can't see where this is going already. All bloody, bloody ready. Uh, and then... Yeah, yeah! Ooh, yeah! Jesus Christ! Shit and piss inside my anus and also in my vagina. Shit and piss inside my vagina, anus, anus, vagina, 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 anus. Fuck it, oh, sure. Okay, cool. 
Cool, cool, cool. We're on this, the first couple of steps of a long... Oh, that fucked up, didn't it? Ugh. It's all part of it, though. It's all part of it. It's fine. It's fine. It's a sketchbook. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's just a sketchbook. It's just art. It's all right. It doesn't matter. It's just fucking art and shit. Yeah. It doesn't fucking matter. This is what we're looking for. I'm on the monster today. Monster energy. I've got a couple of cans of this. A couple of cans of Red Bull. I can't find Pro Plus anywhere, which is my usual um, caffeine supplement that I take too much of. I've got a little bit of Pepsi as well. A sugar-free monster with a chaser. Um, and then I, you know, Pro Plus, and then there's also um, some off-brand versions of Pro Plus, which I'll get if they're just there. Uh, can't find them anywhere. I don't know if maybe they took them away because they're really not good for you or what. Um, so it's it's energy drinks. I need something because. I'm not making it through this without anything, without supplements. I need to be enhanced. I would take steroids if they were if they were like art steroids you could take. That'd be cool, wouldn't it? Art artroids. I don't know. That doesn't sound good, does it? And then look, this is Death Fist, and this one, well, you might be able to tell already. It's the man, the myth, the legend. You love him because he's amazing. It's the Viking. Gun Viking. Viking with a gun. Do, 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 do. Big chunky horns today. Why not? Why the piss bloody not? Um, and then he's got a gun in his hand up here. Thumb. Finger, other fingers on the gun handle. Um, I'm feeling a long barreled pistol today. Just like his regular gun, but long for no reason other than that's what I feel like doing. And his chest. And then I think this is his fist. Here and then this is uh, Death Fists. Other fist. It's just it's just fists, fucking fists all over the, everywhere. Yeah, um, because then you call it a uh, gun, gun fist. I was thinking about this. Gun fist sort of works. Gun Viking Death Fist. Gun fist. The other. The only really other pos the only other possible pos really really the only other possible possible pull would be Death Viking, which just sounds a bit like sound it doesn't sound it doesn't sound uncool, but it doesn't sound particularly cool if you get to my meaning. Death Death Viking like. It sounds too um, like Gun Viking. Just sounds fucking cool. I will say that as the creator of Gun Viking, I'll happily say Gun Viking sounds just cool. I I got lucky in naming the guy Gun Viking, and it just happens to be really really fucking cool. Um, Death Viking, on the other hand, doesn't sound that cool. Death Fist sounds pretty cool. Gun Fist also does sound kind of cool. I kind of do like Gun Fist. Um, it feels like it should be. I mean, because Gun Viking almost has literally been Gun Fist, isn't he? He's had his hands turn into guns. That's gotten him out of a sticky situation where he had his fucking hands cut off. What the fuck? Um, yeah, this is running out.
Oh, excuse me. But, uh, yeah, I think Death, Death, no, nope, Gunfist, Gunfist is definitely, I'm, I'm definitely onto something with Gunfist. Would I actually use that in, as a thing? I don't know. I could. I think it could work. There's, there's definitely possibility there for a uh, big frowny face. Mm. Uh, oh, which one, Gun Boy King? Oh, which one? Are you sad, Gun Boy King? Oh, he's Gun Boy King. Oh, sad. Oh, woo -woo. Boo -hoo. Sad, sad, Gun Boy King. Boo -hoo -hoo. That's needless. I don't need to be like that, do I? Um, trying to gauge where I'm putting all of the shapes. Need more of this. Yeah. Oh, I've got a few ideas for this shit. Things to draw. I have, um, as well as a couple of ideas in my head of things to draw, I have a small selection of, um, oh look, that's the first one. When Death Fist is victorious, he just goes like that. Ah. Um, what else we got? Gatamago, portrait series, comic book covers, uh, eight penises, I don't even know where that came from. Um, I can't remember, I'm sure eight penises was relevant at the time. Maybe I brought it up in the podcast, I don't remember. Um, but I looked at that earlier and I thought, ha, I don't know what the fuck that's in reference to. So, eight penises. Maybe I was going to draw like an octopus, but it was penises instead of tentacles. Or maybe there was, I don't know, maybe it will come to me. <laughs> maybe it will come to me. It's disgusting. Filthy and rotten, a lot of you. You all disgust me. You're all a bunch of rotten, filthy, horrible little fuckers. Um, I've also got uh, another little batch uh, of, of conversation pieces um, over here. Conversation pieces, drawing prompts. I've got a folder on my laptop of um, a few reference pictures that I could draw. Um, I've got a, a, a list of questions. Um, that I've got people on Instagram to ask so I can answer some of them. So there's plenty to do and, you know, we've got space to fill. Plenty to do. Plenty fucking plenty to do. Um, and this, I so I, I'm... The aim isn't necessarily to fill the sketchbook. But... If I end up somehow filling the sketchbook, I'm going to try and fill the sketchbook, you know. It's one of those things where it's like, well, I'm here, so I may as well fucking give it a go. And if I'm successful, then brilliant, I filled an entire sketchbook. And if not, it doesn't really matter. It wasn't really the point. It's not about the destination, it's about the journey. Just like life, in it. It's not about the. It's not about the 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 breaths you take. It's about the moments that take your breath away. Oh, they should put that on a, a bit of driftwood written in calligraphy for white women to put in their fucking kitchens and shit. That is one of them things, isn't it? It's about the moments that take your breath away. I'll take your breath away when I put my cock in your mouth. You f Let's not go down that route. And I say that, well, you know, when I put my cock in your mouth, with, because they asked, they said, do it, I want to be choked, I want to be left breathless because your penis is in my mouth. It's, it's all consent, it's all above board, it's all very good, because it's all good and it's all very good. Don't worry, everything's good. There's just a lot in the news about not consent and such and I just want to be clear that 
I'm I'm pro consent. I may not sound it sometimes. Cause you're all a bunch of bastards and I fucking stick my dick down all your throats. Um also, look at oh, these big fists and shit. Oh, that's a skull. These are horns. It's a bunch of shit. Am I really going to fill up an entire skull? I don't want to colour in this because it's too much of it. Um, gun fist. I like it though. I like gun fist as like a, a thing. It's a thing. As a physical thing, I like gun fist. Gun fist, good. Gun fist, good. Me likey. Me like good is gun fist. Gun fist am good. Um, let's do some shit. Yeah. Where's he looking? Where is his eyes? Oh, he looks a bit cross-eyed. Yeah, he does look a bit cross-eyed. I can fix that in post. We do have editing techniques we can use, even with traditional media. God, he's got a bit of a joker grin this time. You don't often see uh, Death Fist grinning like that, but uh, it happens from time to time. Especially when he's with his pal Gun Viking. What's not to grin about? You get to spend the day with your, your best pal friend. Of course you're going to be fucking grinning from ear to ear. Like a maniacal, death-headed fistmeister. There will be... I, I am planning on, like, actually talking about shit that might even matter. This isn't just going to be me rambling and bambling for... Hours and hours and hours on end. Well, it might. It might be that. It might very well be that. <laughs> be prepared for it to possibly be that. Just just saying. Just, just you know, be be prepared for the, for the worst. <laughs> for the, that to be a possible outcome of the thing and the thing and the thing. Hoi. <sighs> Oh, has he run out of steam already? <laughs> what was that, 20 minutes? Yeah, about that. No, we're good, we're good, we're good. It's all very good, don't worry, it's all very good. I need some some fatter ink. Let's get some of this shit in here. <laughs> One thing I had noted down, which I meant to talk about um, for some time, sort of unrelated to whatever, but it's, it relates because it's art related. I remember uh, from earlier on in my like online Instagram art days or whatever. Um, I got a message from a group saying, and I've, back then, you know, I wasn't as sort of aware of scams and such. And, you know, the online scams we know today weren't remotely as prevalent as they are nowadays. Nowadays, I get, you know, at least one scam message a day, if not more than one. Um, but back in the day, you didn't really see that as much because Instagram wasn't as big a deal. This is before it had been bought out by Facebook. It was before all the ads and shit were really coming in. It was, could be argued, the good old days. Back when Instagram was good. Remember that? Was Instagram ever good? Oh, I don't bloody know. Um, but, uh, so I was... I, I hadn't been on it that long, but I was getting a following. Um, I had a good a good amount of followers, good good bunch of thousands of followers, you know. Um, and I got a message from a group saying they ran art events and they really liked my artwork, which is you know that's the line they use, isn't it? They really liked my artwork and they thought I'd be perfect for an event. 
I get a space at this event um, to like hang my work and I get to sell my work and I keep like all the money I make from selling my work. Um, and I was like, oh shit, well, that's cool. Like somewhere to exhibit my work and can make some money and stuff. From, and it's all going to be people who are there to like look at art and buy art and, and whatever else. What could go wrong? But immediately, alarm bells started going off in my head. Um, because I had tinnitus. So all I hear is... Under and over and around everything else on a daily basis. Ha! Ah, that's my tinnitus joke for today. That was funny, wasn't it? Maybe there'll be more. Maybe there were. But um, alarm bells did sort of start to blare a little bit because they said all you have to do is sell like, I don't remember the number. It might have been like 20, 25, maybe even like 30 to 50 tickets. You've got to sell, let's say 30 for the sake of arguments. For argument's sake. Um, you, all you have to do is sell 30 tickets to like cover the costs of, of whatever um, so you know let your friends know put it on Facebook and Instagram promote the thing and make sure everyone knows to come along to this thing and buy a ticket and the tickets were like I don't know £20 each or something um, and they said oh but of course if you are unable to sell those tickets you'll have to pay um, say, say you're supposed to sell 30 tickets for instance um, and you manage to sell 20 you then have to pay for the other 10 yourself out of pocket. And if you are only able to sell five tickets, you have to pay for the 25 yourself. So basically, you have to pay a certain amount of money, but you can make that money through selling the tickets if you're able to sell the tickets. Um, and like I say, right away, I was like, that doesn't sound very cool. Also, in my life at the time, I certainly didn't have that many people that I would want to or even be able to sell those kinds of tickets to, to that kind of event. Um, and so I was like, oh, but then I'd, I'd almost certainly have to <laughs> buy, you know, maybe 25 tickets or more myself, uh, which I can't afford because that's like, if they were like twenty pound each, that's maths. That's maths amount of money, uh, which I, I'm not going to do right now. Um, but and then I started looking into more of the event, and they said, you know, check out these photos and stuff from past events. And so it's a night out. It's a big like night out event, but like it's a party event um, where they have like DJs and music, and then. It's like a club scene with, it's dark, but we've got bright lights. We've got, but they have bright lights and stuff. DJ, a bar and things. And then there's these like areas set up where people have like, you know, um, boards like this set up. With like a table here. And then you can hang your art on the, these boards stand there like a fucking dummy going boo some shit on the table um loads of those just arranged but like it's it's nothing about that is like conducive to displaying and or selling artwork like it's the the worst environment for it because it's it's a fucking it's a club night <laughs> or whatever like who's gonna be there with a DJ and a bar and loud music and bright lights and go, oh, let me look at some some drawings and some paintings. It's the worst fucking shit. And um, I think I had one person I followed, uh, like one mutual follower, I guess, at the time, who I think did also get a, a message from these people and they actually went in for it. And they sold all their tickets. Well, they sold most of their tickets. They had to pay for the ones they didn't sell. Um, and then they went to the event and they really didn't enjoy it. They didn't have a good time. I think they sold like one small piece or something. And um, like, yeah, and I, I 
didn't speak to them about it because I wasn't sure if they'd be bitter about it or not want to talk about it. Um, and I was a lot younger in those days and I didn't know about just if I could just talk to someone about that sort of thing. Um, but I, yeah, I was really like, this feels scamish at the time. And since then, in, in the years pr proceeding, um, I have seen a bunch of like videos and things about these kinds of events that like get you, all you have to do is sell the tickets and then you come along and the thing and the thing. And it's just like, why, why is that? That's so, it's not, it's not a good environment. You shouldn't have to sell your own tickets. That should be the, the place. <laughs> That's like their job. The venue is to I can sell the tickets and shit. Um, which does sort of, there is a, a, a point kind of to it at least, which is to say, it's difficult, but in basic terms, you should never have to pay to display your artwork. People should pay you to display your artwork. And if you sell anything, and if you have it worked out with the place, if you get a cut, like most gallery spaces, you have to rent out, sure, but you make deals. But if you have to like pay potentially fucking hundreds and hundreds of pounds just to display some artwork, and then, you know, you can sell it and make your money back, possibly. That's that's generally my sort of uh, feelings these days is pay me. I'm not I'm not in a position where I sh can realistically do that, where I can say pay me money and then you fucking deal with it. But I know if you're a young starting out artist, it might even in certain places be. Uh, possible to and and helpful to pay and then have your artwork shown but over the years I've tried various things like that of like paying to have my art shown paying to have a certain page help boost some artwork um, you know paying the fee to enter some artwork into a show and then have it turned down because there was too many applicants and yours was good, but it just didn't quite cut the thing. Um, and I just, it's, that's, it's a scam. It's, a, it's basically a scam. You know, if, if you're having to pay them to show your artwork, it's a scam and they're making money off of you if they do show your artwork. They owe you money. They fucking, they owe you. That's basically what I'm saying about that. Grey, 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 grey. Do, 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 grey. So that was on my list of shit to talk about. That was just on my mind. I just was thinking about that. And just, could you imagine, some artists sort of fit that vibe where like their art can go up in a party sort of scene. Maybe they can be painting live and like interacting and it's cool and it's hype and it's whatever but could you imagine being there most artists are like not most artists but a lot of artists are just quiet little introverted people that just want to you know little goblins that just sit in their rooms making art and then they get a, a message about like oh come along to this place and you can sell your artwork and and then it's just noise and people and alcohol and whatever and you're just trying to be like, does, does anyone want to buy a uh, drawing? I drew this guy with a skull and his big hand. Does anyone want to buy any of the stuff? No? Stickers? i got some stickers. Do you want to buy some stickers, please? Go, oh, God. Just be horrible. Nothing about it appeals. <laughs> uh, and, yeah, I... Yeah. Even if I could afford it and I did go in for it, I'd have had the worst time. Can't imagine I'd have sold much, if anything. Just, just fucking wasting it. But now it's all, hey friend, I love your page. Your artwork's so good. I'd love to buy some as NFTs. Or you'll get people saying, um, Oh, your artwork's so cool, I'd love to buy some. 
and then you say cool here's my prices and then they say oh I, I've had this email I've had one say like hey cool I'd love to buy some work for like X amount of money like hundreds of pounds and I'm like well yeah sure I mean these pieces are for sale let me know and they're like yeah cool um my paypal's not working right now so um click this link and it will take you to a thing where you can like sign into my account and then once i've got your information i can send you a payment through there and luckily i do have the sense to see that and be like no <laughs> i'm not falling for that jesus christ i won't even these days because of all those scams and stuff i won't even click links of like if people, even someone I sort of trust, sends me a link and I don't know what it is, if it's not blatantly obvious, or if it's not like in conversation and I say send me a link to that YouTube video and then they send me a link to that YouTube video, if it's just out of the blue, a random link, I can't quite tell what it is, I won't click it and I'll let them know, I'll tell the person like, I'm not clicking this random link <laughs> because that's how you get your account hacked and I've seen a lot of people get their accounts hacked in basically that kind of way. Um, uh, and yeah, there are, there's various ways it's done, but I know sometimes it will say like, um, you'll click the link and it'll say, oh, you're leaving Instagram. Um, please sign in to make sure you're still on your account or something or prove that it is you on your account. And then once you, if, if you do that, that's basically them saying, please give us your password. And if you do sign in, you're giving them your password. And then that's how they have hacked many accounts. I think, I don't know if it's the same, but around the time that these sort of scams were going around a lot, um, 2000 AD, Judge Dredd slain the comic uh, publisher, had their account hacked. So they had set up a new page. So I think whoever runs their social media had maybe fallen for one of those scams, um, which is a little bit funny, uh, only because, you know, they won't hire me, apparently. Um, but also a bit shit, isn't it? Because <laughs> that's the sort of thing that can happen. And it, it fucking sucks that it happens. You've just got to keep your, your, your head on, keep your street smarts uh, poised and shit. And then go clicking random links. Um, and there, there was one, uh, a friend, uh, someone from university um, started sending me messages saying, hey, honey. And this is a guy who, as far as I'm aware, doesn't talk like that. But he sent me messages saying, hey, honey, um, I'm entering this contest. It would be really cool if you go vote for me. Click this link to, you know, vote for me in this contest. And... I mean, I don't want this to sound harsh, but like, unless I can really be bothered and if I'm really invested, I'm not doing that shit. I'm not clicking things and going places and voting for people to win contests or anything. It's just not something I do. I don't have it in, in me to, to do shit. I've got too much going on. He says as he sits down to draw pictures for a day or two days straight. Um, I'm too busy. I've too many things going on. So uh, I won't go and vote. So I just ignored that message. And then I got another one of the same message from the same person saying, oh, don't you want to vote for me? It'd be really cool if you vote for me. And this happened a few times. And then um, sometime later, I saw the person make a new account and be like, my account got hacked and whatever, whatever. And I was like... I knew it. <laughs> I fucking knew it. You can't pull the wool over my eyes. You gotta wake up pretty early in the morning to trick this old fart maker. So we don't fall for scams, mans. Look at that gun fist. <laughs> I think these are like I'm, I'm you know trying to bust these out nice and quick because you know I can because I'm just that good but also these are the sorts of things that I could at a later date go back and sort of add to and 
refine or I could just leave them as they are because you know they don't all have to be like perfect and shit do they do they fucking do they you can't you fucking slag what a fucking true fucking you fucking big bass you fucking got a bap bap do squeedly boo bap do oh my tits Right, one of the questions I got asked, um, let's see if I can find it. I probably can't find it, but let's see if I can find it. Uh, I, I wrote them all down on paper because I'm 500 years old, apparently. Um, some Something, um, how would you, imposter syndrome, do you feel about knowing how long did it take, how are you motivated People, PP. Oh, there we go. Um, if not for the obvious uh, Simon Bisley, etc., who were the biggest influences on you in the early days? <laughs> That's a good question. I'm glad you asked. Oh, I've only got a couple of pages done so far. I'm going to have to hurry up if I want to actually get more shit done, aren't I? We're already, like. Oh boy, we're getting in there. Getting in. Getting fucking getting in. Um, who who were some of my early influences, besides the obvious Bisley, etc. Now, I thought, that's a good question, because I thought what I could do throughout this whole journey that we're taking together, which is really what it is, um, I could show some of my early influences, which is, for the most part, it's all going to be shit of... of shown before or spoken about before but it's you know it's nice to like dip and delve and dive and drunge into sometimes often occasionally now and then from time to time as the mood takes me um so well i say so often a lot of that some of that and a bit will be stuff you've already seen however this is new I saw on Ashley Wood's Instagram um, that he had done a little Batman story in a, in a new released Batman comic. Uh, and I was like, fucking yes, let's go. New Batman, new Ashley Wood, new Batman. Um, so I picked it up. But I actually, interesting story. It was pissing it down. And I it was, it was new comic book day. Um, so I was like, fuck yeah, okay. I'll take a walk in the rain to the comic book store pick up this comic and then walk back and it'll all be chill, it'll be very good. Get to the comic book store, dripping, soaked in rain, and they had a notice on their, their comic book shelves, on the new release shelves, saying, oh, there's been a delay in the delivery, so we won't have stuff up on the shelves until tomorrow. <sighs> so I went home and got it. And then I got it. Um, nice cover. I could easily bite this for Death Fist, couldn't I? Just, you know, fucking flip it around. Have like his, his fist poking out here. Oh, I don't have to flip it around, but you know, his fist poking out, his poncho, had his like baseball cap on, and easily done, isn't it? But that's a nice Ashley Wood variant cover. So this is Batman the Brave and the Bold, number 11. Um, evidently, uh, a bunch of like short Batman stories by different writers, different artists. Just a little, which is cool, uh, a bunch of little one shot comics. I think there should be more things like that. Um, maybe there are, and I just don't know about them, but. I think that's a cool thing to have. Just like a bunch of, just a collection of short stories and, you know, different art, different artists. Um, I, the artwork in here is generally okay. There's nothing bad about it. But it, as is usually the case, it's just sort of modern comic book artwork. This first story is kind of neat. Like, especially that opening. That's really cool a bat man he looks like the joker almost in terms of colors and such and he's a, a, a man bat and is robin and shit i like the the angles and the the um sort of body dimensions they use and stuff um but overall i think the coloring is the, the, the flat digital color i mean it's not that flat but it is it feels flat um really i don't know it doesn't add anything it maybe even detracts in certain ways um 
so I'm not terribly intrigued or blown away by the artwork in most of these stories. And then right at the back, we've got an Ashley Wood. It's black and white, which is fairly typical for Ashley Wood. Even in, in his, like, colour comics, it's very, very, like, uh, not monochromatic, but minimally chromatic. As he doesn't tend to use a lot of colour in his in his pieces. Um, and I have to say, I, I wasn't disappointed by the artwork, but I wasn't amazed by it. Uh, it's, it's just, you know, it's actually Wood being Ashley Wood doing Batman. The story's quite neat because the story is like <clears throat> a detective story. I actually read it. Can you believe that? I read this. I think it's eight pages. One, two, three. Let's count. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. Um, hey, that's like the, the Death Fist teaser. Um, I actually read it. So he, there's some corpses all made out of a bunch of different corpses making up this weird sculpture thing um, and then he just gets DNA from them and it relates to a person he's seen before and it's all some like rat tails and shit and so he goes he tracks them down and there's rats and then is someone was here um, and then he puts a tracker on the rat to see where the rats are going because it looks like they're moving with purpose and then they go to this barn this farmhouse barn and then these these weird people in hazmat suits and they go take as many as you can carry they're getting all the rats they're picking all the rats up and then there's a weird thing like a a, a weird ritual going on in the barn um and then it's all to do with rats and rat tails and then this guy's cut his fingers off and i think he's pulled his teeth out um free from fingers free from fur free from teeth and then they put all the rats on his face and then he goes scree and then batman jumps in to uh, time to end this twisted ritual and he goes Squaw! and he's like a rat man stop the bat and batman's like yeah fucking let's go and he throws down a puff a puff a puffinator a mild sedative should do the trick his bat sedative and then they will collapse on the floor and he's, he's like mm, i'm gonna fucking get you rat man and he douches him in the face pa um hmm, rat man is immune i am the lord of teeming creatures Says the Batman. So says the Rat Man, Rat Man and Batman. Ooh, this is... <clears throat> right. So the Rat Man says, "I am the Lord of Teeming Creatures," and then the Batman says, "And I am the Knight." Paff, which is very similar to the old uh, "Gaze into the face of fear, gaze into the fist of dread." <laughs> very, very similar to that. Knocks his block off as him arrested. Um, You're coming with me, Zodiac Master. Uh, something something and then I guess Jim Gordon's there and he's like ah oh, he's responsible for the dese desecration in Gotham Cemetery he killed rat catcher now he believes he's a rat god great just great guess we're off to Arkham eh <laughs> another one for the for the nut house <laughs> for the loony bin throw him in there with the others <laughs> these rodents don't deserve to die for a madman's failed ritual so I guess what he lets the rats go free which is fine it was a failure wasn't it question mark the end question mark so the story's really neat i quite like that story a nice little contained small story about this fucking ritual and shit going on batman being a detective um i've said before with there's that mike mignola batman comic i really like that i've got um which feels like it doesn't have to be a batman comic like you could throw just a random guy in there and it would the story wouldn't really change at all this is similar but it is batman being a detective and he's like dealing with past fuckers he's dealt with before and then it's got like jim gordon stuff uh hauling in the moffed arkham and it's sort of it ties in a bit more to batman so i do like it but then the story's whatever it's it's the artwork in it um and the artwork is smart work is smart uh, it's all right. It is sort of verging on being abstract. Because I like how sort of quickly and uh, kinetically and energetic, uh, uh, energetically he draws this shit. It does have a lot of texture and a lot of life to it. You know, more so than like 
this sort of stuff, which is too sort of refined and, you know, whatever. It's, it's a vast world of difference between the, these styles, uh, which I love. And I love how sort of like gritty and dirty it all feels. And there's rats, and I fucking love rats, so that's cool too. Um, it's really, really cool to see, but it doesn't blow my tits off of my body and into orbit around the planet um, to join all the other debris and shit from our planet that's floating around up there. It's a neat little story. Uh, I like the fact that it's by Ashley Wood, but I'm not uh, amazed by it. But it does have some cool moments. I do like this part. I like his Batman. He's like a slightly... Not as chunky Batman as you see quite a lot, and I like that. I do. I don't think I've ever really liked the idea of Batman being like this massive, like uh, fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger-sized superhero guy. I like the idea of him being, you know, well built and muscular, and he can fight. But I don't think he needs to be a colossus. <laughs> you know, I think he does well. Because then he's supposed to use the shadows to his advantage and he's supposed to use his gadgets and, you know, tools and equipment and, and you know, his, his utility belt and his bat sedative and whatever else. And his, his wits, his, his, his smarts, because he's a detective, so he uses his smarts to, like, get him around defeating enemies and stuff rather than his just fucking raw brawn. And when it comes to it, yeah, he can throw down, but... Yeah, so I like the slightly slimmer look of this Batman. And he does look more like a looming shadow as opposed to uh, an ironclad behemoth or something. Um, but this does relate because uh, Ashley Wood was one of my very early um, influences uh, to answer, to partly answer the question of, of early influences. Um, Ashley Wood was one of a couple of artists who really made a thing click in my head where I was like I want to be an artist because it used to be I draw a lot so I'll just draw a lot it was never in my head to like oh I'm going to be an artist and I'm going to create work and really put stuff out there into the world um but Ashley Wood just his drawing and painting style really really struck me because it was so different from so much I'd been seeing at the time and the fact that he put out so many books um I really, really got the impression that he got a bunch of work together, put it into a book, went to the publisher, which is IDW, is the one he usually publishes with, and said, I've got a new book, put it out. And then the publisher says, sure, we'll put it out. And then that's how he works. That's the impression I get. I don't know if that is the case. I don't know if they approach him or if he approaches them in general. But um, I really, really... Um, obsessed over that I really admired it and that pushed me to want to make my own art books which I did to a greater or lesser extent <coughs> so gun viking starts like this I have so much saliva in my mouth I'm gonna spit it everywhere you can have it all too let's share saliva delicious saliva yes Puff! His head pops open like a popping pop of... Pop. Puff. Like a bag of popcorn. Squeezed and it all goes everywhere. That's how popcorn works. Um, that's how yeah, everybody, literally everyone in the world knows that Gun Viking starts like that. Because it's such a big popular piece of comics media. But did you know... That wasn't how it was originally slated to start. This was originally going to be the first page of Gun Viking. That doesn't look anything like it at all, does it? Can you even see it? You barely, because the lighting's terrible. Um, I hate recording in the daytime because you get fucking glare and shit from all over the place. Um, so, there were... Uh, <sighs> Originally, very, very originally, um, Gun Viking was conceived to be... I wanted it to be like a webcomic almost, where I do a page every week, maybe, and then eventually collect them all. So every page sort of has a start and a finish, kind of. But um, I did abandon that very early on, um, almost right away, because I was just like, ah, oh, fuck it, I'll just draw it as a comic. 
Um, so this one, uh, I'm trying to hold it in such a way that you can actually see it because like that it's not very clear but it's quite dark anyway I guess you can see it so there's this guy um, I don't know exactly what was going to be said but it was something along the lines of oh the council won't like this uh, gun viking uh, something 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 and then gun viking he's putting a magazine into the butt of the gun um, and he's he'll be saying something along the lines of the council are a bunch of old fools and then he'll be saying like they'll have you uh thrown out they'll have you excommunicated for this or um what's the word to be to be pushed out to be they'll have you oh fuck what's the word um banished i guess they'll have you banished for that and then here i know gun viking would be saying so be it and then he's pointing his gun at the old fart and it blows his head off so we still we do keep the blow his head off theme for the first page but that's this was f fucking years ago, heading on, or maybe even, maybe over 10 years ago. Shit, yeah, this might be more than 10 years ago. 2015 was when this was printed, which means it may have been around 2014 that I was like coming up with shit. So this might be 10 years old now. Um, because of how long ago it was, I, I've no idea who the council were going to be, if I had planned for them to be anything, to be controlling things, if the world Gun Viking was going to inhabit was going to be uh, vastly different from the one we all know and love today. Um, but there was some fucking old guy talking about a council when Gun Viking was like, fuck your council, I don't give a shit. Um, I thought it would be fun to re reimagine that first page of gun viking yeah so like give it a little redraw um see if we can't bring some some more life to it or something um i'm feeling an arrangement like this keep the old guy that panel's fine really the old guy saying some shit looking all fucking weird i'll give him more of a smile oh you the fucking the council won't like this gun viking, it won't stand for it. The council won't stand for such insolent viking. And then gun viking being like, the council are a bunch of fucks. The council can suck my balls, my penis and all the rest of my fucking genitalia. I want him to be holding the gun like up so you can really see it. And then it'd be like a click. And him just being like, pfft, give a fuck. The council can suck a fuck. Um, speech bubble here. I'll throw a speech bubble off the page because fuck it, it doesn't matter at this point, does it? Oh, the council won't like that gun, Viking. Oh, wah, wah, wah. The council won't like it. Oh, boo -hoo. oh the council. Oh, oh. Why won't the council like it? Oh, what are they going to do? Oh, no. Do 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 do. Do, 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 do. I don't know why I'm singing James Bond theme all of a sudden. Um, and then, then we need to get a good like gun Viking gun gun in your face uh, shot. Like that. There you go. That's that done. <laughs> that's that's how comic books work. To do do ah. um gun like this the trigger here his finger here knuckles uh index middle finger ring finger pink finger um thumb here and the handle of the gun and then wrist forearm bicep tricep is the tricep the back bit what's the shoulder muscle called 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 um the ro rotator cuff maybe um am i looking at the wrong 
Trapezius deltoid. Deltoid. That's the deltoid. Okay, cool. You've got that then. Deltoid. Um, pectoral. Just give him some big tit muscles here. Rib cage and shit. A bunch of other shit. Big frowny gun viking face. Helmet, horns, hair and shit. Um, the Council of Fools. The Council can suck my dick. Yeah, that works. And then you throw a sort of jaggedy panel like this in there to be like, bam, this guy gets his head fucking blown to smithereens. Oh, my medication. That's a Simpsons reference. My ball. And then, of course, we've got to have like a blam here. Click. Um, there you go, and that's, that's how we make comic book pages. That's how we do it in the industry. Um, I guess I might have to hurry up, though, if I want to actually, like, do pages. Is it important that we fill the sketchbook, or is it important that we just enjoy our time together? Both is both are important, of equal importance. The sketchbook's the most important part. The art is the only thing that matters. That's how I go through life. Art is the only thing that matters. Everything else is just a toy. That's small soldiers. We are the commando elite. Everything else is just a toy. I've given him extra big ears for no real reason other than I like big ears at the moment. I made a new character in Fallout 76. Just, to, I was just, you know, with Fallout 76, I get to a point where it's just like, I get to like level 70, and I'm like, oh, there's nothing else to do. All you can do past that point is grind. Like, do the daily events that go on, the daily missions that recycle every day, which is why they're daily, the miscellaneous things, and then just grind your character and make them bigger and stronger endlessly there's it really does become very limited in what you can do um it's probably much more fun if you play with people since it is an online game but we all know i'm not going to be doing that um so yeah i get to like level maybe 60 70 and then i'm just like i'm done this is the end of me having fun with this so i start a new character and do it all again um but i made a new character and i gave him really big ears that's all I have to say about that. That was literally as far as that, that story went. Made a character, gave him big ears. Wasn't that funny? I just, yeah, I just, don't know. I like big ears at the moment. It's my, it's not my thing at the moment, but it's just, it's a thing. I happen to like big ears. Cheers, big ears. That's the thing people say. The council something 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 viking. Again, they don't call him gun viking because nobody knows what a fuck a gun is, do they? Think about it, yeah? Fucking think about it. Have some sense. Get some fucking sense in your goddamn head. Get some goddamn head in your sense. We should be so lucky. Uh, bah, 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 bah. It's got to be better ways to do it than doing this all with ballpoint pen. <laughs> I don't know why I thought that would be a a good idea. Um, his tummy. Oh, his ribs should be there, and then his tummy should be here. There we go. His tummy button there. There we go. It's a bit better, isn't it? Get some shadowing 
under here what else have we got um do we have, have topics the art party event scam thing i've done that one um what's the next one um one time i got a haircut and i hated it that's a funny story oh listen to this one shall i answer answer another question first or should we um do let's let's do it we've got all, all sorts of systems now this is a big special episode right heads i will do a topic uh, a talking topic from my my pile of talking topics um heads tails i will answer a question tails i will answer a question what question shall i answer um what would your last meal be that came from a very lovely person they know who they are um I won't say the names of them because some of the names are like barely legible Instagram names that have no vowels and then numbers and dots and shit. Uh, some of them are easier, but well, you get it. Um, but if you're watching this and then I answer your question, I'm, I think what I might do is um, if I do answer questions in this, then cool. And if I don't, I might do a separate video answering questions that people have asked just because it's more content in it then yeah it's all it's all something it's all it's all usable as content fucking something um so what would my last meal be now assumedly which is now a word that i made up in my mind um that is talking about like if i'm on death row or when i'm inevitably on death row before I get put to, uh, to be executed for my vile crimes of being Ewan. Um, that's a weird looking gun, isn't it? That's a really, really weird looking gun. Pee hole. Um, yeah, when I inevitably do get caught and, you know, sentenced to death, and I'm on death row and my time's coming up, so then you get your last meal, which I believe is more or less true that you do get pretty much whatever you ask I, I assume it's all with like within reason i couldn't say i want to eat a man not just his penis come on now i mean i would like that but not just that imagine being on death row and then you get to just like if you're into it obviously if you're not into it you wouldn't ask for it but if you're on death row and as your last wish, you just go, I just want to blow a guy just one more time. Just please. Just let me. Just just one more cock in my mouth. Um, that'd be quite funny, wouldn't it? Uh, that'd be my last meal. Well, oh, it wouldn't be that funny. It'd be a bit funny. That'd be very funny. Um, what would my last meal be? See, I don't... Because... I don't, I don't, oh, that's a boring answer, isn't it? I don't know. don't really know, really. And I try not to do that as well, because a lot of people, when they say like, oh, I've got some time, ask some questions. And then people ask questions, and then the answers they give are just like, yeah, no, no, not really. Mm, maybe, sometimes, no, no, I don't really, no. Nah. Um, and those are very often followed by subscribe to my OnlyFans. <laughs> oh, that was a, a harsh comment on how boring some people can be um which is not a comment on people in general who have only fans accounts because i have a great many friends who have only fans accounts and they're all lovely so i was just commenting on certain boring people who are boring they are oh, jesus i don't let this this isn't my last meal so my last meal um would be cock oh, I have so much cock I'm fucking all in my mouth down my throat i'll oh, fucking choke on it until i so that's what i do i'd, I'd kill myself choking on cock and then they wouldn't be able to put me to death because i go out on my own terms my own terms being cock that's that's my own terms um the, uh, jesus jesus i don't know what my last meal would be because in one in one sense you could be like oh it should be some grand feast it's your last meal go out with a bang as it were but then at the same time it's like just fuck it like some macaroni cheese some really good mac and cheese or uh just a fucking pizza or something 
like some really good ramen would be cool. Um, I feel like I should come up with a definitive, you know, someone asked the question, so it's only proper that I answer it. Uh, I could have chosen a different question. I could have done anything. I could have done literally anything else, but the coin said I had to answer a question instead of going from one of my pre chosen topics. So that's what we do. Um, my last me, I don't know. I would eat. I don't even know what I like to eat. I don't because I don't care about myself anymore. So I don't give a shit if I get what I want because because I hate myself and I wish I was I wish I was on death row. <laughs> oh, that takes a grim turn, doesn't it? Um, what with my last? Well, God, that's an interesting question. You stumped me there. That was unexpected. I would just be a nice, easy little. Oh, I eat a fucking pizza. I eat a bunch of cum. Um, I'd eat you. I'd eat the person who asked that question. They know who they are. They're a very lovely person. And I'm sure they'd be in favour of me eating them. So that's my answer. But also mac and cheese. I like mac and cheese. Mac and cheese is good. Like a nice home-cooked mac and cheese. None of this... Um, like, oh, have you ever had macaroni cheese out of a can? It's the worst shit I've ever had in my life. That's apart from, like, fish. Seafood is the worst thing to ever be a thing. Um, leave the horrible monsters in the sea. Eat a chicken instead. Um, yeah, macaroni cheese from a can is horrendous. I tried it once and never will again. It's just so fucking bad. Um, and like I'll eat some bad shit like I, I happen to have a weird sort of um, liking for uh, all day breakfast in a can <laughs> where it's just like it's basically a, a tin of beans with a shitty little sausage in it a little bit of like bacon a little bit of like egg and mushroom just awful awful um, heavily fucking what's the word just just bad processed food. Heavily processed food, that's the word I was looking for. Um, it ba barely even qualifies as food, really, but there's something about it. I just, you know, get a bit of brown sauce on there, cook it up, a bit of toast. I, I kind of like it. Macaroni cheese, I can. Not so much. That shit is awful. Awful, awful. Big bow, awful. Um... So, yeah, a few answers to that question then. Um, first answer, cock, a whole bunch of cock, so much cock that I choke and die on it. Um, second answer is you, referring to the person that asked the question, I would eat you as my last meal. Um, in, in, you know, and take that in whatever way you want to take that. In, in however you interpret me saying that, take it that way. Um, and then the other answer is macaroni cheese or just some donut or oh, some freshly. Oh, OK. Yeah, no. OK. My definitive answer. Bunch of cocks. Ha 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 Enough to kill me. And then I don't get put to death by lethal injection or whatever. I die choking on a whole load of penis. Um, other answer. You referring to the person that asked the question. Interpret that how you like. Um, macaroni cheese. Maybe. I guess. Sort of. Kind of all right. I like it. But whatever. Final answer, final, final answer. Um, some of these questions, by the way, are relating to art and stuff, so I will get to some of that. You know, maybe you'll learn something. Final answer, freshly baked donuts. They have to be fresh, still warm. Not even baked, I guess. Fried, freshly made donuts. Um, and a hot chocolate. A nice hot chocolate with, like, real whole milk. Nothing fancy, no cream and sprinkles, just... A nice hot chocolate and freshly made donuts. Like two or three donuts and a nice hot chocolate. Oh, yeah, my last meal. Not, I mean, that barely qualifies as a meal, does it? But I'll eat that shit. <laughs> I'll eat that shit all the way up. That's, that's that good shit, man. 
Um, so that's my answer to, the, to that question. Thank you for playing. Now you go in the hole in the ground where everyone who asks a question gets put. You'll get put in the hole in the ground. And then that's where I pee every day now from now on. You go put in a hole in the ground and I piss on you. There you go. Lucky you for asking that question, though. Not only am I going to eat you and, you know, interpret that how you will. Um, I'm also going to piss on you. So if you're into that, double prizes. Just like Sid from Toy Story getting the Buzz Lightyear and the Woody out of the claw machine. You get eaten and pissed on by your favourite uncle, Uncle Ewan. <sighs> That would have been a really good time to like cut to, hey, now let's do a thing and the thing. Let's, let's check out this thing now. No, let's do this thing now. Should I spend more time drawing or should I spend more time fucking blabbing about books and my early influences and a whole bunch of shit? There is one more particular early influence I would talk about um and we'll talk about at some point i'm sure um and then the other influences are just like simon bisley glenn fabry oh uh, uh, that's about it um oh no you shot my head off oh, shit shit glenn and I do want to have green like green lighting in the background here and here a bit of green glow here and here some green glow on so you can see here um I, yeah green lighting in the background with some spray paint and then here and this is all mostly green and then I was trying this is early days over 10 years ago now ish um I wanted to have like a green glow on the front of Gun and his hand, but it just looks like I painted them green and it, it looks incorrect in the way I've done it here. And there's kind of a blam here. I don't know if you can see that. Um, but yeah, I mean, a lot more dynamic and powerful. It's basically the same comic, but much, much more, more, much more gooder, more good, more good, more better. Good and more better. Um, I will. There's no way I'm filling this entire sketch. Well, actually, that's not necessarily true. This is what we're doing at the moment. Is we're getting some like things done, but then we've got other other shit to do, which might be like quicker, smaller drawings. It's not like we don't have time to get through it all, is it? Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. We could even colour that. Should we colour that? No, let's talk about another one of my artistic influences. I don't have shit prepared. Give me a second. The things are right here. I just need to fucking get them out from under the, from under the fucking thing. I just need to fucking do this one. Oh no, where is it? I had it the other day. Oh, it's there. So, this is a, 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 an odd one, and it's a, I've made whole separate videos about this, but it's David Cho. Um, this is Bruised Fruit. I got this from a pal. Um, it, it, I wish I had this book. Fifth. 20 years ago, <laughs> 20 minus 3, 17 years ago, many, many years ago, back at college, I wish I had this book because this literally would never have left my side. I would have carried this everywhere with me. Like, no lie, if I had this book when I was 18-ish, I would have legitimately carried it everywhere. Um, as I have stated before, I wasn't just inspired by David Cho, I wanted to be David Cho. 
I put this together because I was into David Cho before he was like really, really big. I think he was starting to get quite a lot of hype around him um, outside of his own little art world. Um, so there were no art books. All I could find was like his website, which had quite a lot of art on it, which was cool. So I basically took all of that, plus some interviews for some other websites and stuff, printed them all off at college using the printers at college and all of the ink. And I, yeah, printed off all that shit and, and didn't really bind it, but just folded a bit of paper with some duct tape around it and made my own little, like... See, because this is what I did at college, because this was all I had. So if I had something like this, it would have been the same sort of thing. Um, now, David Cho... Oh, I love this. I love it so much. The filth and the dirt and, like, the age coming off of this duct tape. David chose a tricky one because, like I say, I was obsessed. I saw the trailer for the Dirty Hands documentary, which eventually came out. As soon as I saw that trailer, instantly I had to find out more about this guy, David Cho. Um, so I, I searched everywhere and soaked up every fucking ounce of David Cho I could. Every interview I could find, every video. And there really wasn't that much out there nowadays, uh, back then. Whereas, nowadays... He's everywhere because he made hundreds of millions, literally hundreds of millions of dollars from uh, Facebook stock that he was paid in for painting the Facebook studios. Um, so back then, because he was reckless, he just went out and he just did shit, just painted on walls, didn't paint like a name, like a, a typical uh, graffiti writer, but just painted drawings. He was basically doodling on walls with spray paint and he was fast and he went at it hard and he didn't give a fuck and he just did shit. And that was so like, it was just something I hadn't experienced properly. I'd like heard about, I was, I was into graffiti, I was writing at the time, um, going out bombing and tagging. But then something like this just wasn't really on my radar. Because graffiti, the typical graffiti can be a very enclosed space um and they, they do have their own like rules and regulations that you're supposed to keep to if you really if you really are a writer um so seeing something like david cho i was like fuck like there's this whole and like i loved seeing photos of him living his life jumping over turnstiles and just like riding around on a bike and painting shit and standing in front of walls with all of his stuff on and then he did this where it's just like a day in the life and he i like how he spoke about like yeah you know video games and uh whatever drums and spray painting and graffiti remover and getting food like he talks about food a lot he did some stuff with anthony bourdain um and he just <sighs> He had such an energy that I, like I say, I didn't want to mimic it. I wanted to be everything David Cho was. I started dressing like him and trying to be him. Just all of my artwork at the time was desperately, desperately trying to be David Cho artwork. Um, however, not even that many years later, sort of around university sort of time, um, I started to get a little bit like, eh, about it and... Realising, you know, I was sort of 17, 18 when I was finding out about Cho and Cho was like 30. And when I, a few years later, I was like, man, his whole shtick is like, it's very immature, very selfish. Because um, there's like, not caring is one thing, like not giving a fuck is one thing. But, uh, I don't know. Maybe I can get onto that in a different way. Um, I, and, and also, his artwork would like changed in various ways over the years, um, because back in the day, it seemed like uh, he really gave a shit about his artwork. Like he put so much time and effort into his art, um, and then you know he grew up and he relaxed a bit. But then it seemed like the art was less important, um, and he was more happy to live a life with millions and millions of dollars and art took a back seat which is you know it's fine people grow and they change but i it felt like he didn't give a fuck about the art anymore um and and maybe that's what i felt looking back is is he never i don't know oh, i don't know i'm twisting my own words 
he obviously gave a fuck about the art, but like it felt like he was trying to be a persona as opposed to focusing on the art. And the art was sort of like a conduit towards becoming that persona. Um, some screenshots from that trailer. Um, but yeah, I, and yeah, he just, I think a lot has come out about him in the years since, about him being very toxic and being um, perhaps predatory and uh, unsavory and not the best kind of person to be around. I thought he drew this at one point <laughs> and then it was many years later I realised it's a Jim Lee drawing and then he painted colours on top of it, which is like, eh, whatever. Um, so I, I certainly very gladly i'm uh, i have grown out of my wanting to be david cho and i did i grew out of that pretty quickly it, that lasted a couple of years um but this this kind of artwork this era of david cho was really like what i was about where it's just like putting everything into the artwork and not giving a fuck doing it quickly doing it hard just making the shit and that's what so there are there are traits from this time that I still hold on to today um, about not giving a fuck about just fucking doing the shit and slapping the paint down whatever um, but yeah I feel like uh, the, the direction David Cho's life went got really far away from my own internal feelings like because I wanted to be this particular version of David Cho that I was seeing in videos and uh, pictures but then where he grew and went on to became very separate from what I felt inside um, and uh, yeah so I and nowadays when I when I see anything about David Cho I go Ugh. <laughs> I really I don't care for him as a person and I feel like he has had like he realized he was going down some dark paths and stuff and he has tried to uh turn himself around but him and for instance Jim Carrey are two examples of like it took them making millions upon millions of dollars insane wealth and years and years of like bad behavior or, or toxic traits or whatever it took them that to then flip and be like oh this isn't what's important whereas like most people who are grounded in reality who have to work for a living know that's not important <laughs> they know the important thing is just to stick true to you know what is actually important in life which is just you could say you know love happiness and expression and whatever money and the pursuit of money is only going to lead to like bad times um, when that's all you care about. Like you have to make money to live, sadly, so sure. But when that becomes your sole fucking focus, then, you know, then you're a big fat piece of a fuck. And that's when you should pack it in. Um, I want to colour this, but then I don't want to spend hours colouring this. So let's colour this. <laughs> Fuck it. Let's go bananas. Let's colour some of this. We might not colour all of it, but let's, let's, let's just play for a little bit. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so David chose a difficult one because... Uh, well, maybe it's not even that difficult. Maybe it's just... I grew up. I really liked... Uh, who I well, and maybe that's it. It's also down to my own immaturity and assuming I sort of understood who David Cho was and what he was about, but then growing up and realizing that's not the case. Um, and now I don't really like him or his artwork, <laughs> whereas someone like Ashley Wood is just like quietly there making his artwork. He's almost constantly putting out new stuff, designing and making toys, doing paintings, drawings, comics, books, all kinds of cool shit. Um, and he doesn't make a big deal of it. He just does it, which is so much more admirable to me. Like David Cho's 
you know, renegade lifestyle, as so many interviewers like to refer to it as, was attractive at a, at a time. Uh, was very attractive. It's exactly, it's, it was all I wanted for, for quite some time. But, uh, yeah, you realise, like, I don't know, the, the value of that is minimal. And I just want to make art, and as long as I'm doing that, then, you know, I'll, I'll keep doing that. Or something. Which is to say, one of my very early influences was David Cho. But these days, I don't fuck with him. But he was important <laughs> in terms of, like, me just trying shit and just doing shit. I don't think I'd be in quite the same sort of art space that I am now, had it not been for David Cho and his influence on me. Um, which, you know, I, I can't say outright because nobody knows how things could have gone. Um, but I certainly... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I ascribe a lot of my, uh, I don't know, sort of artistic, my early artistic sensibilities to him. And like the whole DIY thing, just making your own books, photocopying them, doing whatever you have to just to get them out there. That's very, uh, David Cho instilled a lot of that in me. Very early on. All right, Jesus, enough about fucking David Cho, we get it. I just asked who your influences was. I didn't need you to fucking speak for hours and hours about goddamn David Cho. You did ask, though. You know, if you ask the question, you're going to have to deal with whatever the fuck the answer is. Yeah. God, this is messy as fuck, isn't it? Uh, 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 uh. Doing exactly the same thing I was wary about doing on the other one of uh, doing that green glow. But hopefully, at least doing it with a little bit more sort of sense and understanding of lighting and such. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe I'm just fucking everything up. Who knows? Who bloody knows? It's messy. It's very, very messy, but... I think this is one of those ones I will, like, revisit, and I'll do the outlines with the brush pen and make it all, like, look nice, very pretty, and... Maybe I'll even paint over this. Who knows? Who bloody knows? This is... I had imagined, when I started this, I'd rush through page after page after page and just slam out so many pages and get this sketchbook fucking full, fucking full of drawings. And instead, I'm like four pages in and I'm just sitting here colouring in fucking gun viking. Which is, you know... And maybe that's how how I want to do it. Maybe that's how it should be. Can I fill a, an entire sketchbook in this time? The answer, no. But it doesn't matter. Because that's not what that's not what's important. What's important is finding my grey Bosca pen. Where is it? No, seriously, where is it? Is it up here? Oh, yeah. Um, you may have to uh, allow me spaces of quiet during this episode because it may well be the case that 
I can't keep going <laughs> for the entire time. We'll see how it goes. Well, that looked good. And now it looks like a pile of shit. So that's fun. Um, can, can I comfortably leave it like that or do I have to... I feel like I should at least try and make it look kind of good if I can. Fucking it all up. It's all just fucked. The whole thing's fucked. It's fucked. This whole this whole idea, this whole video is pointless. End it now. It's not going anywhere. It's all rubbish. Stop it now. Stop it. I'm only joking. Ooh. I really, I really... His lips look funny. I was just going to say, I, I really had intended to just be doing like quick page after page after page. So I didn't necessarily want to be spending so long on an individual piece. But that's just that's how it's gone. So it's all good. It's all right. Don't worry. Don't worry, everybody. Don't worry. We'll get through this together. Maybe. We'll see. So one time I got a haircut. Uh, see, for, for quite a long time, my mum would cut our hair um, in the most basic haircuts possible, just because money. She couldn't afford to send us to the hairdresser, you know, every couple of weeks, every three weeks, even once a month. Like, you know, times were tough. It was not the sort of thing she could just do all the time. So she'd cut her hair. But then there were occasionally times where, uh, even during that time, where she'd be like, do you know what? Got a bit of cash. Go get a fucking haircut. Um, and was usually the case around that time. It was, um, you know, take your younger brother Ewan to go and get a haircut. To my older brother, she'd say, take Ewan to go and get a haircut and yourself, obviously. So, you know, my brilliant older brother would take me to the hairdressers, get my hair cut, and then it would just be like, just make it shorter, please. I don't know, just fucking whatever, I don't know. But then that particular brother was always into having, like, cool haircuts. And it really, really just looks so cool with his cool haircut. Ugh. Um, And then him and the hairdresser, stylist, whatever, were fucking, they were bugging me about it, which I still to this day I resent. They were like, oh, but try this. How about actually, you know, try something a bit different? Why don't you just go, you know, how about this? How about that? And, you know, young me, I didn't have the, the, uh, the fortitude, the will in me or the, you know, the strength to say, no, I would just like you to cut my hair short so that it is shorter than it currently is that's all i'm here for please just do that so young me was like uh okay i guess sure yeah let's do the the thing so they cut the top of my hair short and then uh buzz cutted the back and sides to make them even shorter so it wasn't quite like that haircut that most people have or most people that a bunch of people have in the last few years, the, the almost the neo-Nazi cut, where it's just completely shaved back and sides and then a bit longer on top. It wasn't quite like that, but it was a shorter back and sides and uh, slightly longer on top. Um, they cut my hair like that, and I looked in the mirror, and oh boy, did I fucking hate what I was looking at in that mirror. I hated it so much. I thought it looked atrocious. 
even back then and i couldn't have been even 10 years old but even then i was like this is not what i want this is not i don't want a style i don't want this style i just ugh. oh it's horrendous it reeks of like trying too hard it, it looks like it just everything about it was just horrific just not at all what i was comfortable with um so they they did the cut and then they like you know they turn me around in the chair they look in the mirror they do the mirror on the back and they show me the how it all looks and they're like so what do you think and uh, my brother was like oh yeah that's really cool you and then the hairdresser was like hyped like wow wow what do you think you know this is new for him it's a new experience and i i didn't cry but i wanted to i was obviously looked really really sad and i was like uh, i don't uh, I, uh, I don't i don't like it. i don't really like it evidently they realized i don't like it um and i i think i would have said something along the lines of i this is not I, i'm not happy with how my head looks right now um and then the hairdresser said something along the lines of do you want me to just shave the rest of it and i said yeah please and so she just shaved the rest of it that wasn't like where it started me having a shaved head but it was around that time and it was certainly a, a sign that i took to be like yeah i hairstyles like getting a haircut is not something i have any interest in doing it's so like really is the antithesis of what i care about in life and and how i want to be perceived um like oh, i don't know i just it's just fucking atrocious <laughs> Like, it's important that I be, especially, you know, earlier on in life, when I wanted to be David Cho, it was important that I be perceived in a certain way, that people see me and they see an artist, a great artist whose whole life is art. And that's somewhat important to me to, to, uh, to these, till up to these days today. But much less so. It's, it's less that and more just like... It's almost more important to me to not look like the opposite of that, to like... Well, not the opposite of that, but like... What the fuck am I saying? It's less important that I look like an artist and more important that I don't look like just some cunt that goes in every two weeks to get a haircut. Which is a very sort of like... Uh, you know, you could say it's an ego thing, and maybe it is. I have some ego moments, but... I just don't want to look like a cunt. <laughs> and for various reasons, to me, people who get their hair styled in a certain way are not always, I will say not always, but are very often cunts. <laughs> and it's all, it's all based in fucking, well not all, but a lot of it is based in like childhood trauma and uh, what I've decided because of various reasons that I don't want to be a part of. And that's more it. It's like certain groups that look certain ways are something I want to have as little association with as possible. Um, and having certain haircuts can make me look like I might have an association with the sorts of people who get haircuts. <laughs> Oh, God. As if any of that mattered even one little bit. I was just a kid and they cut my hair and I didn't like it. I really, really didn't like it. And they were so stoked on it. They were like, oh, it looks great. What do you think? I hated it. I cannot describe how much... Well, I can and I have somewhat described how much I hated it but Eey. Jesus Christ is that an interesting story oh I know I'll talk about that time I got a haircut and I hated it wow as if that's not something 
literally every person on this planet has experienced at one point or another. Oh wow, you got a haircut, Ewan. That's cool, I guess. It's really, really brilliant, Ewan. That's really amazing. Outstanding. I would like to put this in here. Oh, excuse me, that was unspeakably vulgar. Which is a bit of an oxymoron, really, isn't it? If something's unspeakably vulgar, how then can I describe it as such? Um, but I want to put this in here as reference. And then I can write, like, 2014, 2024. Um, but I don't want to glue it in, because it is, like, an original fucking piece. So I'm thinking... I think it would look better that way up. So if I, if I trim it slightly... If I take my knife and my ruler and I trim it slightly down here cut off this bit of excess paper pe paper pa pe paper cut off this bit of excess paper pe paper I don't know how a South African would say the word paper that's because I'm stupid and then take tight take cut off this bit of paper pe paper Take some masking tape, tape, masking tape, and cut off a couple of pieces like so, and then take the knife again and cut it into slightly thinner strips. This is my South African accent. I hope you all enjoy it. It will not be around for long. It will not be around for long. It will very quickly devolve into Russian. Which barely sounds like Russian. Um, oh, the Monster Energy drinks talking through me. I am but a conduit for the energy that comes from taurine and uh, L-carnitine. L-carnitine and taurine. And no sugar. And whatever the fuck white flavour is. Does it even have a flavour on the can? Monster Energy Ultra. Zero sugar. Uh, unleash the ultra beast. That's there you go. I'm a conduit for the ultra beast. <laughs> Watch out. Twenty, twenty, fourteen, approximately. A prox. Twenty, twenty-four. Definitively. Just so it's, you know, there's a... Look at that! Oh, fucking tin, tin, piss and shit! Oh, my balls are on fire. They're not really, but... Well, that'd be crazy. I, always, I did want to do more... Um, what were we saying? 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 I had a thing... Um, Spitfire logo, but it's a goblin! Uh, let's Google a Rugal. The Spitfire logo being... <clears throat> the skateboard brand um, it's like a little flame thing with like a little grinny evil face uh, it looks something like the, the, the actual one it looks like this it's got like a little flame head kind of thing going on this is a, a poor representation but it's, it's just a quick little fucking thing this is the Spitfire logo, it's got a couple of little evil eyes here and a big demonic evil grin going on. Right, that's basically it. It's red, Spitfire, wheels and shit, skateboard, fucking bunch of bollocks. You get it. It's a bunch of bollocks and it's all very bollocks. All in my box. I thought, what if we took that but then made it like a goblin face, like my, you know, my my goblins they're my goblins i own them i own the copyright to goblins copyright is a shit i don't care oh but if you had an idea and then you know what if it was taken by for some big corporation and they could... understand copyright was never ever made to protect creators it was never made to protect the people who create ideas and who make things. It was never, ever conceived 
for that purpose. Copyright was not the purpose of copyright law is not and has not been and will not be for protection of creatives and such. Because you know who owns the copyright to like, for instance, Disney and all that shit? Not the people who actually draw the shit. It's the company. Oh, but they take on the risk of the thing and they actually produce the stuff. So they they can suck dicks. No, they can't because that would be... Uh, they'd be lucky if, if they were allowed to just suck dicks. Copyright law is corporations saying, no, it's our ball and we get to say who plays with it. Uh, it's it's just an, a further way for corporations to exploit workers and to take credit for hard work done by creatives. Yes, it is possible to you know copyright your works and such. So there may be ways to like protect yourself against certain things, but understand that is not why copyright law exists it doesn't exist for your benefit it exists like basically everything else on the planet for rich people to not just stay rich but become ever ever richer um, and so copyright law can fuck all the way off some people have said are you gonna like copyright like get gun viking you know published and copyright it and then you know if it gets made into a film and all thing and and I do understand there's things like image comics where it's creator owned and the creators own the rights to the thing. And sure. But that's like. Um, uh, I can't think of a good analogy, but that is it's a drop in the ocean of like, OK, in this in this acidic, very harmful ocean uh, of, of copyright law, you are able to, you know, own a comic you made. But that's like, um, like I can go to the store and buy food. That's undeniably a good thing. <clears throat> the problem is that I shouldn't have to. Food should just be a given in the world we live in today with everything available to us and the, the mass amount of available produce and such nobody on the planet should be going hungry food should be just given to people i don't care if you disagree if you disagree you're a fucking idiot um at this point we are living in we live past the year 2000 there was a time when any you you couldn't conceive of the year 2000 they you know 2001 a space odyssey was like the most futuristic thing ever because it had 2000 in it oh my god imagine living in the year 2000 we do we live in ostensibly the future now um food should be uh trivial it, it should just be like well yeah of course everyone gets food and water and shelter that's just a fucking given obviously we feed our people and we house them and they will have access to free water anytime they not just need but want it they have access to water food shelter if they want extra they can you know pay for it and so the rich can still pretend that they're better than everyone else so they can have more water and better water and designer water Ooh, smart water what the fuck that is um but point being like so yeah i'm i'm able to to go and buy food that's brilliant i can just go to the shop and i could buy some croissants if i so desire but i shouldn't have to Shouldn't it have to be a thing that you have to do? Um, uh, uh, and so, yeah, you can copyright your your shit, but you shouldn't have to because companies shouldn't then be able to exploit your ideas for their own gain. Oh, but what if they 
you know, change it just enough to do the... What if? What about? What about this? What about that? There's a word for that. It's called whataboutism, and it's fucking more proof that you're a big, silly, dumb, dummy, dumb, dumb. Copyright law should be fucking out outlawed. It shouldn't be a thing. It's fucking stupid. See, I, I had the days when I used to rock a, a Circle A t-shirt. You know, the anarchy in the UK, that shit. A big, a plain white t-shirt with, I, I'd personally myself spray painted, big circle A on it. And I would uh, also like draw logos of like the copyright logo as neat and tidy as I possibly could. And then take a marker pen and jaggedly like cross it out just to show that I'm against that. And people would get so silly about it. Just like, oh, but what if this and what if that? What if someone takes an idea you had? and Shut up. It does, it's irrelevant. <laughs> it shouldn't be uh, the discussion. It's fucking absurd. I say that, but then you, you know, if, if, as if it's going to happen, if miraculously someday somebody picked up Gun Viking for a series or uh, whatever, a video game, something, you watch how, how hard and how quick... I switch my my mindset on that. No, I won't, because I have morals and integrity and a big dick. Oh, I could have said something else because you thought I was going to say dick and then I would say something else to switch it up on you. But then I said fuck it and I just said dick anyway. Look at that, it's the Spitfire logo, but it's a fucking goblin face, a funny goblin face. Uh, I Copyright law was not on my list of shit to talk about. That's just a bonus. I threw that one in there for you for free. There you go. Because that's how shit should be. Shit should be for free. Um, we don't monetize our videos because we can't, because we're not popular enough. Here on the Ewan Pooan network. What are you doing? I'm weeing and pooing. <laughs> Siddle bap bap ba doo. And that's that's it that I had the idea in my head of the Spitfire logo. That's the great thing about art though, isn't it? Go, hey, what if I draw the Spitfire logo? Or not if what if I draw, but what if this there was the Spitfire logo, but instead of its normal face, it had like a green grinning goblin face. Well, do you know what? I can make that happen because I'm an artist. I can create shit out of nothing because I'm the fucking best. And that's why I can draw Simpsons porn <laughs> and be happy in the knowledge that I'm uh, adding to the world and the culture by using my talents for, uh, for good. Uh, gone are the days. I do miss the days when I was. I would l spend. I'd spend entire days drawing Simpsons porn. It was beyond ridiculous <laughs> how much time I would spend drawing Simpsons porn. Because I'd draw like pieces like this big, huge orgies with all the characters of all ages. I'll just say that. Uh, Involving incest and animals. <laughs> Every character um, from The Simpsons would be taking part. They'd all be involved. They'd all be having a whale of a time. Fantastic. Best time of their lives. Um, so I'm just trying to get up an image that I had saved that I want to draw. Uh, and then I'd colour them in, all felt tip pens, yellow skin, various shades of yellow. And then um, I'd, I'd, I'd flip here and there between like nipple and and uh, bell end colour. Because, you know, typically nipples are, well, it depends, obviously. For a white person, nipples are typically pink, but then a darker skin, they might get darker or a brown and such. Um, and so... Occasionally, I draw my my nudie Simpsons with pink nipples, um, but then 
sometimes it wouldn't seem appropriate, so I'd use like a darker yellow or like a light brown um, to do the nipples. And I, I think it looked quite good. I think that was quite a good uh, sort of look for the Simpson nipples. Um, you know, it's these, these important things you have to sort of take into account when drawing Simpsons pornography. Um, and then I'd have the those big and you know in a school room with the the teacher, the teachers, and the students, and then some of the parents in there getting all getting in there, having a uh, having their turn, joining in, getting involved. You know, it's it's a, it's a group activity. Let's all get involved and join in, have fun. Yeah, it's just all a bit of fun. It's just, a, it's just a laugh. It's just a bit of fun. Um. And then I'd laminate them <laughs> very, very roughly. But you just get those rolls of like uh, sticky. What do they call it? It has a name. The 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 sticky cellophane sort of stuff that you stick on the. You know, you they make you cover your school books with it. They'd be like, "Oh, make sure you cover your school books so they're all like nice and neat and they stay tidy." Fuck that. <laughs> Mine are covered in fucking graffiti and doodles. Two days into the year. Um, Sticky back plastic, I think it was just called. I don't know, something like that. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd cover my large scale Simpsons drawings with that, you know. So they'd be wipe clean <laughs> for those purposes, so I could have my evil ways with my my uh, beautiful artworks. Um, without worrying about the integrity of the paper upon which they were drawn. <laughs> it's just smart. It's just a smart thing to do to to, to uh, keep your shit neat and tidy sometimes. Well, you know, these days, I don't give a fuck about my artwork. If it gets messy, it gets torn up, it's fucking, it's whatever. It's all, it doesn't matter. It's not important to me. That's not what is important. Um... Because I'm mostly not jerking off over my own drawings these days. Uh, so I don't have to worry about keeping them nice and clean as, as I once was. <laughs> uh, so that's information. <laughs> So I'll ask, uh, I'll answer, answer another question. Um, there's this question. Um, have I ever had a strange, unexplainable experience? Doesn't have to be paranormal or anything. Uh, now, I believe the person that asked this question may have done so off the back of my um, ghosts are fucking silly and I can't believe... Nobody seems to not believe in them in quite the same capacity as, as myself. Um, I believe that's where they're coming from. It might not be, but uh, it seems that may be the case. So the short answer is no. But there is a however for that. Um, I, there is one experience I have had, and still to this day I'm a little bit like unsure about what happened but i'm i'm fairly certain there is bound to be some simple explanation i am just a, basically unaware of what that might be um story time folks gather round gather round listen to me talk some more as if that's not the whole fucking what we're doing here um it was at college. I would have been around, you know, the David Cho obsession age. 18, 19 at most, but probably around 18-ish. Um, I was very, very punctual. Always, always on time, if not early, um, because I was worried about being late all the time. Especially to college, because college was one of those few places I actually enjoyed going. I was genuinely really enjoyed being there and I was happy to go there basically every day um which was a delight after the the absolute fucking hell that school was to actually be going to a place that I wanted to be at 
Um, so I was never late, basically always early. Uh, I had alarms and I always woke up on my alarms because I've always been a ridiculously light sleeper. Um, it takes so little to wake me up. Wake me up! Um, and so there's, there, there'd been uh, maybe like around those years, maybe twice that I overslept. And even then it was by like a few minutes. It was never so much that I was like horrifically late. One time I was late because I was just uh, playing video games in the morning and I didn't really give a fuck. And then I got to college and they said, why are you late? And I said, oh, I was playing video games. And, you know, because they liked me because I was good and I did all my work and stuff. So they were like, oh, cute. All right, well, don't do that again. And I was like, ha, I won't. And then I did. Um, so it was around that time. Again, happy to be there. Always early, never late, always woke up on my alarms. One day, I get up as normally as I normally do, um, and I notice there's like less people around, and I'm like, this is a bit weird. Normally, it's all like hustle and bustle, it's the morning rush. Um, and then I get to the train station, and I'm like, oh, yeah, if it seems a bit quieter, it's, it's a bit weird. And then I go pay for my train ticket, and it's cheaper than normal. Um, and I said to the guy, I was like, oh, well, it's normally this much. And he was like, yeah, it's like off peak hours or whatever. So like, you know, obviously what capitalism does, train tickets cost more at busier times of the day so they can make more money, obviously. So between the hours of like eight and nine, they're more expensive because there's more people traveling. And I was like, oh, okay, that's weird. I mean, I, or every day I get up at the same time. My alarms are set for the same time. Um... And then I get to college and I'm late by like two hours. And they're like, why are you late? And I did not have an answer. I didn't think I was late. Somewhere along the way, I just lost two hours. And it's like that. And this is the only reason it's it's unexplainable, really, because it's like. Um, if, if it was like the clocks had gone forward or backward or whatever, then that's an hour. I would have lost an hour or whatever, whichever way it went. Not two hours. Because um, normally I get to college for a nine o'clock start. So I'm on the train around about half eight at the latest, because it's only a few minute journey and then a few minutes of walking. So yeah, half eight at the latest, I'm on the train. Um, and I hadn't checked any times or anything. I just assumed, okay, my alarm's gone off. I'll wake up, go to the train station, get on the train, go to college. Um, hadn't checked the time until I got to college and realised I was two hours late. So somewhere, I'd lost two hours. My, I, I woke up on my alarm, I got up straight away. I wasn't lying in bed for two hours doing nothing that I know of. Um, but somehow... A fucking I, two hours just gone and I'm aware that with regards to like uh, alien abductions and stuff loss of time is a thing where like if you get abducted they can like drop you back to you it's an instant it happens instantaneously you don't even notice you've been abducted but then it's several hours later and you can't explain why it's several hours later because to you seconds have passed if that um and so that's at the time i was like i think i got abducted by aliens of course these days i'm like well no obviously i didn't get fucking abducted by aliens i'm fucking stupid but that said i don't have an explanation still for that there there's the only thing i could say is maybe I did fall back asleep after my alarm. It was one of those days where you wake up, turn your alarm off and just fall right back to sleep without even thinking about it, without even realising. Um, and then I got up evidently two hours later thinking I'd closed my eyes for a second when it had actually been two hours. Um, but it seems so unlikely that that happened. But I don't have another explanation, so... <laughs> I can only think that must have been what it was, was that 
I dozed off and didn't realise and then woke up two hours later. Um, outside of that, I've had no other um, like odd paranormal experiences or anything that like any crazy things I just cannot explain. Um, I've had no religious experiences, uh, nothing that like, you know, I heard this story when I was at church, which I'm dubious about, but even so I know weather patterns act weird and shit happens. There was a story that was going around the Mormon church about like how there was a tornado and it jumped over, like it literally jumped over uh, a temple. All this shit around the temple got destroyed, but the tornado like went up and over a temple and didn't destroy the temple. Um, which I'm, like I say, I'm dubious about that story, but at the same time, weather acts weird and tornadoes, you know, like move their wind, they go up and down and they move around. Um, also pretty shitty of God to allow everyone's homes and all the buildings around them to be destroyed, but then not his temple. Like, that's a bit of a dick move if you're God controlling the weather saying hey don't don't destroy that building that one's mine oh but what about all these like homes and biz small businesses around them around your your building and he goes ah oh, yeah you can destroy those i don't give a shit about them um so there are, you know there are tales like that about uh those weird unexplainable events that happen to people um it's quite a famous one about a kid who died for like a minute or two and then went to heaven and then he had like a religious religious experience and um they wrote a book about it his dad wrote a book about how his son saw god and it's proof that god exists because his son saw him and spoke to him and he has a message from god and this and that oh my god i can't believe that happened um turns out the dad made it all up it was exploiting the child's um i don't know i don't think the child even really said anything maybe like the dad said did you see god and the child was like um yes because he was scared to say no to his dad because that's how it can be when you're a kid um and then his wife left him and wrote a book uh basically saying how the book her husband had written was a sham and was all lies and it was all made up <laughs> so uh that tends to be like how i view most unexplainable events and things it's like yeah yeah you know people need money to live some people want a lot more money and maybe you can get some of that if you have a, a, a tale like that to tell like sure of course yeah your son died and saw god and god had a message and it just happens to coincide with your exact beliefs <laughs> What a coincidence. <laughs> I saw God and he was exactly the way I imagined he'd be. Oh, funny that. <laughs> there was no surprises. Everything was uh, exactly as it should have been. God was a white man and he said white men are the best and I'm going to write a book about it and make loads of money. And I think they went on like talk shows and the kid like spoke and everything and it was really, really harsh for the kid because... You're literally just exploiting him for your own stupid fucking gain. And I love that the, the dude's wife was just like, no, nah, I'm out. <laughs> this is, I'm not letting you do this to my fucking kid. This is horrendous. Uh, so bless her for that. I'm sure she's still religious. She still believes in God, but I, I say that with no evidence and, and you know, no, nothing to back it up whatsoever, but fucking whatever something give a fuck what, am i gonna meet her and be like oh sorry i didn't mean to lie about you on my podcast that a handful of people watched look it's like a goblin like revolutionary kind of it's a grot from gorka morka so they the goblins f broke off and formed their own little society in the, in the post-apocalypse desert wasteland of gorka morka and this is one of them. There's a miniature. I'm looking at it on, on screen next to me. He looks basically like that. And 
Isn't that cool? Goblins and goblins. Guns and guns and shit. Oh, it's all... It's like poetry. It rhymes. Thank you, George Lucas, for your contributions to... And this is other gun, but I drew it in a... In my head, this would fit here and like the gun would be here, but evidently I fucked that up. I got silly with it and didn't do it quite right. Another talking point I have written down is um, wanting to draw with the girls in the park. Uh, so I think it was just after the quarantine lifted when people were allowed out again. Um, which actually really bummed me out because I was really enjoying, like, if I take my walks either to the post office, which, you know, is for work, so I'm allowed, um, or just taking a, a walk for exercise, which is also allowed. Um, during quarantine, when there was just no one around, it was bliss. Just quiet, just vacant of any fucking people. You'd see the occasional person around, but basically empty. And it was so nice, so peaceful. So when the quarantine started lifting... It was shit. <laughs> like, oh, cool. People are back again. Oh, I love me some people. Can't get fucking enough of them. Oh, I love, love seeing people around everywhere. I hope there's many, many more people around still to come. And there were. Um, but then I guess it was... I assume they were university students. They looked about that age. Um, I guess the universities had been back open and running again. Um, and there was a small group of university student-aged girls sat on the grass. They had, like, a blanket out, and they were all, like, drawing. They had little paint sets, and they were, like, drawing and painting shit. Um, I only saw it in passing. Uh, they were, like, I was on the path. They were on the grass a little bit away. Um, and I thought how nice it would be to be able to go over and be like, oh, hey, it's really cool that you're hanging out and drawing. I draw too. Can I sit and join you people and, and fucking hang out and draw? Like, and that's it. Honestly and truly, no ulterior motive. <laughs> not trying to fuck them, not trying to see them naked, not trying to do anything untoward. Literally, just would be lovely to just hang out with some nice people who, you know, they're cute girls, so that helps. Um, and just draw and shit. And there is the part of me that could be like, you know, uh, I'm something of an artist myself. Um, fucking Norman Osborn meme, scientist, whatever. Um, and then be like, oh, here's my Instagram. Fucking check me out. Oh, i got so many... F I make comics and art books. I yeah, actually, I do draw nudes, you know. Oh, you want to model? Well, I mean, I don't normally just... But I guess... There was no intention of anything like that. I even thought... If I were to, like, hang out and draw with them, I wouldn't even mention it. I'd just say, I like to draw. Here's some of my sketches. Let's sit and draw some things. Um, and then later on, if they said, are you on Instagram? I'd be like, yeah, here's my Instagram. And then they can sort of find out on their own. I wouldn't bring it up. But all of, all of these thoughts happened within about a second. Um, and they were very quickly... Um, that, well, the next thought in, in the, the series of those thoughts was, no, I can't, I, of course I can't, because they're 20, 21, maybe, maybe even a little younger than that, and I'm a 30-something man. I'm not just going to go up to a bunch of random girls in the park and be like, hey, can I hang out with you? It's so, like, just just obscenely outside of the realm of, like, decent behavior <laughs> there is no way i should be doing that in a way you could say well you should be able to because they're just people i'm just a person we clearly have a common interest of drawing um so yeah why shouldn't i be able to approach other people drawing and say hey we have a thing in common shall we do that common thing together um but yeah, I, no, absolutely not. Just completely, <laughs> completely not uh, a thing I should be doing. I had the thought and that's where it ended. I didn't, 
I walked past the girls. I didn't look back at them. I didn't uh, spend any time, like, thinking about it. Should I? Shouldn't I? It was just as quickly as the the thought entered my head of, oh, wouldn't it be cool to, like, say hey and, and hang out and draw with these people? Just as quickly as that happened, that thought exited my head and was followed by, no! <laughs> I mean, yeah, it might be cool, but no, it's it's so unsensible for for something like that to to happen don't don't even think about trying to to do that that's absurd <laughs> um and so i didn't you know maybe i could have made some new friends and you know all my friends basically are online for the most part so it would be nice to have like more real in real life friends i do have friends in real life i don't talk to them as much as i should and a lot of that is down to me and my own fault um so if any of those are watching, I do apologise. You know, it's 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 my own fault. Um, but I can't just go up to random girls <laughs> in the park and say, "Hey, what's up?" Of course, you know the uh, what do they call them? The pickup artists would would have you believe quite the opposite. They'd say that's exactly what you should do, you, and you should see some girls and be like, hey, you like drawing? I like drawing. Take a look at all my drawings. Aren't I good at drawing? Would you like to draw together sometime? Let's hang out. And then, why, well, yes, I do draw nudes. Funny you should ask. Draw you? Oh, I mean, I don't normally, but I guess I can make an exception. Um, that's where, like, those fucking dildo faces would take it. That's how you get women. That's how you up your body count. And boo doo doo doo. Yeah, fuck off. <laughs> it's not happening. Um, I wanna this other one I'm drawing. He's he's got a, like a kerchief around his mouth, like an old an old school fucking like train robbing bandit. And he's got a knife in his this hand in his right hand and a gun in his left. But I'm thinking I might switch him around. Uh, for the purposes of this artwork um, and make the knife a lot smaller than it actually is just so I can fit it on the page. Kind of, and it's kind of fit it on the page. It's barely fitting on the page, but it's good enough. It's good enough, good enough, good enough, enough, good enough. Do, 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 do. Wouldn't it be lovely to live in a world where you could comfortably approach strangers and just hang out with them? And you know, that's how you make friends. How else are you going to make friends? How else? How else are you supposed to make friends if not approaching strangers in the park? But. I know who I am, I know what I am, I know what I look like, I know how I can come across. <laughs> There's no part of of, of me <laughs> that should be approaching people like that. It's just ridiculous. Anyway, I think mean that, that subject's had its moment. We can move on, can't we? Um, shall we more questions? I think we've got time for some questions, and then maybe we'll look at some more artwork by other people who aren't me. Ah, oh, imagine that. Uh, I should focus on myself more, because, you know, it's all about me. It's me, 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 bloody me. I'm the important one. Listen to me talk about me, for me, me, and the me. Oh, me. Not to mention, bloody me. Another question. Let's get another question on my list of questions. Um... I will say this, Biggie Z, that guy, asked, if I had to lose a toe, which would you pick and why? Now, I assume you're talking about my own toes, but can I lose other people's toes? Like, if I had, if I had to lose a toe, I'd lose your toes, Mr. Z. I'd say, all your toes fall off. Ha 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 ha. Now you've got no toes. Now what are you going to do? Um, I mean, the, the easy answer to that is just the little ones, just the, the pinky toes on either foot. Because the big ones balance you. They're, they're weirdly important for balance. Um, like, much more so than you, you might think. 
like if you lose your big toes i mean people lose their big toes it happens um by accident or you know through medical for medical reasons or whatever um but what the fuck was i talking about um the yeah uh big big the big toes are important and and if you lose those it, it can be very detrimental to uh staying upright so i'd rather keep hold of my so i mean that's like saying if you were going to lose any finger which would you like to use lose well not the main ones because i use them quite a lot sometimes for drawing <laughs> uh, the other times for masturbating a lot um and i use both hands uh, not sometimes at the same time and sometimes not but i'm i'm very good with both hands when it comes to taking care of myself in that manner uh which uh, more information that you just did not need to know but now you know i don't know why i'm drawing this in red pen i just thought it would look neat i saw the pen there and i was like oh fuck yeah let's do that make a nice change when it's something a bit different um so that's my answer to that question it's just where the little ones or well, the middle ones just because then oh, if i lost the middle ones then that would leave me with like turtle like teenage mutant ninja turtle feet or i'd have like two toes and then a gap and then two toes and I could like stitch them together and have like teenage mutant ninja turtle feet that's yeah okay I'd, I'd lose the middle toe on, on each foot he did he did say lose a toe but I, I'm gonna say I'll lose two fuck it uh, I'll lose the middle toes on both feet and have teenage mutant ninja turtle feet because why bloody not they're my toes and I'll get rid of them if I want to I'll lose them on purpose um, let's find another one. Uh, oh, okay, another another quickish one from Mr. Z. He asked, um, dream city to live in, or, question mark, like, what's my dream city to live in, or do I already live in my favourite city slash town? Um, to answer the second part first, no! Where I live now is purely convenience. Um, weirdly, and this was never, like, planned to be this way but it just happens to be um the city i was born in which i don't know if i'm comfortable with that i don't want to just live in the same place i was born um i was born here and then we moved away right afterwards quite far away to the coast actually to a nice coastal town called weymouth which is a lovely lovely place and i would quite like to live there again um it's not my dream place to live but um if i was able to live in Weymouth for even just a little while for a few years oh, that'd be really nice it's a really really nice place um but I live here currently because uh I did live in Winchester which is not far away from Southampton where I live uh I got a job in Southampton because it was, it was the only place I could get a job at the time um in a shoe store that I might have mentioned a few times uh And then uh, I, I moved to live here. I was very fortunately able to get myself a little flat to live in, a little compartment to live in on my own, um, purely for convenience sake, because it was closer to work. Uh, so it was just easier to move here. Um, now, potentially I'm in a place where I could theoretically live anywhere I want. But with me being a full-time artist uh, and not having a, a steady paycheck, uh, I think it would be much more difficult. Because I, I rented this place when I had a day job. Um, and so they had to like look at my account and see, yes, I have steady money coming in, so I can afford to pay rent regularly. So please let me fucking live in a place. Um, whereas if I went to rent a place now they'd see that I have regular money coming in, but very like slapdash, hickledy pickledy, and not necessarily guaranteed money coming in. Um, so I think it would be much more difficult to rent a place, which worries me a little bit, because um, there may come a time where I have to leave and then I don't know what I'll do. I'll just have to figure it out. Um, but that also does make me realize like, as much as I could potentially live where somewhere I want to live, 
rather than somewhere that's just convenient. Um, I'm not currently in a financial position to do so. Um, which none of which was was in the the question. Uh, well, I guess it was. That's to say, no, I don't live in my dream town. Currently, I live somewhere out of convenience purely. Um, I I also I happened to go to university here, so I'm I know the city for the most part, and I'm I am comfortable here. Um, but given the choice, it would be nice to live somewhere else. Um, like I say, Weymouth would be lovely to live there, just because it's a really nice place. I don't care for the sea that much, but it's it's a nice place to live by the sea because you know nice air and shit and i could stay on the beach and like uh, get a, an easel up and do some paintings while i'm there and people would walk past and be like oh he's painting the sea and then they look at the easel and i'm painting gun viking blowing uh, people apart and they'd be like oh well that's not what i was expecting but it's very well done so that's good um see i've thought about these things uh so it would be nice to live um somewhere like that it would be nice to live somewhere like wales where my friend lives if nothing else because then i'd be closer to my best friend the sam you all know him um but now here's a thing see i used to uh i used to really like just the idea of japan it looked so cool um you know futuristic and then you but still they have like the old parts of it which look just quaint and old and like they've got such life and history and character to them and it just looks so fucking nice um since then uh i've had this thing called depression which has sapped away like a vampire sucked out passion desire hopes and dreams um i don't care now I don't care about shit. I wish I cared about shit, but I just don't care about shit. I don't have it in me to care as much as I might want to. So when it comes to like, where would you love to live? I don't care. I don't have it in me to care. I want to care about something like that. Um, but I just don't. I don't give a shit about Japan. I've lost all like passion for those sorts of things. Uh, I, you know, there's lots of places that look nice. It would be lovely to live somewhere like Norway for copenhagen uh amsterdam it would be lovely to visit those places you know for one thing it, probably nice to live there wouldn't that be great but in terms of like oh why don't you um you know start making moves because there's no reason you can't move there people travel there people move all the time go live your dreams and do the thing and the baba -da boo but i just don't care because you know, I, I, I won't dwell on this. I will keep this brief. But I don't want to be alive. <laughs> so when it comes to where do you want to live, I don't. That's the problem. <laughs> I don't want to live anywhere because I don't want to live at all. Uh, so it, it gets a bit difficult Um when it comes to those sorts of things like oh what do you want to do with your life where do you want to go who do you want to be where do you want to live none of that zero to any of that a big fat nope i don't i don't want it i don't want it because i don't want any thing i want nothing i just want to fall asleep one day and never ever wake up again like i say i'm not going to dwell on that we're not we're not going that way <laughs> I, i'm saying that's how i feel because um, you know, answering that question. I could have just given an I could have just said, oh, Japan looks cool. Next question. Um, how was art college for you? Oh, that's a good question. Thanks for asking. I really appreciate your, um, your, your questions. They mean a lot. Which sounds horrifically sarcastic, but I didn't mean it to. I, I mean that. Um, how was art school, college, college school for me? Now, I've spoken about this a few times, of how... You can go to certain art colleges and schools um, and like learn specific things 
but like the best way to do it i guess would be to like apprentice for an actual artist and learn how to paint learn how to sculpt learn how to do a certain thing learn like a craft or a trade um most art schools or schools that have art programs don't do that they sort of assume you have a basic knowledge of the thing you want to do and then they just give you a, a, a repeating sort of or an ongoing list of like tasks to do that feature that thing that you like to do so for instance illustration they didn't teach you how to illustrate they might guide you a little bit like um on a certain subject they might say oh hey why don't you try looking at it from this way or from that way but for the most part for my illustration course at least it was we assume you like drawing so we'll leave that to you um here's the print workshop you should all do printmaking why aren't you doing printmaking stop not doing printmaking and do printmaking they did a lot of that um but they would just be like okay here's an assignment illustrate this magazine article here's an assignment illustrate a book make it a narrative illustrate a story and then you'd be like okay well how and they'd be like uh, you know go to the library do some research but it's like what well, teach me how to do this and that's basically art school in a nutshell it's um my, my friend sam he he left uh, art college see i, I in England, you get um, you leave school at 16. I was going to start writing notes. I don't need to. You leave school at 16, and then from 17, 17 to 18-ish or more, if you want, you can go to what we call college, which is basically the last two years of like high school in America, I think. Um, and you can do something specific. Um, so I did art and design. Um, some colleges, you have to do multiple things. Uh, the college I was going to go to originally, I would have had to have taken like three or four classes. So I'm glad I didn't go there. And also that was a rich fucks college. So I'm really glad I didn't go there. Um, and then after you've done college, you can then go to university, which is what Americans call college. Um, so Sam left art college early, our art college, when he was like 18 or something, um, because he was just, he thought he'd go there and like be taught how to draw and how to create, how to paint and how to do shit. Um, but they don't teach you any of that. They go, right, you know what drawing is. Now draw this life model with a piece of charcoal tied to the end of a long stick and hop on one foot and draw the life model. That's literally the sort of thing they teach you, which, you know, for a few minutes, that's kind of fun. But then you might be there going like, okay, but how do I draw the figure? Like, tell me, how, how do I focus on... You know, should I focus on light and shape or should I focus on line and detail? What do I do? How do I capture this figure as an image on a page? Hop on one foot and have some charcoal tied to the end of a stick. Draw it upside down. Uh, draw the negative space around it, which is, is a can be a good sort of technique in, in its own way. But in general, no. <laughs> um, so that's sort of how art college is. Um, so for me poisonally um i didn't feel i got anything from art college uh i only i went to the college i went to because it was convenient and i was able to just do art i really really enjoyed it because of the people and the environment and i was had the freedom to just be me and create and i learned a lot and i found out about david cho and ashley wood and and graffiti it was a big time for graffiti in that time so it wasn't the college itself. College was just a place I went to to do all the cool shit I was into doing. Um, and then university was... I only went there because I didn't know what else to do. I took a gap year after college and then I spent most of that time hanging out at college because I still had friends there. And then I worked at the college for a bit. Then I went to university and I did illustration because I draw pictures, so I guess I'll do illustration. And I literally went there because I didn't know what else to do. I had no real mega main interest in going to university. I didn't go to graduation because I don't care. I didn't go there to get a degree. I went there because I don't know what else to do. Um, so I have a degree in illustration. I didn't wear the robes. I didn't get the thing, the scroll or whatever, the plaque. Um, 
none of that mattered. I didn't care about it. Much like everything else, I just don't fucking care. <laughs> I was just watching a video of, of some like big name artist complaining, oh life's hard and I've lost passion for my work, it's not always easy to be a drawing. Well it is for, to be a drawing, ha! <laughs> ah, oh, fucked that one up didn't I? Um, I could cut and then re-record, but I won't, pull no punches, it's all warts and all, uh, penis warts and all, who gives a shit, I was gonna do a whole bit and be like, ah, oh, he says oh, it's, it's, you know, sometimes it's hard to just keep drawing and creating and producing, and then I was going to be like, not for me, because I'm fucking brilliant, I'm amazing, I don't give a fuck, oh, is it hard to draw sometimes, yeah, it is, but do you know what, no, it's not, because, shut up, don't be fucking weak, don't be a fucking little weakling, fucking draw and create, keep going, just keep fucking doing shit, it doesn't matter, fucking shut up, Oh, boo hoo, are you popular on YouTube and you make a lot of money doing what you do? Oh, is it hard sometimes? Shut up! That's what I say. I say fucking shut up. Um, shit's easy. What are you doing? Drawing pictures? Yeah, me too. Look. I'm doing it. I'm fucking good at it. I don't give a fuck or a shit. Or half of a piss. Um, what are you drawing now, Ewan? Well, uh, funny you should... Also, you know, I'm kidding, obviously, Shit does get hard sometimes. People think, oh, you draw pictures. It's, it's not real work. Um, when people say, like, uh, you know, no one says anything. But I don't, I, if, if I talk about, you know, what I do for a living, I don't like to consider myself having a job. I don't want a, a job. Um, and this is barely a job, so I don't like to think of it as a job. I, it's just, I just fucking doodle a bunch of shit. Um... Because why would I want a job? Jobs are for, for, for a bunch of cunts. That's who has jobs. Cunts have jobs. And they wear suits. And they drink Starbucks. And they go, mm, yeah, me too. A bunch of ball-ass poo farts. There's people who have jobs. Um, what's your dream job? I, there is, I don't have a dream job. I don't dream about having a job. I dream ab about needing to pee. I have so many dreams about needing to pee. I think that's one of my worst fears and has been since I was very very young of, of being out in the world um, and just desperately needing to pee but just not having somewhere to do it. That's why I don't like traveling too far because like if I'm on a, a mode of transportation that either doesn't have toilets at all or doesn't have good toilets. I like hate using toilets on trains. So I have so many dreams where I'm like in a place I don't know, just some random place, and I don't know where the toilet is, and I don't know any of the people there, and like no one's listening, and no one's talking, and I can't ask where the toilet is, and I don't know where the toilet is, and I don't know where I'm supposed to pee. And then I wake up and I go, oh fuck, I gotta pee! <laughs> Those usually come from, um, you know, the subconscious and all, but also they come from... Uh, my body needs to pee while I'm asleep. Um, there is, there's a sort of, it's not a, a, a joke necessarily, but there is a thing where people say, you know, if you ever need to pee in a dream, don't, because uh, I guess the idea being, if you pee in your dreams, you'll realise you're actually peeing in real life and you're pissing the bed. Like uh, a, a, a toddler or an older person who's lost control of their bodily functions. Um, that's always funny, isn't it? Old people oh, they don't have full control over their bodies like they used to because, you know, they're rapidly decaying. Oh, it's funny, isn't it? It's all funny, fun, fun. Um, I've never had that happen. I mean, 
yet and luckily and so far I've never actually been dreaming that I desperately need to pee and then finally peed and then woken up to find I've actually peed. Um, I, I, I guess I've been fortunate in that respect that I've not actually pissed the bed since I were very, very young. Well, apart from that one time, but you know, I think I was having a, a, a great mental crisis. Oh, excuse me. I was, I, I, I went to bed once when I was in my 20s because I was having a mental crisis and, and I was distressed and evidently that came out in the form of piss from my pee hole into my bed. That was fun. Um, I just admitted that on the internet. Oh no, now it's there forever. Everyone's going to know that, if that happened. Oh my God, it's so embarrassing. Oh, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I'm going to keep drawing this is what I'm going to do. You shits. Um, what am I drawing? Did you know, have you heard of the, is it the incredible world of Richard Scarry? The inedible world of Richard Scarry? The Richard Scarry's the blank world of Richard Scarry. Well, the busy world. It's the busy world of Richard Scarry. Um, there's a worm. There's a little worm. His name's Lowly Worm. And he wears a hat and he's got like a shirt and trouser and shoe. Because he's a worm. So he just has one shoe because he's got one foot at the bottom of his worm body. And he drives an apple car. Very much like this one. Um, so I'm drawing the apple car very much like this one. But, as you might be able to see, there's a goblin driving it and the window's broken because the goblin stole the car. <laughs> uh, goblin stole the car. It's my car now. Fuck you. <sighs> Big cheeky grin, a big cheeky I just stole your fucking apple car grin, you stupid worm. Eat shit. Eat dirt, worm. See, because the worms eat dirt. Because they're worms, that's what they do. Um, do, 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 do. There was no need for me to start this uh, portion. See, I've, I've taken a break in between this and the last bit you saw. You may have noticed an edit somewhere, I don't know. Um, yeah, my phone's got a charge, I've got to eat. Sadly, again, I am only too human. I have to take breaks and eat and shit. Otherwise, I start to feel sick and then I'm no good to anyone. I can't record shit if I'm... Here going, oh, I feel a bit sick right now. Or well, maybe I'll record it later. Um, there was no need for me to, to start this bit being all like, ah, some people find it difficult to draw sometimes, but I'm better than they are because I don't. But in truth, I do. But I just, you know, I fucking, I'll shut up and I'll get on with it. And that's what you should all do. Just fucking shut up and get on. You and how do you cope with, um, with art block and burnout I don't I don't suffer from those because I'm amazing I'm the best to have ever been doing and done it see look there's shattered glass in the window because he stole the car and there's shards of glass flying out of it that's what these bits are shards of glass do 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 Ooh. Wheels. The wheels on the apple car go round, round and round, round and round. Stolen apple car goes round and round, 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 round and round, round, round. Sh fucking shut up. <laughs> Christ, do I fucking hate myself sometimes. Um, I have topics. We can talk about topics. Or we can shut up and just keep, keep drawing. Because apparently I'm so good at it. 
Um, let's get some... Oh, that's got the green. I forget that this pen has more than one colour in it. It's a bit silly of me, isn't it? Do, 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 do. What topics do I have? Um, oh, that's a funny one. Oh, I, did that have a follow-up? Maybe it did. Oh, I forgot. I don't know. Um, so I don't know if, if it's... I've not seen it much around nowadays. I know I saw it specifically one time on The Simpsons. Um... I think they were watching, the kids were in school watching like the sex education video and it was like cartoon rabbits and then they were like, oh and then they get to have sex or whatever and all the kids are watching it going, ah, ah. I don't know how much they were showing because they like cut away from the screen and then in the back of the classroom, Mrs. Krabappel, the teacher, who I've drawn naked many, many times, um, oh, and more, um, that is, I've drawn her naked and more. I've drawn her getting banged a lot. Um, she was in the back of the class smoking and then she's watching this video of these rabbits having sex and she goes, she's faking it. Um, and that was, I don't know if it was at the time or just in general or whatever, but I'd seen that sort of trope of like women faking it in terms of sex um, quite a lot, I feel like. Uh, and, there's, and then, so this is something I noted down just because I thought it'd be funny to bring up. Um, I used to think that meant that, like, she was faking the sex. Because I didn't understand about, like, coming. Because this was, I was, I don't know, maybe 11, if that. Very, very young. I knew what, like, sex was. Kind of. Sort of. Just about. I knew sex was, it was a thing that happened sometimes, allegedly. Um... I should, because I was drawing... No, I wasn't drawing it that early. I was drawing all the Simpsons porno in, like, my teenage years. Um, but, yeah, so they people on, like, TV shows and in movies and stuff, they'd be like, ah, oh, she's faking it, or whatever, in terms of, you know... Orgasms. And I thought they meant she was faking the sex, like just in general, like all of the sex she was faking. And it didn't make any sense to me. I didn't understand how that was put. How do you fake sex? Because obviously if you're doing it, then you're just doing it. And you can't be faking it if you're doing it. And it didn't make any sense to me. How do you do that? I... And that's all I've got on that. That's about as funny as that was. I th may I thought I could get more out of that. <laughs> I thought that I'd, there was more to that anecdote, but no, I guess not. I I was stupid for a while, and then I realised oh they meant like when she finishes and she arrives at her destination. She was pretending to arrive at her destination when in fact she's somewhere else entirely. And aren't we all to some degree, eh? <laughs> Aren't we all a bit like that? Can we say all of us have uh, not quite arrived where we meant to at some point in our lives, sexually or otherwise? Um, I barely know what the fuck I'm talking about. Uh, apple car, apple car, it's a stolen apple car. Hey, you stole my apple car. Fuck you, worm. Die. Ooh. What shall I draw? It's so difficult to know what to draw and to not get burnt out and fucking... What do I do? You draw a goblin stealing Lowly Worm's apple car because it's funny. Of course, the part I haven't drawn yet is I need to get images of Lowly Worm up. Um, is this part over here where... Uh, um, how does he... What's his face look like? Oh no, he's going to look happy. I don't want him to look happy. Um, and then his hat has come off. And his hat's got like a little bit in it. Um, mm, I don't know what I'm doing. 
um, and he's got like a sneaker on his on his. It's too big. I drew him way too big. But that's the joke. See is, see lowly worm. This is his eye and his mouth. He's been beaten up and had his car stolen by the goblin, and the goblin's driving away in his stolen car. Oh no, it's green, not red. Fuck. <laughs> Fucked myself on that one, didn't I? It needs to be more red. We need more red. Oh, I can get rid of that talking point, can't I? That was a fucking great one. I didn't know a thing. I grew up and realised, oh, no, okay, now I get it. Wow, it's so insightful. I'm glad I watched up to this point. And, you know, if you're still here, if you've been watching and you're still watching... I mean, see how far you can get. <laughs> Maybe I'll give out a prize to, to the first five people that, I, that can prove they watched the entire thing. They need to give me... No, I can't... I don't know. I was going to say they have to send me a message saying what I was saying at these certain points in the video, but then you can just skip to those certain points in the video, can't you? And that defeats the whole point of the fucking thing, thing, the thing. That's funny though, isn't it? He stole the car and he's driving away in the stolen vehicle. Grand Theft Apple. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Um... I feel like it needs something though. Uh, just a bit, just a little, little bit of black, just to get in there. Just a couple of little, and then in, in, in here as well. So of course, I have days where I don't want to draw. I have days where I despair. Because I can't bring myself to draw, and I've got drawings I'm supposed to do. People are waiting on commissions, and I've been waiting on commissions, maybe for quite some time. And they message me saying, Oi, bitch fart, where's my goddamn commission I paid good money for, and you have yet to produce any single sign of? And I message them going, Oh, I'm just so busy, oh, so much going on. In the meantime, I'm just sat on my bed. And rocking backwards and forwards going oh, fuck fuck shit fuck just draw you know you can draw it is so easy you could do it in your sleep you could fucking spend 12 hours just fucking sitting and drawing and babbling that shit it's fuck piss easy just fucking do it and then my body goes no i don't really feel like it today and i'm there going fuck just fucking draw cunt just fuck it's easy it's the easiest thing in the world for you it's literally all you've ever done your entire life it's second nature it's first nature basically you put it before everything else in your life. It's the one single thing you actually fucking focus on. Every fucking failed relationship you have can attest to how drawing is the thing you've got that you can actually keep a hold of. And then you're going to sit here and go, Oh, but it's hard to do it today. I don't really feel like... Yeah, fuck you. Just fucking draw some shit. Draw a silly little goblin going... Brum, brum, as he runs over a pensioner. Get out of the road, Mildred. Fuck's wrong with you? Um, let's ask, ask, ask some, some questions. And what else have I got to draw? I drew that one. Goblin in Lowly Worm's apple car. Done and done. What else is next? Pigeons try. That's a good one. We'll, we'll do that one next. What's questions? What's questions? What are questions? Um, should we do an art-based question? Uh, oh, this person asked a bunch of questions. Some people ask just a fuck ton of questions. I say, oh, you know, ask some questions and then give me something to talk about. So I'm not sat here in silence like a fucking turd machine spitting out turds like a machine designed solely for the purpose of producing turds. Um, favourite and least favourite details to draw like textures or clothing versus buildings versus hair versus background shit um, that's quite a good one shall we let's 
Um, this could be a one pager, but I might, I could spread it across two pages. Uh, pigeons, pigeons. Where's oh that pen? Ha! Let me get a Google image pigeons. I know what pigeons look like, but yeah. Pigeons, plural. Um. So what was the question? Uh, favorite and least favorite details to draw. Like textures, clothing, buildings, hair, background, shit, etc. Um, my favourite things to draw are, I don't know, like tits and bums and muscles and guns. <laughs> things that rhyme like that. Those are fun, aren't they? Um, Sorry, I'm distracted by drawing a sexy pigeon. That's that's where I'm at in my my life, just in general. Um, what do I like? I don't know. I know my least favorite. I can say those. I'm, it's easier for me to say what I fucking despise than it is um, to say what I, I actually like. Um, I hate drawing. I've 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 answered all these questions before. I can't really say anything new. Um, well, I can. I just don't want to because it's boring. Well, it's not boring. It's just it's easier to say some shit that's so I've already. Oh, Jesus Christ! Um, windows on buildings. Uh, just buildings in general. I fucking hate drawing buildings like in comics and stuff. They're just such a god fuck a pain in the ass. I fucking hate them so much. Like if I had it my way, if I was just if I was gonna do well, I guess I do have it my way in certain things. Like Death Fist, I could draw all the buildings in Death Fist to look exactly as I want them to. Uh, there's no reason not to. And I was gonna say I could draw them if I had it my way. I'd draw all the buildings to look like um, um, just cardboard boxes, like in that Ed, Ed, Ed and Eddie episode where they build a whole city out of cardboard boxes, and then it has it's a whole thriving uh, industry of a city um, all made out of cardboard boxes. Um, uh, but that's how I would draw uh, buildings in my comics if if I if, if I if if that's how I should draw them because that's how I want to draw them because um, then it's easier because then it's just buildings like this and you draw a few windows and sometimes in my comics I do 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 that <laughs> windows. Does the pity is that showing up? Does that actually? Yeah, it's very clear. That's fine. Um, and you throw in some fucking TV aerials and shit, and you go, "Oh look, it's buildings." But you're supposed to like have architecture, and you got like these bits on the top of the buildings, and then the the windows are like this, and they've got like stonework around them, and then ledges, and then brickwork in between them, and then window panes. And little plant pots and little details and things. And then if you're drawing buildings far away, you've got to draw them straight and in perspective with hundreds and hundreds of windows. And it's just such a fat, fat, huge pain in the ass. And I hate it. I hate it so much. I really, really dislike it. Um, I draw shapes that represent buildings. And that's good enough rather than drawing actual goddamn buildings. I hate them. Fucking hate him. He's, this, he's not supposed to look evil, this pigeon. He's supposed to look like a Johnny Bravo type um, pigeon. I don't know how well that's coming across. Uh, let's give him those Chad cheekbones and jaw. And whatnot. Um, and I hate drawing hair. I really, really hate drawing hair. I've actually spoken to the person since they asked that question, um, and I, I sort of we happened to be talking about hair and drawing hair, and I happened to mention I hate drawing hair. It's just it's, it's a pain in the ass because my preferred means of making lines is like this, but that's not. Uh, conducive to good hair art. If you're going to do good hair art, you've got to be doing stuff like this. 
like hundreds and hundreds of times to get all like the flowing locks of hair. Um, but I just I, so I like to do my shit quick, just quick, fucking get it out, get it done, 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 get it out, get it done. Um, and so when I do do <laughs> hair, it's usually either. Um, and you know, I have done hair studies specifically trying to like draw particularly nice hairdos and, and things that, that catch my eye or whatever. Um, but for the most part, it's I'll either draw uh, like single blocks of colour, like Zach Ridley's hair. It's just, you've got Zach's head like this, his smiley face and his nose and his sticky out ears. And then he's got like a spike of hair like this. And then I just colour that all in just dark. And that's his hair, and it's just fucking easy, it's fine, it's whatever, you get it. That's why everyone in Zach Ridley has dark hair, just cause it's fucking just blocks of shadow, and then it's, I can call it hair, it's fine. Um, either that, or I just draw a mess of lines. Like, I really like how Simon Bisley draws Lobo's hair, and similar things like that, because it's like, it's a bunch of, like, crazy lines like this. Um, but, like, with a bit of form to it. And a little bit of colour, and it just works like that. He makes it work, and I like that. It's like a mess of lines, but with enough structure that it kind of works as hair. Because um, I don't just want to just fucking this. I want the, the hair to look... I want all my drawings to look at least some kind of good, you know. Sometimes it's difficult. Um, I do... I quite like drawing drapery. Uh, I like drawing crotch creases. Those are really fun to draw. I've, I've done this sort of thing before, but um, this is a shirt, and then this is the, the waistline, and the big puffy trousers, and some legs and feet and hands. These are hands, this is a head. Ooh, ooh, put that down, you un. Stop eating the paint. And then I'm here going wood. And I've got pots of paint. And I'm eating the paint. And I have paint dripping down my face. And I'm going buzzer. Um, uh, this, the crotch creases. You, you do, you, know, you get the sort of, uh, the fly, the zipper here, and then, like, crotch, crotch creases. Simple but effective. You put a bit of shadow in there, a bit of shadow in there, sort of carry it around. And then you could put a little bit more, like, shading in and stuff, just to make it look a bit, like, like layered and shit. Like it's cascading. I like I like drawing crotch creases, um, and I mean, like I guess it's not um, detail, but like skulls and those sorts of things. Just like shit, that's easy to draw, but it's simple and effective, I guess. I don't know. That's that's my answer. Fucking whatever. I draw whatever I want, and sometimes I like it, sometimes I don't. But no, there are things I enjoy drawing more than others. Um, that's I've answered the question enough. That's fine. And um, this should be bigger and puffier. This should be really, really over the top, big and puffy. And then um, get heart eyes. She's enamoured with this Chad jock of a pigeon. Ha ha! Ha ha ha! 
Uh, and then that person asked more questions. Um, art stuff I found easy that others find hard, and and stuff I find hard that others find easy. Now, an issue with that is um, I I can't speak on necessarily what people find easy. I guess I know because there's there's some typical things like. Horses are notoriously difficult to draw just because they're such weird fucking shapes, um, which they are. They're bloody they're like dogs and cats. You can pretty much get away with just drawing shapes. And then as long as the face is vaguely cat or dog like you go, oh, that's a cat or a dog. It's fine. It's whatever. Horses are not quite that. They're so specific and so oddly shaped. They're really easy to fuck up. Um, in my opinion. Um, but I, I know that there's that and like hands, everyone says hands are difficult to draw. <laughs> Frankly, they're not. Um, I find hands, I've, I find I've gotten particularly good at hands through several tricks and tips, which I might share. I might, I might just, just share. Um, not here, not right now. Although I could, it would take up a bit of time, wouldn't it? Um, so yeah, I, hands I find are somewhat, not easy necessarily, necessarily, but I seem to have an easier time drawing hands than I believe some people do. Um, and then as for the other one, uh, things I find difficult that others might find easy, uh, nothing, because I'm the best, I'm good at everything, everything comes easy to me, because I'm just naturally bloody brilliant and everyone else is a big pile of shit especially you just whoever's watching this at the, at the moment um this is this is my this is the joke for this this joke this is the the bit um Let's put it in a box just so it's a little bit more like a little comic strip thing rather than just a something else. We'll add in the caption afterwards. Let's so that that'll do for the pigeons. That'll do for the pigeons. Pigeons getting like all like ooh, it took you out, flibbity boo, flibbity boo indeed, Miss Miss Ma'am and Manly Ma'am Ma'am. Oh, it's gone to that point already where I'm just speaking absolute fucking nonsense. I have shit to say. I do. Don't despair. We're good. Um, and then, and then there's uh, this this one right. Let's do this. Um, Oh, it needs to be the other way around, doesn't it? Oh, I'll, I'll be drawing with my left hand, it's fine. Um, um, yeah, that'll, that'll do, that'll do. What, there's one more question. How do I deal with imposter syndrome comparing my work to others? Um, the oh, I get reverse imposter syndrome because I think imposter syndrome is generally like you don't feel like you should be in the space you are at, like you don't deserve the praise you're getting or um, or the success you've had or whatever. That's what I understand imposter syndrome to be in general. Um, actually, let me let's so we Google imposter syndrome. That's what smart people do, isn't it? They use Google to know all the things in the world. Imposter syndrome. Can't spell imposter. I got the R and the E the wrong way around. Um, occurs when a person is incapable of believing they deserve to be successful, or when they feel their success does not stem from their own dot dot dot. Yeah. Um, Feeling like a fake or a phony, despite any genuine success you may have achieved. Um, yeah, so it, you feel like you're undeserving of the success you've had, or whatever. 
that sort of thing. Whereas I have in, in reverse imposter syndrome, whereas I feel like um, I'm deserving far more success than I've gotten. <laughs> Which is uh, half true. I, I say that to be funny, but at the same time, is kind of true i do i do feel that way <laughs> um i do feel like i you know for all of my years sitting here going i'm the best everyone's shit but me no one's as good as i am because i'm the fucking best at what i do and everyone else fucking sucks ball bags um, which is true to a greater or lesser extent but um i i do feel like I could, uh, I do, I know I'm good at what I do, there's always room for improvement, always, everywhere, always, all the time, always, everywhere, except for me, because I'm the best, but um, I do feel like I should be more successful than I am, <laughs> but I can put a lot of that down to just like, having difficulty following through with things and like if I get a um an opportunity f for something that could potentially uh, have good results artistically in terms of like an art career um I have great difficulty making the moves to really make that into something big uh, I just sort of accept the basic you know win and then go ah oh, that'll do um, like if I make a contact, like cool, I know a person in an industry and that's amazing. And now there's potential to like use that and, and yeah, grow from it or whatever. But then I just don't seem to have the knack of, of doing anything with that and following through and becoming something great. I hate this. I think it's a big pile of shit. Um, the head, if nothing else, should be much like... cilia um, and then the body should be a lot more fluid I don't know um, I don't I, I honestly don't feel like I've really experienced imposter syndrome um, not to say oh I, I feel like I do deserve all the success I've had but uh, I guess I just feel lucky like I feel lucky to be in the position I'm in where I can at least to some degree live off of my artwork I don't feel like I don't deserve it um, I don't feel like an imposter in that respect I just feel like I should be doing more with it if that makes sense Um, I feel like I'm not doing enough. Maybe that is... I, I do feel that sometimes. I feel like I'm not doing enough. And then sometimes I'm producing so much work. You know, I drawings almost every day. Um, and then I will say to people, oh, I'm not doing enough. I'm not getting this done. I still haven't gotten this page done or that thing done. And then they might... that If I'm talking to someone, they might say to me, but you do so much. You you produce loads. You've done this, 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 and this already, and then you're also working on these things. And it's like, I mean, that's true, but I still don't feel like I'm doing enough. You know, I've got to do more. I've got to keep doing more and more. So maybe I have imposter syndrome in that respect, which I don't know if it even counts as genuine imposter syndrome. Um, so I can't really ha give a proper answer to that because I'm stupid and I just fucking babble for the last f f however many minutes. Um, how what was the how do I deal with imposter syndrome or comparing my work to others? Um, comparing my work to others is not necessarily something I deal with so much nowadays because, like I said, there was a time when I I wanted to be David Cho or I wanted to be like Ashley Wood. I didn't know enough about Ashley Wood to really want to be him. Um, 
so every, all of my work was like if it didn't look enough like their work I'd get really annoyed and I'd scrap it and keep going until my work looked like their work um, and you know sometimes I get that with like uh, maybe like if I use Bisley as an example um, if I'm drawing something when, whenever I have an idea for a piece I get a, a vague image in my head or maybe a, a really deep uh, detailed image but it's moving and so it's hard to like pin it down um, and then sometimes if I'm drawing like something with muscles and guns those images in my head might be very very similar to like Simon Bisley pieces and so when I try to get them down on a page if I feel like they're not Simon Bisley enough I'll get annoyed and I'll not consider them successful pieces um, so I still I, I sort of unintentionally compare my work to others in that regard if the work in question in my head happens to look like someone else's that I am clearly inspired by um, I feel like this hand should be up here now Yeah, it should be. This is a pen, by the way, not a penis. It's a pen. Come on, don't I'd be filthy all the time. I don't mind some filth, but you know, there's a limit in it. Let me get rid of this hand. Uh, so, but I, I tend not to, I do try to run on the basis of, um, my work is my work and I feel stronger and stronger almost daily that my work is more and more like my work than it is anyone else's. Like this drawing here, for instance, I'm drawing this purely out of my head of like these shapes sort of are kind of what is in my head just about and it kind of works for what I'm trying to convey I don't have another artist in mind as I'm doing this if it happens to look like another artist that's coincidental um, so I can't I wouldn't compare myself to another artist as I'm drawing this right here right now um, as I do feel confident that this is basically just m me doing my artwork um, Does that answer your question? <laughs> uh, I draw your titty. And then let's get another box. Let's get a box around this guy. This guy, who is he? I mean, we know who he is, don't we? Eh? This fucking guy. This fucking guy. Oh shit! This pen's running out. This is a shit one. Um, I have better ones. Do I? Do I have better ones? I do have better ones. So this is pigeons, and we write Trina because it's current meme language. Pigeons trying to fuck versus. Me trying to fuck. Ha <laughs> ha! See? The pigeons are all like, ha ha! Hey! They puff up their chests and they go, <laughs> um, and then me trying to fuck is me slouching in a chair going, Bleh, I draw your titty. I thought it was funny. Shut up. It is funny. It's fucking hilarious. I'm funny. Shut up. You don't even know. You don't know. What the fuck. Shut up. That's funny. That's a funny comic, isn't it? 
Pigeon's trying to fuck. Hey, what's going on? Doll face, baby bones. Baby bones. And then me trying to fuck. Oh, draw your tits, love. Get them out. Show me your boobs. I'll draw your boobs. This is young Ewan. Young Ewan had like super curly hair. Super curly, curly, blonde, curly, super hair. And he ate paint. Or did he? Or did he get accused of eating paint when really he wasn't eating paint? He just spilled some on himself. I wasn't eating it, I just... I spilled it a bit. I had shoes with rhinoceroses on them and it said stomp on the side. They were like little... Um, little shoes like this little sneakers and they had little velcro straps and it had like a rhinoceros here and it said stomp and I'd, I'd wear them and I'd always stomp around I'd stomp my feet as I was walking around and this is a paint can I never even had access to cans of paint like this if I were to be eating paint which I wasn't it's all alleged you can't prove anything. It was just like tubes. We had poster paint that come in bottles like they look like alcohol bottles, <laughs> but they're not. They're plastic bottles like this. And it's poster paint, PP paint. And then if you put it on any surface, if you put it on a piece of paper, it's like flat and matte and it's on the paper. And then if you do this, to the paper, it all flakes off and fucking goes everywhere, gets in the carpet and shit. Terrible, terrible poster paint. That's funny, isn't it? Oh, trying to fuck. Me trying to fuck. You trying to fuck. You trying to fuck. Me trying to fuck. No, not so much. What else we got? <laughs> what else? What else is there? What other things are there? Um, should we draw something sexy? Do you, want, do you want to draw something sexy? We could draw something sexy. What have we got? What sexy things have we got? That's a body. That's a nude body. Um, would that be nice to draw across two pages? Or just could work. If we get the legs there and then the legs sort of there. Kind of. Oh, I don't know how happy I am with my choice to start with the legs. That might have been a bad move on my part uh, this could all end in disaster couldn't it uh, boo -boo, little little tiniest little hint of a tummy I like I like the little just a little the little baby bump not a little baby bump literally but you know a little tiny little bump of a tummy and this is and then ribs here, a little hint of a boob there. A hint of a boob there. Um, 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 um. Oh, I fucked this up. I fucked this up royally. I really, this is bad. This is badness. Really, really not good. I should have stuck to just drawing like goblins and shit. Because then if I fuck them up, it doesn't matter. They just look like fucked up little goblins and shit. But now if I actually try and draw something like real, like a body, I fuck it up. It looks fucking fucked up. Ah, what a fuck up. What a piece of shit. What a dummy. What an idiot. What a baboon. I don't know why I'm ragging on baboons. I don't know why I use the word ragging on as if I ever say anything like that. It's not how I talk. It's not natural for me to speak in such a, a manner. Um, oh no, I'm getting all, all uh, hot and uncomfortable now because I'm being exposed for someone who can't draw for shit. I just need to. I see. You start with the legs. It fucks him up. The legs get too small, and then everything else gets fucked. It's because I'm rushing, because I'm trying to fucking do this shit quick. But I needn't. There's no need at all for me to fucking rush this shit. It's just, I could just chill and just fucking draw. Everything's good, you, and just fucking chill out. 
thought you said you were good at drawing Ewan. What happened? What happened to that? What happened to that Ewan? Where's the Ewan that's good at drawing? Huh? Huh? Um, legs and the feet go back there. Uh, well, yeah, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. It's, we can save it. We can save it. We can rebuild him. Robocop. Is it? I think so. I don't know. Uh, Jesus Christ. Good one, Ewan. Let's do a mega podcast and make it shit. <laughs> I have other things. I just I want to get like uh, uh, the basic bones of this done, and then move on to talking about other shit. We'll get to it. It's all good. There's it's, there's time. It's all it's all good. It's all fine. You're fine, Ewan. You're fine. Don't worry. You're all, you're okay. It's okay, Ewan. It's not your fault. You're fine. Don't worry. It's okay. Calm down. Don't have a panic attack again. Ooh. A uh, few of those lately. Yeah. Maybe I need to take off my sweater and cool down a bit. Maybe you need to shut your whole mouth. Who? That was unnecessary. That looks about body shaped. Where's the other leg? I can't see it. It's hidden behind the. See, now it looks like. So it's only got one leg. That's silly. Silliness. Utter silliness. I hate drawing... Uh, it's like I like having nude models. I, and maybe it's just I need to do it more because most of my nude drawings come from photos. Um, and so when I do draw someone in person, I get so like... Ugh, so nervous and I fuck the drawing up and it doesn't look good and then so I'm sat in front of a person drawing them and then they say like oh can I see the drawing and I'm like yeah you can but I do. it's not good <laughs> so I, I tend to use those drawings as like starting points um, and then use photo reference to sort of refine the drawing um, because as I feel right now, I feel like I'm just going to fuck it up because I'm rushing and I'm not taking my time and paying attention to like the shapes and the contours and shit. And I'm rushing this hatching because I've just got to fucking get it done and I'm not making it good. I'm making it shit instead of good. And that's no good, is it? No, you could even say, well, that's shit. Um, oh, and then faces. I always, I know, I don't... So I always fuck them up if I draw faces. Oh, this is going to expose me. I don't like it. <laughs> It'll make me look like I can't draw. And I can draw some days better than others, but I can. Oh, the arm needs to be up higher as well. Maybe it doesn't. Jesus Christ. One of the main things I'm known for is drawing nudes and then I can't fucking draw. It's because I've got an audience. I mean, I haven't, but I kind of have. I kind of have. Yeah, uh, goblins I can draw till the cows come home, till the goblins come home. Um, nudes I actually have to like take my time and pay attention to. And I 
can't just dive into nudes in the same way I can. Goblins stealing an apple car. There's differences. And now the head looks so tiny, and it shouldn't look so tiny. I'm going to fuck it up even more. <sighs> Sorry, this is supposed to be fun and exciting, wasn't it? I, you know what I need to do. Uh, give me, give me a second. Give me, just give me a second. Give me a second. Give me a second. Um, give me a second. We'll get there. Give me a second. Let me do some of this. Uh, that might have been a bad idea. Let's get some, get it, get, make it high energy, and that'll fix everything. Because then I can cover being shit with high energy, and then then nothing will matter. <clears throat> he says, "Well, you've got to give it time to kick in." You know, I was going to say, like, well. <laughs> Where's that energy? Well, you know, give it a, give it a minute. There's nips as well. Don't forget the nips. I like drawing nipples from the side where it's literally just like a rectangle, a little sticky up rectangle. Those are the fun nips. Well, those are some of the fun nips. There's quite a lot of fun nips out there. I really like the, the collarbone and neck area of the body. There's lots of interconnecting lines and shapes that are fun to draw. As long as you don't fuck them up. Which I seem to be wanting to do uh, today, right now. Uh, it's not one of my proudest moments. And as is often the case, the head is uh, a lot darker. It's a lot more red. I, maybe it's like a, a blood thing where a lot of blood goes. Also, is where a lot of sun goes. If the person doesn't spend a lot of time nude out in the open, then their head gets a lot more sun than their body. And so their body uh, appear, uh, can appear a lot paler than their head, for instance. Um, and these are some of the things I take notice of when I'm drawing bodies and then the extremities are, are quite similar because you might wear t-shirts quite a lot so the arms get a lot more tanned it's called a farmer's tan is when you get the uh, the t-shirt cut off point of, of a tan line on the arms um, so the arms can be quite dark as well and then very often it can look good if you leave the the breasts as pale as possible, um, just to give those an extra feeling of, of, I don't know, it just adds some like fleshiness to it in terms of tone and such. I don't think this drawing's beyond saving, I think it's okay. I think it's reasonably not too horrendous. I was having a nightmare at the beginning of it because sometimes I just start drawing the body and it will come completely natural and it'll just be like, like, like I say, second nature. And I'll just be like, yeah, it's just fucking drawing. It's whatever. It's nice and easy. It's do it every day. I'll do it in my sleep. Fuck, piece of piss. Give a shit. Fuck, it. I'll draw shit all the time, all every day. Like it ain't nothing. I don't give a fuck. But apparently that doesn't always happen. Although that said, there was um, there's been a, a couple of drawings recently. The one I did, the um, woman holding a rose, covering her vagina. Um, that took a couple of tries. Um, I did it. Yeah, I think I 
did three total, and the third one I was more or less happy with. It's still not 100%, but I was like, hey, it'll do, it'll do. And that's when I send it to the person, and I'm like, I oh, hope you like the drawing, even though I don't necessarily... Not that I don't like it, but I'm just not as happy with it as I could be, especially because if you draw something that you're not particularly happy with more than once, more than twice, you're not looking at it in the same way you would if you'd gotten it like right the first time because now nothing looks good and all you can see is the mistakes that you you hope you've managed to cover up at least somewhat you hope the person you're sending it to doesn't notice every single mistake that you you can see and of course they see the drawing and all they see is a cool drawing of, of them if it's a drawing of them and they don't see the mistakes because to them they're not mistakes they're just parts of the drawing but you're the one who's fucking sat with the thing for you know three four hours just trying to get this goddamn body right so i can sit here going oh this is shit why can't i draw today i swear i'm usually much better than this i'm way smoother than this i swear i can draw i promise i can draw i can stop lying i can and yeah, I can, but it's, you know, it doesn't always work out 100% as as we hope. And then you keep going, you keep going until you fucking get it right. You keep going until you get it right. Oh, what's that? It didn't go quite as planned. Well, then do it again and keep doing it again until it's right. You fuck. Keep fucking trying. This hatching is messy as fuck. Don't take this to be like any any kind of tutorial on, on hatching whatsoever because this is so incredibly messy uh, as far as hatching goes um, so please don't uh, yeah I know everyone wants a hatching tutorial I got quite a few questions about like how do you do the hatching can you do a hatching tutorial can you do a this or a that tutorial and uh, I am planning on doing a, a cross hatching video um, I want to do one of like cross hatching nude bodies, but you know, YouTube and whatever. So pfft. I might do like a skull because that's quite a good one to, you know, do a drawing and hatching and whatever else. Um, so that's that's one of the zillions of videos I've got planned. Although that said. Um, now could be as good a time as any, I suppose, to talk about uh, the future of this because there is a good chance. It's not still not set in stone. I'll see how I feel in the coming days after this thing. But there is a good chance that after this episode 250, I will be taking a break from the podcast for at least a little while. Um, just because it's getting to a point where... Um, the last bunch of episodes, seriously, like the last maybe eight episodes, every time I've recorded, I've recorded at least two, sometimes three episodes, um, and then finally had one I'm sort of happy to upload. Similar to as it is with drawing nudes, I'm just, just not happy with it, not happy with the energy I'm putting out there, not happy with things I'm talking about, things I'm drawing, um, and it's just getting to the point where I, st I still enjoy doing the podcast, but it feels like I'm doing it for different reasons than I used to. Rather than just doing it for fun, it feels like I'm trying to produce a certain thing as opposed to just doing whatever and putting it out there. So I need to work on that a bit. And just I think the best way to do that is just to take a break. And then at some point in possibly the near future, just dive back in out of nowhere and just be like, oh, hey, fucking more podcasts, because why not? I'm feeling it today. So let's just fucking do it um so that may be the case for the podcast uh but i do have a couple of ideas for like video series that i can potentially put out comfortably on a regular basis um I won't, I won't spoil anything here. I might drop some hints on Patreon. So um, patreon.com forward slash Ewan Ewan. 
That's E W A N E W A N. Patreon dot com forward slash this uh, because Patreon. That's why because Patreon. Give me some money, you greedy cunts. Um, yeah, I might drop a hint on there. I try to give uh, Patreon subscribers a little, a little, some extra treats now and again, because you know they are very, very kind, generous people that have decided to give me even small amounts of money. You can subscribe for as little as a single dollar a month, and that gets you access to basically everything, um, unless I decide to give the upper echelon subscribers a bit extra sometimes because you know if they're paying extra it's nice to give them a little 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 bonus um i'm still working on on working out some like really decent extra bonuses for them but uh, all, all in good time we'll get there we'll get there um but yeah i do have i've got uh, ideas i've got ideas i do have one particular idea for a video series um almost Again, I, I try not to get too into it because I don't want to just give shit away, but almost like a challenge series, an art challenge series, but nothing too like clickbaity or anything, just because I fucking hate that. Um, the amount of like art YouTubers who use all that clickbait shit, it's just fucking horrible. I can't fucking stand it. Oh, really? Will I not believe how the art looks? You have to pixelate it in the in the thumbnail because oh, you, I've got to watch to the end to see how it turns out. Oh my god, I've got to click on the video and see how the art turns out because he pixelated it in the thumbnail. Oh. See, if I pixelate art in my thumbnail, it's because it's art that's not allowed to be seen by YouTube's general audience. I'm not pixelating it because it's all oh, top secret. Watch to the end to find out. You won't believe how it looks. I... I hate it so much. There's something inherently like, I don't know, it feels greedy and dishonest. I don't know if those are even the right words to use, but that's how it sort of feels to me when I see that shit. Like you're, I mean, we all have to like play the algorithms game to some degree, to a greater or lesser extent. We all have to like, you know, warp ourselves to, to fit that upload what they want us to upload or, you know, not upload what they don't want us to upload is usually the case. Um, but it's when people go full bore and everything they do is specifically designed to, to you know, f work with the algorithm and, and to uh, optimise all of their, their clicks and the watch hours and the click throughs and whatever else. And it's like, just fuck off. Is that what you want to do? You want to optimize your, your videos so they get the maximum possible viewership and all the comments and uh, just fucking just make some shit and hope that it's good. And if people watch it, cool. And if they don't, whatever, make more shit. I just hate it so much. And it really, it does feel like there's an amount of dishonesty to it, where you're just saying shit just to get, you know, the clicks. Well, you won't believe how the fuck I did this in only this time. Oh, you won't believe how it came out. Well, make sure you watch to the end. Like and subscribe, buy my merch, check out our sponsors. <laughs> Zach Smith is another artist I consider an influence, though... Not as directly as others. I wanted to be David Cho. I tried to make all my artwork look like him. Um, Ashley Wood influenced me hugely in terms of like shape and colour and go to itedness and to just do it. Those sorts of artists. Simon Bisley actively copied his artwork in order to learn how to produce that kind of artwork. Similarly with Glenn Fabry. Someone like Zach Smith, his work is too... Um, separate from the kind of work I'm naturally drawn to produce. But there's a, a, a huge amount of um, uh, life in his artwork that I try to, to fucking soak up. Um, 
and there's various things here and there that you may be able to like point out where like oh that's something I've used in my art or, or it's something for one thing this is pictures of girls um he has another book called um girls who are naked on the internet or something along those lines um Zach Smith himself is an artist primarily um but also as of uh, a year at some point uh performer in pornography um most if not all of his friends are people are largely girls in the porn industry strippers performers those sorts of folks which to some small degree i have uh, that in common with him not all of my friends but i do have through instagram and such uh, uh, a good amount of friends that are dancers performers uh, sex workers of various kinds, pornography, um, only fans, these sorts of things. Um, and of course, I draw a lot of nudes. Zach Smith does a lot of nudes. Um, he also draws just, you know, girls hanging out in their environments. Um, I believe, from what I understand, and obviously nudes, um, Zach Smith considers himself a maximalist, which is a word I do like, which is obviously the opposite of a minimalist so where a minimalist would paint like a nice nude on a bed and you know an, in an empty space or whatever what zach smith does is he draws every detail or paints or draws every detail but like painstakingly um he does a lot of abstract work and that is very evident in like the designs and stuff so this is all like drawn slash painted the keyboard and mouse and CDs and like toys and the printer and even down to the photos hanging on the wall and these like you know iron hanging things and the the pillow covers and the, the carpeting and stuff the textures and things I also love his use of shadows and that's something I absolutely have stolen from him is uh, heavy black shadows for like objects rather than trying to like shade and fade just using just heavy black edges for these objects um and so it's when i talk about the the life that he puts into his work it really is um i, I so appreciate him painting just people in their like natural habitats where normally if you're painting like a nude model there's drapery and flowers and lighting and you've got all this shit set up but i love that he's just painting like this girl in a room there's cables and comics and makeup and playstation controllers a charmander plushy posters and photos on the wall and again he's taking time to like draw these posters and photos on the wall and stuff so every every mark he makes is part of the life of this piece which is the life represented in the piece um it's hugely impressive the amount of work he puts into these things um they're mostly again this is from what i understand from uh bits of like reading interviews and and hearing some interviews and stuff um he paints these on like big uh photographic paper where he's like gotten photos printed at large scale like large format uh prints of photos but they've not been happy with the photo so on the reverse of that, it's like a glossy, you know, photo paper. He then paints like black acrylic completely and then paints on top of that with um, really, really watered down acrylic paints. It's almost all acrylic. Um, and it gives these weird like synthetic plastic wash looks to it. Really, really nice textures and stuff. And he, you know, using fine, fine, fine brushes to do these like abstract shapes that represent spines of videotapes and things and designs of posters and photos and stuff um i love that it's like mostly black and white but then like colors here and there and pops of color just to like represent things i love the ghost rider t-shirt where the text is like abstract but you know it's ghost rider um and he like puts in detail insanely but then uses just like shape and suggestion for a lot of things he also uses micron pens i think for like these black and white bits um and i think some parts are 
maybe painted directly onto the white paper of the like the photographic paper but then uh, mostly it's on top of black and then white acrylic and then painting on top of that I think um, yeah you can kind of see if, I don't know how well it will show on camera but yeah it's like white acrylic on top of black acrylic with then really watery black acrylic to get like the grey tone in her skin and stuff and yeah the detail in like all these papers and the shoes and stuff it's just absolutely fucking bananas um, and one thing I've, I love which I, I go on and on and on and on and on about one of my favourite favourite things in art is drawings of drawings drawings of photos is, is kind of cool but like um, for instance I think this one in the background is one of his abstract paintings um, I believe this one in particular is Look to Your Orb for the Warning, which I believe is named after the song. Um, and so he's painting his painting in this painting. And, you know, let alone all like the stacks of like comics and things, which you can kind of see. This is obviously, I believe, New Mutants. And there's just stacks of comics with like, the, again, the black harsh shadow on one side and just insane detail but still abstract, a Posca marker there and crazy fucking details on all like just the stuff, comics and books and things, a backpack and all kinds of fucking bottles and things and designs and everything is just like crawling with detail. And he says that, you know, pieces of his work can take hundreds of hours to finish. And of course they can, because <laughs> this is a huge painting. This is probably A1 at, at smallest. It's probably even bigger than that. Um, oh, 38 by 29 inches. So yeah, that's huge. That's like uh, just over three feet tall, which is a big, big painting. Uh, but it's made up of these tiny, tiny little bits of plastic acrylic colour that he's putting in there painstakingly. And I almost like... I can almost ignore the girls in his paintings. Um, some of them I'm like, uh, I really like how he's rendered them. Some of them I'm not so much. Like, that's a really interesting, um, like, textures and stuff that he's got in there. And it does create a, a very interesting image. But I'm much more interested in looking at literally everything <laughs> around the girl. How he paints, like, books and CDs and bottles and cables and VCRs and shit. Um, with again those heavy contrasting light and shadow parts now this is a good mix of like paintings of girls and then like abstract just random shapes almost but it's it's color and it's design and ultimately this is one big painting made up of I guess lots of little paintings um, Oh, and there's some parts of it blown up. There's a cat. The stars on, like, I guess this is, like, I don't know, a duvet or a comforter or something. Um, and, yeah, just loads and loads and loads of stars, hand-drawn, hand-painted, piles of books in the background. The red, sort of red and black in the, as the, the background on the wall there is really, really strong and striking. Drawings of drawings and photos pinned to the wall and shelves full of stuff. Like his drawings and paintings are just impressive and they're really like nice and almost tasty to look at. There's just so much going on and I love his use of colours and the textures he creates. Um, this was a page, uh, one drawing from every page of... Thomas Pynchon's, uh, is it Pynchon or whatever, his novel Gravity's Rainbow, which is known for being insanely dense, <laughs> just really like densely written and dense physically. Um, and Zach Smith is is a little bit of a pretentious knobhead in terms of like art and how he talks and how he writes. I like his writing. I've, I've read uh, some of his stuff. Um, I think one of the books he's written is possibly one of my favourite books, but uh 
yeah, he's a bit pretentious, so it makes sense that he loves a novel like Gravity's Rainbow, which is just ridiculous in terms of its size and scope and how it's written and, you know, the the subjects it spans and stuff. Um, and so him creating one drawing from every page of that book makes complete sense, and this is them all laid out on a wall. Um, I have the book of those images collected, and it's... It's okay. It's not my favourite, but it's, you know, some of the drawings are kind of cool. A lot of them are like, eh. But then it's like his his deep, detailed stuff, which is really, really cool. This is a series he did called 100 Girls and 100 Octopuses. Each piece like this is, features a girl and an octopus, and there's 100 of them. And they're all in these like weird abstract spaces, but then they all fit together as one giant image. Um, and he talks about it being like a... Um, like an old Japanese print where like all the perspective doesn't match. It's all like on a flat plane, but there's kind of perspective kind of isn't. Um, and I'm not a hundred percent keen on like color choices and stuff, but still in terms of sitting there and painting the things, they're really, really impressive. Like the amount of detail he gets in these shelves. These are all like painted little spines of books and toys and things. A girl and an octopus. A girl getting things done to her by an octopus. And he does reference Klimt as like um, an influence. And you can definitely see that in, in stuff like this. In design and colour and things. Um, and even in the subject matter of like paintings of girls. With these like um, ornate blankets and designs in the backgrounds and things. Some of his black and white work done with like... Uh, micron drawing pens and I love stuff like this where like he's drawing each individual square that makes up this pattern instead of drawing lines to like give the impression of squares he's drawing each individual square which gives th this texture a completely different look to how it would if he'd just done a bunch of lines this way and a bunch of lines that way um, which is just you know whatever mental illnesses are driving him <laughs> are definitely on display with things like that. And then in this one, um, how does that look? I don't know how clear it is. I guess it's like a tiled floor, kind of, made up of loads and loads and loads, hundreds, I guess, of little squares. And again, he's painted the squares themselves on a black background rather than painting the lines, which would potentially be a lot easier abstract shapes a girl and an octopus a girl and an octopus i really like some of the octopuses and he does a lot with like texture where you paint super super wet paint on top of dry paint and it's all acrylic and then it's sort of like it doesn't because it's plastic it doesn't absorb into itself so it sort of spreads itself out and then just dries and gives these like kind of cracked textures and stuff which for something like an octopus works really, really well. I do like the, the gold squares and circles pattern. It's very pretty. We do like a girl in an armchair, don't we, eh? like the circles here. I like the mixture of like colours and then black and white parts and then the pop of the red octopus and the grey tone of the girl. It's really cool. These cushions are really nice. And this like looks like almost like it could be something like the layout of a city or something but as far as I'm aware it's just abstract shapes but there's something kind of pleasing about it. It looks like a broken up something. Um, and then the girl and the octopus. Very, very nice. So yeah, I think you can see Zach Smith has influenced me in a couple of ways. Um, but then largely he just does a lot of things that I really like. Um, and a lot of those things, I well not a lot, some of those things I only realised I liked. Um through seeing Zach Smith's work like he brought some things to light in my head where I'm like oh shit I actually really like this um, but I don't consider him as direct an influence as like you know a Bisley or a, 
an Ashley Wood or something like that. Um, but he's a good and he's a good egg. I've got to go pee. That's uh, one of the, the I guess, the, the downsides of the energy drinks as opposed to the, the caffeine tablets and such. Is if you're taking the tablets, you don't need to piss every five minutes because you're taking on so many liquids. Um, at least I'm not pissing the bed, eh? Ugh, there's always that. Oh, I imagine. Can you imagine? Oh, being an adult and pissing the bed. Oh, the shame you'd feel. I mean, at least if it happened nowadays, you know, I live alone, so it's not like, you know, I wouldn't be found out. I could keep it a secret. Maybe I have have done it and I'm not telling anyone because I don't want to be ashamed if I did a wee-wee in bed bed. Uh, uh. Um... I, would, I hadn't planned on doing it this way, but I think, um, you know, based on the book I just looked at, I might have to include an octopus in this drawing. I might have to Google image up a pick of an octopus and draw an octopus. I've been drawing octopuses a little bit lately in the, the recent sketchbook, which is finished, and there's a video up on that, and you can go and look at a sketchbook. Um... So I might, uh, I might do that then. Shall we might do that? Yeah, let's might do that, eh? Hey, yeah, hey, let's do it. Hey, go, hey, let's fucking. Let's do that. Let's Google up imposter syndrome. I wrote imposter syndrome because I'm stupid. Octopus. I can spell that at least, that's something, isn't it? Octopus Energy, the UK's most awarded energy supplier. Not quite what I was going for. Thank you very much. Octopus, octopus. Swibbly, bibbly, octopus. Now you may be thinking, do you really need reference for an octopus? Surely you can just draw an octopus, you and I mean, what is it, a fucking a tit? With a bunch of tentacles. That's basically all an octopus is. Surely you, of all people, Mr. Masterful Artist, Master of his craft, 10,000 hours and then some, surely you can just draw an octopus. And yeah, obviously I can. I can draw anything. I'll do it all. Oh, I'm getting the, the, the burpy burps from... Down in more goddamn monster energy drink. It's gonna make me sick. I felt a bit sick earlier. Um, I think I need to <laughs> slow down a bit on that. Maybe maybe eat some food as well. Um, that's a novel idea, isn't it? How are you feeling? Terrible. Have you eaten? No. Maybe I ought to. Maybe I should. Maybe I should ought to. Should that. Jesus, I've done nothing for the last few minutes. I've been Googling octopuses and shit. Give me a fucking minute. Now, I don't want it to be just straight up eating her out, but I might put it in that general direction, yeah. Um, and it does have a nice sort of, like, curve down here. Um... Tentacles, tentacles, <laughs> tentacles. This one comes up here. I like it when they make little spirals at the end of their tentacles. It's cute. There's something uh, visually pleasing about it. Look, I'll just give it the two arms. That dude, that's enough. How many do you need? Eight. Hey, calm down. You don't need that many arms, surely. You've got enough. Plenty to go around. Give over. God. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. And that's true basically any any given time, any given day. I don't really know what I'm doing. But then do any of us really 
know what we're doing. Uh, no, no we don't. The end. <sighs> um, should I talk about something? <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah. Fucking hell, you, Jesus. It's... <sighs> we, we're getting there. Don't, just shut up. This is going to work. It's fine. Also, that's what I was going to say. Uh, you know, after all of my, um, my, my bitching and complaining about how, the dishonesty and the lack of integrity and using clickbait and all that, all that shit, and then you watch me have this video at like as you know titled oh my god can i fill an entire sketchbook in 12 hours challenge oh make sure you watch to the end you won't believe what happens oh it's it's gonna be a big one a good one a good big one stay tuned make sure you watch like and subscribe for more watch me do all that shit watch me be a fucking sellout Zero integrity, zero morals. I'm just in it for the clicks. I just want my my likes and my shares and some comments saying how brilliant I am. All oh, your drawings are really good, you and are they? Are they only really good? Are they not amazing, fantastic, and at the same time whimsical and full of wonder? Are they just really good? Is that all I've achieved in my life? I'm really good. What a waste. What a fucking waste. Cunt. Let's answer another question. Do, 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 do. Um, how long did it take to refine my style? Now... I have made videos specifically about this in the past. Um, style, true style, isn't something you... I mean, maybe you can actively work on it, but you shouldn't... You should never try to like work on your style or refine your style because the whole point of a style... Style is just what happens when you just draw something you're going to be you're always going to be inspired and influenced by outside inspirations and influences because that's just how it works um we are all products of our environments nature and nurture and all that uh, bollocks um but your style comes from when you stop trying to be your favorite artist and you just sit and draw or you just sit and paint and whatever naturally comes out mistakes and all that's your style so it's not something you can really like put a a, 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 a what am i trying to say you can't put a marker on it and say it's taken me this long to refine my style because your style is almost constantly shifting and constantly evolving and it doesn't come by choice it comes by literally choosing not to try to have a style and then your style just shows up which it does it, it well i was going to say it bugs me it doesn't necessarily bug me when you know younger artists complain about oh, i can't find my style i don't know how to how do i find my style where do i get a style it's like you don't find a style you just keep drawing and drawing and then stop trying to have a style and then your style will just happen on its own just draw all the time just keep drawing all the time and then sooner or later someone will say oh i really like your style and you'll look at them like what what the fuck are you talking about this is just some shit and then you'll look at your drawings and you'll be like oh actually i can see what they're talking about there's a really good style going on here i Done it! I've broken through! I've got the style. Style unlocked. Achievement gained. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Zelda getting an item noise. Um, 
so I mean, my style potentially, theoretically, has taken me the best part of thirty plus years to refine, and I'm still refining it because. But I'm refining it by not refining it, refining it by just trying to keep drawing and keep going and keep making shit. Um, and every thing, every single bit of, of thing I make is one more, like, step towards my style, hopefully. Unless I spend my time copying other people's artwork for, you know, whatever benefit, be it monetary or, 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 or uh, just clicks or, or shares or whatever. My style's taken my entire life to refine in that respect, I guess. There's me going, you can't put a timer on it, and then saying, oh, it's taken approximately this long to refine my style. Um, because your style isn't, like, I don't know. Because my style, I can say my style is, you can, well, I can say, you can say, we can all say my style is this, like, cross-hatched, pink and purple, ballpoint, you know, sometimes well-rendered serious, sometimes cartoony and fun style. I don't even know what you, you'd, how you'd really define my style. But then... I have no idea what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> style comes... Maybe not, I was going to say second, but maybe not even second. Style is something you shouldn't think about or worry about. Sometimes you do, you just do. But then you should think about the style of a particular image as opposed to your style overall. Just do whatever works at the time for the image you want to create. As opposed to, I want this image to reflect my style. I want it to be more me than any other piece of artwork could possibly be. Because then you're focusing on the wrong thing. You should focus more on just trying to draw cool shit. And then if you forget everything else and just worry about having some shit that's cool, then that'll just be your cool style coming out through that, hopefully. Hopefully. Unless you are just shit, in which case there's no hope for you. And uh, and that's that. Then tough shit. You're just always going to be a failure. <laughs> Uh, you know, it happens. It happens to the best of us. Some of us, not me, obviously. I'm. Brilliant. Some of us, are, uh, you know, we don't always. We're not always successful. I I worry about my style still every now and again. I worry that like, I'm pigeonholing myself by using uh, the ballpoints and only drawing certain things. I worry I don't draw like enough animals and things like that. Maybe I need to draw more like cartoon animals, more realistic animals put more effort into more things uh, a wider variety of subject matters as opposed to I feel like I draw like four things some of them I draw well some less well and that's about it and then I'm stopping myself from maybe achieving the artistic goals that I could achieve because I'm stuck in whatever world of the few things I draw Because when you get good at drawing like a particular thing, it becomes hard to draw anything else because you worry that if you draw something you're not necessarily brilliant at drawing, it will look shit and then that makes you not want to try drawing the, the thing. Um, but I don't know where I was going with that either. <laughs> Got these questions. God, I don't know. Fucking uh, eight weeks. It takes eight weeks to refine your style. There. Now go and spend eight weeks working on your style and then you'll get it. Wax on, wax off. Catch a fly with a, some chopsticks. Win the competition. Beat the bully. Get the girl. Catch a debilitating disease. And then, you know fucking die and go away and leave leave me alone <laughs> stop asking such fucking asinine questions no they're good questions i just i'm not entirely sure how to answer all of them 
Um, how do I answer a question like that? How long does it take to refine my style? Because that's so ob objective, subject, subjective. It's so subjective, style. And there's every chance that like what I think is my style, someone else might think something completely different is my style. Um, and then we've, uh, then I have to murder that person because they're trying to spread lies about me on the internet of all places. We all know how that ends. Um, I hate drawing suckers on octopuses. I wish they didn't have them. <laughs> octopuses would be so much easier to draw if they didn't have all these goddamn shapes on their bodies. There you go, there's another thing to the list of things I hate drawing. I hate, I hate drawing anything, like, that's, that's one way uh, I differ hugely from uh, Zach Smith, um, is he indulges greatly in detail over, like, almost everything else. Um, whereas I draw... If I draw one of something, I'm like, okay. If I draw two of something, I'm like, that's enough. I'm done. I've drawn so many of this thing, and now I'm done. That's why I like... I don't like doing series. I had that discussion with... Um, so I had a, a, what I can safely say was a failed exhibition um, back in Winchester when I lived there. And it's like... It was a cafe slash gallery owned by a guy who just had money and so he bought this failing coffee shop turned it into like a gallery space for local artists and whatever which was cool and you know uh, I was taking part in like several youth workshops which used the downstairs area of the cafe to like do things to meet and, and hang out and stuff um, and so he was became aware of me and that I did art and stuff and then it was a thing and then, um and I did some painting on the walls and he said you know as part of payment for that he would have set me up with an exhibition that I don't have to pay for because normally you've got to pay like like I say to rent the gallery space or whatever and he said you know part of your payment for painting on these walls can be to basically waive that renting of the space payment um he probably assumed the exhibition i have because i'm such a brilliant artist would make some kind of money and so him waiving that fee wouldn't really matter in the long run because he'd make the money back selling artwork i sold one piece to a friend for not very much money and it was cash in hand <laughs> so as far as the gallery is concerned i sold nothing um because I didn't tell him about that one sale. I just took the piece home and then gave it to the person after they gave me some, just like li literally like 20 quid. Um, see, because it was like a, a graffiti exhibition because I was very, very much a graffiti writer at the time. Uh, and so he was like, yeah, he wants it to be like edgy and street and cool and whatever. And that's just like, he was you know, the sort of person who's a fan of Banksy who knows nothing about graffiti. Um, yeah, so thinking graffiti. He has a, sort of a certain idea of what graffiti is, uh, which is just an incorrect idea, really. Um, and Winchester is not a place that wants to see a graffiti exhibition unless it happens to be fucking Banksy or someone. They don't give a shit about a local graffiti writer having an exhibition. Um, so that exhibition, as I say, fucking failed. And now I can't remember why I even started talking about that. At all. I have no recollection of why the fuck I brought that up. Um, <laughs> what the goddamn was I talking about? Jesus. Exhibitions, failed exhibitions. I'm 
trying to think why I brought that up. I was going somewhere with it. I had a point that I wanted to, to make. And the exhibition failed. And what did I learn as a result of that? I have less than zero idea what the fuck I was talking about. I don't know why I brought that up. I absolutely started talking about that exhibition for a reason. And maybe some of you now are like, not yelling at the screen, I, I doubt you're that invested, but you might be like, it's probably this, Ewan, it's probably this, but I'd have to like stop the recording, listen to what I was talking about, and then start recording again, just so I could understand what the fuck I was talking about. <laughs> okay, I did actually stop the recording, uh, and then listen to it to figure out what the fuck it was I was talking about. And I realised what the fuck it was I was talking about. So the gallery owner, because um, I had a bunch of pieces that were just like, not random pieces in this graffiti exhibition, this failed graffiti exhibition. Um, but he was uh, worried, and maybe rightly so, that like, they were too disparate and eclectic, and there wasn't much, um, other than them all being done by me, and them all being at least roughly if not directly on the theme of graffiti um he was worried they didn't have enough like connection between the pieces so he was near constantly talking about how i should work on like a series of pieces and i did have this one kind of series that was just like drawings of funny little guys and each one had like a different set of words with it like just different things that like the guys were saying or whatever like a guy in a box saying like the world is not enough or some shit like that um not exactly like that but basically like that just fucking dumb art student shit um and he loved those because he's fucking just more money than sense um so yeah he was constantly saying how you you should do a series of this and a series of like that and a series 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 but and this is where I was going with all of that. I hate doing series of, of pictures because for the most part, if I do one, I'm done. And I don't, I don't need to do any more now. I say that and then I draw 8 million pictures of butts. But then that's different, isn't it? That's not like a, a full, like a, a series of, of grand paintings or anything. That's just a bunch of drawings of butts. They're all separate i don't do them all at the same time with the intention of them being part of a series um it's different shut up uh in general if i draw like a thing i'm happy to just leave it as the thing rather than draw you know a, a vast series of things and then i have my armchair series i'm actively working on but Shut up, I'm allowed to contradict myself. Get fucked. <laughs> do what I want. Fuck you, I won't do what you tell me. Yeah. Just another little octopus in there, why not? Why not throw another little little guy in there? Another little fella. What was I going to draw next? I had an idea. Shall we get up a picture of the person I want to draw? Uh, <laughs> let's see how well this works. It might not work at all, but it might. So let's find out. Sketchy, sketch. Sketchy lines, do these lines all the times. Um, God, what am I doing? 
literally no idea. Uh, I was going to draw Wolverine, but then I don't feel like maybe I don't want him shouting. Can you see what I was doing? His eyes, nose, and then a screaming mouth. And then it would have been like big like Wolverine mask head there. Um, fuck it, let's start again on this page. Um, I want to draw a picture of Wolverine. That's I'm going somewhere with this drawing of Wolverine, but for now I just need to get out a drawing of Wolverine. Maybe make it like Judge Dredd face, that fucking scowl that Judge Dredd constantly has on his face. Oh, what am I doing? I suddenly can't draw a fucking a, a person's face. What's going on? I can't draw a new body. I can't draw a face. I can't draw shit. Is it because is it I'm sat at an angle? What the fuck is happening? Jesus Christ. Maybe I've been... This is what happens if I'm going too long. Doing too much. Fuck me. I, I think I need to chill. <laughs> we all know how I feel about construction lines, but I feel like right now I just need to construction line my way out of some fucking hole I've just fallen into where I can't draw a basic fucking face. I feel like I'm just doing the exact same things I was doing a minute ago. Okay, no, I think I think this is workable. We can we can work this. Yeah, okay, this is, this is, okay, we, we, we're okay, we're okay. It's all very good, and it's all okay, because it's all very good and okay. Right. You can see what's going on now, can't you? It's starting to make a bit more sense. Isn't it funny how Wolverine's mask looks really similar to Batman's mask at certain times, in certain ways? No, I guess it's not that funny. Um, I don't even know... I've never really gotten a full grasp on, like... Like, drawing Wolverine's mask from an angle. I don't know where these bits should really go. Um, and I need this to be at least somewhat good because the point I was trying to get to requires this drawing to be uh, at least passable. <laughs> uh, it doesn't need to be the best drawing in the world, but it needs to have something going for it. Okay, I think I, I get, I'm happy with that shape. That's yeah, no, looking at it in the camera, I, that's that's a, a pretty cool shape. I think I'm I'm basically happy with that. And I think now we can just spend time fucking about with like hatching and stuff. So that's that's all right. That's another thing I quite like doing is little like lumps and bumps in fleshy textures, like in the chin and under the lips and stuff. I like hatching in those little bits of like flesh. Those are quite fun to do. Uh, 
to answer that question somewhere later down the line. Um, speaking of questions, uh... okay, um, what do I struggle to draw? Um, apparently, bodies when I'm being watched. Uh, I struggle to draw... See, the thing is, the things I, if there are things I struggle to draw, I, I actively just don't draw them. I stay away from them, uh, which is not at all the right thing to do. If you struggle to draw something, you should draw it more often uh, until you don't struggle to draw it anymore. That's how you get good at drawing shit. But I don't take my own advice, so... Pfft. What do I struggle to draw? Um, there are, there's, there's got to be things that I struggle to draw. What do I struggle to draw? <laughs> Just answer the fucking question, you. It's not that hard, surely. Um, I struggle to draw. Cars? Because I, I care so little about cars, in general, like IRL. I just don't give a fuck for cars. They're literally boxes. It's a box you sit in to go from one place to another. That's all it is. But they've been made out to be this huge status symbol, and there's all cultures around them, and they're like people fucking gush over cars and there's tv shows about them and everyone loves the tv shows about the cars oh it's so it's so funny the way they talk about cars could not give an ounce of a fuck about goddamn cars um and as such when it comes to drawing them i don't give a fuck so when i do draw cars i usually have like i basically draw this and then try to turn that into like a 3d shape so it becomes something like that. You, you know, stick windows in it and then give it little like gaps for where the wheels are. I do. I do quite like doing actually in terms of drawing cars is doing that, but then from a slightly more front-on perspective, um, because then you can get the wheels to like actually have depth to them like that. There's a little person driving. Hello. Ooh, wave out the window. Hello. That's the window and he's waving out of it. Um, headlights, bumpers, I guess. That's how I draw cars. I will occasionally, like um, in some recent Death Fist pages, there was a, a, a truck. There was a truck in, in some recent Death Fist pages. I'm just repeating myself because I've had too much caffeine and I fucking, I'm on now. Um, I used uh, reference images for that truck because I wanted the truck to look roughly like specific, like a, a kind of truck rather than just a cartoon drawing of a truck. Um, so yeah, I used reference for that. But generally, if it's just cars, if I'm drawing a, a, a basic street scene in a comic book or whatever and there's cars, they'll all look like this. I might draw some that look more like a van, which will be... Um, this kind of shape and it have wheels like this and like you know there you go that's a van wheels here because I just I don't give a fuck about cars and then if I actually try and draw a car like properly I suck at it because I, I have not spent time practicing drawing cars so that's something I struggle drawing cars um, also, embarrassingly almost, animals' bodies, because that's another thing that, like, I should really give more time and practice to drawing animal bodies, like how their legs work and their shoulders and stuff. But I just, you know, again, I, I do, like... Uh, well, one person specifically will know, they said, how do you draw a cow? And I did this horns and then it was saying moo and I said look that's a cow it's got a tail um if I draw a cat it's like cat head and then body like that basically I might like give the legs a little bit of a, a shape to them but maybe some little paws 
but just sort of the basic shapes you need to imply a cat rather than really focusing on its anatomy and stuff. So that's something I kind of struggle with, uh, which again, again, it's all down to me. It's, it's my own fault. There's, I'm the only reason for me struggling to draw that just because I don't spend enough time working on it. No one to blame, but blame it's blame. Um, and there's more questions from that same person who asked that one. Um, cre cremation or burial for myself? Um, I would like to be chopped up into pieces and spread around the country, if not the world. That's what I want when I'm dead. I want to be. I want to be found in several places. I don't want to be buried. I don't want any kind of ceremony. I just I'll give instructions to somebody. I'll pay someone ahead of time and give them instructions that when I'm found dead, they have legal right to my body and they're to dismember that body and dispose of it in various places. Um I might put some sort of like a rule in place where all it, all the places I get disposed of should have at least like a certain amount of miles between them or kilometers depending on fucking whatever um, so n no two pieces are found too close together so like every piece has to be each each part and maybe like I, I have to be cut into a certain amount of parts and then that person doing that can decide how big and which parts those are so if I say my body has to be cut into at least eight pieces then he can choose if it's like arms and legs off, the body cut into a few pieces, or just like most of the body in one place, a hand here, some fingers there. Like he, that's up to him, to his own discretion. I assume him. It's probably going to be a him, not necessarily. It could be a, a, a her or a them, but most probably a him. Um, and yeah, and then there has to be at least like a hundred or two hundred miles between each of the pieces so none of them are found too close together and then as they start finding bits of my body they're like shit what, what is this we don't know who this is we don't know where they're from we don't know what's happened we don't know why we're only finding a toe here and then it, that's in the north of the country and then in the south of the country a mysterious fucking jaw a lower jaw with several teeth missing shows up and they don't know what's going on um it's all very elaborate and unnecessary uh other than that, uh, probably cremated, because it's just easier to deal with then, isn't it? There's a little, like, you don't have to buy a plot of land, a headstone, and have a whole thing. Just fucking toss me in the oven, have me done with, nice and easy, nice and quick. I don't like to be a bother to people while I'm here. I want to be much less of a bother <laughs> when I'm finally fucking gone. When these people are rid of me, they shouldn't have to fucking deal with a bunch of shit. I was doing pink. Let me get back to that. And there was another question from that same person. Um... Oh, another, they've got so many questions. Jesus. Favourite season and why? Um, I'll assume you mean in terms of like spring, summer, autumn, winter and not like favourite se season of a TV show. Um, if you do happen to mean favourite season of a TV show, either True Detective season one or Deadwood seasons one and two. And I guess you have to watch all three because it does continue the story and it would seem silly not to. Um, so maybe just season one of Deadwood or season one of True Detective. Um, those are probably probably my favourite like seasons of shows, if that's what you meant. If you did mean season as in time of year, probably autumn for the obvious, like it's not too hot, not too cold. I can wear big comfy clothes outside have a hot chocolate i don't sweat too much i don't freeze too much it's just nice and comfy isn't it? we like the autumn we do like the autumn 
Um, and then another question from that person, uh, Marley. Very, very lovely. Lovely, lovely person. Um, what is the most dangerous situation I've ever been in? Which is a very interesting question. Um, I've not been in many dangerous situations, luckily, I guess. However, I actually thought about this fairly recently. I sort of... Uh, I don't even know how to put it. I was I was kind of amazed and embarrassed at myself by how almost silly I was, but it was fun at the time. Where some of the situations I got into when I was like big into painting graffiti, where I was literally like, well, not necessarily literally, but basically hanging off of a bridge over a, a live train track um, to paint my name on said bridge. It wasn't that like crazy high above it, but it was pretty high off the ground and it was above like a live rail. Um, and you know, I don't have the strongest upper body strength. So I, and I wasn't like hanging, hanging. It was like, um, if this was the, you know, the bridge, there's a floor here and you like, people would stand here and you could like look over and the train tracks go underneath. Um, and so I was sort of hanging onto the outside of this bit with a spray can. Um, that's a good drawing. You understand what I'm saying, don't you? Uh, so yeah, I wasn't like hanging, like hanging down like this. Like, oh my God, what's going on? I was sort of perched on a very small ledge here and hanging onto this bit and you know you, you get it I'm over explaining but um, that was and it, I, that and like spending time just on and around train tracks in general there was a couple of times where I like walked train tracks on my own um, and like you know carefully stepping over the third rail and uh, hopping fences and going under bridges and in tunnels and things um, just to paint my name on a on a, like the underside of a bridge that a handful of people might see um, and I did that one time and uh, no I didn't because it's illegal I would never do something like that and then some like flashlight light flashed past my like right past my face obviously the flashlight went the light from it went onto my face so I saw it straight away and I realised and this is like I don't know three four in the morning I realised there were like workers or security or something coming down the track um, I don't know if they'd seen me or if they were just there checking things or if they were there doing work or whatever they might have been like construction workers or just track workers or whatever um, and so I, I'd only I barely gotten the outline done of, of what I was painting and I so I had to quickly like duck out and split and so there was, it got to the, the, the area of fence that I hopped to get onto the train tracks. There was, if this is the, the fence, the chain link sort of fence with a gate in the middle of it that I could like, had bars across so I could climb up and over. And then like trees either side of it here. Train tracks here. And then there was like an electrical box here. So the tunnel, the bridge that I was painting was this way. So I'd sort of like jogged back down the track towards the fence. And on the other side of the fence, again, three, four in the morning was a, a group of lads just hanging around, just talking and smoking. Um, so I like really like quietly and carefully went around this electric box and like crouched, hiding behind this electric box, not knowing if the people with torches were going to come down the track and then find me obviously because I'm not that well hidden I didn't want to just hop the fence because I didn't know if this gang of guys was gonna like beat me up or you know hold me there and yell to the people down the track I didn't know what was gonna happen and I was young I was like maybe 18 or 19 I didn't know what the fuck I was doing I was terrified <laughs> so so terrified I could have peed I was so scared then very shortly after this gang of lads walked off and I was like fuck 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 so I tossed my paint over the fence climb over the fence as I jumped down and land 
there's some guy laying on the ground here, I, I guess sleeping on the other side of the fence. And he goes, Bruh! and I was like, oh shit. And I grabbed my paint and just ran off and ran back home. Um, so that wasn't strict. I mean, that was a dangerous situation because I was on train tracks and I really shouldn't have been. That's the sort of shit that like, I think back to like, was I really just fucking around on train tracks? <laughs> like, that's incredibly dangerous. What the fuck was I doing? Not to mention trespassing and f the potential fines and stuff if I got caught. Um, yeah, bizarre that I do that kind of shit. Um, but also, yeah, well, I was going to say not just dangerous because it's train tracks, but also dangerous because, yeah, if I got caught, then that could lead to, you know, issues <laughs> there. Um, so that's probably some of the most dangerous situations I've been in have been relating to, you know, graffiti and trying to be a little vandal man. But again, this is all made up because I would never do illegal activities. I'm just saying that for entertainment purposes, just to try to make myself sound cool because that's what I do. I go on the internet, I try to sound cool and I make up stories about uh, illegal activities that I would do if I were the kind of person to do those sorts of things. Something you need to know about me is that I never really gave a, f a care about spoilers. I, don't, I can't remember what I was watching recently, but they were going on, on and on, about, oh, spoilers, dude, spoilers, don't spoilers the spoiler for me, you'll spoil it, spoilers. Can't spoil the spoilers with the spoilers on the spoilers. And I never gave a shit. Even actively, sometimes, back when I used to read, <gasps> um, I, something I used to do very, very regularly, and I have a great many books. I used to read almost a book a week, sometimes two, if it was a particularly pernicious. What the fuck does pernicious mean? I don't feel like pernicious is the right word. Pernicious. Um... Pernicious, adjective, pernicious, highly injurious or destructive, tending to a fatal issue, deadly. Okay, so pernicious is not the word I was thinking about. Um, I just, I was very, I don't know, studious. I read a lot back in the day, in my late teens, early 20s. Um, I'd sit and read entire books in a single day, but sometimes, very, very often, in fact, what I'd do is I'd flip right to the end of the book and read, like, the last sort of page or so. And then find out, like, the... Just because sometimes I like to see, like, what the last sentence in the book is, just to see sort of where they go with it. And then I'd even... Um, I'd quite like doing that because I th it felt sometimes... It, uh, it, uh, 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 I quite liked knowing what the... Um, outcome was and then reading the book and sort of seeing how they get to that point like okay I know where they finish but they start in a very different place so how do they get to that point of of finishing up in the finish up where they finish up um and you know if somebody uh, like the, the Sam if I'm talking to Sam Sammy Sam, Sam the man, big gay Sam, underpants Sam, he's got several guises. Um, he, if he's talking to me about a show or a film he likes, um, he will often say, oh, shit, sorry, do you, you know, spoilers. And I'll be like, pshaw, I don't give a shit, tell me, tell me all the spoilers, fucking bring it on. Like, I give a fraction of a fart, a fart. Um... Which I don't. I don't care about spoilers. Uh, <clears throat> and like I say, they can almost sort of like... Knowing what's going to be happening in a thing can almost in increase my enjoyment of the thing. So I uh, quite sometimes quite like the spoilers. spoilers. Um, and yeah, if people don't like spoilers, they want to see a new thing, uh, sure, it makes sense. I get it. 
it's, it's not outrageous to um, you know want to actually enjoy the shit and not have it spoiled for you. I understand. I'm not saying everyone's wrong for not wanting spoilers. I'm just saying, can you all fucking calm down? It's not that deep, bro. Or maybe it is that deep. Um, how about there. Can you tell who this is? Oh, I think you can actually. You may, maybe you can already. I think it's done quite well to. His, his likeness, kind of, I feel. It's all about proportions and shit, yeah? Just gotta work out those fucking proportions, innit? Can you tell what it is yet? Oh, that guy ended up being a pedophile, didn't he? Oh, Rolf Harris. Oh, he was a national treasure. For a bit. And then he wasn't anymore. Because he did all the kids. Oh, brilliant. I mean, not brilliant. I was the opposite of, of that, in fact. Uh, well, uh, um, I think there's only been one time when a spoiler... I felt a spoiler genuinely ruined a piece of media for me. I think I've spoken about this before. But I'll speak about it again. Because, you know content um so i read this book it was a walking dead novel um and it was about it was i think it was called like the rise of the governor or something um and it was about how the governor the character uh, in the comics and later on the the tv show um how he rose to power um and yeah he's a very sort of like edgy character very mean uh, ruthless sort of character um, and so I was interested to see you know how he became he that, that everyone knows as he so I read the book uh, but I did that thing where uh, I flipped to the back to sort of see what how how it gets to the point that it gets to um, and I sort of I did ruin it for myself because that book did something really ridiculous, which is very similar to, um, you might remember, if you just uh, have no life whatsoever and you watch all the shit I do, uh, I watched every Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. Um, I've started speaking like that in real life. I went to the bank the other day to like pay in a bunch of shit. I had a bunch of coins I was putting in. Um, that's interesting. Um, <laughs> normally I'm very like, hello, I'd like to uh, do this transaction into my bank account, please. Very, you know, normal, everyday, hello, I'm a human today. Do, 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 do. But then I went into the bank and I went up to the counter, it was my turn, and I said, hello, I'd like to, um, I've got some coins I'd like to pay into my account. And I caught myself, I was like, oh, Jesus, I'm not on the podcast. <laughs> I just... Talk normally. <laughs> Jesus Christ, you and you fart. Um, so I watched all the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies. And uh, there was one of them in particular, which I, I've said, um, it, it would be a really good movie if it weren't for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre parts of it. Like, it's, it's when... Leatherface was uh, young and he was in a, an insane asylum. And then um, the, the, there's, there's some people break out of the insane asylum. And then Leatherface, as a kid, um, gets wrapped up in it. And he, there's this sort of guy protecting him. And he goes along. And then there's these like psychos that sort of keep him hostage. And a nurse is hostage as well as they're getting out of the asylum. And so they've got to like keep their wits about them and then not get caught and try to not get killed by these psychopaths that are keeping them hostage. And it's all like, oh, my God. Fuck. So there's, you know, the, the sort of Leatherface being Leatherface. He's a big sort of chunky, chubby guy with scraggly long hair. He's a bit simple. He can't talk very well. Um, and so there was a, a, a kid, 
a younger person that sort of was built like that and acted like that. Um, he wasn't called Leatherface. I forget what his actual name was. And then there was this, like, um, square-jawed, handsome kid, uh, quick-witted, smart-talking, you know, chatting up the nurses and stuff. Um, and he was the one who would, like, protect the, the kid who was chubby, uh, with his long scraggly hair and everything and he so he kept an eye on him so when they broke out he like yeah he kept an eye on him and like make sure he's safe and everything um and then so the obvious thing while you're watching is oh the chubby guy is a leather face and then this other guy who the film spends quite a lot of time focusing on um is some other guy but then, spoilers for this film, I can't even remember what it's called. Um, what happens then is, the towards the end, the film takes a turn. You realise the, the person that becomes Leatherface is actually the square-jawed, handsome guy and not the chunky, chubby, uh, scraggly-haired simpleton who can't talk very well. That's just a coincidence that there happened to be a guy that looks exactly like Leatherface as an adult. Uh, and has all the traits of Leatherface, um, as as is described uh, in in the other films. Instead, the person that later becomes Leatherface is the square-jawed, handsome man who isn't dumb, isn't slow, isn't like clearly uh, mentally challenged. Quite the opposite, in fact. He's very, like I say, quick-witted and smart, street smarts and stuff. Um, and it's just, it was a complete, like, oh, you thought this was going to be Leatherface because we gave you every single conceivable possible reason to believe this was going to be Leatherface. But uh, you fell for it. <laughs> you fell for our trick. Actually, Leatherface is this guy. And it's just like, well, that's not good. <laughs> that's not good writing. That's dumb. And then uh, at one point, the you know handsome square jawed guy uh, gets shot uh, by like a stray bullet through his cheek or something. And then later on in the film, where he gets back with his family, they give him like this leather strap mask that basically holds his face together, his scarred face. And that's when he develops the wanting to hide his face, so he wears a mask all the time. And then obviously becomes leather face later on. But it's just so like. That's just so dumb. It doesn't make any sense. And like you had the red herring of the the chubby guy. Like we obviously would think it's Leatherface, but oh no, we were all wrong. You tricked us. No, oh, clever filmmakers tricking us, think making us think one thing when actually the other is true. It's so fucking stupid. I hate it so much. Because it's not it, it's not the sort of thing that makes you go, oh wow, what a twist! I can't believe they did that. That's crazy. Oh, I thought this whole time it was going to be him, but it's like, of course, I thought the whole time it was going to be Leatherface because he looks like Leatherface and he acts like Leatherface, and you have every reason to think he's going to be Leatherface. And then they pull the rug out from under you and go, no, actually. This guy is on the other face. You were wrong because you're stupid, obviously. I fucking hate that. And so that was basically the spoiler of um, this Walking Dead novel. Where the whole way through the book, um, there's this character who looks like the governor. who And the governor in the comic is like thin with long black hair and he loses an eye so he wears an eye patch. Um... He's got like a moustache. And so the whole way through the book, there's this guy who looks like that. And he's travelling with his brother and his daughter uh, and like some other people. Because um, his daughter plays a part in the in the comic and TV show. She gets, at some point, she gets bitten by a zombie. And he's keeping her, the zombie child, alive. Or keeping her alive, but keeping her with him and feeding her body parts and shit. You know, like an evil bastard. Um, so that's all the way through the novel. There's that guy, and he's got his daughter, and his thing, and thing, and thing, and thing, and thing. And then his brother is like just some schlub, some chubby fucking nobody, some whatever. Described as looking very different to the governor. 
But then, at the end of the book, the guy who is described as looking exactly like the governor looks, he dies! And you're like, oh, well, he can't actually be dead because that would be silly. And then his brother says, well, I'm going to carry on his legacy and keep his daughter safe. And then he starts wearing an eye patch and grows his hair long and grows a moustache and takes care of the daughter as if it's his own. So he... The, it's the the dumbest, weakest, f like, flipping of the script ever. It's going, oh, you thought it was going to be this character that turns into the governor? Because that's literally... We've described this character as looking like and acting like and basically being... And it's his daughter as being the governor. There's no, no reason at all that you should think otherwise. Right up until the end. And then actually... So the governor, as you know him, isn't actually the governor. He's the governor's brother. And his daughter isn't even his daughter. It's his niece. But that's never mentioned in the comics or the TV show. That's just like... Because it's basically he, he takes it on as if it is his daughter. So that it's just the fucking... It angered me so much. And that's what I read when I flipped to the back of the book. Just to sort of have a look or see what's going on in the back of the book, see how it ends. And it says, and so he took up his brother's fucking shirt and moustache and eye patch and daughter and just became him instead and acted as ruthless as he was. Oh, and that's another thing, because the governor character was really, like, confident and ruthless and he'd, like, fight and, and win and make sure everything was okay. But his brother who later became the governor, he was, like, really timid all the time and scared. He had, like, asthma and shit. So there was no reason at all you could ever conceive that his brother would become what you think is the guy. It's just so like, ugh. I'm not good at writing. I'm really, really not good at writing. I actually meant to bring that up when I was drawing um, Gun Fist. Uh, fist Viking. Death Viking Fist Gun. Um I was going to say all my characters, but at least those two of my comic book characters are absolute, like, Mary Sue's because I'm bad at writing. Because they can just get out of any situation. Like Gun Viking, he gets stabbed in the side, but then he goes red rage and tears everyone apart because apparently he can do that. And then he gets his arms cut off, but then he just grows guns out of his arms and then his arms just grow, grow back and he's fine. There's, like, there, there needs to be genuine... For a character to really work, there needs to be a genuine sense of, like, peril. Like, something bad can happen and they could conceivably lose. That's where stakes come in and that's where, you know, interest and intrigue comes in. Um, but my characters are made without that. <laughs> because I didn't design them. They're, they're just, like, characters that kind of look cool and I built a comic book around that. And that's about it. Um... I need to pay more attention to that stuff. And then, like, Death Fist, um, oh no, he needs to get the killer away from the kid because he's got a knife to the kid's throat. What's he going to do? Oh, he can teleport. He can sink into the ground at one place and pop up in another place. Sure, he can just do that. that because fucking whatever, it doesn't matter. It literally doesn't matter. Just, just go with it, it's fine. <laughs> like... There needs to be limitations. The character has to have limitations. And you, you have to read it believing uh, that the character can lose. They can they can die. They can, you know, be in a situation where they might not come out on top. But I haven't written my characters in that way. So you can be pretty certain that any situation they're in, they're going to come out on top. Which, you know, they're the main characters and that's how main characters are. But I, I need to write mine better. Not that I actually write anything, I don't know. Although there is that one comic, there's the cowboy comic I want to make. And the main character in that will be very, very flawed. And he will be in situations where he can absolutely conceivably be fucked over completely. Um, will I ever get a chance to make that comic? Who knows? Maybe if everybody, literally if everybody, subscribes to my Patreon for a single dollar, like if even, this is, 
wishful thinking, of course, but I'm, and, and I hate to talk about money because you all know how I fucking despise it. So I, I genuinely detest talking about it. Um, but the dream that I have in my head, oh, wouldn't it be cool if, is like if, for instance, as, as a flat rate, if, and I know this is asking a lot, but if close to, or say a thousand people, or as close to that as possible, all donated a single dollar a month, that would be me done for rent and bills and everything for the month. That would be all the money I need to make in a month. I could sell comics and a couple of commissions if I need a bit extra here and there, but that would basically be all the money I need for a month. And all it would take is, and you know, I numbers are what they are. I have a fairly decent following on Instagram and Instagram fucks it up because they're just pieces of shit these days. It's ruinous, ruinous what they're doing. But, you know, I've got like, very, I did hit 40,000 followers and then it sunk back down to 39 point whatever. Um, but, you know, if I got close to 40,000 followers, the idea of 1,000 of those putting in a dollar a month to my Patreon isn't too outrageous a thought. I don't expect it to happen. I know life is hard. People can't just piss their money away like that. They can't, even if it's a dollar a month, they can't just decide to just give this guy some money every month just because, oh, because then he can make some comics. Wouldn't that be cool? I don't in any way at all whatsoever expect people to all suddenly uh, subscribe to my Patreon just because I say, oh, please, I'll make some really cool comics, I promise. I don't expect that at all. So me talking about it is literally just saying, wouldn't it be nice if? And that's it. Um, because, yeah, of course, wouldn't it be nice? I, I was watching a podcast and they were talking about their Patreon. Um, I'm not going to give them any free publicity. I'm not going to talk about them. Um... And they were saying how they've gotten like 20,000 plus subscribers to their Patreon. I, and they're a big podcast. They've got a huge following. So sure, okay, fine. They're a podcast that does live shows as well, which is like crazy that that can be a thing. Like sold out live shows all across the country. Like <laughs> it's ridiculous. But they're popular. That happens. That, that happens. I understand that happens. But just the idea of like, even if I had half of that, if I had 10,000 subscribers at a single dollar a month each, that would be insane amounts of money that I, I've i never even conceived of having. And I don't have to because it's not going to happen. But just, you know, the, the potential idea of like a thousand people or even like 700 would do me for at least rent. Um, and then I can take care of bills and stuff with commissions and whatever. Uh, that would be a, a, it would be a weight off my shoulders if nothing else um, but you know that's <laughs> wouldn't it be nice if well yes wouldn't it be nice if we all had our money problems taken care of I understand that's not how life works but again I'm just uh, thinking out loud that's all I'm doing that's all I'm doing I'm not asking for anything i'm not expecting anything but patreon.com forward slash you and you and dollar a month podcasts a week early giveaways sketchbooks early access to like sales and shit uh, sometimes i give make stickers and give them away just to patreon subscribers sometimes prints a bunch of other shit um, and other videos, and I will be coming up with some other videos that I mentioned, and some of those will be Patreon exclusives. So, you know, there's stuff there, and if you're into that for a single dollar a month, uh, you know, you're welcome to fucking do that. So the point of these, this one and this one, is I thought it would be... Um, these are, you know, relatively rough, quick sketches I'm doing while I'm talking. But I thought it would be really cool, just the image in my head, of, like, walking into a comic book shop and seeing on the shelves... Um, covers like this where it's literally just a colored ballpoint drawing like a portrait of the character with you know like th was it the immortal immortal thor and then like the little marvel box with issue 
12 variant cover or whatever. Like, white background and then, like, sort of sketchy but detailed, colourful portrait like this. Basically just this. But then I'm going to mock it up uh, on the computer. I'm going to, you know, copy and paste the, the logo on the top and then I'll make the images. Because um, I think that would look really cool, personally. If nothing else, it would look really different from most other comic book covers, even like variant covers. You get painted ones and you, you get some cool covers out there. But I think it would be really cool to see something like this, like a cool, um, like a sketched portrait cover. I think, basically, what I think is they should give me money to do... I, I, why am I talking about all money all of a sudden? They should just, you know, they should get me to do covers and shit. Because <laughs> they'd look cool. Would they? Yeah, they might. They might look alright. I don't know. Of course they would. They look fucking great. Of course, if it was uh, an actual, like, if I was being paid to draw the cover, I would really spend time at it and make it, you know, really, really good. Whereas, again, this is just quickly done. Just get it. Get it done, because it's in the sketchbook, it doesn't really matter, but it gives you enough of an idea. This yellow is the best yellow, because it's a little bit darker, because I have this pen here, and this has a yellow on it. But this yellow is really light, if you can see the difference there. Also, this one smells like banana. This, like, ten colour fucking pen. I used to love these pens when I was a kid. Oh no! Oh, I thought the yellow had run out. Hoo wee! Oh, I think it is running out. Um, but yeah, that's, it's, it's got a really nice yellow because it's a little bit darker and richer. And I think the amount I've used it is causing it to run out. Fuck! There's Thor! Obviously. I mean, not, maybe not obviously, but it's pretty obvious, isn't it? Like, look, his jaw is like, because he looks different to the Wolverine, and that's. That's something I, I've been speaking about recently that I'm trying to work on is the actual facial structure because it's so easy to just like draw a person's head and then um, put a Wolverine mask on them. This is Wolverine's mask. And then draw a person's head and draw Thor's funny little helmet with the wings. And like, yeah, I mean... They look different because they're wearing different hats. But then to actually make the face shape look different. So he's got like his nose juts out a bit here. He's got that Roman nose. And his jaw is like big, wide and round and pointy. And he's got like human, kind human eyes. Whereas this one, he's like a bit thinner and pointier and more gruff and angry. He's got no pupils in his eyes. So they, they have different facial structures, which is something I trying to work on as 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 mentioned and of course you've got to do at least one of this guy you know who it is looks like homer simpson doesn't it <laughs> or crusty the clown or something um should we give him a girl face big brow Oh, this isn't good. <laughs> this looks shit. Um, what have I done wrong? Why does it look shit? Why am I not happy with it? That's something you can do. Is And something I, I'm, again, learning or trying to make myself learn to do is when I look at something and it's shit, to actually... Like, I mean, I, you saw me have a breakdown with this. Um, and I think what you saw was me not getting something straight away and being angry with myself because of it. And sometimes you have to just give it a minute. You've got to do it a couple of times and, and really, you know, until you're going to be happy with it. So I had a bit of a breakdown with that one, yeah, but I'm ha basically happy with it, how it came out. I like the octopuses. Um, but yeah, there I've got to like think, okay, so I'm not happy even with the position of it. It should be like here. 
and then it should be tilted up a bit. Should it be more forward facing? Um, eyes, his little button nose, high cheekbones, a longer sort of lip, his teeth showing, lower lip, big jaw. Can you make out any of the lines I'm drawing? I can't. No, I really can't. <laughs> I can't see shit. Fuck am I doing? Bridge of his nose, the nose of his nose. I, I mean, for all of my like, oh, I was going to say hatred. I, I hate hate Disney just for what they are, for being a huge, evil, vile, uh, monopolizing corporation, and for sucking up every fucking possible avenue of entertainment and, and laying claim to it and making money from it all. I hate them for that. And as such, I don't really care for the Marvel movies. And, you know, I liked some of them, but in general, this is too much and I don't care about it and it's all it can all just go away. Um, but one thing I really do appreciate, especially with the Hulk, is how when the Hulk is the Hulk, he still looks like uh, fucking what's-his-face... Um, the guy who plays him, I should know who he is. I know, I know the name of the guy who plays the Hulk. Um, uh, f fuck, I'm gonna hate myself if I Google it. Um, oh, there's, there's a, a uh, fuck, fuck, um. Gonna, I'm gonna hate myself once I see this. God damn it. Mark Ruffalo! I knew there was a ru. In my head, I was thinking Rufus Dayglow, but he's a comic book artist. That was literally the name in my head, and I was gonna say it out loud, but then I was embarrassed because I know that's not his name. Um, Rufus Dayglow, Mark Ruffalo. You can see where my brain was going with that. Um, Mark Ruffalo, yeah. So the Hulk in like the Avengers and such looks like. Um, Mark Ruffalo, and obviously that's done with CGI, you know, it's whatever, but, you know, even in the comics, the Hulk doesn't look like Bruce Banner for the most part, maybe like if Bruce Banner has long hair, and then the Hulk will have long hair, but like, Bruce Banner's got, you know, human face, maybe he's got glasses, and that like typical scientist haircut, hello, hello, I'm Bruce Banner, hello, doo -doo -doo. I wear shirts and ties and pocket protectors because I'm a big fat nerd. And then he turns into the Hulk and he looks like this and he goes, Rrr. I don't know what that circle was. I'm the Hulk, Rrr, smash, Rrr. that's the Hulk. Um, but yeah, in in the the MCU, I guess it's known as, when he turns into the Hulk, he still has elements of Mark Ruffalo's uh, facial structure in his Hulk face. Which is admirable, because that's a noticeable thing. The character retains some of his uh, human features while still being uh, basically an abomination. You know, Even though abomination is a separate character, but we won't get into all that. Um, so yeah, that's something I appreciate. Uh, a point in their favour. Uh, I don't know if that was an executive's decision or if that was a creative's decision um so i don't you know i want to praise the the people who decided that should be the case that it should still look like mark ruffalo um and also the people that made it work physically that made it look like mark ruffalo um but i don't want to praise cgi too hard and i don't want to praise disney too hard I want to be careful with all of that shit, you know. Arrgh! Hulk smash! Arrgh! I don't know why I'm saying it like that. 
I love Hulk. I love his shapes. I love his colour. I'm not a big fan of green in general, but I like I like the Hulk's green. I like green skin. I like drawing skin odd colours. Blue skin is a really fun one to do. Like a human or a, a humanoid. I think I've said before, drawing orcs and goblins with blue skin is really fun to do for me because I'm stupid and I've got so little going on in my life. There needs to be more, more Hulk-like, deeper set eyes, bigger brow, fucking stronger jaw, little ears, and a big fucking bulkous body. This is how you fill a sketchbook, you just do this across a page. And you go, wow, look at that, all the detail in that work. <laughs> so detailed, so marvellous, I love it. It's fucking brilliant. If anyone wants to buy this whole sketchbook when it's finished, hit me up. Ah, oh, fuck, stop talking about money. I fucking hate it so much. I hate that it's a thing. If somebody wants to own this sketchbook, hit me up and we can talk about it. Let's not just talk money on the, the podcast. I don't want to spend it doing that. Let me have a sip of my Pepsi. So I was reading this book, No Logo, back when I used to read. Um, it was non-fiction, so I flipped to the back to see how it ends. And it ends with no logo. It's about corporate logos and their insidious fucking... Um, infiltration of every part of our lives and shit and why I don't know if, if it's exactly the takeaway you're supposed to have but it's certainly the takeaway I had reading it is that the best logo is no logo and even before reading that book I stopped wearing like brand names and shit even like skate clothes and stuff I it, shoes is about as far as I go and even then the logos are minimal um Everyone knows what shoes you're wearing just by the shape of them anyway. But it's not about people knowing what you're wearing. It's about um, where your money goes and, and how you represent yourself in terms of the choices you make based on, you know, a bunch of shit. Um, and in this book, uh, they tell of this... Uh, the, it's, it's Naomi Klein, I think is her name, who wrote the book. Um, she was saying how uh, a lot of schools in America, I don't know if it's a lot, but there are schools in America that basically have corporate sponsorship. Um, so they'll have like, you know, Coca-Cola or whatever will um, pay a load of money to the, or give the school a load of money and then the school has like Coca-Cola uh, vending machines and stuff those sorts of things that happens apparently in schools in america i don't know if it still happens this book is uh, a good few years old so i'm not sure what uh, how things work now but that was certainly the case uh, at the time of me reading the book um and she was saying how there was uh was it yeah no it was coca-cola um they put on an event at this school um, and so everyone was given like a Coca-Cola t-shirt and they were all expected to like participate and it was a big Coca-Cola sponsored event so the school would get a load of money and all they have to do is just basically fucking praise uh, Coca-Cola for a day or maybe even just an afternoon you know like how God expects you to spend all your time praising him because apparently he did shit for you that you didn't ask for but he did it and now he's going to hold it over your head for your entire life so you you have to be thankful because he did the thing for you oh you didn't ask for the thing to be done yeah well he did it anyway so now you have to be thankful every day all the time always in in every aspect of your life praise be unto him and that was basically coca-cola at this school in the united states of america um and then uh, there, there was this one kid who I think got suspended, maybe not like expelled. Um, this I, I love this kid who I don't know. I don't know. I don't think they uh, had a, they. I don't think they gave the, the child's name. Um, I don't know how what their life was before that at the time or what their life became. But I have such a deep love of of this kid in this school. Um, I love kids in schools. Oh, don't take that out of context. Um, so everyone had to wear these Coca-Cola t-shirts. And it was almost like something out of The Simpsons. Um, 
apparently this one kid took off their sweater and they were wearing a Pepsi t-shirt, which is just fucking genius. Like, you couldn't have, have uh, done better to do that. Because this kid obviously saw through the bullshit and was like, what is this? I'm at school. My school day isn't supposed to be sponsored by Coca-Cola. What the fuck is this? What is, what's happening? What the fuck is going on? And so it was all like, oh, wear the Coca-Cola T-shirt. And then, you know, like 100 kids or more were wearing the Coca-Cola T-shirts. And there was this one kid. I don't know where they got it from, but oh, I guess you can buy like Pepsi and Cola shirts. Um, they were wearing a Pepsi shirt at this Coca-Cola event. And I cannot think of, of a better like protest for that sort of thing in that moment just fucking perfect so when i say i have so much love for that for that kid that's why because how can you not how can you not absolutely adore that that's so fucking good and i mean powerful in its own right as a form of protest of like no fuck you pepsi for instance and i'm not a pepsi shill i happen to drink it it's i hate that i drink it because i see it advertised and i try to have a rule where i don't buy anything i see advertised because then you're like, they're working on you. Um, but, you know, Pepsi's just there and it's convenient and I don't mind the way it tastes and it's yeah, whatever. I make excuses for all the bad shit I do. <laughs> Basically. Um, I don't even necessarily like this Hulk drawing. I don't dislike it, but it's, I don't think... It, it doesn't have quite the... The panache and the class of these guys. But then there's the Hulk, isn't it? He's a big, scary, silly, big green monster. He shouldn't necessarily be classy and clean, should he? Um, and that's all to say... Uh, logo bad, copyright bad, Hulk good, Hulk smash. I'd smash the Hulk. Good, get in. I'd get smashed by the Hulk. He'd fucking destroy me. He'd tear my cock right off with his fucking just little. He's just go crack, pull it off. <laughs> Not in a good way, or maybe in a good way. It depends what you're into, I suppose. Don't I like when you see bits like this in drawings, like comic book drawings, and um, these neck areas are, are good times to just put in loads of like veins and tendons and stuff. But I do like seeing it when there's just fucking tendons and veins and lines and shit. I was re-watching my two-hour epic look through um, the Pit comics, um, which is obviously uh, a, a compilation of me looking at them over several weeks. Four weeks, to be precise. Uh, because someone left a comment saying something dumb that after all that, I was calling them bad or saying they're not very good. And then I was like, wait, what? So I went back and watched the two-hour video of mine laughing all the way because I'm so brilliant so funny I spent two hours talking about how much I love the art and love the comics I don't know what that person was talking about um and yeah there's there's a bunch of points in there where like the monsters and pit and whoever have the big muscly bodies and then these is just fucking lines and lines and veins and tendons and lines so I do like those 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 moments those are good similar with um crotch creases you get like the legs, depending on the bagginess and, or, or tightness of the trousers or the pants that the person's wearing, um, the legs themselves might be fairly bland in terms of detail, just trousers on legs. But then you get the crotch area that's just fucking lines all over the place, lines and shading and shading and lines. Um, where you can just go to town and, and get some crazy cross-hatching details and shit in there. Those fun moments. Sometimes drawing can be fun. Remember that? Remember when drawing was fun? Uh, when it wasn't either content or a job. And now it's fucking both for me personally. I still try to have... That's why I, I try to draw like the shit I want to draw. Muscles and guns and skulls and fists and shit. Which, yes... Gun Viking and Death Fist. Perfect. What do I want to draw? These specific things. Okay, done. I'd also love to draw The Simpsons in a post-apocalyptic setting. I'd also love to draw some cowboys. 
and a, and a bounty hunter story about a, a bounty hunter becoming friends with the, the bounty he's hunted as he takes him across several state lines to collect said bounty because he has to be delivered alive or he gets no money. And he needs that money to start a better life for him and his new um, child-bearing wife. Uh, but, you know, ill fate ensues and events happen and transpire. And, you know, things... Things and events and stuff. Do I have my... I don't think I've shown my notes for it. Um, this old exercise book. Bounty Hunter, a comic book or film, if I can make that happen. Western, um, tail end of the 1800s somewhere in North America. Following a bounty hunter taking his live bounty cross-country several states over to whatever sheriff jail gallows he's headed to. Most of the story told through the two talking, telling each other stories. Travelling a long way together, two weeks. Lots of time to kill, time to talk. Bounty must be taken alive. $500 bounty um, is a large amount of money. Uh, is the last amount of money the hunter needs to take pregnant wife away for a quiet life. Um, bounty tells only lies. The bounty only tells lies. That's a spoiler. Yeah, so all these pages of notes I wrote, which I never do for comics and things. Um, end of book one. Removes his head. Oh, shit, that's a spoiler. Okay, spoiler here, I guess, for my... Uh, possibly eventually in several years time upcoming uh, Bounty Hunter Western comic um, there's an incident where um, Bounty Hunter gets free and then um, he's, he's him and the Bounty oh no the Bounty the Bounty gets free and then he's like tussling in with the Bounty Hunter and the only possible course of action the Bounty Hunter has is he shoots the um, in, in a fit of rage and survival, he shoots the, the bounty um, in the heart and then he collapses on the floor and he dies. And then these images go through uh, the bounty hunter's mind like, fuck, fuck. The images of his, his wife and his kid, the money, the wanted poster, $500 must be taken alive, must be taken alive. He has to be alive, otherwise there's no reward. He needs this money. He spent weeks getting to the place capturing the guy trying to get him back alive and now it's all fucked up he's shot the guy he's dead it's fucked the entire situation is fucked also there may be a gang of bandits on their way to find and do horrible things to his wife he is fucked the only thing he can think to do is um did i where did i <laughs> lost the page is removes his head Maybe we see it, maybe we don't. So all he can think to do is fuck. So he takes out his trusty hunting knife and like cuts the, the bounty's head off and he figures maybe, maybe if he arrives back in the town with the bounty's head, maybe he can get something. That's, it's like a last ditch hope. Um, and he's got to ride off as quick as he fucking can because his wife might be in horrendously grave danger. See, I can write. <laughs> I just choose not to, basically, all of the time. Um, for whatever fucking reason. Maybe I'm just lazy. Definitely, I'm just lazy. I'm definitely... Definitely lazy. Um, what other things did I have? Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, so, the next Pokemon... So, I've drawn the, the saws... The, the, the anal sores, penile sores, and vaginal sores. Ha 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 ha. Bulbasaur, Ivysaur, Venusaur. I've drawn the Manders, Charmander, or the Chars, rather. Charmander, Charmeleon, and Charizard. I've drawn Squirtle and Wartortle. The next on the list is Blastoise. Now that's potentially a really fun one. Let's just quickly, just for the for the for the f fucking fart of it all let's do a little basically basic referenced drawing of our blast wheeze because that's the best place to start in it's just 
what am I working with and then what am I working towards? What we're working with is a Blastoise. He's got a head, he's got fat tits and a massive cock and it comes every... That looks like a funny face, doesn't it? His eyes and his ear and he's got a funny mouth and he sounds like this. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Well, that got away from me, didn't it? <laughs> That was, uh, I was not intending for that to go that way at all. Uh, it's funny how things go. <laughs> Is it? No, it's not particularly funny, Ewan. It's fucking weird and silly. Stop it. <laughs> be normal, Ewan. I'm trying, goddammit, I'm trying. I can't even be normal at the bank anymore. I've infected myself with my stupid voice. With this growly voice. I do it all the time. And this one too. Ah, oh, yes, that sounds divine. I've got a lot of coins I'd like to pay into my account. What? Oh, sorry. I'd like to pay some money into my account if that's all right. Uh, yeah, could you be normal for just a fucking minute, Ewan? Sorry, I'm trying. I am trying. Although, something I did notice, and I, I think this is like a universally accepted thing. Um, your teenage years are... You're developing, and you, you develop tastes for things, and those tend to stick with you. Um, and then you, you be weird, you're weird teenager, you get into weird fashions and weird things you enjoy doing. Fucking skating graffiti, drugs, whatever it happens to be. You get into all this weird shit. But then you get towards your 20s, and if you go to, like, college and stuff, and you, you realise, oh, you know, I should try to be normal. Maybe you've got to get a job or jobs, and so that becomes, like, the large focus of your life. And to get jobs, you've got to be, like, basically normal. You've got to act normal and do normal things and have normal interests. Um, and so you spend a lot of time, maybe even talking shit about like things you used to like that you used to love a lot and you'd be like oh no Avril Lavigne oh I don't listen of course I don't listen to Avril Lavigne oh, what do you think I am fucking teenage but then you get into your 30s you get a little bit more sort of grown up a bit more mature a bit more accepting of certain things maybe if you're lucky you have a little bit of like money and freedom in general um that can feed into realizing actually the stuff you liked back then was really cool and maybe you still like it now and you sort of focus your energies on on uh sort of reigniting your love for those kinds of things and maybe now i can say yeah i like avril lavigne I mean, for one thing, she's fucking gorgeous. And also, I like her songs, certainly the earlier songs. Complicated. It's one of my favourite songs of all time. I fucking love that shit. <laughs> I think it's brilliant. Um, I wouldn't dare put her down now and say, oh, oh I'm listening to Avril Lavigne. I say, yeah, I fucking I love Avril Lavigne. She's great. Um, I don't know where I was going with that. But uh, I'm not going to do the same thing I did uh, before of, like, stopping the recording and then watching it to see what the fuck I was talking about. I'll just have to accept that I don't know where the fuck I was going with that. Um, it's a funny thing, though, isn't it? Life, oh, life's funny. You, know, you do this, do that. Oh. Be normal. I think it was something to do. Oh, well, I was talking about being normal. See, I've had, that's where I was going with it. I've had my time of trying to be normal. In my 20s, especially. In jobs. In jobs where... Um, people say good morning to you when they see you at jobs in the morning and you go go to hell fucking burn in the fires of of Hades and then the, the other person goes you're so weird you and oh you're so funny isn't you and fucking funny and weird he just says weird things all the time can't just be normal can you you gotta say weird stuff all the time and that's me trying to be normal that's me like holding back um at all my jobs that I had having jobs when it was time to have jobs and be a job having job haver but now fortunately I have a bit more freedom and I'm able to maybe to a negative degree I'm able to to just be my fucking 
stupid, weird, dumb, annoying self uh, and indulge in that weirdness and sit here going, oh no, he's got fat tits and a penis and he comes all over his own face. So that's basically a Blastoise. The proportions are a little bit off. Um, we could draw him, can we draw him like, like looking cool? Even like this kind of face. He's got, um, what kind of shapes is his face? It's made up of like that and then like kind of, kind of like a Ninja Turtle, kind of. Uh, not not quite a ninja turtle, but kind of like a ninja turtle. Um, he's got like a nose. He's got like a nose, isn't he? It's funny. He's got like a nose. Uh, um, his mouth open. He's got ears as well. I can't forget the ears. He's a turtle with ears. Turtles don't have ears, but he's also kind of a squirrel. Does Blastoise have a tail? Yeah, he's got like a little shitty... He loses his, his like, curly-whirly squirrel tail. That's a shame. I like the, the tails that, like, Squirtle and Wartort will have. It's a shame for them to get lost in the final evolution. Such a pity. Such a pity indeed. Um, I like his arms as well. They're kind of segmented. He's somewhat robotic-looking. He looks like a Mega Man uh, enemy or something. Um, rrr, and he's got fucking cannons. That shoot out come! He fucking comes everywhere! Oh, fuck it! Um, this is my creative process. This is what I do. It's what I need to do. This is how how I create. You and how do you create... Um, uh, uh, how did you learn to draw and paint? Someone called Jake asked, how did I learn to draw and paint? Like this. Fucking tits and penises and you fucking get in there and you fucking draw you shit and piss everywhere. You fucking... I never learned to draw. I've said this a few times before. I never learned to draw necessarily. I just always did it. And it's something I have literally always done since before my memories started forming. I have drawn. I've held things and gone blah, blah, blah since before I even knew I was doing a thing. Um, so I, I've learned how to refine what I do as drawing. I've learned how to draw better just by doing it enough and looking at other people's drawings and going, oh, they do it like this. Let me try that. Um, which I guess is a complete uh, 180 on what I just said. I did, in fact, learn how to draw. Um, and then painting does feel different because painting is something I started doing. I didn't always paint. I started painting properly around 2007, 2008 was when I was copying Ashley Wood and David Cho and I was painting a lot of graffiti. So I was painting then and learning about colours and layers and colour theory and that sort of thing. Um, but then it was maybe 2000... After, after university, so 2011, 2012 was when I started painting like... Fabry Bisley sort of style and that's when I was actually genuinely learning stuff like having to learn how to do things um what the fuck did you ask was it how yeah how did I learn um and so this is always always my advice and it's literally how I learned is by copying the shit I liked until I could do it without copying the shit I liked Find a picture I really like. And like with Simon Bisley and Glenn Fabry specifically, there and Ashley Wood and David Cho, hmm, Ashley Wood is a good one for this as well, is his his and Bisley and Fabry. Their paintings are put together in such a way that um, you can see all the layers. So for Ashley Wood, um, and I guess Simon Bisley and I guess Glenn Fabry, you can see like the marker pen drawing underneath and then like a wash over that and then gaps in the paint and you can see almost every individual stroke. Um, I'll look at some of their work a bit later on in the podcast. So stick around and learn some shit, yeah. Um,
and by being able to see those layers to, you can see how the painting is made almost just by looking at it um which is then almost a how-to guide and like this is how the painting was made so you can replicate that do a marker pen drawing wash some paint over that let it dry and then start adding in layers with mid tones and then lighter tones on top of those figuring out how to build shapes with paint because you're you're painting with light as opposed to painting with paint kind of if you think about it conceptually you're you're learning to where to put the light where the light is falling onto the object you're painting and that's what you're painting as opposed to just painting pictures um and so all of these things are things to to learn um and so i find picture copy it as best i can and then go okay this works that works i'm figuring out the layers figuring out the colors keep doing that keep doing that keep doing that until i can sit with no reference around me draw a picture paint it on my own without reference and then go okay cool now how about one of my goblins and i paint that and now how about fucking flesh bob and i paint that and that just sort of carries on until you're just painting on your own and of course um as you're doing it on your own you're going to have your own um sort of idiosyncrasies and your own little quirks as you do it you you might leave out these parts of the painting and add in your own other little bits here and that's when it will, re will really become your style of painting as opposed to you know copying someone else's style and even then you know any painting i do is probably going to have some kind of clear bisley influence and some people will still say hey this looks like bisley's work but like they'll say this looks like Bisley's work I really like it rather than you're clearly just copying Bisley because they can see the Bisley influence but they can um, obviously or hopefully see that uh, as well as the clear Bisley influence I have got enough of my own sort of flavour and style or whatever into the work so it's not just a fucking rip off of someone else's work it's also my own work look it's blastoise i also used fat 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 pen and this that's exactly what i've just been doing A reference picture of a couple of blastoises and now this one's just completely out of my head just blastoise in like a a, a raw gnarly fucking raw pose this is his big open mouth. His ears. This is eye. It's a shit eye, but you get it. Um, shell his arm and his clawed hand. A cannon. The little box that the cannon sits in. And then the other cannon up here somewhere. And that's exactly how art works. My sweet and spicy and sticky chicken and noodles. Uh, first, cut your fucking chicken dippers up, fresh out of the oven, nice and brown. Get those sons of bitches halved. Get some oil in a pan, swizzle that shit around. Throw some shit in there until it starts sizzling up. Then add in your chopped garlic and spring onion, just the white bit of the spring onion. Get that stir. Get those noodles flipped and boiling away. Stir it up some more. Why not? Some Worcestershire sauce. Uh, a bit of white wine vinegar, some honey, get them rich flavours started off, stir them up, get some uh, soy sauce in there, some some pepper, there is salt in there too, some Cajun seasoning, a little dash of cinnamon and some ginger paste, nice and brown and bubbling, stir them shits up, that's good, get your chicken in there, stir that up too, soak up 
them god damn flavors get them all rich and cooking and frying up uh fuck your noodles up giving them a little stir a little play around make sure they're doing all right drain that water off take your noodle packet take the packets out of the noodle packet them powders and shit get them in a bowl get the oil in there too get them together and give them a good stir up until they're a nice uniformed paste in the bowl ready for the addition of the noodles and then stir them shits up soak in them flavors get them nice and uh, nice and browned with them powders and oils rich and tasty add in your chicken to to the bowl with the noodles in the bowl with the chicken in the bowl some green bits of the spring onions and then you're done boned apple tits Eat that shit and enjoy it, because it's fucking good. Somebody asked if I was a top or a bottom. I am a top. I'm a bear, and I'm a top. And that's all I've got to say about that. Here's an influence. The, the Gothic and the Eldritch, the collected sketches of Jez Goodwin. Oh, excuse me. Um, this is... Uh, obviously, I downed a load of energy drink right before recording to make sure I had enough energy to right before recording. This is another segment. This is another day. As previously stated, I don't have the <coughs> the capacity and the, the bits I need to record for 12 hours straight if I end up going for 12 hours. Um, so anyway, the, um, it's a new dawn. It's a new day. It's a new life. And I'm feeling like looking at the artwork of Jez Goodwin. He's... Look, it's signed for you and good luck, fella. Jez. Oh, magic. Oh, it's signed by me as well. Look at that. There he is. This is Warhammer. Warhammers. He was an artist with uh, Games Workshop. Um, and he did a lot of, like, artwork for Games Workshop. Developing their games. Warhammers and such. Warhammers. 40,000 Warhammers. Fantasy Warhammers. I remember seeing this book in... Is there not a, a, a date on it? 2001. Jesus. 12, 13 years old. Oh, you know what happened in 2001? Close to my birthday. 9-11. Um, uh, um, I remember looking at this book so many times in the back of Games Workshop. They had like the, the books and shit. And then right in the corner, there was this book on a low shelf. And I was in there several times a week. Uh, you know, playing games, painting the models and stuff. But I'd pick up this book all the time and just look through it. Amazed fucking amazed by it all um the proportions on that space marine are so cool i love it. it's got like really long looking legs and a like, little body sat on top of it i just think it's really really good um part of me wants to say like nowadays his drawings feel a lot less dynamic than they used to but that's because i've overindulged on a diet of you know, Ashley Wood and Simon Bisley and all kinds of crazy art. Um, and, of course, most of this is concept artwork, so it's not going to be these grand, expansive, expressive pieces. This is just, like, drawings of guys in suits. This page shows some large-scale drawings just produced to show how all the hefty power armor articulates enough to give the wearer a reasonable degree of movement while still looking solid and heavy. And it does look like they can move their arms and legs. Because it does look like, sort of, because it's big bulky armor that you wouldn't be able to move that well within it. But um, that's good. Good. There is a lot of weight to that drawing, like with the, the angle of the legs and all, and him pulling back with his bolt gun. That's the old bolt guns of some old Space Marines. Uh, really cool drawings, though. Really, really cool drawings. Look at that. 
the uh, the wolf space marines, I forget what they're called, but they're like Viking space marines kind of, which I didn't really appreciate back then. I just thought they were like weird space marines that had wolf skins on their armour and like bones and claws and teeth and stuff. But now I'm like, oh, they're like Vikings. That's cool. Like space Vikings. I kind of really like that. Um what are they called? The 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 space space wolves. I think they are called space wolves. <laughs> uh, Warhammer 40k space wolves. Come on, Jesus! Was my Wi-Fi gone down or something? What a fuck! Uh, space wolves. Yeah, space wolves. That's what they call. And this. So this. The whole book like blew me away blew me i blew myself when i was 12 um or 13 or whatever it was uh just in general looking through it all the drawings just like knowing that this was like a drawing in a book i hadn't seen many like art books back then so seeing a book full of just drawings which is all i wanted to do was just draw and i used pencils back then i used to use pencils um so seeing all these pencil drawings was just like, holy shit, look at all. I love Warhammer. I love drawings. And uh, I couldn't believe that this book existed. So when I was finally able to actually get a copy of the book, I was amazed. I was just, just so, so happy to have it. Um, and then I saw these pages, uh, you know, when I'd look at the book in the, in the store and just like, what is this? Like, I couldn't even conceive that that was a thing you could do. I thought tracing paper was for tracing. The idea of using it for something like this in print to, like, have an overlay pointing out bits of his equipment, um, scars and stuff on his face, the fact that he's got a, an orc war boss's axe that he's stolen to use as his own, and just pointing out little details and information about vents on his armour and his plasma pistol and stuff. And a really cool drawing, really badass, chunky, strong space marine captain or whatever does he have a name clotted blood quest i don't know um yeah it's really really fucking cool i like it i like it a lot like that's just a fucking badass drawing uh and then it's got this ah oh, fucking good man really really fucking good um, and it continues as such. I love these like designs for Chaos Space Marines, the Traitor Legions. The chunky, just chunkiness and the cables and wires and tubes and guns and gauntlets and spikes and horns. Really, really cool. I also like that because there is a... Um, it's not necessarily a, a trend or anything, but every now and again you will see stuff like this. But they've obviously copy pasted or traced one basic like model so they'll have like an, the outline of a space marine that they'll just trace and then draw all the chaos space marine details on it and then more details on it and they'll all have the same pose same space marine but as you can clearly see each of these are individual drawings and i really really do appreciate that because that's you know just that, that it's only a small thing but it's just that extra little bit of like care and attention to the drawings um, they're obviously very, I, I assume, fairly quickly done concept drawings rather than, you know, pieces that he's laboured over. But he's put in just that extra little bit of time and it's, that means something, doesn't it? It's important. And of course, these are now like ridiculously out of date. They were, at the time, this was cutting edge Chaos Space Marine designs, but now they've developed... And developed and developed since then. But that doesn't make the drawings any less cool. The griminess of the Nurgle. The bloodthirstiness of the corn. The, um... I don't want to say the extravagance of the Tsinch. And the opulence of Slanesh. I feel like opulence and extravagance are possibly synonymous, but maybe not. I could Google it, but I don't want to. I could draw these. Imagine all these, but like drawn in cool ballpoint drawings, all like wild and scratchy and like cool fucking their legs like this and fucking guns and shit. Oh, I'd be sick. They should hire me to fucking do this shit. Space Marine Terminators. 
Abaddon the Despoiler. Khan the Betrayer. I always liked him because he had uh, his... Uh, one arm was wearing armour and the other arm was fleshy arm. He didn't have any armour on that arm and I was always like, oh my god, he's got like a flesh arm with like chains like Lobo, <laughs> which is kind of crazy. Um... Like, if Lobo was a space marine, he probably would look very similar to this, actually. It's really, really fucking cool drawing. I love, like, the skull shape of the helmet as well, and these bits, these, like, Galactus horns. The huge fucking axe sort of silhouetted in the background. The outline of a plasma pistol is that shape, if you know it. And then, the like, the detail, the heavy, like, decorated armour details of Abaddon. The Despoiler, with his fucking giant spiked power fist claw, with a heavy bolter mounted onto it. Not a heavy bolter, a storm bolter mounted onto it. And his fucking demon sword is really cool, with all the little screaming faces in it. All the ornate designs of the chaos stars and stuff, and the shit going on in his face. All these tubes and things, and the hair, the skulls on the spike. Just, ah, so good. I might have to do something similar to where I've like copied um, certain artists in paintings. I might have to do that, but with these drawings. I, I've done a couple of copies of drawings as well. Also of Warhammer art, of uh, those pieces in my, my zine. But um, yeah, I think this, I'd love to have a go at drawing this. I think that'd be really, really fun. Like take the basic sort of pose and character of it, but really draw it how I would then go about drawing it, which wouldn't be too dissimilar <laughs> from this. Like the pose, this sort of hand holding the thing is pretty similar to what I'd do anyway. I'd maybe have the claw a bit more like claw-like as opposed to just sort of there. Although in the miniature it is, it's more like pushing outwards. Here it's a little bit more relaxed. Um, Araman, Araman, arch sorcerer of chaos of Tsinch. I like that they've got the sort of Egyptian, the ancient Egyptian theme to them, which is a nice, like, anchor for, for their look. And again, the detail, the pose, the shape of it all, like just the overall physical shape of this guy is really, really impressive. Fabius Bile, or Fabius Bile. He wears a coat made of human skin, who's stitched together with faces and shit in it. And he's got these, like, mechanical arms that chop people up. And he's got a needle gun thing. I never quite understood him. I had that miniature. I got it one Christmas, I think. A little metal miniature with all of these fucking bits that you glue onto his backpack. And, uh, yeah, that was fun. I love the drawing, though. Really, really cool. I think the miniature was good, but then the drawing here really captures, like, the old man-ness of him of his character just some like not withered necessarily but he looks just like a fucking just old like he might be 300 years old or something um sh severed shrunken heads and yeah really really cool drawings I like the shoulder pads like pushing outwards and then like everything flowing down out of that heavy top shape with like almost the spider legs coming off of his backpack Really cool. Demons! The greater demon of corn. That's really, really cool. Imagine that being your job. Oh, I'm going to draw some fucking space marines and shit. Now I'm going to draw a demon. <laughs> Have him, like the Balrog, basically. With an axe and a whip. And these armoured, fucking armour-plated wings and shit. And these are all cool too, like Chaos Knights, Chaos Warriors. Skaven, I really like Skaven, the rat folk. Can relate. <laughs> See, because I'm rat like. Elves, yeah, they were always sort of like meh to me. Warhammer Fantasy Battles, I was never, never into when I was younger and when I was into Warhammer. I liked guns and machinery and stuff. Space elves, wow. That's a really, really cool drawing. The shapes of their helmets and stuff are really, really cool. I love that, like, theme that they've got. 
Um, but yeah, then when it came to like fantasy battles and it was like knights and elves and giants and dwarves, I was like, eh, whatever. Nowadays, I'm I'm almost the opposite way. I prefer to draw like axes and Vikings and stuff. Yeah, you know, I like guns. I draw some guns, but um, yeah, Tyranids, the aliens, the xenomorphs of the the Warhammer world. Another one of these. It's just so cool. So that's got way much, way, way more sort of character in this than I'd probably feel like I could put into a drawing. Like the amount of detail and stuff on all the bones and plating and tubes and twists and things. I mean, I'm sure, give me time, I could come up with something like that, but... No, these are really, really good. Oh, this little guy, the ter termagant, is that the, what that's called? I don't know, something like that. I forget all the names, it's been so long. I really like their like bio weapons, where their hands and fingers are fused into like their guns. So their fingers go into this bit of the gun and these fingers go into the barrel to hold it. And they shoot out fucking biological ammunition and stuff. It's really, really cool designs. Some guy. A cyber dog. Cyber hound. Aww. That's cute. Necromunda. I fucking loved Necromunda. Gang fights in this like big vertical, uh, overpopulated, almost cyberpunk kind of city. It was really cool. And so instead of having huge armies like most Warhammer games, you just have like a little gang of like, I don't know, eight to 12 fuckers. Some with heavy weapons, some with like shotguns and lead pipes. It is, there is something quite Fallout about it. Um, Mad Max, Fallout, all those sorts of things. Really, really cool. Titans and shit. They're cool, but I was always a bit meh about them. Necrons, skeleton, robot skeleton things. I like this, where he's showing like the ball joints in them and then these drawings of arrows. Even just the way he drew these arrows was really like influential to me and inspirational to me. Just seeing these sorts of drawings of like arrows depicting the movement of this ball joint was really something that uh, seeing that was like, whoa. Fuck that! Like that's so cool. <laughs> that depicts a thing and a movement. Oh, man. oh, and then I'll show the the big floating fucking weapons platform, Robo Skeleton Man. I'm stuck on a marker pen. Some tanks and vehicles. A bunch of guys. Some assassins. I like the assassins. They're a lot of fun. Sisters of Battle. They're cool. They're a cool set. That's something like I think I would have liked to have gotten into if I had... If I was able. I think that's one thing I sort of... It's not a regret. It's just sort of a sad thing almost. That when I was really into Warhammer, I had nowhere near the funds to like really get into Warhammer. To really properly build an army I really wanted to get into and the same is true today and you know it's only gotten more and more expensive so uh that's cool isn't it a bunch of robots some alien technology and shit and there's old Jezzy Jez this always bugged me really really cool that he drew like a, a more or less life-size space marine they are supposed to stand at eight feet tall um so and that's really cool that he obviously did that like in the office or whatever Stuck a bunch of paper together. You can see like the tape holding the sheets of paper together, um, I think. And uh, drew a giant space marine. But it always bugged me because he starts at two. So he has two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's actually seven. If that is, if these are in one foot increments, it's actually only seven feet tall. Which is a shame. But, you know, it's good enough. Um... I was I was ready to like cut the camera and then move on to the next bit, but we're that's not what we're doing now. We're on a different format, system, plane of existence now to what we usually am are. 
Everything's different. Everything's changing. Um, and we've got to adapt to the times. No, well, we're actually really not. If I was adapting to the times, this would all be live streamed. And then I'd upload a VOD of the full live stream. And then I'd pay an editor to edit it down to the best parts to make a video for it. And then I'd have like sponsors and shit. I'd do it properly, yeah, but I'm not with the times. If it was with the times, it'd be on TikTok, wouldn't it? I still, I feel like I, I, I hate to say it, I feel like I should go towards TikTok. See, I have this idea for a series on TikTok where, like, because, you know, on TikTok, you can, like, uh, I guess they call it stitching a video where you show a part of someone else's video and then at some point you cut into it with your own video to like comment on it or whatever and i think they call that a stitch so it, you know you'll see one of their videos come up and it'll say stitch incoming as in i've added onto this and that's coming up um so i thought of a, a series i could do where i stitch other people's videos but like just people being just fucking dumb stupid either you know, right-wing people or conspiracy theorists or, you know, fucking new age dummies just talking about whatever, religious nuts, where I play, a, you know, a few moments of them talking about whatever. Um, you know, oh, the, the, end, the last days are coming. All of you sinners need to repent because Jesus is going to be here on the 20th of November, 2026. So you've all got to prepare. And then it will cut to me going... <laughs> well, that person's a fucking idiot. Anyway, look, I drew a dog, and then I show a drawing of a dog that I did. Or, look, I drew Blastoise, and then I show a drawing of Blastoise I did. And I could just do a whole series of videos of that. Just respond to someone being really, really fucking stupid. There's a fly buzzing around, a little tiny fly. Go the fuck away from me. Um, and go, wow, that person's a moron. How did they survive this long as a human being? Um, anyway, look, here's a drawing of a person with a big bum and he's got a smiley face on his bum. And that would be the TikTok. Um, which I think, personally, is not a terrible idea for like a TikTok series of videos to make. Um, the only issue, really, of course, is that would involve me being on TikTok and then it's another app I have to like keep track of and and it also has the um the thing I'm almost terrified of which is starting from scratch like on Instagram I've built a following and then when my account got deleted I was very very fortunate in that I had enough of a following that enough people shouted me out to be like you and got deleted go follow his new page that I was able to start building a following almost again right away. Um, whereas on TikTok, I, I know some people who have TikToks, but I don't think it's enough that like people, I, and I don't think TikTok works in that way where it's like you shout people out, like, hey, go follow my friend. Their TikToks are really good. Um, I don't believe it's the same like that as it is on Instagram. Um, the whole it's a whole different world I've had a couple of other ideas similar to that in terms of like I could start doing TikTok and that would be my my gimmick because I think that's the thing is you've got to have like a thing a gimmick something for people to sort of latch on to when they uh, if they want to watch your content or if you want them to watch your content. I think that would work, wouldn't it? Be like, hey, look, that guy's fucking stupid. What is he talking about? Anyway, here's a drawing of a little pink fleshy SpongeBob type character chopping people up. Of course, I'm aware that TikTok has very, very strict um, terms of service or whatever, guidelines. You can't say death and kill you've got to say unalive and all the rest of it otherwise you get blocked and banned or whatever 
which is silly and you know i mean instagram's not exactly brilliant for that it's it's got many 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 of its own issues but i've at least grown to learn something about the instagram systems and how to work with and or around them whereas tiktok would be a whole new fucking devil to get in bed with but I really do feel like Instagram is uh, a dying um, platform and I don't think it can last much longer, honestly. Um, and TikTok isn't necessarily the saviour, but it's where the people are currently. And it might be that that's just what you've got to do. You've got to go to where the people are if you want to like get your shit out there and have people see it and get involved with it and appreciate it. And I've, I've never really been one of the people that's like, I'm never going to download TikTok. Fuck that. You'll be fucking... You'll find me dead before you find me on TikTok. I've never really been, like, so against it in that kind of way. But, um, you know, I've never really fancied the idea of downloading a new app and working within its boundaries and keeping up with it all. But... That might just be where shit's headed, you know. And I can say this, you know, now talking about it at least, that, like, there's always the chance that, you know, I blow up on Instagram, I get really popular, and my life takes a whole new turn. Just because of... Did I say TikTok or did I say Instagram? If I said Instagram, I meant TikTok. Um, and, yeah, my life could take a whole new turn just because I went on TikTok and shared some videos of me Drawing funny things. Look, here's a drawing of me, but I'm uh, fucking big fan silly. Uh, it's funny, isn't it? Oh, it's Blastoise. <laughs> it's kind of Blastoise. It's kind of Blastoise-ish. Blastoise-ish. Um, oh, we're... <laughs> I wanted to see if I could do the whole book. We're quarter of the way through. We're halfway through half of the book. Um, how would I draw Blastoise if I was going to draw Blastoise? I do want to do him, like, roaring. So I do want to have his mouth kind of, like, open. His teeth. And then his body like this and his hands. Like this. And fucking cannons like that. And maybe give him more of a like a snapping turtle kind of face. And maybe that's what I'll do. I'll I'll look up some reference photos of snapping turtles. And then draw Blastoise looking more like that. I will have to give him his ears just because otherwise it will look less like a Blastoise. Um, and maybe make his body parts more natural looking whereas they like as i said they look almost robotic um in the the sort of the blastoise art that is around Roar! Yeah, you can see what's going on there, can't you? I'd need to... Well, I mean, the whole thing needs <laughs> quite a bit of work, but... Oh, yeah, give him some nice, like, almost Space Marine shoulder pads. <laughs> His shell there, the bits where the cannons come out here. And there. Dish, dish. Roar. bit more character into his tail.
in my head he sounds kind of like Godzilla like a monstrous giant raw kind of thing let's get some darker lines in there we won't focus on this guy too much but I did want to at least get a little a little bit of a doodle of him out just so we've got some like concept uh, to work from when we really do get into the time when we're drawing Blastoise we when we as a collective are drawing Blastoise Oh, uh, well, yeah, I'll give him big, big, fat, chunky teeth. That actually look, reminds me of something. It looks like something I might have seen elsewhere, those giant teeth in the shape of his his head. I um, can't recall right now, but seems familiar in some weird way. Um, fucking shit there, shit there. Do I have any... Let me see this bag bag of markers that Biggie got me, got me, gave to me, all the shit he didn't want anymore, oh, I'll just fucking give it to Ewan, whatever, I don't want it, it can be Ewan's problem from now on, is there a dark blue in here somewhere, oh shit, my back really hurts all of a sudden, can't be anything to do with the fact that I'm just fucking sitting on my desk for hours on end, talking bollocks and drawing bollocks and being a load of bollocks is there any dark blue kind of colours anywhere there's some blues oh shit yeah that might work I just I don't want to ballpoint my um be a bit of a pain in the dick uh, so there's these weird blending pens I don't even know how to use them really but they've got is that going to bleed uh, a little bit. Ah, fuck it. It's all good. It's all fucking good. Do -do -do. Oh, it's running out of ink already. <laughs> Not even used it and it's already running out of ink. This isn't going to last. I assume this pen's just been sat around and not being used and therefore has died as a result. Uh, there is another end. Maybe that will work better. Maybe it won't. Oh, I prefer the other end. Ooh, that's what it is. Um, there's more questions. Um, how do I stay motivated to keep drawing my comic? Um, I feel like a lot of these are questions I have definitely answered in various places before. Um, and this is one I have spoken about a few times. When it comes to staying motivated to finish like any um, project, so in my in this case, as, as was being asked, uh, my comic, um, I really want it to be finished. There is a monetary thing. It's like, well, I need to finish it so I can sell it, so I can make some money. I'm feeling that way with Death Fist at the moment. I need to, like... I'm going to release the first half of Death Fist as a standalone thing, and then it will say continued in part two, and then when I do part two, I'll put that out. Um, and then I'll put them out together as one book, you know, to make as much money out of it as possible, because that's all I care about is making money. Um... But aside from needing to do it because I have to make money, um, I want it to be finished. I hate drawing it sometimes, that or anything else. I hate actually doing it. Sitting and making the thing can be the biggest pain in the arse ever. Just constantly looking at it, seeing the pages on the desk, and like there are times when I'm ex I see the pages on my desk and I'm like excited to to get on with it and, and do some more work on it. But then there are times where I, I look at the pages on my desk and I'm just like, ugh, this fucking thing, can't I just hurry up and be done already? And so the problem is also the solution, which is if I want the comic to be done, I'm the person who has to do it. No one else is going to make the comic. And so 
I'm the one who has to sit and make the comic. Um, and that's not, you know, it's not necessarily easier to stay motivated keeping that in mind, but you do have to keep in mind that you're the one. You are the chosen one for this particular project, so it's all on you. And, you know, also, also I, I know if I don't finish it, if I have to then, like, say, sorry, guys, I'm not going to be able to finish this comic. I have tried, but I just can't get around to it. I, f I hate myself. Like, I hate myself anyway, you know, sometimes. Sometimes I'm the best. Sometimes I don't feel that I'm the best. Um, But I, I will despise myself if I try to get a comic done and for whatever reason cannot do it and so because of that I have to get it done <laughs> uh, self-hatred does a lot for me self-hatred is one of my biggest um, uh, one of the biggest things that keeps me going that keeps me creating and working um, knowing that I fucking despise myself a hundred more times than I already do if I don't just fucking finish the goddamn comic I'm working on. Plus, um, there is, like, I have... Um, I'll show you briefly. Let me take off the pen. Oh, no, the pen fell, and I don't know where it went. Ugh. So I have this. Um, there's a piece of paper that goes behind it on my notice board right next to me that says Death Fist and then this goes just underneath it. So these are all the pages I've done and these are all the ones coming up. Punch, descent, 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 descent. Done, tired, enough, not enough. More people, more demons, people, demons, demons. Um, so these are the pages I've got left to do of the first half. So I'm almost done. I'm definitely over halfway of the first half. Um, every time I get a new red cross when I finish a page, it feels good. It feels genuinely good. I'm like, yes, another red cross, another page finished. It's such a nice feeling to have that done. Um, so that's something I, I recommend is having a decent like checklist I was going to say to-do list a, a decent checklist that you can check off whenever you do shit because you do get that little like not an endorphin rush but there is certainly something there that like does give you that little boost of like yeah it's working it's coming together and then for me personally I love absolutely love laying the pages out every time I get a new like four pages done I put all the pages on my bed I lay them all out four pages four or five pages and then another four and another four and another four and then seeing this whole grid of like black and white ink of this comic I've been making seeing it all come together and literally grow before my eyes because last time I did it there were less pages and now there's more pages and next time there'll be even more pages um that's one of my favorite things about making a, a comic is seeing all the artwork laid out together. Um, so that's definitely something that keeps me motivated to like keep going. Because I, I keep in mind now, um, I've got to do one more page where Death Fist's punching the guy down to hell, and then four pages in a row of the guy falling through hell, which I'm dreading actually trying to draw because it's going to be a massive ball ache. But I know once I lay those four pages out, it's going to look so cool, like really dark, lots of ink going on, lots of background details and stuff. This is like a magic wand. Um, so yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to having that done. Um, and I evidently have signed up to be the cocksucker that uh, has to do it, which means I've got to just fucking... I've got to do it. I've got to sit there and make the goddamn comic. And that's the, the life we sign up for when we decide, oh, I want to draw comics. Doesn't that look like it's supposed to be really blue and then it turns out it's actually kind of grey? That's a bit of a shame, isn't it? I actually really like this drawing. <laughs> I think it's really fucking cool. Um, I'm really happy with this. Actually, I wasn't expecting to be... Like I said, I did say I'm just going to get this quickly done just so I've got a little concept piece. But now I'm sort of adding to it because I'm like, oh, fuck, that looks really cool. Let me just fill in some of the spaces. <laughs> just get his skin done. You know, you know, I'll just get a bit of his shell. Let me just do this. Let me just... So, yeah, it, it's really, really difficult staying motivated. It really is. And there are days when I know I could sit down and get 
two pages done today easily without really putting in too much effort. But then I just sit at my desk looking at the pages and just thinking like, oh, just, I can't be fucked. And you know, I deal with my own mental illness and, and those sorts of issues, which makes it just difficult in general. Um, so it can be, it can be really, really hard to stay motivated, but if I can give advice, I don't feel I'm in a position to give advice, but if, if I'm going to give advice, have a decent checklist that you will feel feel happy when you, you check off new pages. Look forward to seeing the new pages and keep in mind, you're the person. This is on you. You are... What, is there a black? Did you give me any black markers, Billy? Where are all the black markers? Are they are there any in here? No, those are all grey. Oh, there's black. Um, is it any... Oh, oh, oh. Far, that's well nice. Jesus, Windsor and Newton. Brush marker. Jesus Christ. I wish I'd known these were a thing. That's so fucking nice. <laughs> Holy shit. Big up Biggie Z for the... The, the, the score giving me these. Holy shit. It's a little bit of a like uh, a faint black. It's not very deep. It's not like a deep India ink black. Um, but it does the job. Uh, yeah, you're, you're the one who has to make the thing. Only you can make the shit that you make. And... Especially with regards to like, you know, all the AI art and everyone stealing ideas and whatever. Like the world needs people who do the thing and you're the person that does the thing that you do. So do the thing, be the person that does the thing that you do. And that's something I try to keep in mind as well is obviously I spend plenty of time copying other people. Um, and there are people out there who say like, oh, Ewan's like the next Bisley or whatever, which I disagree with. But um, sometimes I think, well, maybe I would like to be the next Bisley. But then I think, no, I'm not going to be the next Bisley. I'm going to be the first Ewan where, you know, maybe years and years from now, people look up to me in the same way I look up to Simon Bisley. I'm not saying that's my dream and my hope but you know that could be the case and that's what I try to keep in mind like I'm gonna do the shit that I do and make sure people know my shit is that good shit because I'm the only one that does it which does kind of I oh, fucking I really really like that drawing <laughs> who'd have thought I'd do a drawing I actually fucking like um, but yeah, that brings me on to another question I was asked, which is, <clears throat> um, how do I feel about those few people that really try to copy your work, not just drawing in ballpoint? Um, I, I d see in a way, where was this? This was in here and that can get fucked away. Um, in a way, in a way, in a world. We're tracing now. We're going to do some tracing. Look, I traced someone else's artwork because that's what I do. Because I'm a, I'm a thief. I'm a thief. I'm a winner. That's Creep by Radiohead. Um, people copying my artwork. For the most part, it doesn't bother me at all. Uh... It's quite funny sometimes going onto someone's page. If they, if I see some work that looks like mine, like the, the four colour ballpoint drawings, um, it's quite funny sometimes going on their page and scrolling back and seeing completely different artwork that they used to do and then the artwork that they started doing after they saw my stuff. And I'm not to say everyone who does those four colour ballpoint drawings is copying me, but... It's specifically, you can tell the use of pinks and purples and blues, a little bit of green in there with that four colour pen. And then certain shapes and things they use, they do the elongated nose, which again, I don't claim ownership of, but it's it's all of these elements mixed together in such a way that it's like very, very similar to mine that I can 
pretty much comfortably and confidently say is um, not necessarily directly copying, but at the very least is uh, heavily inspired by my art. Or they're just copying me. Um, and for the most part, it doesn't bother me at all. Not one bit. I'm just, it's just like, fine, it's whatever, you know. I do the same. <laughs> uh, where's the pen I'm looking for? I can't find it. <laughs> I'll use this one instead. Oh, is that the... That's, oh, well, that's the one I was... There you go. That happens as well. In the same way I get images in my head and that I try to recreate. I get... When I'm doing this, I'm like, oh, I should draw that with this particular pen for some reason there's no like this one would work just as well the that one would work it would be a bit thinner but it would do the job i could use a brush pen i could do use any other pen but for some reason this was the pen in my head when i sat down to to draw this so that's the one i have to use um also when it comes to that sort of artwork i feel like i had it happen recently actually someone um, sent me a message saying, oh, look, this guy is, like, copying your work and pretending it's all original and stuff. And I was like, you know, it's it's whatever. Because ultimately, while this person's drawings were not terrible, they were okay, but they clearly weren't, like, as good as mine. <laughs> I don't want to sound like a dick, but they, they just weren't. And, and I feel like, you know, the fact that someone sent me a message saying this person is clearly copying your artwork shows that people know who the, the 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 best one is people know my artwork when they see it even if they see someone else doing it they know my artwork um and so that sort of makes me really not worry about it too much because people know what's up people know the real shit they know who the real people are they know who the real fuckers are that are doing it um so when people see imposters, they know they're imposters. When they see my shit being the real shit, they know it's the real shit. So, yeah, it doesn't really bother me so much. But then, I do think sometimes the people that, that see it and know it's mine, for the most part, are obviously people that already know me and know my artwork. So, of course, if they see an imposter, they're going to know it's an imposter. And then there are people who don't know me and don't necessarily know about art in general they see a cool ballpoint drawing they think that's a cool ballpoint drawing i like that artwork let me check out the artist and it's someone who isn't me but is clearly sort of biting my style as it were um then that might you know the person then might find me afterwards and think oh, well, this guy, Ewan, is just copying this other artist whose work I saw first. And so I get a bit worried that that sort of thing happens, where I become, in certain people's eyes, I might become the imposter. Um, and then, you know, there's... Again, it's not about money, but, like, they could potentially draw attention away from me and my art, uh, which I do put a lot of effort into, so, you know, I hope that people see it and like it um but yeah it draws attention away from it and then draws attention towards the imposters so ultimately the copycats i guess we could call them don't bother me too much but every now and again if i feel it's getting a bit too much it does start to get to me and you know i just i hope people know who the legit one is they know who the the real OG is. I almost said a slur. I won't know because that's bad. We don't do that here. We never have. I was about to say we don't do that anymore. We never have. Never have. Never will. It's not behaviours that I partake in. Not at all. This is a zombie by uh, my friend Alex. Uh, Odd House. I think it might be Odd House Tattoo or something um, on Instagram. Loved, 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 loved his artwork for many, many years. Um, I got to meet him last year in the summer. Uh, it was really, really cool. Uh, yeah, I love his drawings, love his work, love his paintings. He does tattoos these days. I believe he wants to work on a comic. I, I've been meaning to ask him if he's 
made any moves towards working on his comic. Um, maybe this will be my excuse to, to get in touch with him. Of course, this is just going to be... I'm just going to colour this in with Posca pens. Um, and a, similarly to this, it's just going to be more of a concept piece to, like... Because I'm going to paint it. You know how... I do that sometimes and I used to do it all the fucking time. I take another artist's work that I really like and then paint over it and go, look, I made a work. Um, and then I'd show it to uh, the artist and they'd be like, oh shit, that's really, really cool. I love it so much. And they'd post it on their page. They'd post it on their actual Instagram page instead of their story and be like, hey, go follow this guy. And then people would follow me. That's how it was back in the day. Not anymore, not remotely, but... Times change, so, you know, you deal with it. Uh, but now, that's that's no reason to not, <laughs> uh, you know, paint over other people's work. If it's fun to do, then you fucking do it. As long as the other person appreciates or, or, or um, not appreciates it, they don't have to appreciate it, but as long as the other person doesn't mind, I guess. Um, you know... You don't want to like paint over someone's work and show them and have them be like, don't do this. This is my artwork, not yours. Don't paint over my artwork. <laughs> Which would be kind of shit <laughs> for a person to be like that. Um, you know, for instance, if, if I've seen people, you know, someone the other day drew uh, a death fist drawing and I was like, fuck, that's cool. Brilliant. Love it. Keep it up. <laughs> do more. Uh, especially since, again, death fist was such a silly idea. It was never meant to amount to more than a silly idea in my sketchbook. And now I'm working on the Death Fist fucking book or whatever. <laughs> um, which I'm actually excited about because I, I really like how it's going. Um, so yeah, so if anyone likes Death Fist enough to want to like draw him, then fucking yeah, please do. Have at it. Get on that shit. Um. I don't know where that came from. I'm trying to do, you may be able to see already or you may see soon as I get more of it done. I'm trying to do that uh, sort of turquoise and pink vibe lighting because that's what I want to do when I paint this at a later date is do that uh that it's very much a go-to color scheme turquoise greenish turquoise light from above pinkish reddish light from below uh is, is a really really good combination and if i can't think of any color scheme in particular to do a painting um like i did uh a variant cover for this comic um and the comic's black and white, and I was given a few like sample pages to look through for like, you know, ideas for for drawing the the variant cover, and um, it's the one of like a guy and a cat running towards the camera with like laser blasts. Sorry, I'm picking my nose as I'm talking, with laser blasts uh, firing towards them. Um, so I had minimal sort of reference for the drawings, even less reference for the color because it's a black and white comic. So I just really didn't know what the fuck to do. Um, so I just said, fuck it. And I did that colour scheme, turquoise and pink. And uh, you, almost, you almost can't fail. It's like, especially when you're painting it, it's almost a perfect colour combination. And it's really effective. It looks cool in terms of like lighting and stuff. People see it and go, oh, wow, look at the cool effects and the lighting and stuff. Um, so that's cool. It's just a nice, almost like a cheat code <laughs> for uh, painting. I think it's already having quite a good effect here as well. I think you can see how it's going, how it's working out. I might need to get there. I'm doing this without the reference, like completely, which isn't necessarily a great idea, but 
fucking fuck it. And then get this. Make sure it's nice and thick. Sometimes the Posca pens can get a bit watery. So you want to make sure they, they get nice and thick so they layer up well. Yeah, just like that. And then we'll go in with a, a black brush pen and get the, the lines and the details in there and it will look real nice. Hopefully. Hopefully it looks good. <laughs> Which is most of art really, isn't it? You do a bunch of shit and then hopefully it looks good. And if it doesn't, then you hopefully do better next time. And next time, and next time, and next time. <laughs> and it never ends. It ends when you're dead. That's when it ends. Until then, keep doing it. Keep drawing, keep painting, keep going. What's that? You're not motivated? Tough shit. Do it anyway. <laughs> Motivation, schmotishmation. Doesn't matter if you're motivated or not. The sun's going to come up and everyone else is going to keep drawing. Which means you've got to keep drawing too. Otherwise they win. They, the cabal that controls everything. You can't have them winning. Which means you have to win. So you've got to keep going. Keep drawing. Keep fucking winning. What the fuck am I looking for? God damn you. Today is fucking effective, innit? It's effective as shit. It looks fucking sick. It's fucking badass. Fucking killer. Fucking killer zombie fuck. Killer zombie fuck from outer space. Fuck yeah. Killer zombie fuck. Do 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 do. Oh, you go there. And then brush. Um, this will be a good time to bring up the reference picture on my laptop computer. A folder of drawings and shit. And there's the fucking thing. Yeah. Right. Um, I'm not too worried about keeping it too spot on strict to the original, but just enough. And then, uh, like I say, you know, this is just a quick paint, uh, quick drawing, really. When I do the actual painting of this, it will, you know, have a lot more time and attention paid to it. Which means it will be better, I swear. I swear I'll do it better next time. Not that this is bad. I, I like it already. I like the colours and shit. We all like colours and shit, don't we? I just had a quick look over at my notes of like, oh shit, uh, uh, something to talk about, something to talk about. And the note on the top was that I don't care about spoilers. I noted that down. Make sure I talk about that. It's so important. Um, but I already spoke about that. So <laughs> that's that gone. This is just one of those little, just a little moment of, of quiet. You've got to just sort of sit in for a bit. Just let it, let it breathe a bit. Let the, let the moment breathe. Let the noise die down a little. Just take a moment to just fucking breathe, yeah? Can't be full bore, go, go, go all the time. You've got to take a moment to just fucking chill out. When you get that dark line between the, the two lighting uh, lights, the two colours of lighting, that's when it really sort of...
pops. Who you call him pops, kitty wink. Look at that, that is fucking sick. There's me getting up to look at it in the in the in the camera. See how it looks, and it looks fucking cool. As well it might. That's what I do, innit? I make shit look cool because I'm fucking I'm afraid I might ruin the the all blue look. But this was nagging at me, so I just wanna get this shell done at least a little bit somebody asked how many hot dogs can i eat in one sitting now that is uh, a disappointing one because similar to pancakes um see because over here <clears throat> in silly old england we've got a thing called pancake day which i recently became um aware that it isn't a thing in America, for instance. I don't know if the rest of the world has it, but in England we have Pancake Day. It's like some leftover silly religious holiday or something. People, I think it's like before Lent or something, people use up all the leftover shit they've got in their pantries, in their kitchen cupboards. So they use up all their eggs, milk and flour and whatever, and they make pancakes. And then it's one Tuesday out of the year. We are allowed to eat pancakes throughout the year on other days, but we just have this one day that you're supposed to eat. It's Shrove Tuesday. It's called Pancake Day. You eat a load of pancakes. My mum would always make a load of pancakes. Every year, every single god dang year, I'd be like, oh, I'm going to eat so many pancakes. Oh, mum, make sure you make a lot of pancakes. I'm going to eat like 12, 20, 30 pancakes. Every year I'd eat like three and be full. I'd start eating a fourth and be like, whew. And this is English slash European pancakes are like crepes. So the thin ones, almost like a wrap, you can roll it up. And you have like lemon and sugar on it, like lemon juice and sugar. I Butter and sugar is a really good one because it melts into the thing when it's warm. Um, chocolate spreads, caramel stuff, all kinds of stuff. You can have savoury ones, but why would you? Um, so they're quite filling because you put a bunch of shit in it and then you roll it up and you, you eat it as well. Um, and every year, every single year, I think, cool, I'm going to eat so many pancakes. I get two and I'm like, oh. It's actually quite a lot and then I eat a third and I'm like Phew, I think I'm full and then I'm repeating myself starting a fourth one and I'm like no I think I'm I think I'm done and hot dogs are very similar to that in that uh, I always think like you know if, if it's a barbecue or somewhere someone whatever we're just having hot dogs I always think oh, I love hot dogs I'm gonna eat so many fucking hot dogs you won't believe how many fucking hot dogs I'm about to eat and I'm going to eat an obscene, unhealthy amount of hot dogs. Um, and every time, without fail, I hot dogs I can manage maybe two. And then I'm just like, Oof, actually, <laughs> it's quite filling, isn't it? Hot dogs. You wouldn't necessarily think it is, but it turns out it is. Um, so that's my answer to that question. I can usually manage about two. I could probably manage three if I really, like, tried, but, uh, you know, that'd be pushing it a little bit. Um, what am I doing now? I, uh, where would the tongue go about there? See, because there was this that I did... Um, this me trying to fuck I draw your titty and he d I d doesn't look as slumped as I wanted I made it wanted him to look like him slash me to look like he's really sunk in him to in him to himself um, and I don't feel that that first drawing I did really captures that look that I was going for um, so I'm doing another one. And I think it's all a matter of like, I want to make the, um, 
the head look all like bulbous and sunken um, kind of if that makes sense so using those like animation sort of bend and stretch squish and pull pull and push and pull rules and things they have um, nose eyes His tongue coming out. Just to emphasise the fucking slovenliness of it all. And then fit a beard in there somewhere. Shoulders up. Arm coming down here. Hands like this. And then the chair would be like this. And then the arm needs to be up here somewhere, holding the, the pen. That looks a bit more like what I was after. I don't know if it still maybe isn't quite perfect, but it's closer. And that's, that's something. That's not nothing. That's something. Maybe we haven't got it perfect just yet, but we're, we're a step closer. It certainly looks more how I envisioned it than that one. That just looks like he's just laying back, but that one looks like he's really like. And that's what I was after. Right, right up the Aris. There's a reference pick. That's a reference pick. I'll give you a reference pick, love. Right up, you fuck you. Um, if I can shut up. D uh, did I have? I did have shit to talk about. So I spoke a little while ago about how. Well, I've spoken quite a few times about it. How holidays are meaningless to me. They just don't. They. I was about to say they just don't have any meaning for me. Yeah, we got that by <laughs> what you just said. Um, they're meaningless, by which I mean they have no meaning. Oh, brilliant, Ewan. You should, uh, you should be a, uh, a writer, a philosopher, a thinker of ways, with that kind of command of the English language. You really are one of a kind. You should start a podcast, Ewan. I'm sure millions would tune in. Well, you'd be wrong. Um, uh, uh, <coughs> I was thinking, like, so Christmas, I don't celebrate because it's it has no meaning for me. It, it doesn't, like, it literally doesn't mean anything to me. Um, I have no sort of, no need to celebrate Christmas because there's nothing there for me. It doesn't hold anything... Yeah, we get it. Fucking shut up. Christ. Um, what I'm trying to say, I'm trying to draw from a reference picture and then talk about shit at the same time. It's not going well, is it? Or is it? Dwarf. Um, that was silly. It is a silly place. Oi. Uh, <laughs> it couldn't possibly be anything to do with how long I've been going, getting to me at all. That can't can't be what it is. It has to just be that I'm uh, a worthless bastard. That's the that's what's happening right now with all of this. Like, um. So, as I was saying. And I was saying, it got me thinking. Um, Christmas doesn't mean anything to me. Easter, pancake day. <laughs> None of these things have any meaning because I'm far too, I don't know, 
old, cynical, depressed, whatever. Pick, take your pick of, of what it is that I am that makes me this way, this boring, miserable shit of a way. Um, whatever it is... Jesus Christ. Right. So I got to thinking, what would mean something to me? Say if I were to, for instance, celebrate a holiday. If I were to, like, make up a holiday for myself to celebrate. If I gave myself cause for celebration, what would it be? What means a lot to me? Um, And, you know, the easiest... Or, or easy, obvious answer at the moment is nothing. Nothing at all means anything to me. My life is so empty. It really is a void of, of where all the meaning should be. There is not meaning. There is unmeaning. I, I had no intention of going this way. The point... So, M- MF Doom. <laughs> I thought, what if I made uh, myself a holiday about MF and it wouldn't be like hey let's all get together and create our own holiday based on MF Doom just as as my own little personal thing I could just celebrate the the life and work of of Mr Daniel Dumele aka Zevlove X aka Victor Vaughan aka King Ghidorah aka one half of Mad Villain, one half of Danger Doom, one half of JJ Doom. MF, the motherfucking Doom. Metal Fingers, Metal Face, that guy. What if I made a holiday to celebrate him? Because I thought in the past of, you know, I, I have zero interest in tattoos, you know, because I have zero interest in everything and anything, anything and everything. Um, I did think about getting, like, just Doom tattooed on on my knuckles. Shall shall I do it now? It would have been very basic. No fancy designs or anything. Just, like, really simple. Like this. Something like that. Like, a, a, that would be a tattoo of getting that tattooed on my hand. Just as, like, a little, like, ode to... I almost put this little on that pen. That would have been so silly. Um, just an ode to, easily, my favourite musician of all time. The one whose music I've spent the most amount of time... Listening to, searching for, compiling, downloading, enjoying again and again. The one musician I go back to every time, just over and over, and just listen to forever and ever. Um, because I just love every, just, just everything. About, I'm not just going to spend the whole, you know, the next hour talking about how much I love MF Doom. But I, I did think, like, what if... I fucking, fucking did some shit and an MF team. So I was thinking, I've had it, you know, noted down on a note note. You could call it Doomsday, the holiday. Doomsday, that makes sense, doesn't it? Obviously. I mean, the doy. Because, you know, it's doom, isn't it? Um, Where did that black fucking thing go? Because I think that would be good for the, what I want right now. Um... So, and there's so I had a few ideas. Call it Doomsday, MF Doom, celebration of the life. I was going to say and death. I'm not really celebrating his death. You know, mourning him, if anything. But um, celebrating the life and work of MF Doom. Jesus, I'm just repeating myself again and again. This is. We're not even on the home stretch. We're close, but we're. We're getting there. It's all good. Don't worry. We'll get there. We'll get there together. We'll we'll make our way there. Don't worry. Don't worry about it. It's all good. Oh, I'll, I'll I'll get you there safely. Just stick with me, and we'll get there. Don't worry about it. Whew. 
Doomsday. MF Doom, Doomsday. So the so what I was thinking was well, for one thing, if it's a holiday, it, you need a date, don't you? You need a certain date for the holiday to be on. Otherwise, you don't have a holiday. You just have time. Um, and time's rubbish. I hate time. It's fucking stupid. It's one of the worst ideas ever. You might be able to see the notes as I've been talking. Um, so the day Daniel Dumoulin was born was July 13th, 1971. Now, that might be a bit too, like... Because while we are celebrating the guy, the man, who, uh, you know, created the character of MF Doom and, and, and made all the music, I feel like celebrating his birthday is not quite what I'm sort of going for, not quite what I'm after. Um, and is almost too obvious, if that makes sense. Like, oh, what are you celebrating? His birthday. Oh, brilliant. It's a bit like meh, really. Um, so then I thought, well, he died on October 31st, 2020. But it's a little bit morbid to celebrate Doomsday. And it would, it would make sense, kind of, because it is, it is the doom, the final doom to the the mf doom legacy is the day he died um and also there's another holiday i can't remember which one it is but there's a pretty major holiday on um october 31st i believe um, i do actually know what it is i'm just i'm being silly so it, it seems silly to to have it on on that day so then i thought well operation doomsday was released on October 19th, 1999. Um, which, you know, it's not necessarily the birth of MF Doom, but as the first official, like, MF Doom album, that's a pretty good jumping off point. The date is far enough away from Halloween and his death day that it is, it can be, can, it can be considered um, a separate day entirely. It's not like getting in the way of any other holidays. It's not celebrating his death. And if the holiday is going to be called Doomsday, I also I did think if it were to be called if it were to be celebrating his birthday, rather than call it Doomsday, you could call it Doomsday. Because his the guy's surname is Do Doomele. So you could like call it Doom. You have to put the E in there, otherwise it's Dumsday. And that doesn't make any sense. Dumsday, the fuck is Dumsday? No, Doomsday. Doomele. Doomsday. So if you were celebrating his birthday, but we're not celebrating his birthday. We're celebrating MF Doomsday. Doomsday. Operation Doomsday. Celebrating Doomsday on the release of Operation Doomsday, October 19th. So, I might start doing that. I don't even know what I'd do. Just listen to MF Doom all day, maybe make the, the villainous mac and cheese recipe that he's got that's out there that me and Sam made last time I was around his, and it was really, really tasty. Um, yeah, I, I mean, that's, that would be about it. Just listen to MF Doom and celebrate MF Doom and be like, hey, isn't MF Doom cool? Yeah. Cool, the end. That was That was fun. <laughs> Um, and that's my idea for uh, my own holiday, all, all about MF Doom. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. <laughs> I'm also concentrating on drawing. I want to get this face right. Because you fuck the face up and then the whole drawing's fucked, so you've got to get the face right. I think that's all right. I think I've done okay there. And you're welcome to join in. I might, I i don't know if I want to like blow it up and be like, hey everyone, on, like on Instagram for instance, today I'm celebrating Doomsday, you know, to celebrate the life and work of MF Doom. The release date of uh, Operation Doomsday in 1999 was this day, this many years ago. So let's all 
have a party let's live stream mf doom and listen to mf doom and all talk about mf doom and like i don't want to turn it into like some gimmick holiday a drawing prompt list a fucking thing i want to keep it fairly personal like a personal thing because there's no need to celebrate i can just quietly appreciate mf doom and i can do that on any other day and i do i listen to mf doom a lot still um, and will continue to there's no reason i can't do that every day i don't need a holiday to celebrate my favorite musician i can literally do that any time i want but being that my life is so uh you know lacking in in meaning and such it might be nice just to have like a reason to celebrate something you know um, and then if anyone asks it would be like it's, it's one of those things that's a pain in the ass to explain if anyone happens to ask if they if someone says like oh what are you doing today and you go oh it's uh, I'm celebrating and they'll go like oh what are you celebrating you go uh, so have you heard of the rapper MF Doom and depending on who the person is they'll almost inevitably say no um, and you go okay well he's this rapper and he's really influential to me like artistically and stuff he had this character MF Doom and uh, he died and he released an album called Operation Doomsday because he played like a super villain character and it was re released on this date and so every year now I celebrate um, him and his work through uh, that date and the release of that album um, <laughs> or if they say hey what are you up to you can just say oh not much and then go home and you know celebrate doomsday because that's like when people say what do you do and if I say oh I'm an artist then it's like oh what sort of stuff do you do and it's like uh, it's fucking like I do like comic book stuff muscles and guns and sometimes I draw nudes uh, you know, art stuff. I draw this little flesh guy and he murders people. He's like SpongeBob, but he's not. He's like SpongeBob's evil cousin almost, but but not really. Uh, it's just such, it's always, always a pain <laughs> trying to explain what I, I mean, it's not even like I do anything outrageous. Like some artists are like, oh, I explore, you know, the depth of, human emotion through the medium of stacking pillows in a field and seeing how long it takes them to topple over like society topples like a stack of pillows in a field as the wind blows and the cows moo and my mum tells me to come in because dinner's ready like it's not even like I'm doing some shit like that some conceptual performance art nonsense that people look at and go ugh I draw cool shit. That's what I do. Oh, what kind of art do you do? I draw cool shit. Name something. Uh, an axe. Yes, I draw so many axes. I don't know why the person would name an axe. Why would they? They wouldn't. No one would say that. No one would say, if I said name something, they wouldn't go an axe. They'd go a fucking uh, uh, aeroplane. And I'll be like, uh, no, I don't really draw too many aeroplanes. Name something else. Um, dogs. Yeah, I draw dogs. I draw like pet portraits now and again. I draw really good pet portraits. I've done a really, really cool painting of one, a called Fizz Gig from the movie Dark Crystal, and then I incorporated bits of the movie Dark Crystal into the commissioned painting. I, did. I draw muscles and guns. I draw gun viking. I draw this this viking, and he's got guns, and he's my comic. And then there's this Grim Reaper, but he instead of a side, he uses his fist and he punches people down into hell. It's really funny. You should check it out. Here's my Instagram. Follow me on Instagram. A day, you go on. Cunt. Fucking piece of shit. Fuck. Oh, isn't that a nice, nice little portrait? Oh, cute, isn't it? Oh, I cute. You do cute shit. Oh, you're so fucking adorable, Ewan. You make me want to throw up. Yeah, so do it. Fucking throw up a day. This is air so slightly 
inspired by Zach Smith when I was looking at his stuff. Just drawing like a girl, somewhat naked, just chilling out in her residence or whatever. Nice and chill, chill vibes, bed, pillows, t-shirts and vaginas. So that's Doomsday. And look, I've got my Doom tattoo now. That's going to be in the remainder of the video, I guess. I thought about drawing it on there and then just living with it for a while just to see how it works. And then I'd record a podcast with it there. And maybe someone somewhere would be like, Ewan, have you got Doom written on your hand? Is that in reference to MF Doom, the rapper? The other thought I had was to get a little, like, Doom mask tattooed here. Um, I guess I'm just going to be covered in Doom references now. Um... Like just a little thing like that, just a, just a little, obviously it would look better than that. What if I got both, if I just got a tattooed hand? Oh, girls love tattoos, don't they? And I'd walk around being like tattooed and wouldn't that be cool? Wouldn't that make me cool and interesting instead of fat and boring? Oh, you draw, that's really cool. Anyway, see you later. Yeah. Oh, hello. Um, 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 um. Are there other questions? Was that a question? No, that was one of my, my notes of like talking points that I have. I'm running out of those. I've got a bunch more questions I can answer. Um, 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 how do you cope with repeating yourself or struggling to get out of your comfort zone while drawing? Well, here's a crazy uh, idea slash thought slash methodology I use. Um, I've lost my references. There we go. Reference, reference, reference. Um, so I have this technique I use best described as... I don't leave my comfort zone. I only do things I know I'm comfortable with that I can do <laughs> with some degree of, of certainty. Uh, and if I start to stray out of that comfort zone, I stop what I'm doing and do everything in my power to get back into that comfort zone as quickly as possible. Because the idea of, of being out of my comfort zone terrifies me. <laughs> As you saw when you, uh, you, I had the whole thing of drawing that, that picture before that. It wasn't out of my comfort zone. Well, it kind of was because it was drawing something like that to a specific reference on camera, which is like being watched, kind of. Um, and that was somewhat out of my comfort zone because my comfort zone is um, sitting alone and have, having people not see what I'm drawing and then have it miraculously appear. Uh, so to have it on camera was out of my comfort zone. Um, which was uncomfortable, so <laughs> I don't do that too often. Uh, I try not to anyway. Um, which is a half, a half joking, but also half a real answer, which is... Honestly, I really do try not to leave my comfort zone too often. Um, I try to draw things I want to draw, and therefore it's almost certainly going to be within my comfort zone. Um, not always necessarily, but chances are it's going to be in my comfort zone. Um, which isn't exactly anywhere close to like good advice or anything, but... It's the truth. It just is what it is. It is what it bloody is. How do I... What was the fucking question? How do I cope with repeating myself or struggling to get out of your comfort zone? Um, I don't know. The whole repeating myself is a tricky one because I do sometimes feel that I'm repeating myself and I should do something different and something... New 
ish, I guess. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I've, if I've got a, a, an adequate answer to that. I, I apologise. I feel like I, I'm lacking a bit in terms of my ability to answer that one properly. I'm also trying to draw from reference again, which means I go quiet because I'm scared of getting it wrong. I'm scared of fucking up. I'm scared of a appearing to not know what I'm doing when really I do know what I'm doing. I know very much what I'm doing. Well, I just have to make sure everyone knows that I know what I'm doing. Repeating myself or... I'm not sure I even understand the question <laughs> now I'm thinking about it. How do I cope with repeating myself? Um, I th maybe I don't worry about it. I'm, I'm, I think maybe that's why I'm having trouble answering is because I don't think I worry about repeating myself. Because um, that's one of those things that's like... If, if I am repeating myself, so what? As long as I'm drawing things I want to be drawing, it doesn't matter. Because then like the worst that can happen is like somebody else saying oh you draw this all the time or don't you draw anything else other than fucking tits and asses and you know muscles and guns and stuff but then the answer to that is so who gives a shit that's what i want to draw i draw because i like drawing i like creating images and these are the images i like creating these are the things i want to be drawing so does it not make sense that i draw them a lot more than once <laughs> uh, so yeah I don't think there's any reason not to repeat yourself uh, if something's fun why wouldn't you do it more than once <laughs> maybe that sounds too obvious but literally yeah like if if you enjoy drawing a certain thing why wouldn't you draw it all the time like it just makes sense doesn't it so yeah, I think that's maybe where I was having difficulty trying to answer that because, yeah, I, I don't find that I struggle with repeating myself. Um, and then what was the other part? Uh, comfort zone. And yeah, I mean, I, I do try to stay in my comfort zone. And I again, I don't think... They say, you know, people do have opinions or like, oh, if, if you never leave your comfort zone, you never grow, you never learn. And I'm not sure I agree with that. Because, you know, people have fields of study. <laughs> Scientists, you know, they study one subject for fucking years and years and years and years and years and years and, years and become an expert on it. But if you said to them, oh, but don't you want to leave your comfort zone and study something else? And it's like, well, no, because this is the thing I'm interested in. This is the, the thing I'm sort of dedicated to whether intentionally or otherwise and you know uh, art is that like it's my comfort zone for a reason and and i don't feel a need to leave it <laughs> why, why would i i enjoy this this box that i'm in i don't want to leave the box the box is comfortable why would i want to think outside the box when i'm comfortable in the box box is fun look how much fun I'm having in the box all kinds of this tits and ass look these these are boobs and they're in the box you wouldn't get those outside the box you only get those in the box you gotta be in the box if you want to be in the box 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 in the box box let's all box the box 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 I don't know what the fuck that was it was a bunch of silliness that's what it was um Yeah, don't. There's. I think that's one of the the problems with like being online, is everyone puts their opinions out there, and, and everyone has this idea that like you have to be something online, you have to be a certain way, or be perceived to be a certain way, even if you're not actually a certain way. And then all these people will say, 
you know, everyone loves the fu their fucking sayings. Everyone loves to say, you know, if you spend your life in your comfort zone, then, you know, you'll never grow, you'll never learn anything new. And, you, and like, you yeah, fuck off, you know. <laughs> it's not up to you, it's up to me. It's my comfort zone. Uh, it's my life, they're my, it's, in this case, it's my art. And I'm doing what I want to be doing, so you can fuck all the way off. Plus, anyone that says that kind of shit, look at them and see, look at them, them, look at them, and see what they're doing that's so great. What do you do? Or do you go to the gym every day? Are you up at five every morning? Really, is that, is that fun? Is that what you enjoy doing? And if that is what they enjoy doing, then fair enough, fair play to them, let them carry on. But, that's a miserable way to live. <laughs> I don't want to live my life that way. Fuck the lot of them. Fuck the bastards, fuck the bozos, fuck the bezos. Fuck anyone who tries to tell you how or what you should be. Which is, you know, age old fucking wisdom really, isn't it? But it is wisdom. I really like this. I'm quite f fond of, of how this is looking already. I like the, the lighting and shit. Yes, this, this is a good drawing. <laughs> I was a little bit worried at first, but uh, it's come out white. It's white. It's actually it's actually white. Yeah, don't don't sweat it. Just fucking just stay doing what you're doing, and then fuck everyone else. I was always told, uh, you know, I've told this story again and again because it's a funny one, um, but I was always told, you know, don't draw with ballpoint pen, it's unprofessional, you should use pen and ink, you should use printmaking and, you know, drawing pens and this and that and brush and ink and whatever, basically anything that isn't ballpoint pens. Um, and now I, in a way, in a roundabout way, at least somewhat, make a living drawing with ballpoint pens so like if i'd listen to people telling me what i should and shouldn't do then where the fuck would i be i might even be way more successful <laughs> which is a funny thing to think because like I, there's every chance that if i had taken like the advice of people who told me that kind of shit that i'd be <laughs> in a much more like I, I may be financially successful, but then I hate the idea of measuring success by money because it's fucking stupid. As if I haven't gone on about that enough this whole fucking time. Uh, and yeah, I also really hate trying to sound like I'm giving advice. Like I know some, I have some deep insight into the workings of the universe, so you should listen to me talk about them, because I know what I'm saying. Well, I know what I'm saying, but I don't necessarily know what the fuck I'm talking about. Or do I? No, no I don't. Do, 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 boop, boop. Uh, I'm looking at questions, sorry. Sorry to go quiet on you. Um, <laughs> if you could die and be put into any media slash series slash world, what would it be? Or are you happy with this world? Well, let me answer the second part of that question first. No! <laughs> no, I am not happy at this world. Given the choice, I would absolutely leap, hop, skip and jump out of this world into another one if I thought it was going to be better. Um, in terms of which world, I assume you mean like any sort of TV show or film or video game if I could go into and exist as a person in any fictional land what would it be um 
I don't know. I always thought Adventure Time was cool. I thought living in the land of Ooh could be a blast. There's like magic and stuff, but then there's also like, you know, real world shit going on. But magically. Um, this is one of those things where I get weirdly cynical and negative because I don't like the idea of, of fantasies and dreams of being like, because it's to me, it's very similar to what would you do if you won the lottery? If you won, you know, 100 million pound lottery. Oh, my God. Imagine what you could do with all that money. I'd do this and this. I'd buy a house and a car and have a swimming pool and buy my mama house and thing and thing and thing. And it's like, I, I genuinely feel like, for me personally, for other people, I'm sure it's different and, you know, go ahead and do what, you, what thou wilt. But for me personally, it's not worth thinking about. Because if the, the best that can come, to me personally, again, from thinking about those sorts of things, is that I get depressed because I think about, for instance, what I'd do if I won the lottery. And then... I look around my little apartment and I go, oh, well, never mind, eh? <laughs> Guess I'll just carry on living life the way it is. It's like having an amazing dream. Ah, oh, I, I I put this in my Instagram story the other day, um, but then I deleted it because I realised I had spelling mistakes in it and I got embarrassed, <laughs> so I deleted the story. Um, I had a dream, a nighttime dream, that I was best friends with uh, a chimpanzee and we hung out all the time. We did everything together. We like communicated through like signing and implying stuff. Um, you know, obviously we weren't speaking with each other, but like we'd ook ook at each other and like, you know, tap him and like tap this and sort of imply things. And, and we were able to communicate. We hung out, we went places, we did things together. It was the best time, the best it was honestly such a weirdly, like, happy, nice dream. Um, and then I, I was woken up very suddenly. There was just some noise, and I'm a, a, a terrifically light sleeper, so the slightest noise will wake me up always. Um, so there was some noise, like, outside, just a car noise or something. And So I woke up really suddenly. Um, and I was awoken to the stark realisation that there was no chimpanzee best friend and that my life is far emptier than I'd like it to be as a result. Um, and I was genuinely, like, sad in my soul <laughs> for a good, like, couple of hours after that because I felt like I'd lost something amazing that I had for a brief moment, which was a chimpanzee best friend. <laughs> And I don't care how dumb it sounds. It, it was it was bliss. I was living in absolute bliss for a little while in my dreams. Having a best friend that's a chimpanzee. It was so much fun. I was genuinely like, I genuinely felt happy. And I haven't felt that for a long, long time. IRL. Um, so it was, it was such a nice <laughs> thing. To have like a, a brief moment of feeling happy. And then I felt the complete opposite of that. Once I woke up, I was horrifically depressed. I was so distraught that this it was all a dream. That I didn't have a chimpanzee best friend. And I'm, I realise I'm just repeating myself again and again and again and again. But I'm trying to make you understand... <laughs> Just how fucking empty my life is without my best friend, Chimpanzee. I don't remember if he had a name. I don't believe in the dream any names were mentioned or anything. Um, he was he didn't need a name. We didn't need to communicate names to each other because names were irrelevant. We just were together and we were happy that way. Times were good. Um... Which is to say, that's why I don't like to think about what I'd do if I won the lottery or what if I could live in a, in a fantasy world. Which is a really shitty answer to give when someone's just asking a question like, 
oh, you know, it's the same as like, oh, what's your favourite dinosaur? It's like, well, it doesn't matter because they're not around. Like, what what benefit is there to me having a favourite dinosaur? I do have a favourite dinosaur. It's Triceratops, the best one. Um, but it's it's that sort of thing of like, there's just nothing to be gained from it. <laughs> Uh, so yeah it, uh, I wish I could give a better answer and I could I'm sure I could give a better I could, I could come up I could literally just say anything I could say I'd like to live in fucking Skyrim that'd be fun wouldn't it just as an NPC fucking chopping wood have a little house somewhere ignore the priest fucking Babbling on in White Run. The future of Skyrim, the future of Tamriel. Yeah, all right. Fucking shut up. We get it. <laughs> Tamriel, Skyrim, the gods. Mm, Talos worships banned because of the fucking elves. Bunch of cunts. <sighs> Have I spoken about how why I hate the Legion in Skyrim? This is relevant to nothing. I probably have, but I'm going to say it again anyway, just because it's something to talk about, isn't it? Right, so the problem is, within Skyrim, there is a, a civil war going on, primarily between the Legion forces and the Stormcloaks, who are the Nords, who are like the true sons of Skyrim. <sighs> In essence, they are white supremacists. They are very racist towards, uh, like, elves and stuff. It's not good. It is what it is. Um, and so, but, so you don't necessarily want to side with them because they're bigots and racists and supremacists and, you know, they're pieces of shit because of that. But then the alternative, because if you follow the Civil War uh, story arc um, and you do those quests, you have to basically pick a side. Um, but then the opposite is the Empire, which is like the police state. So it's like, well, who the, is it's not even the lesser of two evils. It's just two evils. Um, but then I would always uh, side with the Stormcloaks as you know horribly racist as they are not that it has any real world implications as long as you understand it's a video game and that's that but because right at the very start of the game you go into the city of helgen because you're on the cart and it's hey you're finally awake that whole thing um and then you know you're going to the chopping block because you've gotten mixed up in this whole thing you were caught crossing a border illegally or something and they took you in this uh, wagon and they're taking some other criminals to be beheaded and you're with them so you're going to be beheaded too so you get off the wagon and then you design your character how they look give them a name and everything uh, and then once you're done you look up and there's a guy there and he goes huh they're not on the list what do we do and then the empire soldier she goes um, oh, it doesn't matter if he's not on the list Put him to the chopping block anyway. And it's like... What? Are you insane? You've got, a, you've got a list of, like, people to be beheaded. With, you know, people you consider genuine criminals, traitors to the Legion, detractors, and, you know, bad people that you're going to behead in the name of the Emperor, or whatever. That's fine, but then you look at your list and you go, oh, this person's not on the list. Rather than saying, oh, I, I guess let them go or, you know, put them somewhere else for now and we'll deal with it later. You say, ah, fuck it. Cut their head off anyway. Fuck you. <laughs> Entirely and absolutely and forever fuck you. Horrendous, horrendous behaviour. So that's why I will forever not side with the Legion. Not that I even recall the last time I bothered doing any of the um, the Civil War storyline, because it's so dull and uninteresting. It's exactly the same as I've gone on and on about with... Um, I get the same vibe from that as I do the 
the whole faction thing in Fallout New Vegas, where it's just, it's not my fight. I have no part in this. It's it, it's not about me. It's I'm not relevant to this. It's not relevant to me. It can all fuck off and leave me alone. <laughs> oh, the Civil War. Yeah, well, I was just trying to cross the border for my own purposes. So you can all fucking figure your shit out. Leave me out of it. Oh, am I dragonborn and am I important? Am I potentially a weapon to help win the war for one side or the other? Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck the absolute lot of you. Pieces of shit. Cut my head off just because I'm there, even though I'm not on the list of people having their heads cut off. Worthless. Absolutely horrendous. He's not on the list. Ah! Chop his head off anyway. Fuck you! <laughs> Fucking... It's so mad at that. Hopefully that answered your question. Um, Skyrim, I guess. No, I don't even know if I would like to be in Skyrim. I don't know. I don't, can't... It's one of those things as well where... I might have thought about an answer to this question without really thinking about it a hundred times. Seen so many pieces of media where I'm like, oh, that would be cool to live in that world, or that would be cool to live in this world. Um, but now I'm on the spot and, and I'm saying think of one of them. I suddenly can't. I no examples spring to mind. I just cannot. I really like this drawing. I'm really happy with it. I think it looks really cool. Um, yeah, I just cannot fucking think of a single goddamn piece of media all of the sudden. Uh, all of a sudden. All of my sudden. All of my send men. Um, fucking hell, shut up. I'm I, honestly, I'm trying to think right now of pieces of media. I got nothing, nothing is coming to mind. God, how worthless. Just trying to draw some tits. Don't make me answer these difficult questions. <laughs> And that, this is me trying not to stay too cynical and be like, it's a pointless question because you can't live in a fantasy world because you've got to accept the fact that reality is as it is and you're going to be miserable forever until you die. And if you're lucky, the day you die will be sooner rather than later. Like, yeah, sure. But someone asked the question and, you know, fucking answer it. Don't be a prick. <laughs> This part here, this sort of triangular trapezoid kind of shape here, is a very important shape because there are times when you know that when you're looking up at a head, the nose goes like this and there's nostrils and the eyes sort of are lower down and then the mouth is a bit higher up and the ears are lower down. But I know certainly for myself, I knew those basic rules for quite a while, but then I'd draw the chin like this and then the neck and be like yeah they're looking up and it's like well kind of but not but then because the chin juts outward at an angle from the profile if you've got the uh, eye nose mouth well, that actually looks really good um, and the chin is like this at this kind of angle so if you're looking up you're kind of looking directly at the chin and then there's the jaw here and the neck like that so then this trapezoid is this bit here just underneath the jaw that attaches the chin to the neck so when you're looking up you get this this bit of the chin this flat bit here would be like this kind of shape here and then it would go to the jaw which would go up there leaving you with that trapezoid shape there and then the neck tendons and shit and that's something I feel like I've only really taken serious note of in recent years and it definitely has helped my like drawing of heads and faces taking note of that little bit of skin there 
And then you'll start noticing it. If you look at photos that are taken from lower angles, you'll start noticing that bit. If you hadn't already, or if you already knew that, then, you know, oh, I apologise that you knew stuff, my bad. Um, but if you hadn't necessarily paid any attention to it or thought about it in any detail, you might now start noticing that. If you look at pictures like that, you'll realise, oh, yeah, there's that, that just that bit under the chin that joins the bit to the bit. You don't necessarily think about it when you... Because whenever you start drawing heads and skulls and stuff, you just draw, like, the face and the eye sockets and the nose and the funny teeth and whatever. You don't really pay too much attention to that bit there. Uh, but it's there. It's always there. Sometimes it's hidden by, like, extra chins or, like, sometimes the, the chin just goes sort of straight into the neck when people look like thumbs. That's how I draw my, my pink mans. Um, but it's there and it's it's something, it's a detail and it's worth taking note of and staying aware of and, you know, whole bunch of shit. Fucking knobhead. I forgot to press record, didn't I? I, I mean, considering how long I've been going so far, I... I I'm surprised there haven't been more mistakes like that, like forgetting to press record, for instance. Um, and I have been going and going. I was thinking, uh, you know, some people might think, like, if there's a video this length, there's got to be something to it. There's got to be, oh, you know, uh, tutorials or, or, like, grand paintings being done. Like, if you were given however many hours we've been going so far if you were given that much time to just sit and create artwork this is you've got this time make whatever you want literally whatever you want there's no stipulations no rules just sit make some artwork what would you do would you create grand paintings would you do amazing artworks like really sort of experiment with uh, you know the mediums you use would you really put the effort in and then like make something happen or would you just do the same shit you always do, sit and babble for <laughs> hours upon hours upon hours? Um, but you have to bear in mind, this isn't just the hang and draw podcast. It's the hang and draw and 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 hang and draw podcast. Yeah, so there's... It's... It was never meant to be more than it is. It's, it is what it is, and that's what it is. And that's what it's going to be. Here's something I'm learning through this process, because this is uh, a different process to that which I'm usually used to doing. Uh, which, I mean, it's not really, but it's just what I usually do, but more. A lot, a lot more. Um, I think it's making me physically unwell. <laughs> I feel physically in my body, I feel worn out. Um, I feel like I'm getting ill, like in my, my, my voice feels like it's, it's getting hurt. Um, which I think makes sense because I'm just, <laughs> just hours and hours and hours on end. Uh, with, you know, a couple of little breaks here and there to refuel, recharge, literally and figuratively. But um, yeah, I think this is <laughs> ultimately detrimental to my uh, health. But then, uh, that's, I don't really, I've never really cared about my health. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's never been uh, a priority. Something I've really, you know, given too much thought to. So, never mind. I do it for you anyway. Well, somewhat. If, if it was for you, it would be like... <laughs> tutorials and whatever um, I did think about that but then I realized I I don't want to I just want to the whole the point the point is to do a podcast and then spend the entire podcast talking about the podcast that's what's fun funny in it oh you did a 12-hour podcast wow what, what did you do I just spoke about doing a 12-hour podcast oh you just spent the whole time talking about what you're doing and then you didn't actually do anything with it yeah I didn't intend to go that way. This is a uh, sculpture by someone, Feral Works. Um, and I liked it, so I'm doing a little doodle of it. 
it's like two skulls sort of mashed together, kind of, kind of, sort of. Um, so that's, that's that, basically. I just, I'm, I'm torn between, uh, you know, if, if I'm going to spend so much time recording a thing, part of me thinks, like, it should be, like, <laughs> worthwhile. <laughs> there should be some overall grand point and consensus, consensus, maybe not the right word, but there should be some, like, some greater point to it all, a reason. But then, on the opposite side, I think, nah, <laughs> mm, no, nah, you don't need that. <laughs> Fuck it. We're gonna do whatever. Let's talk about some shit, draw some shit, and do that uh, over and over relentlessly for a good few hours. Make yourself sick. <laughs> do it until you you get sick from doing it. Hey. I had this, um, <clears throat> I was speaking to someone and there's something come up. Um, they were drawing Pokemon skulls, or they were drawing, they did a Cubone skull. And, um, hello, by the way, if you're watching, I don't think they, they are, will be. Um, they were, did a Cubone skull, and I was like, hey, that's six, my favourite Pokemon. I think Cubone's probably my favourite Pokemon. Uh, and then, oh, I don't care anymore, just fucking do the shit. And then they were like, um, I want to do more Pokemon, but I don't know which ones to do. And I was thinking about it, and I realised, like, with a lot of Pokemon, like, my first idea was, you know, do the starter, but I'm drawing them at the moment, currently. Uh, uh, I mean, it's not the starter, but it is an evolution of the starter. Uh, 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 uh. But then I realised, like, Charmander and, and Bulbasaur and... Um, let's get fuck. Let's get fuck. Uh, Charmander. I know he's not the first one, is he? But whatever. I can whatever. Is he? No, it's Bulbasaur. Bulbasaur's the first one. So you've got Charmander's head is like this. Basically. I, I'm an artist. Did you know I'm an artist? His eyes here. Squirtle's got a very, very similar head. Um, but a bit more round and bigger apparently Jesus I don't know why I did it fucking huge his eyes and his nose and everything and then Bulbasaur Bulbasaur it's slightly different um, something like that with his ears and then my issue being if you were to do the skulls of these Pokemon, they'd probably look like pretty similar. I'm sure artwork of that already exists. It's, it's bound to, isn't it? Um, probably look very similar to like cat skulls. That actually looks kind of cool. <laughs> they have a couple of the teeth in there. Um, yeah, I just, my my worry about, not worry, it's like it's a big important thing to worry about. Um, my real concern is just that all the skulls themselves will look very similar. Um, which is, you know, not a bad thing, but uh, yeah, you want some fucking differentiation, don't you? And then, I don't know what the fuck, I assume a turtle skull looks basically the same as, as the rest of them. Wouldn't that be something if, if should I actually Google turtle skull? Turtle skull. Actually research the shit rather than just draw what I think it might look like. Um, oh yeah, basically that. They look very solid. Some, some skeletons and skulls can look very... Uh, brittle and like made up of lots of parts but turtle skulls seem to look a 
bit more solid, almost like they made out of plaster, almost like it's a cast of a, uh, a plaster cast of a skull rather than a real skull. Maybe. Um, yeah, just the skulls themselves look very, very similar. And I mean, skulls in general look very, very similar. But uh, I was thinking which skulls then would be uh, the um, um, Articuno, Zapdos, and Moltres. I thought about those. Uh, uh, and now I'm just going to uh, Articuno. Um, the problem is once you strip away all the the stuff around the Pokemon heads and you just have a skull, then you've just got a skull. So Articuno has like a, a roundish head with a little beak. And so his skull would probably look something like that. <laughs> that would basically be Articuno's skull. Um, but then he's got these bits here. And then there's Zapdos. Oh, did you know Articuno, Uno is one, Zapdos, Dos is two, Moltres, yeah. Um, Zapdos has got a funny head, hasn't he? He's got a long beak. Long, it's not even, did I? Yeah, yeah, no, it's sort of like that. Long, long beak. And then he's got his spiky head. But that's almost certainly not his skull, is it? That would be silly. His skull would be like that. And he'd have a lower, lower beak. Big skull, big bird eyes. Um, and then Moltres. What's Moltres looking like? Moltres. Uh, ba -ba. Uh, not too dissimilar, really. A little bit more sort of like oh, it depends on which piece of artwork you look at. Um, I think it's quite a maybe sort of between the two. Um, but again, just like a bird skull, and even then, yeah, they look more similar than I thought they would. And then fire and shit. So I think if you're going to draw those, you'd want to do like um, have the the canvas or whatever you're drawing or painting on maybe do like the skull and then do that thing where you have like a silhouette around the skull of the shape of the thing or you paint it like blue and icy and then this one you paint yellow and electric and then this one you paint red and fiery um, it's a little bit lame having like red blue and yellow uh, they're a bit well not lame but a bit basic in it but then, I mean, that's the colours of the Pokemon, so... Uh, Jesus Christ. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Hey, yeah. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Do, do, do. We love Jesus. That's the real reason I'm taking a break after this. I'm going to convert to um, my my whole channel is going to be become a Christian art channel. <laughs> so this is one last big hurrah to get all the all the 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 um, 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 the blaspheming and the cursing and the sinning to get all that out of the way now and then come back renewed, reborn as a Christian arts channel. Obviously I'm joking, but now I'm thinking about it, it would be funny to do at least a couple of videos like that, just to sort of like, just to be funny. And do them like as convincingly as I can, and be like, I'm now a Christian arts channel. Let's draw fucking John the Baptist. Let's draw Christ being baptized. Let's draw the Last Supper. Let's draw Christ crucified. And then after like two or three videos, I can start doing like, let's draw Christ and his 12 disciples all sitting around blowing and jerking each other off, blowing each other and jerking each other off. Let's draw, and then just the worst, <laughs> most vile, blasphemous Christian shit and get my channel taken down. 
because that's obviously considered hate speech. You don't draw Jesus being blown by his disciples because you hate him. It's not hate speech. You do it because you love them all so much and I want them to have a good time. Just trying to help the Lord have some fun. That's all I'm doing. <laughs> and then, you know, something, something, he is risen. The Lord is coming. Something about a saviour, I don't know. Something about a key. That's from Spaced. If you know that, you know that. If not, fucking get to know that, it's good. Except for, it's it suffers a little bit from um, being of its time in that it has some transgender jokes which aren't necessarily, <laughs> it wouldn't really fly today. It is one of those com comedies where it's just like, oh, couldn't make that these days. Uh, you could, you just, you'd have to omit uh, certain things like the use of the tea slur <laughs> it's not really wouldn't really fly with today's audiences I don't even like this drawing I'm not that happy with it it's not bad it's just I don't think it looks quite how I was envisioning whatevs We could do something else. <laughs> you don't have to just sit here and carry on. You could change you and you could develop and evolve. Or you could not. Changing takes a lot of effort to like actually implement real change. Uh, it's not the sort of effort I feel like I want to put into things. Whatevs. Um, there's just something else, something else entirely. Well, not something else entirely. There's, there's another, I had another, um, this feels low energy. Why does this feel so low energy? Um, my leg's shaking. I've got caffeine in my system, but I, I feel like I'm not um, up. <laughs> not, not quite erect enough. There's this sculpture, um, this cardboard sculpture of the thing by, oh no, it's backwards, Neil uh, Ag Aglet, Aglet? Agelet. Um I've reversed the image so he's facing the other way because I wanted him to be facing the other way. And it's this cardboard sculpture he made of the thing. Um, and I like its shapes, so I want to draw it. I think I'm already fucking it up. Oh no, don't make it shit, you in. You're better than this. You're better than that. You're better than everyone. You're the best around. <laughs> That's the problem with being the best, is everyone expects you to be the best all the time. They expect you to do the best work they've ever seen, consistently. Always, always, always. There's no room for error. And if you don't, then they say you've fallen off. And you used to be good. Remember when Ewan was good? No one's speaking like that. No one. It doesn't happen. Maybe it does happen, but I don't see it. Don't pay attention to the, the fuck faces. Pay attention to the faces you fuck. There you go. Don't pay attention to the fuck faces. Only pay attention to the faces you fuck. And fuck them with a lot of love and heart and spirit. And a lot of care and attention. Um, and make sure they, you know, enjoy having their face fucked. Because some people might not really be into it. But some people might really, really be into it. So, you know. If you're lucky, you find someone who enjoys having their face fucked, and then you can fuck a face until you're blue in your face. Until you get blown in your face. Until you blow your own face off. Blowing faces in all the right places. Welcome to the Ewan Shablouin Plob Plus. Just like witches at black masses. Um, let's get some shadow in here. This pink posca will be darker, won't it? Will it dry? Yeah, that would be dark. Dark enough. That's what we're looking for. Dark enough. So yeah, I don't know if this guy Neil uh, Neil 
Aglet, Neil Aglet, Neil Agelet. I apologise for not knowing how to pronounce his name. He has some, I don't know if it's an obsession, but he draws a lot of pictures of like these very, very characterful sort of caricature pictures of the thing. Um, and he makes these like sculptures. I don't know if he makes them to be like masks or, or helmet type things you can wear, but they look like that. And I want one. I, I, I could absolutely make one. They're made out of cardboard and it's a very similar thing um, to how I was talking about Ashley Wood and Simon Bisley's paintings where you can sort of see how they're made just by looking at them. Because these are cardboard sculptures where you can see the pieces of card and the tape holding them together and, you know, they're just like loose, rough cardboard sculptures and I really, really like them for that. I think they're, it's really uh, effective and impressive. I love to see it. I love making shit out of cardboard. I follow a few artists who make shit out of cardboard. Big like puppets and masks and outfits and stuff. It's really, really cool stuff to see. I actually did that in my um, in the, the, the failed uh, graffiti exhibition I had back in the day that I mentioned. Um, I did a, a cardboard. It was just a sphere, a cardboard sphere, but it was loads of scraps of cardboard. It was maybe about this big, like a, a beach ball kind of. Um, and I got pieces of cardboard and then I got screws, but just like pushed the screws through the card to like connect it to other bits of card. So it was a big cardboard sphere held together with screws and I hung it up because um, you know scraps of cardboard cardboard boxes recycling bins garbage it all sort of fit in with the theme of uh, you know the graffiti that I was going for let's do a th a something else let's do a, a really a different thing where should this be um, the lights coming from here so it would make sense to do it here wouldn't it um, 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 oh, that's a, not a brush pen, I wanted the brush pen, not the drawing pen, you son of a bitch. Um, I don't think anyone cared for the, <laughs> the cardboard globe as much as I did. I had fun making it. Uh, I thought it looked cool. It was like a like a disco ball, but made of cardboard. So just like an un-disco ball, like the least disco ball, disco ball you could ever hope to disco ball. Uh, you know, almost seems pointless, but it was it was art. It, oh, it was you know an expression. Maybe a bit more. Yeah, I don't think anyone gave a shit about it, so <laughs> never mind, eh? Cool. Let's slice some shit up. I do have my horrifically blunt knife. I did have. Fuck, where's it gone now? There. Um, sign up to my Patreon so I can afford to get a knife that actually... I uh, just need some new blades, and I can almost certainly afford some, like, right now. I'm not destitute, you know, I'm not starving. Um, but it's just one of those things it's like when something's so simple that you just don't do it because it's like you know you can do it whenever and as such you end up doing it never I have so many things like that most things in my life are like that actually to be fair um, that's just how I live my life oh yeah no I'll, that's easy I'll get to that right away yeah anytime I'll do it in a well I say right away no I won't uh, yeah I'll get to it in a little bit no worries. And then I just don't. And then it sits undone for forever and ever and ever. Never being completed. Still, you know, sign up to my Patreon. I do have, uh, did I mention the, the video idea I had? The challenge videos? I don't know how much detail I went into. Um, but I'm thinking when I do them, um, I don't think I did <laughs> say in detail the videos that I might be making for a while uh, while I don't do podcasts for a while after this um, I think I'll almost certainly will have a like a shorter edited version on YouTube for the public and then a full unedited version on Patreon so that will be another thing to see on Patreon another reason something else, another gift the people who matter. 
only the only people who matter are the ones giving me money. <laughs> it's not remotely true, but I still do try to do something for those people. You know, not that they matter more, but they do matter, and therefore, you know, uh, Patreon subscriber lives matter. Just like black lives matter. It doesn't mean other lives don't matter. It just means these ones do. So fucking help them out. Fuck. Um, let's get some spray paint. Do, 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 do. Should we do two tone? I'm feeling two tone, but um, see if this cap is blocked and how badly. Oh, no, it's not. That's cool. I want to do something a bit different. I don't want to just sit and draw the entire time. It would be nice to put at least a little bit more into it than that. Wouldn't it? And then, I think that will look all right. How's that going to? Yeah, I think that Fine, I don't need too much more than that. And then a little, a little, little dab of this. See, we are painting. It might not be the painting you're used to seeing me do, but it's paint, isn't it? God, look at that, it's got shadow, wow. That looks kind of cool. <laughs> I do not dislike that, I think that's pretty neat. Um, what am I, Wait, that one, that one, that's the one. That one, that one, that's the one. Let's fucking use that one. Um, I'm going to talk about the, the new video series. Again, I apologise if I have spoken about it during this video. Um, but as you can imagine, I'm not sure what I was talking about <laughs> fucking hours upon hours ago. So yeah, uh, if I am repeating myself, I'm sorry. So this new video series idea I have is, it, call, I'm going to call it something along the lines of Can You Draw? Um, and the, the premise will be every week I'll put a thing on Patreon and maybe Instagram. If, if I get shit results from Patreon, <laughs> then I might jump over to Instagram. But I'll start on Patreon and I'll put a thing up saying, hey everybody, challenge me to draw something. Finish the sentence, hey Ewan, can you draw something? This, XXX, dot, 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 can you draw? And then, yeah, fill in the blank. So Ewan, can you draw uh, a praying mantis? Ewan, can you draw... Um, Jesus and the Twelve Disciples having an orgy. Ewan, can you draw uh, furry porn? Ewan, can you draw this? Ewan, can you draw that? And within reason, I'll take on the challenge. Obviously, I'll choose. So if someone says, Ewan, can you draw, you know, something outwardly and obviously uh, r offensive. Like, I don't mind offensive, you know, but within reason, like... Swear words are just funny in general, so some people might be offended by them, but it, it, it's swear words, it's whatever. Um, but then if it's like, I'm not going to be racist or homophobic or transphobic, hateful like that in any way. I'm not committing hate crimes, basically, in my artwork. Um, so, you know, I won't be doing that. But that's going to be the premise of the new video series that I have coming up. I was going to say something else. I had another, I had a reason I was going to talk about that. Fuck. Um, I just, I think that would be kind of fun. And then, like I say, I'll put like a short edited version onto the YouTube. Be like, I was challenged to draw this. So let's see if I could draw this. And then a pew, maybe some music and I'll like, draw, draw, draw. Maybe a little bit of research drawing, some little sketches and then the final piece. And wow, he did it. He drew the thing. Or maybe it'll end with me going, oh, turns out, no, I can't draw the thing. Aren't I a big shit? Um, and yeah, that'll be, 
I think it'll be fun to do at least for a little while. It could be fun to watch at least for a little while. Just yeah, a little little bit of a change up from the huge. That's what we're going for. I did bring that up for a reason and now I've forgotten it. That's how it's going. Now that's where I'm at. I, I don't know. I do feel delirious. I, I collapsed after the first round of recordings and I think I'm going to collapse even harder <laughs> when I'm all done and done and done. Um, and you'll say, you know, you, you don't need to wear yourself out, you and you know, chill out. It's all good. But you're wrong, I do need to wear myself out, otherwise it's not worth it. If I don't feel like I'm dying by the end of it, then what was the point? I really like this. <laughs> I think it's really, really cool. Um, yeah, big up, N Neil. I, like I said, I, I flipped the image, so I, I'm reading his name backwards. N-E-I-L-A-G-L-E-T. Uh, Neil Aglet. Look him up, he's good. And I like this. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> it is something a bit different, isn't it? Though? That's kind of a pile of shit. And now it's got fucking. It's got an eyeball in it. That's kind of neat. Unintentionally neat. Ah, spray paint the shadow and everything. Ooh, it's fucking neat, isn't it? Have you heard of Glenn Fabry? He's an influence. We're getting on. We've 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 looked through some like the less obvious, uh, but no no less influential influences, um, and some others just cool. And now we're looking at the more obvious, more recent, more current influences. Oh shit! Wait a minute. Ugh. And about. I mean, it's not like I've never looked at Glenn Fabry before. I had this because I really, really like his artwork in this. And then I had this next to me to, you know, because Glenn Fabry's Batman, uh, Judge Dredd. Oh, I forgot this. The obvious fucking... Anyway, I, I love... I think... Um, Glenn Fabry is the reason I like Slain at all, because I saw Glenn Fabry's Slain before I saw Simon Bisley's. Um, and I love this little bit because it's like, I assume it takes place at night, and he's painted it in grey tones, which really, really adds to it, which is absolutely something I tried to replicate in Gun Viking in issue four, I think, when there's like a flashback and it's black and white, it's at night time. I don't. I didn't do it as nearly as effectively as, as Glenn Fabry. Um, his his mastery of anatomy is insane. That's why he put out that Anatomy for Fantasy Artists book. Um, love these pieces, and like the cartoon characterful uh, pictures of like people being choked and stuff, and Ucko the Goblin having the time of his life, slain, just looking brooding and badass. Hand painted comics at their finest. Um, your face offends me, Connell. Crack! Quick, sire, let me look at your hand. Goddess be praised, your knuckles are unblemished. Crack that guy in the face. <laughs> his nose is broken, his teeth are knocked out. That is like the scene from Fight Club where he beats the shit out of the, the blonde guy. I wanted to destroy something beautiful. You know, edgelord stuff. So you can see here... And um, this is a really good example. If, if I, I assume you can actually see what's going on. Um, you can see the ink drawing underneath and the wash and very few layers of acrylic paint just to sort of imply the highlighting on the features on his face. Um, and why not? So, he, you know, he does have more rendered pieces here and there, but you can see it's painted quickly. I was going to say speedily. It is painted quickly. Um, like there are parts where the flesh isn't really rendered, but it's sort of, again, fewer layers to just imply the highlighting on, on his skin and stuff. Um, and then blotchy, just grey paint for the backgrounds with the wash still being visible underneath. So people say, why do I paint the red, um, you know, underneath uh, all the actual paint? It's because of stuff like this. This is what I saw when I was learning to paint. 
And I was like, oh, okay, then you wash the thing. And it, it makes sense. You learn about underpainting later on and you figure it out. I really like this. This is a really good pose. You know, Glenn Fabry, anatomy, strong bodies and shit. I like the angle, the, like, the skulls and stuff, and the, the hair going this way, the sword into the ground, like silhouetted but fading up into detail. That's really, really nice. That's actually a technique I used to use. I'll try to find some examples. Um, for the longest time, I want, that was when I was like trying to have a style. So most of my paintings, I'd do almost this exact thing. I don't know if it was copied from this specifically, but this was probably an influence on it, where... Yeah, I'd paint much lighter colours and more detail on top and then towards the legs it would fade down into almost pure blackness or dark dark red that I still use to this day. Um, so I was drawing, I think uh, my brother-in-law or whatever at the time uh, wanted some characters drawn for like a cowboy uh, roleplay he was doing. So I did that and they looked really cool for the time but all of them had like that fade down to like really dark black legs. Which I thought looked cool at the time, but on reflection, it's like, you know, just draw the character. <laughs> don't, don't fuck around trying to have a style or whatever. I really like this. Kiss my axe. This pose, it's really, really cool. This is one where, like, if I was doing this, I'd make the leg huge. The foot would be here, it would take up this gap in the, the space here. Um, and then this arm would be, like, way out here. I'd try to make it like more big and dynamic, but Glenn Fabry does tend to stick to his anatomy quite tightly and stringently to the benefit of his comics. You know, I, I'm not remotely going to suggest he should have done this or he should have done that. Um, it's just, you know, it looks small because I'm used to shit being bigger and crazier, but it's good and we like it. And then there's some Greg Staples artwork, and he's come a long way in the years since. Even this was good. Um, I think he himself has said he was basically a Bisley clone, because like all of us, <laughs> I guess that's how he learned to paint, was looking at Simon Bisley. And yeah, I mean, that's fucking great, even for back then. I don't know what years this was. Late 90s, early 2000s? Uh, it says... The issue of the magazine it was printed in, but it doesn't say the year. <laughs> yeah, mid nineties, mid nineties. Great slain, great arm, great body, great pose. Good axe, good blood. Good greenery on like the mutant marauders and stuff. Good greenery on the forest floor and the ladies' buttocks. Yeah, I got and, and Greg Staples has, like I say, he's come a long way. Um, he's definitely carved out his own sort of uh, space within the art realm, and his style is much more definitively his. And he does look far less like a Bisley clone. Love this thing. It does have uh, sort of tones of Bisley painting gorillas. Um, while still, you know, you can kind of tell it's not busy, and if you know Greg Staples' work, then it looks like Greg Staples, but it's definitely <laughs> busy esque Announce me, dwarf. That looks fucking sick. Obviously, it's, like, decolorized and, you know, changed the contrast and shit to make it, like, a separate page, but very, 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 very good... I always hated the shape of this dragon's head. <laughs> Just there's something really unpleasant about it. Maybe that's the point, but I dislike that. But then you see like Fabry painting, you know, Ucko's face, the lighting and the uh, uh, texture of the skin and everything. And it's really, really effective. And then this choker he's wearing actually starts to choke him. And his face is really good. I saw a photo of this, I haven't seen it in the flesh, but I saw a photo of the original artwork of this. And print never quite captures how the original art, how the original artwork looks. So I've said before, I prefer to consume art, to view art in a printed medium. Uh, I prefer looking through books than going to galleries. But 
when you do then get to see the original artwork in the gallery or wherever else, it really is something. Um, it, it is a lot more impactful to see the original art. So, uh, you know, there's something to be said there. Isn't there? <laughs> For all of my fucking banging on and on about books and comics. Oh no, it's just what I like. I don't like going places. I like just sitting and looking at books. Look at that. Yellow bleeding into a red wash. You can see the ink drawing. You can see a few layers of paint on top, but not many. Just enough to like put in some highlights and the teeth in the eye and stuff. This, I, seeing this, I, I must have looked similar to um, the Jez Goodwin book. I must have looked at this book in the store 50 times before I actually bought the thing. Um, this tongue and the lower lip. I just loved that. I love this whole, whole warp spasm slain thing. This like club hand arm holding his sword. And yeah, the, the face and mouth. This has similarities in, in shapes and stuff to like graffiti characters, the way the graffiti artists will draw their characters and stuff. Like all the veins and shit and the, this leg. I love that. I love that so much. I, mean, I love this. This was really important to me for like figuring out painting. Just loose paint lines, a wash over it, more paint on top. Brilliant. And then love this, the pose, the arms and shit like that. And the, the profile shot of the face with the big eye looking like a tit. The warp spasmed slain. And the twisted like musculature and anatomy and stuff. It's twisted and stretched. It's really, really effective, really well painted. Uh, it's just good shit, isn't it? I'm not going to look all the way through the other books of, of uh, Glenn Fabry, uh, you know, I think this one in terms of um, his influence on me as an artist, this is definitely the strongest one, um, so I will focus on that. That's really cool, like it's effective as it is, but then when you break it down and you look at it as a, a thing that has been painted, um, you start to notice like the wash underneath, the loose brush strokes. Uh, this red around here, bits of like, you know, speckled splatters of paint. Um, the relatively small amount of paint used to highlight the skin on the back and the way it's painted, the anatomy, these creases, these like um, horizontal creases. When you draw it back, it's very, very, not tempting, but like it's just sort of feels natural in your head to like, if these are the shoulders and the neck shoulder blades here, tit, and the hips and the bum. It's very, uh, feels natural just to draw the back, the line down the back like this. But then if the back arches like backwards ever so slightly and there's any meat on it, you do get like, uh, you know, the skin sort of clumps together a little bit. Um, and then you do get these creases here. Um, and then, yeah, like th these bits going up here it's all just like those little details that, you know, when you're as much a master of anatomy as someone like Glenn Fabry, those are the sh shits you just know about. But if you're not, when you learn about that stuff, it really hits in your brain. It makes you go, ah, fuck, of course, yeah. And it's really, really effective. I love all like the lumps and bumps and it's not just like a smooth back. It, it really feels more like solid and fleshy when you put those like lumps and bumps in there and we love Ucko just give me a chance to draw a slain comic and just <laughs> go over the top put all my effort into whenever Ucko's on a page just draw this little weird gnome goblin fella and then the rest of the comic is just rushed <laughs> because I didn't have any more time because I spent all my time drawing Ucko that's an amazing piece definitely one for the uh, you know, sing, single piece of art that could be completely removed from the comic. Just one painting. Like, this works as just a piece of fantasy art. A barbarian and his little gnome friend. Like, that just works as it is. And it's so wonderfully painted. Wonder, look at me using the word wonderful. You know, um, like here, Slane's body and stuff, you can see almost clumps of paint where it's smaller and he's painting it quickly. But then here it really feels like he's taken time to 
use uh, more washes of paint on top of each other to like get the layers and the tones in the skin. The bulge, I always, always remember looking at that bulge just being like, fuck. Not just, oh, a cock, but also, I, I said this about, um, I remember seeing it when I rewatched my Pit video, looking at Pit comics. Um, when he puts the bulge into the the crotch of Pit, it's so like, it means a lot because so many artists, you see the thing, the same thing in like life drawing classes when you're young, because it sort of makes sense. You see the drawing of a nude male, um, you know, sat however he's sat, like this, with his sexy male hips. Um, and there's like, you know, effort paid to like where the hands are and the fingers, make sure those look good. Um, and the head and the hair with a man bun. There was this one life model we had, it was just crazy cool. Uh, crazy and cool, and he had a man bun, and it was very, very fun. Um, and then, if yeah, younger people doing life drawing classes, all this detail, and then there's just a gap here, or like this, where it's just like, yeah, a vague, vague outline of a penis, and then more shading here and here, and then a bit of detail into like the cushion or whatever he's leaning on, and then shading here, and, <laughs> and it's just like, just a vacant space where there should be a penis, because you know, they don't want to just focus on drawing the penis. Maybe they don't want to be seen to be focusing on drawing the penis. But like, if you look at it as straight, just it is part of the human body as much as an arm or a leg. It's there. So if you purposely don't draw it, you're almost drawing more attention to it because it's something you've actively chosen to remove from the picture. So to see artists, especially in like comics and stuff, not focus on it, but draw it because it's there. It, it's I feel it's important. It's important. The penis is important. It's in penis. -tent. Yeah, love this painting. I think it's really, really good. Background could use some work, but you know you can't have it all, can you? Know? I like this green shape that like morphs into <laughs> this rat thing and then absorbs Ucko. Oh no, he goes under the water. He doesn't absorb him. But fucking whatevs. Give a shit. These are cool too. These little panels where it's like, draw him underwater and, you know, make it look like he's struggling underwater. Drawing of this outline of his body is a nice shape. A wash of paint, like a, a dark bluish black, it looks like he's using. And then, you know, a little bit of extra shadow. And then just uh, some blue paint just to sort of highlight the body and look watery, like a light, a beam of light over him. It's so minimal, but really, really effective. Bonk. I love that, where he's got all of the gold that's being thrown into the water and the glow underneath him. That's really cool. That, that leg, man, that looks stretched as fuck. And that's something that's difficult to do as well, to really pay attention to like, not just drawing a leg, because again, let's do examples. Like you can draw a leg and you know where the muscles are and you go, yeah, it has these muscles and these muscles and then there's a foot and it's fucking whatever. But then to like really make it look like that's just a leg. It doesn't look particularly grand. But then if you put like just fucking the, you, you take the muscle that's here and you make it like fucking stretched out and put some real tension into the muscles and the, the the foot that's just fucking like pointed all the way out like this is a bad example but this is just to basically illustrate the point that like i know from my own experiences of like drawing comics and stuff if someone's got an arm outstretched it's easy to just draw the arm in that position but then to draw the muscles and everything in such a way that it looks like it's really fucking stretching out it's uh, you've got to put real thought and effort into that sort of shit sometimes i'm able to do that sometimes i'm very not that i'm not able to do it but i just don't think about it and therefore don't do it i don't pay enough attention to certain things sometimes this is a great pose i love the lighting great shape in his body splashing water and stuff i love the the lower lip on the mouth, the, 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 you know, paying attention to the detail of where the lip curves around the teeth. 
and the the creases in the eyes and the nose and stuff like it's just those little details that really really make the difference fight scenes just any any opportunity if you're if you're an artist like Glenn Fabry being able to work on a book like Slain has to be a dream because it's like the, what you do it would be like somebody for me saying uh you and we've got this comic about comic uh this comic about uh goblins we'd love you to illustrate and me just being like oh my god <laughs> yes please like the perfect thing the thing i just know i i'm good at and i can do and will do milled you um perfect just brilliant great shape this strong like the the this mountain behind him almost a tangent with like the, his chest here and then cutting in with the leg like a lightning bolt almost and then the arm just being straight down with the sword so so good and the hair just going like Phoosh. you've killed 20 caesareans caesareans i didn't think it too many gold that's really really nice I don't know if it was, a, I guess some of the gold, these gold bands turned into snakes. So you've got like the, the clawed hand and the, the golden band turning into a snake. The snake's head looks really, really cool, the way it's drawn and highlighted with the paint. The clawed hand is brilliant. Again, Glenn Fabry's anatomy. I mean, to use one example, uh, I don't know if I'll be able to find it, but it's the one, yeah, where he's holding the lighter. Like, as far as I'm aware... Uh, oh, it was done with um, reference. His hand holding a lighter. Um, yeah. I mean, just like... Amazing. <laughs> like, even if I used reference, if I used my hand as reference, I wouldn't be able to paint it as well and as effectively as that. Every crease, every little lump and bump, the veins, painting like... Um, I can paint veins, but they look like obvious veins, but painting like subtle veins is really, really tricky. Uh, so yeah, him painting hands is just another dream <laughs> to see. I love this guy, I love his face, I love the third eye and like the lumps and bumps and creases around that eye and his nose and everything. The shape of his face and his mouth, the use of shadow to like emphasize shit with the golden snakes biting into him but he's with it so he didn't give a shit and blue skin i love blue skin it's really really cool <laughs> his grin there with the shadows and everything really really good i love the the, the whole shape of that face actually it's quite long and then mo well not most of but it's, it's all very the face itself is quite compacted um into a, a smaller area And then this is all shadow. And this is all shadow. This so it's, it's almost yeah, it's like a cheeky grin. Um and then you've got the little like cheek lumps where the, the mouth is pushing the cheeks upwards so they like condense a little bit. And then his forehead, and there he's got these sticky out ears, which I always like to do. That's one thing with Zach Ridley. I I did his head, and then his hair, and then I just gave him ears like this, just because I was like, oh, I'll draw his ears like this, because that's fun to do. And then only when I looked back years later, I was like, his ears look. It looks to me like his ears are like this, <laughs> like they're way out of his head. And at the time. I was just like, oh, I'm just drawing his ears. Like, this is what his ears look like. It's fine, it's whatever. But then looking back, I'm like, oh, wow. <laughs> He's really fucking got some ears. I'm exaggerating this here, but I just, I like the shape, so I'm doing it. And then he's got like, hair and shit. I just, yeah, like I say, it's an exaggeration. It's a clear exaggeration, but um, there's something about that just the shape of that face is just really really pleasing to me I do like that I like that a lot which I mean it goes without saying really doesn't it 
Oh, you like Slane. You like Glenn Fabry. You like Glenn Fabry's Slane. Brilliant, Ewan. Masterful. Love this. We love cult shit. Pagan rituals and things. Naked witches dancing in the night around a fire. Decimating corpses with bones and intestines and shit. Nakedly writhing on the rock god. The scream face, the dimples in the chin, the, the bumps and creases in the lip there. Because it would be so easy, again, to just, like, if you're drawing a mouth, you know, you get the upper lip. And I've learned to, like, where to sort of put certain creases and things in certain parts of the body. You get the upper lip and you go, okay, that's in shadow, so I'll draw that like this. And then, you know, you imply a couple of teeth just to show that there are teeth. And then, you know, the lower lip. And I'd like do that and then put some shadow on like the lower half of it, maybe a shiny bit here. I'd probably put teeth in here as well. I, I did basically do that. But then to put in the effort of like the way a lip actually creases on itself when it's sort of like twisting and contorting to put these little like lumps and bumps, lumps and bumps, lumps and bumps in here is really like... It's so effective, it's almost to the point where you don't even think about it. You're like, yeah, it's a painting of a face. But then it's like, you look at it as a painting of a face because of how well it's painted. The creases, like, in the eyes and nose where they're scrunching up, that's really effective. Use of shadow and everything. So fucking good. Love this. <laughs> Woman's body being beheaded. Or well, the woman being beheaded, and that's her body. The pose of the guy jumping, doing it. This blue fella. Whatever the fuck he's up to. With her head in his hand. <laughs> I feel like this is a quick page. This is one where he knows it's it's just people talking and then Slane hits Ucko. And Ucko's like, huh, meh, never mind. Um, you put the effort in on these kinds of pages where there's more detail, more, more going on, some action real attention to detail like the, the atmosphere in this piece is really really good and these ones as well like the foggy water with the boat on it the lights in the distance really really effective and the atmosphere yeah overall it's night time the sky is still blue but really like a deep rich dark blue the shadows of the trees and everything and the light of the fire contrasting with that and the feeling of like energy and partying going on is really really good uh, but then you get a page like this where it's just, you know, not even full-bodied people except for this one panel. But even then, basically half of it's in silhouette. Um, minimal paint to show the anatomy. One colour background. White background, which looks like it has been painted. Um, but still, basic backgrounds. <laughs> like his hat blends into the background here. Um, it's still it's effective and it works for what it is, but it's clearly like a quicker page because then you get pages like this where he's able to really spend time on it I am slain and I am already dead a kiss I mean it's difficult to consistently like paint a comic and paint characters in a comic but to paint them so well and just like the face the lighting, the textures and everything, the smushing together of two faces. I love this, the blue guy just living his life, his large life. That's fucking cool as well. It's a really cool series of images actually. So I don't know what's going on, I guess this guy walks in and so this blue guy is now there, Lord or Emperor, he's taken over. Um, I assume and then this like legionnaire guy walks in and upsets him while he's this him chilling in the water the glistening of the water is so well done there and then he's just disgusted with this guy and this bit where the guy is almost like a film where it's faded like double exposure as these ghouls are crawling around and then he's got a plan he's got the, the glowing blade here 
you know, from the, the light from the water, like reflecting off of it. Still like drips of water on his skin as well. That's effective with his pierced nipple. Um, and then he springs into action. Again, the blade glowing, the splashing of water as he jumps up, grabs the guy's ankle. The tension in his arm and then the tension in this arm holding the dagger. This is a really effective like stabbing like he's not showing the knife going in. Is he's doing exactly what I say I really enjoy seeing, which is seeing something you know something's happening and then you see the result of it having happened. You, he's not drawing the knife going into the guy's face, which you know might be a bit overkill, but it's a good like it's almost like in a movie where you see the hand doing this but you don't see the blade going in. And then you see the guy's head with the knife through it and the red glow like caressing the back of his head the blood over him and then him in the background laughing with airbrushed yellow shit going on and then he's got a towel wrapped around him and he's he's chill but then he thinks about slain the red glow in his eyes is really well done cool angry fight poses And then I think someone else has taken over the painting. I think it said there was two artists, Fabry and someone else. I didn't realize how long the story was actually. Um, oh yeah, and Dermot Power, part eight. I don't know what that means. Yeah, so I think from maybe here it might be Glenn Fabry's pencils and Dermot Power painting over them it looks like that might be the case um, I think this is Fabry and then this is Dermot Power it looks to be that's the, that that's the case Speaking of penises, I still find it almost unimaginable that there is a, a great deal of prominent uh, cultures in the world that still fucking mutilate <laughs> their children's penises, like right after they're born. Obviously, I'm talking about circumcision, but right after they're born, one of the first things that happens is they get part of their penis cut off like how fucking insane is that i mean for one thing religious reasons fuck off like i, I will forever be against that sort of shit for you know religion and stuff for many many reasons but the fact that that happens is just like surely that's evidence that y you're thinking and acting the wrong ways if you're mutilating your fucking your child's penis almost straight after he's come out of the womb oh cool yeah don't need this part of the penis are you sure well yeah probably just get rid of it it's fine to the point where you know people will mock people for not being circumcised oh your dick's probably filthy you have to like wash under the foreskin Sure, do you wash your asshole after you take a shit? <laughs> like like anything, like any other part of the body, you've got to keep it clean. 
of course, the Dewey fucking thing. It's obviously you've got to try and fucking justify why you chose to fucking have your kid's penis cut apart. It's just fucking insane that that happens. Like, that it still happened. The fact that it ever happened is like, you know, thousands of years ago in the desert when they thought the sun was God or whatever. Um, yeah, they were all being a bit silly and then they thought it was a good idea to be circumcised. It's fucking preposterous and nonsense and fucking whatever. But then to still be doing it to this day and hold it as like uh, a moral thing over people that choose not to do it. And then if it's not religious, you say, people say, oh, there's health things and, you know, cleanliness to think about. And I know uh, one uh, person at least that has had it, uh, had a, an adult circumcision that they had to get for medical reasons. Sure, fine, it happens. You know, but sometimes you have to have organs removed for medical reasons. Doesn't mean you should fucking cut out one of your son's kidneys after he's born, going, ah, you know, you don't need it. And the this book said to do that shit, so we're just taking out one of his kidneys now, and then later on you won't need it anymore. Like, wh what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> so it just, it fucking it baffles me. To the point where, yeah, in some cultures, to, for someone to have, I, I say that, America. Um, there are other places, obviously, but I, I think America happens to be one of the biggest proponents of that type of garbage. Um, to the point where it's seen as weird if you have a foreskin. <laughs> you know, I've, I've talked sexily with uh, gals from America before, and inevitably... Not inevitably, but it has come up with uh, a couple of people over the years of, oh, are you circumcised? Because they know I'm from England and they know like it's not necessarily a thing in other parts of the world. So it comes up and it's like, no, I'm not. I have all parts of my penis still. Um, well, apart from whatever makes babies happen, I've got rid of that <laughs> by choice. You know, as an adult, I made a choice to have a certain operation to change certain things. I'm going to get shit done when I was a child. Uh, and yeah, it's seen as like an odd, exotic thing to have a foreskin. <laughs> it's just so like, so fucking bizarre. And not bizarre, it's insane. It's it's actually fucking ridiculous that that's a thing. I, I don't, I don't want to go on and on about it. I just think it's one of those things. And it just infuriates me when people try to defend it. Like, well, no, because this and this, and if you think about it, then this and that and that and this. It's, fuck you. <laughs> fucking cutting off part of your kid's body. Not just part of their body, but part of their penis. Like... Oh, it's just fucking ridiculous. Fucking religion, man. Oh, I don't want to be blaspheming all the time. Well, fuck him. <laughs> fucking... I want to say, like, Neanderthals, cave people, but, like, no, that's, that's not fair to actual <laughs> Neanderthals and cave people. Fuck them. Fuck the fucking nutcases that do that shit. No offence if you're, you know, one of them. But full offence. Don't cut your fucking kid's wanger. Leave it alone. Don't touch it. It's not yours. It doesn't mean anything to you. Let him figure out what to do with it when he gets old enough to figure out what to do with it. He'll learn what it's for. He'll know what's up. He's going to spend enough time with it and enough time, you know, focusing on it, <laughs> playing with it endlessly. Maybe instead of getting other shit done in his life. But that's his prerogative and that's his decision to make because he grows up with an intact penis. Leave it alone. <laughs> I love my foreskin. Well, I mean, I don't love it, but I could say. <laughs> you could say. I'm quite attached to it. <laughs> uh, quite attached. 
to my fourth screen because I'm literally attached to this. <coughs> I mean, if you've watched this far in, you deserve either an award or ridicule. You deserve to be mocked by me just making bad jokes about penises. Or you deserve to be praised as a god among whatever uh, gender you spend your time with. I don't know if I, I could manage. <laughs> like, I don't know if I'd watch... 12 hour video <laughs> I'm sure yeah off in the background while I'm doing other things to the point where I don't even realise how much time has passed I don't realise oh has it been 6, 7, 8 hours already huh. time flies when you don't really give a shit when you're not paying attention to anything but you know this is a very visual and always has been a very visual podcast it's art based that's why it never made sense to me to try to put it on, like, Spotify or iTunes or anything. Because, I mean, I don't know if they have, like, video parts to them, but the fact that it's an art-based series that I do, it never made sense to have it, like, audio only. Sometimes I do talk a lot whilst not necessarily drawing and shit, but then there's always some kind of art going on, isn't there? You imagine listening to my podcast <laughs> and like not paying attention to it visually at all and just being like, what the fuck is he talking about now? Circumc- what? I can shut up. And then you look and I'm just drawing some guy's leg. <laughs> it's not even relevant. What the fuck are you doing? What are you talking about? It's shut up, you and get a job, get a real job. <laughs> Actually contribute to society. What are you doing? No, I refuse. Society, shmiety. Sh I'll contribute to society when society stops mutilating baby penises. That's my job. I do it with my, my teeth and my tongue. That was a joke. I don't really do that anymore. <laughs> The local um, all-girls school, the all-girls Catholic school uh, on the corner, you know, I've spoken about it a few times, um, they evidently had an outing recently. An outing as in, like, like not a field trip, but just a trip into the city to do something. There's a whole bunch of them and a couple of teachers. Maybe they were going to look at, like, museums or fucking whatever. There's a lot of, like, history and stuff in the city I live in. Um, Titanic sailed out from here, have I mentioned it before? Uh, so, yeah, there's a lot of, like, old city walls you can walk around, and there's a bunch going on. So there's, I guess, probably a good few reasons why um, a, a school might have, like, a, a day out in the, the town doing shit or whatever. And then all the, you know, the kids are there vaping it up <laughs> and on their phones all the time, not giving a shit about anything they're supposed to be giving a shit about. Who can blame them? It's all boring bunch of fucking bullshit in it and uh so they, they were crossing the road as i was crossing the road and then so i was if this is the road pavement pavement road um this is the end of the road where there's a blockade and then there's some bollards here <laughs> you can only not even really see that I drew a penis, yeah, I drew a penis. So this is the road, and I'm walking this way. This is me walking this way down the road, headed this way to cross over the road here. And then all these schoolgirls do this, and there must have been fucking 60 of them. And they're going this way, and there's like the, the entrance to the library and gallery around this area. So they were probably headed that way. But then suddenly, there's just fucking 60 school girls and some teachers and stuff were walking right in front of me so all I can really do is just fucking stand there like a lemon doing my darndest to to not fucking stare <laughs> uh, 
I'm not I'm not that way inclined. I'm not like that, but you know I was trying not to be an obvious fucking creep or a lunatic. Like trying not to just fucking look at them, but then trying to not look like I'm actively trying not to look at So I didn't even do the smart thing and just pull out my phone because that would have just been like, oh, I guess I'll just fucking check my phone for a couple of minutes while I wait for this gaggle of fucking nuisances to get the fuck out of the way. And then they did get the fuck out of the way and then I carried on and it was fine. Oh, the old girl's school on the corner, all the stories we could tell about that. Oh, the lawsuits, <laughs> the restraining orders, the paperwork, the the violence, the intrigue. I do stay away from there nowadays. I haven't, you know, I haven't brought it up in quite a long time because there's been nothing to bring up because I, I stay away. I don't, I don't just go out there and, and watch anymore. I don't just stare over the gates. I never did. I'm joking. I'm making it all up. It's not true. I never did that. Never ever. And never would I. I'd never dream of doing those sorts of sordid activities. It's not my jam. I much prefer a marmalade anyway to a jam. If I, if we're going that way about things. Do you like marmalade? I love a good fucking marmalade. Delicious shit. Have you ever had marmalade? Is marmalade a thing outside of the UK? Outside of Europe, in America, I have to equate so many things to America just because they're so lovely. There's just so many of them. <laughs> the large, largest portion of my audience, I guess you could call them. Most of the people who like watch my shit are in the states. These United States, or those United States. So I have to keep that in mind, you know, because bless them, they're not necessarily as uh, well educated as the rest of us. <laughs> so I have to dumb everything down for them so they understand it. And, you know, I, I might repeat myself again, but the thing is, most of us outside of the US grow up watching like the Simpsons and that sort of like and if you happen to be into it family guy et al all the rest of it those kinds of things and like American made shows and movies because that's where a lot of shit is made and, and they put it out because entertainment's the thing they do the movies it's all the Oscars it's, it's the only thing that matters the music largely not always but largely comes from America it's just they're fucking they infect everything can't escape them. Um, as, but so growing up, you learn a lot about American culture. You learn about different terms and words, and and you know how they do things and their systems, their schooling, their education, the the medical or lack thereof systems. But I feel like, and from what I understand of the United States, it's not the other way around. They don't have loads of stuff. They do get some parts, but they don't have loads of stuff from outside of their own country. The UK, in Australia, Europe, all other places that exist. There are other places that exist, but I don't know about them. So, in that respect, Americans can come across sometimes as being ignorant of other people's cultures because they haven't grown up seeing other people's cultures because their culture that they're fed whether they like it or not is america's the best america's the greatest and everything outside of that is fucking dumb and stupid and silly so why would they pay attention to other cultures if they're just told constantly that other cultures are the worst even to the point of uh the people who run your country calling people from other countries and other cultures vermin and animals and much much worse things so that's cool i'm not going to get too far into that but you know sometimes pieces of shit run countries and i can say that for the country i live in too it's a shame but it happens i don't know where i was going with that look i'm drawing slain just a 
fill up some space. I thought it'd be cool to fucking draw, draw his big penis. <laughs> Yeah, I've I've extended his yeah, I've extended his leg a lot actually. I was going to say I've extended his leg a little. Now you can see it's it's what like his shoulder to his head is there, and then his foot is basically the same, and then some extra bit. <laughs> but just because I wanted to take up the space, if I did it, it would be like his foot would be here, and it, I just I, I morphed it a bit. I'm just drawing from reference, I'm not drawing a copy, am I? I'm just, you know, you get it. You know what's up. I don't need to explain shit to you. You're all smart and sexy people. You know what's going on. I do enjoy, though, knowing that there are people in my own country that watch my shit and seem to enjoy it. Um, and I like when I make uh, a typically British reference and the British people will typically get my typical British reference. It's good to know that uh, those things are um, not wasted entirely. One time I said to an American friend, I said I put on my jumper and then I very quickly said straight, I said, oh, I put on my jumper, my sweater. Uh, I said that to them and they said, I'm glad you said sweater because as soon as you said jumper, I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> like they don't even have that the word jumper or the knowledge that British people use the word jumper as the word sweater. It's those simple things that like to to English, British, whatever people, that's just the thing. It's, you call it a jumper, it's fucking whatever. But then to certain other types, outsiders, <laughs> that's seen as weird. Why do they say that? And they all think we say, in it? Oh, that's weird, isn't it? It's not how we talk, it's not how how that sounds. If anything, it's in it. And you're just shortening the word isn't the words isn't it to be in it. Because it's just easier. And we say, oh that's cool, isn't it? We don't go, that's cool, in it. In it. No, that's not how we talk. We fucking shut up. That's like thinking all Americans sound like this. Who <laughs> I voted for the president. And I still call him president, even though he's not been president for many years. <laughs> That's how all Americans sound. Tee hee, hee 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 hee. They're all dumb, slack jawed, mouth breathing yokels, a lot of them. Fuck every single one of them. Oh, you could have my gun when you take it from my cold dead hand. <laughs> Democrats are coming for our guns. You can't have it. Trans, they're trans in our youth. They're trans in our children. Targets, trans in our children. The Democrats, Biden. <laughs> my mother's my sister. That's a GTA 3 reference. That's how Americans sound to the rest of the world. We got to keep funding Israel because they're going to get rid of Hamas and Hamas terrorists. This is a political moment in the, in, in the podcast, isn't it? We're winding down. We're getting towards the end. You've got to let me just fucking... Let me cook. <laughs> That's what they say these days, isn't it? That's a new thing. Let him cook. Let him cook. That's what you do with grenades in fucking like Call of Duty and shit. You cook them. Cook a grenade. You just let it sit in your hand for a bit and then toss it. You don't just take a grenade, pull a pin out and throw it. Take a grenade, pull a pin out, let it cook. And then toss it. And then as soon as it lands, it blows up if you time it right. Instead of throwing it and then wait a couple of seconds. Because people can move away within those couple of seconds. That's one thing that bums me out slightly about, for instance, like Fallout, the Fallout franchise. They don't have that mechanic. If you ready a grenade, you can hold the, the, the grenade throw button for as long as you like. 
and not throw the grenade. And then when you throw the grenade, it is thrown, and then it like lands, maybe bounces away, depending on your accuracy and you know your skill scores and stuff. And then it will blow up. It would be nice if they put in the mechanic of cooking a grenade, where once you pull the pin, you have like X amount of seconds to throw it before it fucking explodes. And then that would be a funny thing that could happen in Fallout, would be you can die by having a grenade go off in your hand. I'd enjoy having that mechanic in the game. I don't know about you. The show's going to be on soon! Quah! Maybe a week or so, the Fallout TV show will be on, and then I can pirate it and watch it. Um... I am, I'm looking forward to that. I mean, it's going to be a good thing. I'm going to, like, have snacks and shit and make a thing of it. Make it, like, a, a little mini event in my home. I believe all episodes are going up at once as well, which means um, I don't have to wait a fucking week for episode two or whatever. I can just watch all the episodes. I'm very happy about that. And I'd like to know what other people think of it. Once I've watched it, don't spoil it for me. Oh, my God, I can't have spoilers. I hate spoilers. Spoilers are the worst thing in the world. See, that's a reference to earlier on when I was talking about that. The light's very strong today. Why is that so... Can you even see what I'm drawing? Can't see any of this shit. I, I might have to check, but then there may be a chance that well, I was drawing this earlier on and you couldn't even see what the fuck it was. Huh. I apologise for only just seeing that. I don't know why... That's a thing. That's better. That's much better. What the my light's not even that bright. I don't know why it was so fucking strong. Is it getting stronger? I'm, I'm stood up looking at the camera right now. Yeah, it is. It's washing out. It's gradually washing out the image. I assume that will come out in the recording that you'll see it like that. If I put my hand here, does it affect it? No. That's so bizarre. Cool. Lighting and photography, eh? What the fuck is it? What's it all about? Does that affect... Shit. Ooh. The natural light of my room. This is how I live normally in this kind of light. It's daylight outside, but... Sometimes I'll have my lamp on to draw. Sometimes I won't. Wow, that's interesting. That's amazing, you. And you're such a dynamic individual. I, you should make videos that go on for days and days. Fuck 12 hours. Do a 24-hour live stream. Go on. Do it. Do it, you cocksucker. Speaking of cocks, that's why you couldn't see the penis when I drew that earlier, because the light was washing it out. Fuck's sake, man. Fuck's sake, man! Um, right, let me rustle up an image for reverence. Um, oh, I have it already in a tab. A whole tab. Now, this might be a tricky one to, to doodly do, but it might not be. That might work. Right, let's... Um, just, I'll have, have a question at the ready to talk about while I fucking doodle my shit. Um, would I consider scanning entire sketchbooks? And then in parentheses, which I know the word, um, make more art books, closed parentheses. Would I consider scanning entire sketchbooks and make more art books? Now... Um, I, I, I've scanned whole sketchbooks in the past and I've, I have several times over the years wanted to and thought I should scan more sketchbooks because I've really liked some of my later ones 
Um, and there are, I, it might not be, <laughs> you might have to scroll way, 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 way back on Patreon. Um, but at one point there certainly were sketchbooks that I had scanned and made into PDFs that you could download and look at at your leisure and pleasure. Um, what are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? The problem is, for one thing, I have an old ass scanner. Um, it would be nice if I could get a new one, but you know, money and shit. Um, and scanning an image, it doesn't take ages, it takes, you know, I guess effectively seconds to scan an image. But then when you're scanning multiple, multiple, multiple images, you know, the time fucking gets up there, doesn't it? It all adds up. Um, this looks terrible, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm trying to draw a gorilla. Yeah, so fucking... But the reference pictures look kind of funny. They're not like... They're very, very fluffy furry gorillas that I'm looking at in the reference image. Um, I don't... I didn't... I don't want to take too, this much time over doing the fucking thing. Uh, just draw some fucking gorillas. You don't even need reference. You can draw gorillas, Ewan. Just draw fucking gorillas. What's the matter with you? You know what gorillas look like. Fucking draw them. Cunt. You cunt. You fucking cunt. And then stick one in the foreground here. Looks like Bigfoot rather than a gorilla, doesn't it? <laughs> it's funny. Um... Yep. Oh, jeez. Fucking come on, you. Come on. Fucking let's go. Let's go. Let's go. The scanning of art books, uh, scanning of sketchbooks is, uh, it's a long process and I, there's, there's no, that's my excuse. It takes a long time to do. It's a lot of effort to not just scan in a sketchbook, but then like organize all the pages, uh, make sure they're all oriented correctly, cropped and straight and contrast fucked with a little bit just to make sure it's all it looks good that it's not just a bunch of like bright scans of pages. Uh, it's a lot of effort to go to. I'm not av adverse to putting in effort into things like that, but you know when I have to spend so much time doing commissions and the rest of it, it, it can be difficult to find time to, to focus on those sorts of things. Though it is something I have in mind and it is something I would like to, to get around to doing. I um, just haven't. Um, and then art books. I'm uh, I'm really focused on comics at the moment, um, and specific comics, uh, which is I want to really get Death Fist finished. Um, and there was a period of time where I was putting out multiple books, art books and comics a year. Um, that slowed down a lot over the last couple of years um, for various reasons. Some of them are costs and printing and stuff some of them are with regards to I don't currently have a decent address to have stuff sent to because shit gets lost if I have it delivered to my home so often it's ridiculous um, so I don't do that and I did have uh, a PO box but the place closed down um, the nearest one I can get is one city over so it means every time I want to check that PO box I have to get on a train for a half an hour check the box and then if I get something delivered that's like big like boxes of art books that I've had printed that means I have to then take them back on the train or pay for a taxi to get them home or something because I don't drive because I'm a bum um, so there's there's a bunch of reasons and I, I just I'm not feeling art books at the moment like I tried I started putting together um, another paint book and I got a, a few pages in and I was just sort of like bored of the process of it of putting together an art book and you know I have a like years worth years and years worth multiple years worth of, of paintings which I'd love to put into a book like loads of commissions from the last few years and you know other paintings and things and stuff and things um, but 
uh, yeah, I'm just haven't been really into the like really enjoying the process of putting art books together. It's it's not what I'm feeling at the moment. Um, so comics seems to be where it is. Uh, the printing place near me seems to have done an okay job with uh, the black and white like the teaser for Death Fist, and so I might get them to print Death Fist. Uh, at least the individual issues as I release them rather than, which will be two halves of the book, rather than the full thing when it's finished. Um, I will look into that, but, uh, jeez, fuck, shut up. <laughs> Just fucking shut up. Boring myself. Trying to answer these questions and I'm just like, but, well, I don't know, because of this, that, and that, and this, and this, and this, and that, and this. Ass, shut up. Now this is a, uh, a a choice I'm making to use this marker for what would be the lighter parts of these gorillas' bodies because I believe this marker will dry looking more grey. Um, like as you can see here, it does look almost grey, and then the black pen does contrast somewhat with it. So that's my hope because then. I can use black for the fur of the gorillas and it will contrast nicely and look good and shit, yeah? You get it. Again, you're all smart and sexy people. You don't need to explain this shit. You understand. You know what's up. You know how it is. Uh, yeah, so that's my focus for books at the moment is black and white comics. Um, eventually I'll get Gun Viking done. <laughs> maybe uh, and then then who knows I would like to get more art books done but it's there's many factors to take into account um, things sadly just aren't as simple as they used to be so we'll see as far as that goes we will see right um, I do have I think I did have I did have like a uh, some some fat black Posca pens I don't know where they they are gone hmm that's sad that's a big shame it's a big big shame that's annoying fuck oh well tough shit tough tits touch tough tough ball bags and an ass and a bunch of piss and shit and stuff. Um, God, I, I, this is, I mean, it makes sense, but like, I feel like the energy of this whole experience is, is gone. <laughs> but we are getting towards the end. We are winding down. It's only fair that, you know, it can't last forever. The energy can't stay around forever can it it could if you were good at what you do you and <laughs> if you weren't a piece of shit i'm not a piece of shit i'm, I'm... fucking shut up <laughs> just shut up and draw some gorillas apparently i guess that's what you're doing for some reason some of you might have already caught on and be like oh he's doing the thing and you'll know what's what it's going to amount to but some of you, this will all be secret, and you don't know what's what the fuck I'm doing. Oh, I think you, eh? He's like a gorilla boys. This is going to use up all the ink. I don't even want to call it ink. Is it ink in a Posca pen? It's paint, isn't it? It's a paint pen. Oh, this is gorilla tits. That should be. Me like that, shouldn't it? And yeah, it does contrast very, very contrasty the grey with the black. It's supposed to be black, I assume. Um, oh no, it says cool grey, so it's not even black, it is 
cool grey. Well, there, that's taught me a lesson then, hasn't it? As me thinking this black pen was very washed out and light. It's not even a fucking black pen, you idiot. Jesus, can I be nice to myself? Can I fucking not be a dick t to me for just a minute? What other questions have we got? <laughs> Let's go back to that. Um, I mean, there's quite a few that are like, how much time did you spend drawing? How long did it take to get to where you are? And this and that. And it's, you know, I've already sort of answered those. With it. it's, it's just been forever. There isn't like an amount of time that it's taken. It's just taken forever to get to where I am. And I'm still... Trying. I'm still trying to do the thing. I'm still just trying to keep on. I still, you know, I do drawings and uh, I hate them. And I think I, I need to keep learning how to do certain things properly. Uh, not properly, but I'm, yeah, you're, you're always learning. Every drawing is a new moment of learning to do what the fuck you're supposed to be doing. Every single one. It's a constantly, constant growing and learning experience and shit. We'll, 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 I don't know. I don't feel like I'm wasting time now because it's like, it's all part of the thing. It's, you know, warts and all, genital warts and all. Uh, there is a, 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 a you do, if you do shit like this, you feel a need to be constantly entertaining, but like, That's almost literally a physical impossibility. <laughs> you just can't be fucking constantly, constantly entertaining. Sometimes you've got to just chill out, calm down, fucking take some time to relax and draw some gorillas. I did want them to look like a mass of fur, a mass of gorilla fur and shit, so that's worked somewhat to my design. They look like the Ramones, don't they? <laughs> Which is unintentional. That's, you know, like I said, some people will know where this is going. Um, that wasn't it. It wasn't supposed to be the Ramones, however much they do happen to look kind of like the Ramones. It's not my intention. That one looks like he's smiling, but that's not on purpose. Uh, and then one more. Oh, this guy's foot, hand, foot, foot, hand, hand, foot. And then I think I can get some grey to sort of highlight some parts, maybe. Why 
Why is it slightly red? What the fuck have I been colouring in? Um, yeah, that's pretty effective, isn't it? Kind of. Kind of. highlight the fur a little bit so it's not all black but it's mostly black It'll all be worth it, trust me. It won't be a waste of time in the end. Which, I mean, that you could say that in, in a way, that's like a metaphor for life, isn't it? It'll all be worth it in the end. Trust the process. See it through. Just keep going. Keep at it. Keep doing the thing. Just keep doing the thing. And if I could give any advice, I think ultimately that's the biggest piece of advice I can give, is just keep doing the thing. And eventually you'll have done the thing. The thing will be done and it will be done by you because you sat there and you did the thing. Even if it comes out shit, which inevitably it will, unless I'm doing it because I'm the best so everything I do is fucking great. is going somewhere there's a reason for it don't don't fret right is that does that is that clearly four gorillas yeah just about i guess <laughs> uh, that goes there uh did i want more maybe a little bit more gray in there just for the Gorillas, gorillas, gorillas. Right, and now here comes the bit that makes it all worth it. Wait a minute. Um, uh, uh, uh. Go like this. You go. Oh, if I fuck this up, that will ruin the whole thing. And that's the joke. <sighs> Jesus Christ. It's not, it should be like a bit smaller and here. It should be like there. See, it's like the band Gorillas. But they're actual gorillas. I had that on my, my list. Gorillas, the band. But it's just gorillas. I can get rid of that one now. That's <sighs> Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. What am I doing? I'm fucking losing it, I swear. And I am, like I said, I, I think this this whole thing is is destroying me. It's making me physically unwell. I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know. What I'm doing, I don't know where I am, who I am. I did want to at least try to like refine my pigeons trying to fuck comic. So I wasn't fully happy with it and I think I could do 
at least a little bit better. Potentially. Um, I want to put the pigeon here. His head, his big puffy chest and his body. His little, little pigeon legs. Big grin on his face. That's how pigeons look, isn't it? Oh, I'm rushing it now. You can only make mistakes if you start rushing the shit. I can make her eyes really big with hearts in them. And make her more petite, because she's a chick. A chick, well not literally a chick, that would be... Would that be like pedophilia in the in the pigeon world? If if a, an adult pigeon was trying to mate with a, a chick, it's allowed. I don't think that would be allowed. Um, I don't know what the fuck I'm. I am. I'm going delirious with this whole fucking thing. It's breaking me. <laughs> uh, fuck. As pigeons trying to fuck, let's make the box fit around it a bit better, maybe like this. And it will say pigeons trying to fuck. And then it will say versus, and then me trying to fuck, and me slumped in my slump slump. Feet and then thing and a hand down here. Table like this. Hand on the table, pen in my hand. I don't think this is refined. I think this is. I figured if I draw it smaller, then it would be like. Yeah, I'd draw it smaller and more refined, but. I don't think that's necessarily having the desired effect. Do I even know what the desired effect would be? Well, yeah, I do. It would be a good drawing. It's the desired effect. I started so strong. <laughs> Had such large energy. I was fucking ready to go, ready to do shit, ready to make shit happen. And now I'm just fucking dying. Speech bubble saying I draw your titty, and it's saying me trying to fuck. Speech bubble could be like that. I think that works. I don't know how refined it is. <laughs> There's me going, oh, I really want to refine this comic, make it look really, really cool. Did you do that successfully? No. But I tried. I failed. Uh, no, I didn't fail. Shut up. For fuck's sake, I, I'm... Well, it's good to know I'll never do this again. <laughs> Nothing else I've learned. Don't do that. If I have an idea, like, oh, maybe I could do another very, very long form podcast or video or whatever if I ever get that idea in my head I, sh I have to just go nope mm -mm. don't don't do that 
Actually, I really like this shape. I think it's it's come out quite good. Um, don't know if you can make out the chair or anything, but table leg here. I'm standing up currently having a little stretch because I'm dying and it's your fault. It's all of yours faults for making me do this. Which you're not, you're absolutely not. <laughs> this is uh, a, a what the, what's the phrase I'm looking for? Uh, something of my own making. A, a demise, a trap of my own design. I'm falling into uh, a, a, a shit of my own bunch of shit and piss. A piss of my own shit and ball bag ass. Fuck in the piss fuck. Fuck. Doo -doo -doo -doo. I am Iron Man. Sometimes I draw as fast as I can. Do, do, do. I used up all my circumcision material. That's the problem. That's the only reason I'm, I'm so low energy now is because all the material I did have with regards to circumcision and such is now used up. And now I don't know what to talk about. What else is there to talk about other than how obscene and regressive circumcision is? And now I'm, I'm at a loss. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. As if I ever did know what I was doing. Uh, get it? This pen's running out. What am I to do if my pen's running out? What am I to do? What's a girl to do? You could get a new pen. You could get more pens. I do have more of this pen. I just, you know, I just don't care because I'm lazy. I like the shape of the arm. It's funny. The hairs on it. I never really draw hairy arms. Oh, I will occasionally, but I pretty rarely draw hairy arms. I do like drawing hairy arms. I ought to, to do more of that, but I don't know. Will I? Who knows? table in here. I kind of want the table to be like sticking into my gut here, but I don't know how effective that is. Meh. It's a big meh on that one. And then if, if I like this drawing ultimately, then I will use white out. See again, for the American crowd, I will use Tipex to uh, get rid of a load of the, the extra lines in places and tidy it up. Scan it in, which will take four hours. Oh, it's so hard to scan drawings in, guys. It's so hard. <laughs> Listen to me. What kind of mood am I in? Uh, maybe that's that's the issue, the energy. It's, it's to do with I've fallen into a, a mood that is not uh, necessarily conducive to high energy output, which happens, you know. Humans are complicated objects. And they are objects, especially the women, eh? You, uh, yeah, fucking women are objects. They should do what I fucking tell them to do. Shut up. Fucking shut up, bitch. Fucking... That's a joke. That's a joke. That's a joke. Joke, joke. That's a joke. Joke, 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 joke. Jokey, jokey, joke. Jokey, joke. Jokey, joke. Jokey, joke. And of course, I'm sure you understand if there are any women watching, which I doubt there are, but you know, there might be. Um, when I say shit like that, I'm, I'm really, the joke, 
not not joke, but the the quote joke isn't ha ha women are objects and should therefore do what I say. The joke is people like that that say that shit exist and it's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> And they get legitimised by fuckfaces online, usually. Um, am I going woke now? Is that, is that what's happening? I'm going woke by caring about people's feelings. Caring about marginalised individuals and how they're treated. If that's what it's what it means, if that's what it means, go, go woke, then you can call me someone who has not been visited by Mr. Sandman because he did not bring me a dream. He brought me um, a broken heart and broken promises. Do we like that song? I like that song. It's one of the ones on the Fallout soundtrack. On one of the Fallout soundtracks. On some of the Fallout soundtracks. Bum, 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 Mr. Salmon, bring me a dream. Bum, 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 bum. Make him the cutest that I've ever seen. Bum, 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 bum. Give him two lips like roses and clover. Bum, 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 bum. And tell him that his lonesome nights are over. Salmon. Bum, 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 bum. I'm so alone. Ha, 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 ha. You fucking loner, go sit all alone. Please turn on your magic phone. Mr. Sandman, I am alone. Bum 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 What's there's a line in that um about it. Pagliacci, Pagliacci, the, the clown, which I only know, I've seen it elsewhere referenced, but I know it mostly from um, Watchmen, when Rorschach tells the joke about the clown, about Pagliacci. But Doc, I am Pagliacci. I'm not wearing hockey pads. Me and Sam used to have this running joke about how Rorschach sounds exactly like Batman. Rorschach's journal. Dog in the alley today. I'm not wearing hockey pads. Get it? It sounds like that Christian Bale's Batman. But it's Rorschach. Uh Give me back my fans! And T up. Yep, that fool. And T up. Kidnap that fool. Get him, get him, get him. Hit him, hit him, hit him. Yap fools, yap fools, yap fools, yap fools. A nice sticker from EPHK, otherwise known as, otherwise known as Electric Pick, otherwise known as Electric Prick. <laughs> Only joking, he's lovely, he's alright. He draws good, doesn't he? Nice sticker there. But let's see what we've done so far. Christ. Feels like it was days and days and days ago that I was drawing all this shit. In a roundabout way it was, but not like days and days and days, just like a day or so. Um, feels like so long ago when I was actually drawing these drawings. <laughs> Doesn't feel like it's all been in one long, drawn out, <laughs> needlessly continuous fucking Poor Lake of a video, Christ. I still really like this. I think this might be my favourite sketcheroo in here. Um, I also really like this guy. And this guy's pretty cool too. My gorillas, that's funny, isn't it? It's like the band, but it's not because it's actual gorillas. I feel like drawing a Max. I feel like drawing a whole shitload of drawings of the Max because I want to get a Max piece done because somebody said um, if I do this Max piece and send it to them and some gun viking stuff they'll do a feature on me like a, a feature video about me oh I imagine that um, that's not the only reason I'm doing it it's also it's for a good cause and shit check out Jerk Comic for that on Instagram I think on YouTube also um, yeah, he asked me a long time ago to do a, 
a Max piece, and I was like, oh, I don't know, can't really, you know, I'm very really busy, uh, you know. But now I'm like, do you know what, fuck it, I'm going to do, I'm going to find time, and I'm going to do a fucking Max piece. So for now, I'm just going to draw some, some Maxes, because why fuck the not? Did you know the song Anti Up is about stealing from people? It's about sticking people up and robbing them <laughs> and fighting them and robbing them at gunpoint, taking their jewels. Anti Up, that's what they say. Anti Up, run the jewels. That's, you know, the group, the, the rap group, the duo, run the jewels. That term means to, means give me your necklace, your watch, whatever else you've got, your bracelet, Run the jewels. Run them. Run that shit. Give me that shit. That's what that means, in case you might not have been aware. But I remember listening to um, Anti Up many years ago. Uh, I was at a friend's house and on the music channel, which I didn't have access to on my home television, but which this particular friend did. Um, the, the song Anti Up, but the, the version with Buster Rhymes came on. Uh, the video for it, and I was like, "Fuck, this is the best song I've ever heard." And he up, yep, that fool, kidnap that fool. Um, and yeah, I fucking loved it, and I spent so long trying to find the CD that had that on. All I knew, all I could remember, was Buster Rhymes because I'd heard of him before. Um, I ended up not being able to find that album, and then I bought just a Buster Rhymes album, which was the album Genesis, which was the first album I actually really bought, um, and I really like it to this day, I really like that album, I think it's good, imagine that, um, but it didn't have anti up on it, until it wasn't till a long time later that I realised it was actually by a band, or a group, or duo, whatever, known as M.O.P., um, otherwise known as Mash Out Posse. Uh, and then the version I knew was just a, a remix, just a, it was a remix. And, um, but I didn't find that out until even later. So I was listening to the basic ass MOP version for a long time. Once I finally found who'd goddamn made it. Uh, and then, yeah, just listening to it like, you know, yeah, school or whatever. And yeah. Yep, that fool, and yep, kidnap that fool, get him, get him, get him, get him, get him, get him, N-words, 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 N-words. And, you know, back then, we could be a bit freer and say the N-word. Well, we weren't supposed to, but we did anyway. Little edgy teens that we were. I remember saying it at the dinner table once. <laughs> I think I called my brother it. <laughs> I think I just straight up called my brother the N-word. <laughs> like, you're such a... <laughs> and my mum was like, don't! Ever say that again? So what? It's just a word. It doesn't mean anything. I should be able to say it. If they can say it in rap music, then I should be able to say it too. Oh, Ewan, young, young Ewan, you've come so far. Tried so hard, and in the end, ah! not to mention a duck. <laughs> That's an Ed, Ed, and Eddie reference for you. What we call. Uh, the fellow Ed, Ed and Eddie fans, Ed Heads. <laughs> I just made that up just now. That's not, as far as I'm aware, that's not a thing. It might be a thing, but I don't, I don't think it's a thing. It's fucking hammering going on. They're like doing renovations on the downstairs, the downstairs, downstairs. Because I'm on a top floor. There's enough and enough. Floor. And on the down, down, down one, they're doing uh, renovations, and I think I can hear some of that coming through the walls. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. So, again, as before, if you can hear that, my apologies, but also, tough shit. Deal with it, cunts. And tee up. Yap that fool. And tee up. Kidnap that fool. I had no idea listening to that song it was about stealing from people. I just thought it was a cool song. I honestly, I thought it was about uh, gambling. I just thought it was about, like, yeah, put your money in. Play some cards. Oh no, I lost. Lost that cards. Get him, get him, get him. Hit him, hit him, hit him. I thought it was, yeah, like, kidnap that fool. I thought it was because I anteed up and I lost at cards. So I'm going to kidnap the person in charge of the game. That's what I genuinely thought ante up was about. And, you know, I, just some dumb kid. How, how would I really know otherwise, you know? 
Um, obviously, I learned. I actually learned uh, embarrassingly late <laughs> that it, it was actually a song about uh, sticking people up and robbing them. And then you listen to the lyrics, especially of the uh, the Buster Rhymes version, and it's very clear. It's about like fucking stealing and shit. And <laughs> why not? Let's all do it. Let's all all have a good bit of stealing. Let's all go out a stealing. Steal some stuff and steal some steel. Um, I've stolen before. Shh. I think the statute of limitations is up. I don't know if that's even a real thing. I've only ever heard about statute of limitations in like TV shows where they're like, oh, well, the statute of limitations is up so you can talk about it now. I'm like, is that is that thing though? Is that a real thing? Because there's a lot of this like police detective sort of stuff they put in TV shows, which is just like based on words that are used by you know law enforcement but in truth aren't actual systems you know that, that are used or whatever so i'm perfectly willing to believe that the statute of limitations thing is completely made up in essence um but then if it is a real thing then that's fair too because what is it basically it's 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 been long enough that you cannot now be convicted if you admit to a crime. I'm not sure I believe that to be the case. That doesn't make sense to me. Like, obviously, I assume if that was the case, different laws would have different statutes of limitations. If you murder someone and then there's a statute of limitations, so then later on you admit to it, they'll be like, oh, we would have put you away, but... Statute of limitations is up, so never mind, eh? You carry on as you were, son. Carry on as you bloody were. Um, statute of limitations. Uh, there, there are. A statute of limitations known in civil law systems as a prescriptive period is a law passed by a legislative body to set the maximum time after an event within which legal proceedings may be initiated initiated so that's a, it is a thing if they don't initiate legal proceedings within a certain time oh so i guess it's it's actually it's not about the person getting away with it because they managed to stay hidden for that long it's about if the I assume from reading one sentence, I assume it's if the law people, if the people in charge of dealing with broken laws, if they do not initiate legal proceedings, if they don't start looking into it, pressing charges, investigating the crime within a certain amount of time, then they can't do it afterwards. <laughs> Which is a bit rough. So, right, the, the, the very first... I'm on Go the Google homepage. Search results. Statute of limitations. The first result is Wikipedia. So it just has two lines as, like, the intro from, from the full page. So these two lines say, State laws edit. Terrorism resulting in death, 55 years. Murder involving rape, cannibalism, or a child, 50 years. Mass murder, 45 years. Murder, 40 years. And then I've got to click on statute of limitations to... Uh... But what does that mean? If you murder or eat or rape someone, as long as nothing's done about it after 50 years, you're okay. You got away with it. Which, I mean, 50 years is a long time. But if you do that when you're young, then... When you're an older adult, you can go, ah, you know, I did the thing, but you didn't catch me, so that's your tough shit. <laughs> that seems ridiculous to me. But, I mean, it's laws and shit, I guess, so fucking whatevs. <laughs> Fuck do I know. I'm not a law person, a law guy. Hello, I'm Ewan, professional law guy. I do laws and such. I'm into executions and murders. What? Acquisitions and mergers, you dumb bitch. Listen when I'm talking to you. <laughs> That's a, a American Psycho reference. See, because he's all murderous in here. Uh... <laughs> 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 
The a statute of limitations known as civil appeals after within legal proceedings may be in, in most jurisdictions such periods exist for both criminal law and civil law, such as contract law and property law. When the time which is specified in a statute of limitations runs out, a claim m might no longer be filed, or if it is filed, it may be subject to dismissal if the defence against that claim is raised that the claim is time barred as having been filed after the statutory limitations period. When a statute of limitations expires in a criminal case, uh, the courts no longer have jurisdiction. Oh, so it can have effect after proceedings have taken place. Um, most common crimes that have statutes of limitations are distinguished from particularly serious crimes because the latter claims may be brought at any time. Yeah, that makes sense. But then it said terrorism had a... Uh, pff, what do I want to do? Hey, come and listen to my podcast. Watch me draw and talk about... Statutes of limitation. Do, do, do. That's that's the new the new way. When I said I'm taking a break, what I meant was after this episode, possibly what I meant was I'm moving into law. <laughs> I'm going to be called, become a law YouTube channel and talk about statute of limitations and stuff. <laughs> that's. The, the the extent of my law knowledge. You know, statute of limitations. Other law stuff. You know, <laughs> stuff. I'll be the next Legal Eagle. A popular law YouTube channel. That would be funny, though. I mean, it would be funny if, if I, my, my whole life took some drastic turn out of the blue. Well, like I'd been working on shit behind the scenes and then suddenly I dropped this bombshell that like, oh, by the way, I do law now. I don't draw pictures anymore because <laughs> that's for children. <laughs> I'm not a child. I'm a grown adult. So now I do law and business and mergers and acquisitions and statutes of limitations. A whole bunch of shit. I don't draw penises and bum bums anymore. Grow up, if that's what you're still doing, you bunch of children, childish children, childrens. Bunch of bum holes. I can hear that hammering and it's like someone's knocking at my door, but someone's not knocking at my door. Someone's just fucking hammering and shit and it's pissing me off. Well, it's not pissing me off that much. It's just, it's fucking whatever. I, I want to use this because I really like how it, how it draws the brush pen from this but it bleeds and i want to draw more maxes on the following pages so i'm just leave that for now let's find another max to draw let's find another max to draw hey you're fat and you're a whore let's find another max to draw to do, do. that was me singing a song about your mum the fat whore that's terribly unfriendly you and how dare you say such things well funny thing about that is Do 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 ba, 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 ba. We're almost done, ladies and gentlemen. What are we gonna do afterwards? Do you ever get that if you watch like a, a long form YouTube video or whatever, if it's something you're particularly enjoying? I don't assume that's the case for, for people watching my stuff, but um if you happen to be watching by a creator you like and you've been waiting for a particular video and then it comes and then afterwards you're just like, but I want it to keep going. Why did, why did he finish the video? I want it to stop. It's not fair. Keep going. Make more video. Which well, I guess it's the same with any like anything you're enjoying, isn't it? Really? <laughs> any series, any movie. It finishes and it leaves you with this sense of ennui and a, a certain kind of emptiness. Now it's gone, all the enjoyment's finished, and now it's back to regular human lifetime. Sorry, but now you've got to continue to exist without this distraction. Sorry. I don't know what the fuck on we means. Should we look it up? Uh, e N N U I, I believe that's how it's spelled. E N N U I. On we killed it. A feeling of weariness and dissatisfaction. Yeah, I used it correctly. I didn't know what the fuck it meant, but I used it correctly. <laughs> Regardless. Boredom. Uh, examples. In reaction to the ennui that he was feeling after working for 12 years in an unchallenging position, Daryl began to look for a new career. That's the 
the most, most mundane example I've seen of any, like, definition of a word. <laughs> Poor Daryl was feeling unfulfilled in his current place of work. And owing to the great ennui <laughs> that he felt from that, he decided to look for a new fucking job. <laughs> Like, does that really require the word ennui? Ennui should be a bit more, like, a bit grander than that, maybe. I don't know. Or maybe it shouldn't. Maybe I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. I oh, shut up. Or I think I am. Some kind of fucking lawyer or something. I like the shape of the Max. I like his big bulbous parts and his muscular parts. And shit. Um, I'm the, the 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 hand and knuckles here just reminded me of uh, things I'd mentioned about not liking certain pieces of artwork by one Ed Piscor. I am. I'm just going to say this. I am aware of the situation regarding Ed Piscor and how it seems it may have ended, um, and that's all I'll say on the matter. Uh, it's not my place to say anything more. I have no real connection to him or Cartoonist Kayfabe other than they seemed to like Gun Viking when they showed it in a video on their channel. Um, very terrible set of circumstances. And uh, <laughs> that's all I'll say about that. Not to bring the mood down, but, uh, you know. Oh, speaking of YouTubers, um, I was, I'm, I've been meaning to ask you guys, you folk, you lovely, you lovely, lovely people, if you have the same sort of thing as me, where you might find a new sort of podcast or YouTube channel, and you're like, oh shit, okay, this is kind of all right, I'm into this, and then, or maybe you're not that into it, but you just think, ah, oh, you know, it's, it's whatever, I'll just put it on, but then you become into it, and you realise you're watching episode after episode after episode. And that's like whatever, you know, it happens. But then you start becoming aware of like the characters of the people doing it and you become aware of things in their lives and like they start talking about like their pets and their families and then you start remembering these details and now when they talk about like friends or members of their family, you're, you're internally, you're like, oh yeah, I remember them talking about that. And then you start to remember all these, like, details about their life. And it's like you're... And I, this is obviously where parasocial relationships come from. Because they share so much information and you take in that information without even trying to. You, you can't help it. You're listening to them talking and you're enjoying their content. You're going to sort of take on that information. Um, and then you start, like, feeling like you really know this person and you know all these things about their lives. And not to the extent that you feel... Um, like you are part of their lives but or that you're you know owed something as a result of that but there is that sense of like getting to know a person and know about somebody and about their life and stuff um, just through like listening to their show or, or viewing their content it's, it's an odd thing that I've only really become aware of lately um, you know watching certain certain videos and such um, because I don't care <laughs> in general about like you know, other people in their lives and stuff. Not to say I don't care about them, but uh, I'm happy to let them have their lives, and and I don't try to get involved or take part. You know, it, it's not my my business. It's not my job to have any say in their life or to feel like I'm part of it. But when you spend so much time watching content from somebody or somebody's you can't help but take certain things on and you know and so i wondered if people have that with me if if people get so used to listening to me that they start to like know stuff about me and then if i bring up like sam for instance if i ever talk about sam do people go ah sam yeah that guy uh, because I talk about him enough that, you know, there must be people out there that sort of 
almost get excited to hear about him when I mention him because he's part of my universe of <laughs> fucking characters and shit. Um, so I'd, I'd like to know through comments or messages or whatever if, if people do have that sort of... Um, I don't know, I don't want to call it a relationship, but if, if they feel that sense of... I don't even know how to describe it. A sense of, of knowing <laughs> stuff about a person. If you feel like you, you do pick up on aspects of my life and then you recognise certain things, maybe that's it, like when, when certain things are mentioned, they mean more to you because, not that they mean something necessarily, but they mean more than they would to a stranger or someone who'd never listened, just because you happen to listen a lot and you pick up on things and you learn information. I'd just be interested to know if, if that is a thing that happens with the watchers of my content. Or if, you know, I talk about Sam and people go, who? Sam, shut up about your friends. Draw already. Do a do a cross-hatching uh, tutorial already, Ewan. You said you were going to do one. Do the hand drawing video already. Do more painting tutorial. Is that acrylic paint or is it gouache? Why do you do the underpainting? Uh, I'm actually going to have heart palpitations from all of this. It's not good. It's a pretty great pose, though, isn't it? The bum and the thing, the whole that curve of the body. Uh, I wonder if I can do this even the littlest bit of justice. Justice. I, I don't dislike the Max's like outback vibe thing where he's got this, I don't know if it's like hair or a headdress or whatever it is. But I don't particularly like it. I'm not like, like I think Max looks better without it than he does with it. Personally, again, not that it fucking matters. It's just it is what it is. It's Sam Keith's design, and it looks the way it looks. And if I don't like it, tough balls and tits and stuff. Max's journal. Give him a lonely heart like Pagliacci. And lots of wavy hair like Liberace. Sam, man, I'm so alone. Bum, 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 don't have nobody to call my own. I've fucked this all up. That should be there. And then, then. Oh, I've missed that whole fucking portion of his arm. Oh, that's shit then. Oh, what a load of bollocks that is. Fucked that right up. This is no good. I've ruined the entire book with this poorly drawn drawing. So these parts here, and then this part here, and this part here, then that part of there, this is also here, and then, and then that, and then, and then the fist here. I just squished it all together. Poorly executed, you're in very poorly executed. Shame on you. Call yourself an artist. You can't even draw a fucking arm. <laughs> No wonder the, the the big companies aren't knocking down your door trying to get you to work for them. I can't even draw a tossing, sodding, shitting arm. You should be ashamed. You should delete your channel, delete all your socials, stop drawing. S go to school, study law, become a law guy, statutes of limitations, all of that shit. Bunch of garbage. This was good, I really like this one. I fucked it up with that one. That looks shit now. Page is ruined. Oh, I'm gonna not even, I'm gonna get to this point and then stop recording and not even put the episode out just because I'm so ashamed of myself. I've ruined everything. I've wasted my time, wasted your time, wasted my life, wasted your life. Not to mention a duck, yes. Like the same Ed, Ed and Eddie references as before. What peculiar shapes he uses. 
Mr. Keith. I'm not even sure like how I'd go about drawing this if I were the person doing it. Like what shapes are in my head? Because it's not like typical face and head shapes and like I'm going to be in the mind of a master artist who, you know, had his moment and then seemingly lost it with that goddamn Batman Max comic. And I, I have these, I've got, you know, other Maxi Max comics. Um, these, I'm not showing these as like influences because I found out about Max quite late on into like my drawing stuff career if you can call it that um and so i don't as a result of that i don't necessarily consider him uh, a major influence on my art or anything um because he wasn't around in the formative years he came a little bit after that he wasn't around at the time of the ashley woods or the david chose or of the the simon bisleys and glenn fabries the Max came sometime after all of that, so yeah, I wasn't that heavily influenced. I'm sure if, if I did find the Max earlier on, I'd probably all of my work would look like Sam's Ke Sam's Keith Sam Keith's work because of course it would. I'd be trying to draw all his shapes and crosshatch like him and whatever else because I'm unoriginal. I've got no ideas of my own. Haha, <laughs> that's that's how all you look when you uh, copy other people's styles. You look like you've, you're boring and shit and you've got no ideas of your own. <laughs> I'm kidding, that's not because I do that shit all the time. What's this piece, Ewan? Oh, a literal direct copy of Simon Bisley piece. Why? Don't you have your own ideas? Can't you produce your own artwork? Do you have to just copy other people who you know, already done much more than you have. Mm, something like that. Shut up. Stop calling me out. Mm. Um, the person who asked about uh, how I feel when my work gets copied also asked something along the lines of, <clears throat> how do you truly feel about knowing you're an artistic inspiration for quite a few people? Well, oh, feels right, I guess. Does this bleed through? Did we decide if this bleeds through or not? I guess it doesn't really. Maybe if I use too much of it, it will. I just, I want to colour this in. Do I need reference? No, I don't need reference. Fuck a reference. Your mum's a reference. Ooh. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, I don't know, because I, it's nice if I see that people have been inspired by stuff I've done, um, or by my work in general. I guess it's one of those things where it's like, I can't, I'm not ignorant enough to be aware that it happens, but I try to be humble enough that I don't go around talking about how inspirational me and my work are. Like, yeah, obviously I see that people get inspired by what I do. If it's the ballpoint stuff or the paintings or art books uh, or just, you know, just stuff in general, just putting work out there. You know, my punk rock fucking gangster DIY attitude to, to how I produce artwork. Um, I'm aware of the effect I have on people, especially women, <laughs> am I right? <laughs> you know, how I disgust them and make them wish they were dead. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I don't really know. Um, I think as long as people are making shit, then I, I, I'm happy to see it. And if they're making shit because of me, for whatever reason, then that's great. But as long as they're making shit, you know, that's, that's the 
the important thing. Because ultimately, even if you're copying, as long as you're making shit, you're eventually, hopefully, going to get to a place where um, you are making shit on your own without copying. So even if you're copying, it doesn't matter. Because keep doing that shit as long as you're doing the shit, as long as you're making shit. Did it bleed? It didn't bleed. Let's fucking go. Ooh, where are we at time-wise? Ah, oh, we're fine. We've got plenty of time. The mood's lighter. I think you can probably feel that. I was I was in a weird mood earlier on. I just wasn't, obviously, wasn't feeling the shit. So uh, I'm feeling much, much lighter, much better about things now. So I think we're in a better space to create some artwork, to draw and shit at the same time. There's something I've never done. Oh shit, maybe I should do that. I should do... This was going to be like, you know, one podcast episode right before I take a break from podcast episodes. But maybe I should do one more podcast episode where I record the whole thing sat on the toilet. Uh, that'd be funny. Would that be really funny? Or would it just be awful? And would you all hate me for it? Not to say I would be using the toilet as I'm doing it. Like, you'd hear the plop-plop sounds and things. Um... You know, just be, you know, I did one from my bed, from the comfort of my bed. That very ironically was much more difficult to set up. It took so much more work to set that up, like physically where the camera goes and everything, than it would have if I just sat at my desk. To have a lazy day in bed doing my podcast from the bed was much more work than it should have been. Um, but an episode from the toilet, oh, that's not been done, is it? Oh, have you heard about Ewan's podcast? He does it from his toilet. And we can call it the shit show. <laughs> That's actually kind of funny. I kind of like that. Patent pending on that. Don't steal that idea. I don't mind you stealing a bunch of my ideas, but don't steal that one. And don't steal the idea just saying, uh, oh, I was just inspired by you. I, I'm not stealing it. I was just, you know, you're such a huge inspiration to me, you, and I just wanted to... Stole my idea for the shit show, how could you? <laughs> the shit show is fucking it writes itself, doesn't it? It's genius. <laughs> I'm still laughing about the shit show. I think that's it's brilliant. I've got a podcast. Oh, what's it called? It's called The Shit Show. Why is it called The Shit Show? Well, <laughs> and then I explain why it's called The Shit Show. Am I a part of your life? Do you listen to my shit enough that you consider me a part of your life? Like if I suddenly disappear, if I suddenly decided to take a break from podcasting, podcasting, pff, like it's an actual thing that I do, like I'm part of some team of podcasters. Um, if I took a break from doing the podcast, would you be like, oh, what? But I, I really enjoy listening every week. I tune in and new episodes. I believe a few people are, They've let me know that, like, they do basically... That is their situation. They look forward to seeing my thing every week. And like I say, I have a plan for a, another series of weekly videos. So I will still be putting shit out there, hopefully, if it all goes to plan. It just won't be this podcast in the same... Um, format and style it will be slightly different so that's just for you to fucking adapt to you got to, the times they are a changing come gather around people wherever you roam and admit that the waters around you have grown and it's such a lesson Mr. Sandman, bring me a dream. That's how the song goes, right? <laughs> uh, fucking shut up. The animated series of the Max was not 
particularly great. I'm sure it's very different and, you know, a lot of people liked it. And maybe it got a lot of people into the comics. That's fine, totally fine. But as somebody who saw the comics first, I'd rather just look at the comics than see the animation show. Because the animation is not great. It's obviously fairly cheaply done. Very close to Flash animation. Um, and it's cool that it exists. I'm not saying it shouldn't exist. I'm not saying, like, go oh, get rid of that. It's fucking rubbish. I'm just saying, as, as a, a lover of the art and such, I prefer to just look at the art and such. It's just my opinion on the animated Max series, which was a thing for a moment on MTV, I think, for a little bit. I don't think it was around that long. It had its time, then it left. So I think uh, some people know the Max because of that show. And if the Max is brought up in conversation, the show is usually brought up in conversation. I say, with no actual knowledge on the thing, it's just something I believe to be the case, and so I'm gonna put it out there as if it's fact. There we go. That's what the internet's for, isn't it? You put your opinion out there and pretend it's actual real information. When really it's a whole load of shit. In my head, when I started this, I was like, cool, I'll do every page. Like, I'll just slam down some Posca pens and then some ink lines and make a drawing and it'll be cool. And then on to the next page and the next page and the next page. And we'll get through the sketchbook in no time at all. The problem is that to make something good, you actually do have to spend at least a little bit of time on it. And if I'm going to fill a sketchbook with drawings, I do want them to be at least a kind of good. At least somewhat, you know, which means I do have to spend at least some amount of time trying to make the drawings look good. As much as I might not want to, I have to. Well, it's not that I don't want to, it's just that if my idea was to fill the entire sketchbook over the course of the podcast, you know, is that a realistic thing to hope for? The thing is, I'm sure if I genuinely tried, if I really put my mind to it, I could fill the entire sketchbook. But it would be like one quick drawing per page. And sure, I filled the sketchbook, but like I haven't really filled the sketchbook. I've just drawn one thing on each page and a lot of those drawings wouldn't be good necessarily. And then it's like, okay, so now what have you achieved? You've achieved technically filling the sketchbook over the course of the episode if it ends up being the full 12 hours but now what are you proud of the drawings in the sketchbook are they good are they, is it worthwhile if the answers to all the above are no then what's the fucking point you know I can draw stuff quickly and still make it look kind of good but if you just rush everything then it's going to look like a bunch of shit. Maybe. I don't know. Shut up! Fucking me talking like I know anything about anything. Me just trying to fill the time with something. Trying to talk so it's not just silence for the whole thing. Bruh. Bruh. That's Zelda, I think. I never really played Zelda games because we didn't have Nintendo for the most part. I had a GameCube for a while. See, my brother would do this thing where he gets a new console, a bunch of games, plays it for a while, and if he doesn't like it necessarily, he'll take it back and get something else. So we had a GameCube for a bit. Super Smash Bros. Melee, this game called Doshin the Giant, which I really, really liked. Um, Pikmin was really, really fun. Um, they re-released the first Resident Evil on GameCube, like an updated version, like they're doing with all of them now. Uh, that was kind of cool. But, 
yeah, my brother, who was the owner of the console, wasn't really into it, so he got rid of it. And so I was tough shit for me. You know, I can't really do anything about it. I just got to fucking lump it. I didn't like it, but I had to lump it. So we never really had Nintendo. Uh, we had Sega. My dad bought us a Sega Mega Drive. Um, originally so we could play it. He had it at his place. So whenever we went to stay with him after the divorce, um, then it was there for us to play. So that was cool. Um, and then I think we were at some point able to get hold of our own Sega Mega Drive, which we got because we knew Sega Mega Drive because that's what we've been playing at Dad's. And so we figured, oh, well, if we're able to get one, let's just get one for the, uh, our home. And, you know, it was like my brothers and or mum putting money together to be able to get one. Um, or it might have been a gift for Christmas or something like that. Um, and then we, for some reason, one of our neighbours, when PlayStation came out, when it was uh, PlayStation X, the big grey one, um, one of our neighbours had one but didn't really play it and so they let us just borrow it for like the longest time to the point where we were like buying new games for it usually actually renting because blockbuster was still a thing so we'd rent games from there um but i think we rented or my brother rather rented metal gear solid a bunch of times because he was really liking it and then he was able to buy it eventually but then he got really really upset because the person who's playstation we were borrowing our neighbor wanted the playstation back either to like have it themselves or maybe to like sell it on or something um and my brother was so upset because he just bought literally like two days previous he just bought metal gear solid for himself um and couldn't play it so then eventually we were able to get our own playstation and then that was pretty much it it was playstation ps2 then my brother got uh, the og xbox and the xbox 360 so I was never really a, 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 a Zelda or Nintendo slash Zelda gamer, which is, you know, a bit of a shame because the, the few, like, bits and pieces of Zelda games I have played, I've really enjoyed. I think I played a Zelda game on the uh, Game Boy, one of those top-down, like, Pokemon-style ones. Um, Link's Awakening. Is that, was that the one? Is that a game? Um, Link Awakening. Yes. No. Yeah, it is. Oh, they remade it. Oh, that's kind of cool. They remade it all like 3D and shit. But yeah, it was on the Game Boy. That's really interesting, Ewan, is it? No. Fucking shut up. Um, just throw some yellow in there because why not? And of course, when I was playing Zelda games, it was at an age where um, I was not like cognizant of what the fuck I was doing. Um, I didn't have enough sense to be like, oh, I need to get this item to this place to unlock this door to, you know, continue on this part of the quest. I was just running around hitting grass and finding rupees, hitting chickens and going, ha ha, this is funny. Oh, look, there's a cave. Oh, well, I can't get into this bit of the cave because of, I don't have a particular item. Oh, well, I'll go and hit these things with a sword. You know, no, no fucking clue what I was actually doing or supposed to be doing. Fuck does cognizant mean? <laughs> I used that word. Cognizant. Cognizant. Crossland. Having knowledge or awareness. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I wasn't cognizant of how the fuck video games worked. I was just too young, you know. Those games are better played by older people who know what the fuck they do, not by stupid little me. You know, I could fuck up some puzzles as a kid. I was just smart in my own right, but not in such a way that would beneficial to the playing of Zelda games and such. 
But the new ones, uh, Tears of the Kingdom and whatever the other one is, they look really, really good. Uh, and, you know, the whole open world thing is really cool that they've got that going. Because as far as I recall, most of the other ones were fairly, like, streamlined in terms of where you could go. Because they had levels. So you have this level and that level and you play in this level and that level. Like old school video games, that's what they did. That's how they worked. It's fucking. Mm. I quite like how um, the the blend from the yellow to the 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 purple has this like ink splatter stuff that Sam Keith puts in there. I'm absolutely butchering the idea of that by just using these kinds of lines right now, but yeah, I do like it. I guess that's something. That's information. Brilliant, you and just bloody brilliant. Should we do something with this? Some kind of outline? It does feel a little bit empty, doesn't it? Well, that's an alright spread, even with this fuck here. That's kind of cool, kind of neat. Um, but this it does does need something, doesn't it? Even if it's just a little something, something, just a tiny little thing, just enough to. Make it fucking fuck. I mean, it's it's kind of good that we're getting towards the end of this. Whatever this is, do we call it an experiment or this event? <laughs> this key event in our time. Because um, I'm running out of talking points, I'm running out of questions to answer running out of the will to <laughs> live, to carry on. I think it needs to end, and it needs to end soon. And it will, you know, everything. Everything comes to an end eventually, doesn't it? Um, but I've not run out of questions yet. Let's find another one. Where the fuck did I put the list? Uh, right. Um... Ever thought about making an art toy? Yes, a bunch of times. And I've spoken to several people at several different times, but just it's never quite come together. Very often it's been the case that, like, you know, I speak to a sculptor or someone who makes toys and things, and it's like, yeah, I've got some ideas. And I send them some sketches and stuff. and Or I say, hey, we should work on something. And they're like, yeah, cool. And I go, oh, I've got some ideas. Here are some ideas. I send them some sketches. And it's usually the case that, like, they're, they're a person, an artist, and they have, you know, shit to do. They can't just drop everything to work on my ideas for art toys. Um, and I don't think I have it in me to, like, get all the stuff necessary to cast my own. To, like, sculpt them is one thing. I, I think I could just about sculpt an art toy to a level that I might be more or less happy to produce. But then all the other shit like resin and, and fucking moulds and all the rest of it. I have That's something I'd have to learn to do. Um, and I don't want to learn to do new things. I want to stay in my comfort zone and never leave it. I would love to get to a point where I can comfortably like produce art toys, but, you know, as much as I hate to say it, I think money is a big part of that. Like if I had uh, a the sort of income where I know I can just chill for a bit and afford without worrying about loss, um, I could afford all the, the stuff I need to start making art toys, then that would be really, really cool. But, and obviously I'd start small. I wouldn't buy everything I need, you know, buy enough to just make a couple. If they sell well, then look into, you know, maybe producing a few more and then it builds. That's how everything works. That's how those sorts of things go. Uh, but I don't see something like that being on the horizon anytime remotely soon as much as, you know, as, as cool as it could be to do. I, I don't see it happening soon, which, you know, maybe it's a shame, but it just is the way it is, isn't it? I do, however, I've had this idea for a little while. I might do a, a little sculpture of something that I would like to be an art toy. Um, and the sculpture, you know, could potentially be used to make uh, and to cast an art toy from um, somewhere down the line. But 
I'll do a drawing of it. Let me, let me, give me a sec, give me a minute. Fuck, stop fucking hounding me. How about this goddamn art toy? Give me a minute. Christ, you people, you just fucking nag, nag, nag. That's what you do. It's very unfair of me to say shit like that, even when I'm joking. It's like, well, you know, they're not. <laughs> You're talking to yourself, you, and stop it. Fuck you. Oh. Stab myself in the head to make the voices quiet just for a minute, please. Oh, dear Lord. That's a bit more what we're after, isn't it? A bit more Maxian than just the, the purple smoke that was there before is what it felt like. Should we do this? Just for the for the fuck of it all. Get in there, get in the fucking right in the crease. Go oh, get in that crease, you bitch. Ooh. I don't even know where this red pen came from, but I'm glad I've got it. It's a good one. Right. Um an art toy by Ewan. Now, I'm going to draw one shape that will be the basis of this sculpture I'm planning on making. And you tell me if you know where it's going. Do, 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 do. Do 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 Did you guess? If you guessed SpongeBob but pink, you were right. Yeah, a flesh. I'm gonna make a flesh bob sculpture. I've got this milliput stuff, this white milliput. It comes in two parts and you mix it together and then it's a putty. You can mold it and mix it and fucking sculpt with it and stuff and then it dries within a few hours. And you can paint it and shit. And I figure if I make it literally probably this big, um, I'll, I'll get wire and everything. I've got everything pinpointed in my head, which shop to go to to get which items I need. I've got the milliput, the wire I can get from somewhere, from an art store. They sell like craft wire and stuff. Um, and then... Uh, Oh, I've got clay, and so I'll make like a, a clay disc to stick the wire into. So I use wire for his legs and arms, however I decide to have them. Um, and maybe some thinner wire for like the fingers and stuff. And then the wire from the legs can like dig into a clay disc, which I can use as like a stand. And then I can sculpt feet on that stand around the wire. Um, and sculpt me a uh, oh and use wire for the nose as well so that can stick out without worrying about it falling off um, and use like I don't know uh, more wire for the frame and then use tin foil or cardboard or tape or something and then put the milliput on top of that uh, to produce uh, a, a flesh bob toy and I'll, I'll give it a, like bum cheeks in the back I'll sculpt the back so it's got like a line down the back and then a couple of cheeks I'll give him a little penis maybe use a bit of wire for that again just to make sure it doesn't fall off um, and yeah I'll make a little flesh bob sculpture have his tongue out uh, I'm thinking maybe have his hands like grabby hands kind of um, that's what I'm envisioning. His arms like this. You know, cartoony sort of grabby grab hands. Um, his mouth will be slightly indented and then, you know, painted black and everything with his tongue coming out. Give him some eye sockets and sculpts like some eyebrows and stuff and then some big swollen eyeballs bursting out of his head 
But yeah, I think I could do that in a day. Like sit down, get all the shit together, sit down one morning, start sculpting, and then, you know, take a break for lunch. And by the end of the day, I'll uh, have this sculpt and then leave it overnight to like dry properly, paint it the next day. And then it's a fucking flesh bowl. I mean, that'd be really, really cool. If nothing else, it will look cool just like sat on the shelf or whatever, about this big. Just fucking sit there looking all nice. People will come in and see it and be like, is that his penis? And I'll be like, fuck yeah, it is. Um, and then, yeah, there is the potential to like sever the arms and legs and uh, cast it in resin or something vinyl or whatevs and make a toy out of it. If any people who make toys and shit are watching or if anyone knows people who make toys and shit, uh, feel free to get in touch and let me know if you if you think you can produce something like this or you know someone who could produce something like this uh, then yeah let's fucking make it happen because that would be crazy cool <laughs> I'd really really like to have that like I'd love to have it as an art toy just because it's cool if you can sell them that's cool too I guess but the main thing is just that it would look cool. It would be a cool thing to, to make and to have existing. Do, 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 do. Flesh Bob, Flesh Bob, we love you. We love you. Oh, yes, we do, we do. Flesh Bob, Flesh Bob, we love you. Ah, he's killing all of us. Stab, 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 stab. Cut, cut, cut. Chop you up and... Eat your body parts, cut you to pieces, you and your dog. Fuck you all. Ha, 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 ha. Munch, 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 crunch, crunch. Eating your bodies. La, 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 la. Eating you all. Eating every part of you. Do, 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 all right, as we get into the last leg of this journey that we've been taking together, um, I want to talk about something important. Uh, it may not seem important, but I want you all to understand it comes from a a very genuine place, a place of caring, a place of, um, I don't know, a bunch of other words, contrition, that doesn't really fit, but it's a word, so we can use it. That's what words are good for, you can use them, excuse me, the end. Um, right, so what I want to talk about is this kids show from the 90s or early 2000s called Big Kids. It was a British like acted TV show uh, on like the children's BBC channel they have on after school from like three o'clock. So you get home and there's kids shows on. You can watch them and go, oh, look, shows for me. So this show, Big Kids, um, the, the basic premise of the show is as a family of four, a mum, dad, uh, and a brother and sister, who are their children. Uh, at the very, very start of the first episode, they are, and I don't remember this exactly, but this is all from like whatever memories I've got of it. The show starts off with the family at uh, a, sh a show, like a, a stage performance show, um, and the main act is a, a hypnotist. I assume, I don't remember all of it, so again, I'll, I'll say what I do remember. Um, I, I guess he's like hypnotising people to like, to be like, now you're a chicken, now you're fucking an elephant, you believe you are always asleep, whatever, I don't, I'm making this up because I don't know what the actual thing was. Um, this needs to be more tilted. Uh, and then, so the blah blah blah. The parents go on stage. The the mum and dad of the kids in the show, the main the main characters, and they get hypnotised to believe that they are children. 
so they call each other they the, the hypnotism is evidently successful um so they act like children they call each other fucking stinky poo uh poo poo brain doo doo head and they like hit each other and they were like shut up you're rubbish and they're like you know they're snotty little shit um and I guess they snap out of it by the end, and they're like, "Wait, what? What happened? I don't. Know. I don't know what happened. Do you know what happened? I don't know what happened. What happened? I. I don't know." And that's you know the basic thing. However, as the show goes on, at seemingly random intervals throughout the day, whatever situation they're in, the adults will suddenly switch back into kid mode. So they could be at like a fancy restaurant or something, you know, having a nice family dinner. I, I remember zero of the actual um, uh, incidents that they got into. Um, I think at one of them they were pretending to be Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader and having a lightsaber fight in their home. But like that's something, isn't it? Um, and it's all, you know, they, they like, yeah, they could be out for dinner and then suddenly something happens uh, and they turn into kids, big kids, hence the name of the show. Uh, and the, the children then have to become the adults and they've got to, like, calm them down and try to get them out of the situation and, like, oh, my God, what's happening? And the, the spell, the hypnotism, seems to last for an indefinite amount, not indefinite, but, like, a, a n not measured amount of time. Sometimes it's a long time, sometimes it's not a long time. Um, maybe there's a way that they do get brought out of the spell. I don't recall exactly. Um, I don't feel like this is wild enough. No, no, it's fine. But that's that's the show. They every episode, at least once, the the kids turn into big kids, and then the real kids, the younger kids, have to deal with that. And they've got to fucking, you know deal with their parents being fucking annoying little shit. Uh, now, why do I bring this up? Why is it important? Why is it so important that I had to bring it up right towards the end of whatever this is? Well, this show, I'm going to spoil the entire thing. It's not new. It's not you know, it's it's not a new show. If, if you were ever going to watch it, you'd probably have watched it already. It's not the sort of show you go back and watch. Or maybe it is. I don't fucking know. Anyway, I'm going to spoil it regardless, because I don't give a shit. Um, this show has, no lie, one of the best reveal endings I've ever seen anywhere, ever. Um... Uh, how does it how does it go? <laughs> I'm just trying to I mean I know how it goes I'm just trying to figure out how I go about um, explaining it uh, okay so towards the end of the show um, they know what's happened well, well they know that the hypnotist uh, has you know made them become children uh, and whatever and I think throughout the show they keep trying to get hold of the hypnotist but they can't find him anywhere and then one day miraculously I believe they do manage to track down the hypnotist uh, and they go to where he is he's having a show or whatever and then I think he's getting ready for the show in like the changing room and then they go and see him and like when he's on stage he's got like a Fu Manchu mustache and a big gown and a hat and it's a whole thing um but then when he's off stage, he doesn't have any of that. He's literally just some guy and his name's like fucking Frank or whatever. Um, and his his performance name is like Ming the Magical or something, something like that. Um, Ming the Magnificent. One of those, you know, like goofy fucking stereotypical uh, fucking hypnotist names, whatever. So the end of the show, I guess the last episode, they do manage to track the guy down and they're like, you've got to help us. What? How? Why does this keep happening? It, since you hypnotise them, it keeps happening and the thing and the thing and the thing. The twist is, and it, this might not seem that um, magical or miraculous, but it was. It was a magical moment for me. So the twist, the reveal ending, 
is they turn into big kids anytime somebody uses the word Ming. M I N G. Uh, obviously, the guy's name is Ming. He's Ming the Magnaflus or whatever. So he was like, well, I'll make it be me. Anytime you hear the word Ming, you'll turn into a child, you'll think you're a child or whatever. Um, and so that's that was the thing. So that was that was basically it. But then what it did was it played like clips of the show from throughout the, the episodes, from past episodes of like when they turned into kids. And it's like someone in the background going, um, oh, we've got to get the timing right. And then what happens when they turn is you know the the adults they'll just be sat there talking whatever and if if the word ming is said around them their heads drop down not like they just like slump forward a little bit and their eyes close for a few seconds and then they lift up and their eyes open and then they're a kid um but it's so it was so cleverly done because the whole time i'm i'm watching this show as a child never once occurred to me that that was what was happening because it would literally be yes yeah, someone in the background saying like the word um, oh, your timing's off or something. And you, it, it doesn't register in your head that, like, the word timing has the word Ming in it. And that's obviously what set them off. Um, it was such random things. I know I know one example um, that I have in mind was... Um, they would... The adults uh, were doing... Uh, one of them was doing a crossword. I think the mum was doing um, a crossword. And it was like... Um, where there? Eight letters, uh, something, something. Um, I can't remember. The, the clue was something, uh, maybe like Ring of Fire or some, something about a Ring of fl Fire. Um, and the dad goes, Flamingo. And the mum was like, what? And he goes, Flaming O. And then both of their heads drop down and their eyes close and then they come back up. I remember seeing that episode and seeing them turn into kids. And I was like, oh, is it the word Flamingo? Or is it like something to do with birds or crosswords or something? Is that what's turning them into big kids? I had no clue it was the word Ming specifically. So the dad goes flaming O. He says flamingo and then flaming O. Um, see, ring of fire, flaming O, flamingo. But they show that as one of the examples of like, uh, you know, the flashbacks. Of, of all the times the word Ming was used and then they turned into big kids. And that blew my mind. I was like, fuck, that's so clever. Because the word Ming fits into so many words like that that you never even notice it's there. I can't think, I can think of timing, I can think of flaming, um, and that's it. Words, words, words ending in Ming. There we go. Um... I don't want to be on images. What words end with Ming? Aiming, arming, coming, doming, faming, fuming, gaming, homing. There's a lot of words that end in Ming. Brainstorming. Bumming. <clears throat> I made that one up myself. Blooming. Trimming. Beaming. Blaming. Combing. Chiming calming booming like any of these words could be said but then if you're just watching the show you're like oh they said booming is it boom you don't you know your mind doesn't go to the end of the word you think about like the word itself it's so fuck it's genius really i don't want to like make it out to be something it's not because it's i feel like that's one of those things where like if i was watching it today there's maybe like a 50 maybe yeah literally a 50 percent chance that i'd pick up on it because you know i'm pretty sharp these days i, I pick up on that sort of shit. I'm, a, I'm a puzzle solver i solve riddles and puzzles all the time i'm a smart cookie um but i think it's equally likely that if i were to watch that show today if it were a new show and i hadn't seen it before it's quite likely i would not pick up on that that it was the word ming that was turning them into goddamn big kids. It is, that's fucking genius, man. 
So like I've I've not seen I can't recall having seen like a a reveal that clever since. <laughs> like in all the things, even um, Usual Suspects, where like uh, the Kevin Spacey, that guy, he's the guy. He's I forget the guy's name, but he's he's the guy and he was pretending to be like disabled or whatever the whole time. Oh my god, Kaiser Sose, Kevin Spacey is Kaiser Sose. Spoilers for that film, by the way. Um, even that reveal, I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. He was the guy, and he was pretending not to be the guy. But this big kids, this show Big Kids, it was way more impactful. <laughs> the, the reveal of that, it's the word Ming. That was like, fuck, I can't believe that. The whole time it was the word Ming. And then they managed to break the spell and fix it and it never happened again i think or maybe it did I, I think maybe they might have left it like questionable as to like whether or not they were actually out of the spell or not um that would be quite a good ending as well wouldn't it if it was like cliffhanger sort of thing um but yeah so that was the terrifically uh, obscenely important thing i had to talk about because it just Blew my stupid young head wide open when I was when I was a little wee lad. Couldn't believe that. Ming. Holy shit, it's genius. Genius! Fucking genius, I'm telling you, mate. It's fucking genius. And it is. Fuck you if you say it's not, if you think that's stupid. If you think that's not the smartest, cleverest fucking reveal in any kind of show ever. You're a dummy. Fucking brilliant. Ming. You come up with a better one then. You're so smart. I don't know what swans' feet look like when they're running. I googled swan chase on images to try to get pictures of swans running after people. I can't quite see their feet in any of these pictures. So I'm just guessing at like how they look. I know they've got webbed feet, but like... How do you draw a swan's foot while it's running? You know? And then there's this guy. Ooh. This guy is sort of unimportant. But anyway, he's important in terms of the bit that I'm doing. You'll get it. This will be almost as good a reveal as that big kids show. Almost. I'm not considered. Con I'm not uh, consider. I'm not uh, suggesting that I'm anywhere near that level of, of clever enough to do that sort of thing. But but it's close. You'll see it. Give it just... I'm almost done. Why did I draw a circle there? That's fucking weird. Um, this is all... All for one... One... Thing. I've had an idea of this for, for quite some time. Um, and it's, it's good to finally get it out. Right, so he's going... Like this. Shit, 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 shit. Oh, shit, 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 shit. Because there's a swan. Oh, no, not a swan. I can't believe it. It's obscene. And you're thinking, okay, Ewan, a swan. Uh, where's the, the joke? What's the, the catch? What's the hook here? What's the big thing of it all? It's not just any swan. It's not just any swan, it's... Cocaine swan! <laughs> uh. 
See, it's like cocaine bear, but it's a swan. I thought that would be really funny. Like, imagine if I paint, if I if I draw that like not in a sketchbook, like neat, neat and tidy, nice drawing of a swan, very similar to the cocaine bear uh, poster, black black and white drawing, and then white like splash kind of super dynamic text, cocaine swan. <laughs> image on Instagram of that, like a, a fake movie poster. Haha, <laughs> that's kind of funny. And then you swipe and it's just like a, a cartoonist drawing of this, like shit, 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 of this guy being chased by a swan. Haha, <laughs> uh, cocaine swan, that's funny. Well, it's a bit funny. Well, it's, you know, it's not that funny. It's not hilarious. I mean, it's, it's not not funny. It's not not funny. It's funny. It's not. It's not that funny. It's not not funny. It's kind of funny. All oh, this pens running out too. All my pens are running out. I'm gonna have to get all new pens at some point. Aren't I? What a load of bollocks! I don't mind getting like a new pen now and again. It's even quite nice. You go to the, the art supply stop and the guy in there recognises me and it's, oh, how you doing? Oh, you know, not bad, not bad, getting on. How you doing? How's business? You know, nice, nice little thing. Get a couple of pens, bit of this, bit of that. But it's when you've got to get like a whole new set of, of whatever it is you're using. If you've got to get like a whole new set of paint, a whole new set of pens, a whole new fucking everything. It's just a fucking like... If nothing else, you know, when you see how much it all costs together, like one or two of those costs individually is fine. But when you have to spend just pounds and pounds and pounds on a whole bunch of shit at the same time and you see the total and you know the money's draining out of your account and it's just like, ugh, fuck, <laughs> I'm never going to financially recover from this. That's the reference to uh, Tiger King, which I never actually watched because I don't give a shit. For all the time people spend talking about that, that and like Game of Thrones, some shit that like people just talk about and talk about and talk about, and I just don't care. I don't care about the premise of it. Like nothing about it makes me the least bit intrigued. Oh, there's a weird guy and he's like, there's tigers and it's all fucked up and there's, uh, you know, all this bad shit going on and you don't know who's who's innocent, who's guilty of the, did the woman die? Did he kill the? Oh, I don't know. I don't care. I literally don't give a single shit. I, I, I fucking... What are they doing? What are they producing that's good or interesting or creative or useful to the world? Nothing. They're just... There's, they fuck with tigers and then worse shit happens. I don't give a fart about any of that. People and their drama. Ugh. It's all fucking boring. So boring. <laughs> so, so boring. Which is, like, my my tastes um, are... They annoy the fuck out of me. The stuff I am actually interested in. Because I... I usually prefer fiction. I love a documentary. I love true stuff. Some true crime stuff, but not much t true crime stuff. Basically, if there's cannibalism, I'm probably interested. If there's not, eh, I don't really care. I don't care about like sex crimes. I mean, not that I don't care about sex crimes, but it's not the sort of thing I want to like sit and watch. Um, there's cannibalism in there. Count me the fuck in. <laughs> um, but in general, I prefer fiction, but... It has to be really fucking good fiction. In general, it's just everything I like. For me to like it has to be so well made. It has to be well produced. The sets and the world it creates has to be well made and like not believable because I know I'm watching a pretend show. But it has to be well made that like you could believe it's a real place. Um, the acting has to be good, all the lighting, the music, it all has to come together and be a really solid, like, good production. Otherwise, I'm effectively watching people prance around on stage pretending to be other people, and that sort of shit, it bores the hell out of me. And it, to the point where I, I almost cringe at it, at, like, poorly produced things, poorly acted things, because I'm just watching a bunch of people bumbling around on a sound stage with green screens behind them that I know are there. I know there's 
112 people on set holding cables and cameras and lights and, you know, fucking PDs and production assistants and producers backstage watching everything on monitors. I'm acutely aware of all of that going on as I'm watching this show they've made or whatever. And I know, like, it's just a bunch of people reading lines because it feels like that. Whereas if something's really well produced, all of that stuff blends into the background because the foreground is so well made. Um, uh, and that's usually what I'm looking at. So when it comes to like something like Tiger King, I'm like, I don't, don't care about these people. I don't care about their dumb lives that they've created. You know, all of these problems arise because people are dicks. And like, I don't need to watch a show to know that people are dicks. And like, oh, this guy's a weird character, isn't he? Well, yeah, but so is the fucking person that camps outside Sainsbury's every day that I walk past that asks me for change. They're a fucking character. Crazy people. You know, not necessarily crazy, crazy, but just like crazy, wild, weird, wacky people. Um, as, yeah, so when it comes to shows, I don't, I don't care. Cocaine Swan, on the other hand, I'd watch the shit out of that. Oh, that'd be fucking cool, wouldn't it? Cocaine Swan. Cocaine Swan. And of course, I'm only two... Oh, we made it halfway. Ironically, if I'd kept just one of these sketchbooks and not stuck two of them together, I would have filled an entire sketchbook. That's quite funny. If I do like, yeah, literally one more page, I'd have filled, I would have filled an entire sketchbook. You know, more or less, there's gaps here and there, but like it's whatever. Essentially, I would have filled the entire sketchbook. I got halfway, that's pretty fucking cool, and it's pretty decent, pretty gnarly, pretty fucking cool. So let's draw some more shit. See, so I've, the next page of Death Fist is the big punch punching the guy into hell and I am so at a loss of I mean I've already been through this on on one other podcast episode um because I kept drawing him looking like a penis <laughs> I kept drawing this is his, his fist and the arm going up like fading not fading into the distance but you know going up and then his his body here <laughs> And his piss hole in the cum shit, you know, his big penis. I kept drawing that same pose where, you know, he's mad and he's punching down into the ground. And then his other arm and his fucking legs and shit. And this guy's legs and arms going, oh no, you punched me into the ground. The ground cracking. And all the cum shit and I have his penis. Um... But I'm, I'm so unsure of, like, because the previous page is this one where he's winding up. He's about to lay him the fuck out with a single punch. Or not even that, he's laying him down into the ground, into the fires of Hades. And I don't know if I should show Death Fist's full body or if it should be more almost abstract, just like... Death Fist, just fiery expression. Teeth, eyes, fucking... Argh. And then his fist being this. Maybe his other hand in the background, maybe not. And then just loads of, like, whoosh lines. And maybe the sound effect just saying, PUNCH! And then the next four pages of bum face falling down into hell. But then I do want to show said bum face being punched down into hell. I think I might have um, a little, like a, a, a panel at the top here broken up into two pieces. So the panel at the top of the page like this um, maybe one little drawing of, um, yeah, of, of like Valentino with his head down, with his dreadlocks hanging down, 
um, hunched over holding his nards because he's just been punched in the dick or in the balls rather um, so his legs apart his hands gripping his testicles that have been mashed into oblivion and then uh, this panel just like his eyes like terrified his nose with his little like, nose bandage that he has on for some reason and then you know all these like anime whoosh lines coming in as something big and, and disastrous is about to happen. So big wide eyes, very small pupils as he's like <gasps> like something out of Akira where you know the guy's about to have his head exploded or whatever. Oh shit and then fucking punch So I guess you don't if I do show this I then theoretically don't need to show him being punched if i show death fist punching you know what and who he's punching you know what's going down and then if the especially if the next shot is this guy falling into hell visibly un obviously falling into hell then you'll get the idea um but it would be i don't know it'd probably be good to show him being punched down into hell. I also then need to come up with a tumbling man. <laughs> I need four images of the guy falling. I think the first one I'm thinking of something like this, like again, a terrified face sort of screaming like oh, dreadlocks all like flying upwards and his hands out like this. And his legs in the back somewhere as he's like falling downwards. And then the next one, and this would be like, if this is the line of this, this would be like that. So he's falling down this way across these pages. Then the next one would be like him sort of tumbling over himself. So maybe his bum in the air and his feet uh, like this and in his hands like this as he's like rolled over with his dreadlocks here oh no and then um, like hand here Dreadlocks here. And here. And then... Oh, and then, um, like, falling away. So here he's falling towards the camera. And then here have his, like, feet first. As he's, like, falling away with his hands outstretched. Like, oh. This is the bottom of his shoes you're looking at here. His head and his hands. That kind of works. It, need, it needs some work and I will need to like sit and figure it out. But even there, that kind, you kind of, you can, even through these few drawings, you can kind of see what I'm aiming for at least, can't you? Like falling, sort of tumbling. Or it's more, so he's falling and then he sort of rolls forwards over himself and then this side of him comes back up as he falls down. So there is a bit of, a bit of motion. And if this is pointing this way, this line of his action is going this way, then it will be more like this. Uh, potentially. And then, as I said, the background will be all like, I'm, I, I have read Dante's Inferno, but like, a long long time ago so i might try to reread through it or just google a list of like descriptions of what's going on in this the nine circles of hell and then draw parts of that like tortured souls and floating souls being blown about by the winds a river full of bodies people in holes upside down having their feet burned i know that's one of the things i think there, there is a scene in in dante's inferno where i think there are like wells kind of like this um, and there are people buried in them with their feet sticking out their little toes 
Um, and they're still like, I mean, they're dead because they're in the underworld, but they're still alive enough to feel pain and such. Um, and then they're having like their feet burned with hot coals and shit and they can't move. They can't do anything about it. They just have to suffer. They suffer the indignities of the afterlife that they've brought upon themselves by a life of sin. Um, yeah, shit like that. You know, demons and monsters and shit. Just hellish visions as this guy's tumbling down. And I will try to make it so the drawing of the guy, Valentino, is just a line drawing with a white filling and everything around him is, like, hatched to fuck. So the bodies will hopefully still be visible, but then all the rocks and, and hell around him will be... So it'll be a dark page, or dark four pages, but then he'll be sort of, like, highlighted throughout as he's tumbling down into hell. Um, that's my vision for the next few pages. I'm hoping to have those done in the next week or so. I mean, I, I say that shit all the time, and then four weeks later I've done, you know, one page, maybe. And then there's going to be a couple of pages of Death Fist talking to his boss, whoever that is. And I'm thinking of doing, like, um, a sort of thing... Under the Skin is a film with uh, Scarlett Johansson. And it's a really, really good film, really trippy. Well, trippy, it's just sort of eerie. Um, but there are these scenes that Stranger Things stole where she's just in a black space, just in a void, but she's, she's perfectly well lit, but everything around her is pure black. And then she, like, lures men into this area and then they sink into the ground. Um, so there'll be a couple of things like that where it's, like, Death Fist here with his skirt and his big hand talking to his boss and then his boss will speak back and then Death Fist will be here with his skirt and his big hand talking to his boss. And all of this space around him will be just pure black. And then maybe one page where it is just like him, really small in the page, the entire thing black. Maybe a speech bubble, maybe not. Just to show him in his like, his office space, I don't know. Um, and then a couple of pages where his boss will be talking about uh, there's still many more people that you need to send back. You're not done yet. Your work is still ongoing. And then there'll just be shots of people in the streets and then the occasional, like, demon-faced person hidden amongst them. Because that's going to be the point, is there's still demons out there. And then there'll be a, a page, two-page spread, a page uh, of just, like, lots and lots of people, all, like, almost stacked on top of each other, all facing forwards, all with, like, normal faces different hats on maybe and hairstyles all kinds of different people mums and sons and different colours and creeds a bunch of different people and then the same picture I'll just trace it but a few of them will have demon faces instead of their original like little horns and fiery eyes and like grinning teeth faces and stuff and there'll be a caption saying there's still people out there which means there's still demons out there, something along those lines. And that, apart from one other page, which will sort of lead into the next half of the comic, that will be the end of part one. Um, and there's two parts to this story. It's in two halves. There's a drastic change after the first half. Um, and so once I get this first half finished, I will hopefully get it printed up and sold as a thing, as a first half, and then people can buy that, and then when I eventually get the second half done. The second half may be easier to draw because the subject matter is a lot smaller scale, um, and it's not going to be so action-packed. Uh, so it may be a lot easier to draw, and it's going to have a sort of a more structured layout so um, I shouldn't have to worry about how I'm going to lay it out it should just be sort of filling in the spaces basically I still have to sit and draw it but um, you know a lot of the issue comes from this not just drawing a comic but having to figure out how to draw the fucking comic <laughs> what am I drawing on the page like okay I need a page of a guy or four pages of a guy tumbling through hell do that then draw that go on Draw four pages of a guy tumbling through hell. <laughs> like, okay, let me 
give me a minute, let me figure it out. And I still don't know exactly what to do for this. I think this could work of having, you know, Death Fist just giving a big fucking swing of, of the punch. A big whoosh punch. And then it's lights out for you, Mr. Valentino. This is a random black square for no particular reason. It's not a square at all. It's a rectangle or an oblong. Do you remember that word? Have you ever used that word outside of primary school? Oblong? Where the fuck did the word oblong come from? I'm on images, it's showing me oblongs. The word oblong can be a noun. I would also call them oblong, by the way. Why is a rectangle called an oblong? Uh, first, consider the Latin word longus, which means long, and the prefix ob, which refers to some direction. Uh, I mean, okay. Okay. I... That makes sense to me. Longus, which means long, and ob, which means some direction. So it's long in a particular direction, because it's longer than it is tall or whatever. That makes perfect sense. I, I that that is sufficient for me. Now I feel like I've I've literally learned a thing right here and now. I've learned why the word oblong exists, where it comes from, what it means from the Latin. And I accept that fully, fully take that on board as information. It may not be useful to me ever because the word rectangle is a word that we use. So why would I use the word oblong? That's just fucking weird. But it's good to know, I guess. For what it's worth, which is fucking nothing. Oh no, I'm falling through hell. Uh... Hmm, that's another question I could ask. Uh, to which circle of hell would a child killer go? So you're not supposed to end a sentence with a preposition. That's why I started with to which. Seventh circle, violence. It is comprised of three rings. The outer ring is filled with blood and fire and reserved for murderers and thugs. So I guess it doesn't matter if you kill children or anyone else. You go to the seventh circle of hell. Description of se seventh circle of hell. Yeah, I know it's good, boys. You don't have to. Jesus. Oh, here we go. Uh, how did Dante describe all circles of hell? Fourth, fifth, sixth. I hate the word sixth. S sixth. 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 It's like how I used to pronounce no FX. I now know it's no FX. Which, no effects, no effects. It's raw, it's unadulterated, it's pure. I get that. I used to think it was Nox. I'd never heard anyone say it before. I only ever saw it on like the back of fucking like loud music albums or in magazines, adverts for the albums or whatever. And I assumed it was Nox. I didn't fucking know what it meant. The seventh circle of hell is divided into three rings. The outer ring houses murderers and others who are violent to other people and property. Here, Dante sees Alexander the Great disputed. Uh, Dionysus, D Dionysus, Dionysus, uh, Dionysus of Syracuse, Guy de Montfort, 
and many other notable historical and mythological figures such as the centaurs uh, sank into a river of boiling blood and fire in the middle ring the poet sees suicides who have been turned into trees and bushes which are fed upon by harpies but he also sees here profligates uh, chased and torn to pieces by dogs in the inner ring are blasphemers and sodomites residing in a desert of burning sand and burning rain falling from the sky so what I could try to do across these four pages is I, I want to try and make it almost fish eye. So he's like, the perspective is you're looking up from like the portal to hell and then you're looking down into the abyss. And so it's like the camera's going like this, following him as he tumbles through hell. I'm not sure how successful that will be, but we'll see. But I could put like some indication of the seventh circle here i guess i could literally draw rings that he's falling through um but that might be a bit too on the nose i'm not sure and in so in terms of what i'm going to be drawing throughout draw at least some kind of inclination or, or um implication of various things from the first six circles in here and then just a hint of the seventh circle to show that he is falling into the seventh circle of hell where he belongs. So I've written sixths, but he's falling into the seventh. I need to remember that. And this is hell. The cir seventh circle of hell. Seventh hell. Circle, seventh circle. You get it, you titamaboobs. Come on now, we're, we're at the home stretch. My list of, of shit to draw, I think, has been, uh, yeah, has been exhausted. <laughs> I've used up every idea I've ever had. Cocaine Swan, Spitfire Logo Goblin, Death Fist being victorious, Pigeons trying to fuck versus me trying to fuck. Um, portrait series of comic book covers, that's the Wolverine and the Thor. Gatto Mago, though. I thought that would be just a fun, cute little thing to draw, and maybe that 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 could be. Gatto Mago is um I've probably got a picture of it actually. It's in Sludge Life. Uh Sludge Life 2, I believe. Sludge Life 1 has a game within a game, like you can play a little video game within the video game. And Sludge Life 2 has one of those also. And that one is called Gatto Mago. And I did Google the term Gato Mago and it translates literally from Spanish as cat magician or magician cat. Um, Gato, I know Gato is cat um, and Mago is obviously magician. So I could draw a little cat magician. Gato Mago. Oh, apparently it's someone else's character that they've got. Gato Mago by Gatito. Oh, Gatito. That's like little cat. That's cute. I'm just, I've Google imaged Gato Mago. Gato, ma, Gato Mago. Oh, that's Italian. I don't know why. Hey, Gato Mago, you. There's a bunch of images of like cats wearing wizard hats, a bunch of AI shit. AI, by the way, isn't artificial intelligence. It's not any kind of intelligence. It's a computer program that sweeps uh, websites for data, scoops it up, and then picks relevant parts of it based on your searches and it's controlled by people and its main aim is to make money for those people that's it sometimes it produces arguably good results in terms of pictures and videos but that's because it's been programmed to do that it's not an intelligence, it's not doing it on its own, it's been programmed to perform a function and sometimes it does that function better, sometimes it does it worse. It's not an artificial intelligence at all, I'm just going to say that. Just so we're clear, artificial intelligence isn't. It's not artificial intelligence because artificial intelligence would be able to do all of this without any outside influence. Um, it wouldn't need a programmer to make it do a thing because it would do the thing on its own and then it would get better at doing it on its own and then it would cease to need the people 
making it work. It would figure out a way to make itself work. I mean, theoretically, but it's not an intelligence. It's a computer program, and that's it. So don't, don't, uh, you know, you, uh, you bunch of silly, silly willies. Look, cocaine swan. This is a bunch of shit, isn't it? One of the worst drawings I've ever done in my life. I don't know what I was, I was just trying to get it done quickly because I wanted to get the joke done and the joke is cocaine swan. Um, some, some pretty decent drawings in here. Some of them I'd, I happily would show off. Some of them I can absolutely use as the basis of other things. Like I, I'd happily trace this and paint it like this to be the uh, a newer rendition of the original idea for page one of Gun Viking. This is just a fun, cool little piece. That's decent in it. I, I still might throw that in, <laughs> like just after. Um, the guy goes into hell. The start of Valentina gets to hell after, yeah, after he's gone into hell and just before he speaks to his boss, throw in a nice thumbs up uh, page like, ha ha, yeah, I did it. Maybe in the background, have the kid being reunited with his mum. Just, you know, to tie that up, just to be like, oh, look, everything's okay now because of the fist. Um, these are just cool little goblin drawings. I'd show those off throw that on Instagram there's a sketchbook page that's kind of neat could be refined a bit but it's there this needs to be refined and you know I was part way through doing that this is kind of cool I don't know if I'd show it off but I quite like it for what it is um, this with the Wolverine logo photoshopped above it would I, I think make quite a cool image um, the Thor maybe not so much the Hulk definitely not um, Blastoise definitely I think I'm going to base my final Blastoise drawing off of this drawing. You know, I'll do it a bit smaller in ball points and everything. Really happy with that. Um, that's cool. Again, I will trace it neater and tidier and paint it really, really nice. Um, I think a dark red slash pink background and then pink spray paint behind it and then a little bit of pink spray paint on top just to sort of blend that light in. Um, these are, I'd share this as a page as well, put that on Instagram as a single image. I really like these two drawings individually and together as one. Well, that's a good page, isn't it? That, eh, not really so happy with, but it fills the page and it looks kind of neat. It's not the worst, but it's, it's alright. I think this, I really, really like this. I'd share that on Instagram. Um, I think we're gonna, I'm gonna do that, like crop it as a square image and then, um, have it so you can swipe and see the original sculpture by Neil. Uh, this is quite a neat little section of sketchbook, quite like that. Like I say, if I refine this, white out a bunch of stuff, just tidy up a few bits, that could work. That's kind of funny. I could put that in my stories. It'd be a bit, a bit humorous, wouldn't it? Some random Max sketches. That could be quite a good one to show off. That's funny for what it is. That's a good joke that I could take and refine draw it neater and tidier make it look all like dope with you know a solid black background cool drawing and lots of like splats and swooshes and stuff this is just development so i can i've definitely from here gotten ideas that i will absolutely put into effect in the forthcoming uh, pages of death fist and uh now i'll just do it like a little cat magician drawing because fucking why not we're getting right towards the end. We're uh, we're getting there. Um, it seems uh, not fitting necessarily, but uh, it seems an adequate time to go over this question from Theodore, long, long time follower, and I'd call him a friend. Um, yeah, he's fucking great. He's commissioned me a bunch of times. He's got my shit tattooed on him. He's got loads of my stuff. Uh, he's great. He's a great guy. Really, really uh, happy that he threw in a question. And, and thank you, if, if if anyone's watched this far, thank you. If, if Theodore, if you are watching, thank you for watching this far. And thank you for your question, which was, uh, how is your mental health and your overall health? I, I genuinely appreciate the question. Um, because, you know, <laughs> how does shit go? Gatomago. Uh, Not good, honestly. Uh, really, really not not too great uh, in terms of like my 
my health overall, I have to say. <laughs> my mental health has been in, in shambles of late. Um, I don't know if there's necessarily any reason for it, but I've been having lots of, like, thoughts about things that I shouldn't, um, that I try to stay away from, that I've been in to facilities to try to work on. Um, and lots of people around me have passed away lately, <laughs> uh, recently, uh, worryingly so. Uh, and that affects me in ways I don't necessarily feel like it would, but it does. Um, it affects me more than I might want to admit it affects me. Um, and yeah, I've been feeling very, very low. I feel really unpositive about where I am in life and about what I'm doing. I, I feel like it's getting harder and harder to make even small amounts of money. Again, the money itself isn't the problem, but it's the idea of having my own place to live, uh, having somewhere to live, being able to afford food and art materials and that's that's all I really need. That's all I ever will probably spend my money on. But it's getting less and less. Um, it feels like it's it's getting less and less of a sure thing that I'm able to afford all of that. And and I do worry more and more about my rent getting paid and about um, being able to afford food uh, and everything else. Um, sometimes the commissions come in. Uh, hard and fast and wild so much so that I'm like almost overwhelmed by them all I'm like oh shit I this is a lot of work for me to do I guess I better get on and and and, and do it sometimes that is absolutely not the case sometimes the well is dry as fuck and I, it worries me because this cannot continue Instagram's a piece of shit for sharing artwork um and and I, and it, it just it can't last forever. I've always thought that it cannot last forever. Um, and I'm trying to get work outside of Instagram, but also that's another thing. Is um, recently there's been another batch of uh, rejection <coughs> rejection emails or ignored emails as I'm trying to get work. Um, and it just, it, it terrifies me. I just think it's all going to end horribly sooner or later. And that doesn't even take into account the events currently going on in the world, which also terrify and frustrate me uh, beyond belief. Um, it, everything is seems to be taking a toll on me, and it's, it's very, very difficult to keep shit going. I try to, you know, keep in good spirits and just do my, do my thing, do my drawings, put shit out there. Largely because I have to, <laughs> otherwise I starve and don't have a house. Not that I've got a house, but you know. Um, so yeah, that's my mental health. Is <laughs> It's just not great. And I think as almost uh, a sort of somewhat direct result of that, um, my physical health is suffering too. Uh, I put on a lot of weight because uh, I'm just depressed and I can't leave the house and, and I eat terribly and then I have times where I'm like right let's sort it out and I'll, I'll exercise for a bit um, but then you know I'll exercise and eat better and I'll, I will lose a little bit of weight but then um, I fall back into it I just get horrifically uh, paralyzingly depressed and I don't know what to do and then I fall into bad habits for longer than I have good habits and it undoes any good things I did and pulls me further back. Um, my body is, is feels like it's shutting down some days. My teeth are in an awful state. My uh, body just feels like shit. Um, so, to answer your question, not great at the moment. <laughs> my My mental health is really not great and my physical health is really not great. Um, I try to take steps to do something about it. I do. Um, you know, make doctor's appointments and stuff and talk to people, but it's it's difficult, isn't it? I just, I despair a lot. I genuinely 
didn't mean to uh, had no intention of ending this whole thing on such a a bummer of a note <laughs> but it seemed appropriate at the time maybe I was uh, wrong about that maybe it wasn't appropriate <laughs> I thought that would be a, a nice question to end on because, you know, it's it's a question actually genuinely asking about me and how I'm doing. So I thought, oh, I'll, I'll answer that question. Um, I didn't realise I'd bum myself out so much with the answer. So uh, my apologies for that. I, again, I really do appreciate you asking, though, uh, Theodore. Um, I'm not doing great, but I'm, uh, you know, I'm still here. I'm still here and, you know, I'm working on it. I'm getting there. We'll, we'll... We'll all get there. Ooh. And that's assuming anyone's even watching to hear me say all this shit. I... It's been a long one, to say the least. Uh, if you have been here for the entire ride, thank you, I guess. You need to fucking sort your shit out and figure out what you're doing with life if this is what you're able to spend your time doing. Um, like I say I've got ideas for other things, other videos I've got comics I'm working on I've got a few commissions just coming in I've got a couple of others I'm working on currently a couple of those I'll have done soon hopefully as people are starting to ask about them <laughs> where's my commission, where's my commission I'm working on it I swear uh Look at that. Little Gato Mago. Things could be better. I'll say that. You, I, and I mean, that. I'm sure, sure that goes for everyone. That things could just be better. Um, but things could also be worse. <laughs> could they? <laughs> yes. Yes, they could. We're, we're here regardless. To anyone... Uh, and everyone I, I don't know I'm not going to try and end on some profound note this has been 12 hours of just nonsense and <laughs> worthlessness and garbage and just what am I doing so uh, can I fill an entire sketchbook in 12 hours no but can I have some fun and enjoy drawing anyway, regardless of, of, of that, regardless of not necessarily reaching the goal I aimed for at the start? Yes. And what more can we hope for than that?